High school senior Xia Yu thought the awakening ceremony would be ordinary, but he never expected it to trigger a divine level selection system. In the playground of Lingnan High School No. 1 in Lingnan City, southern province of Longhua, students were lined up neatly, and the teaching building was packed with anxious parents. This day was not only the awakening ceremony for the seniors, but also the most important day for every city since the fusion of games and reality. The principal's stern speech instantly silenced the crowd. He urged, Next, please remain calm and follow the broadcast instructions. Remember, do not get overly excited to avoid affecting the success rate of the awakening ceremony. As the broadcast began calling names, the students held their breath, eyes fixed on the ten people on stage. The first two students' awakenings ended in failure, causing a tense atmosphere. Suddenly, a thunderous roar broke the silence. Everyone turned to see a student named Shu Shu, with a phantom of a burly man wielding a battle axe appearing behind him. Shu Shu, awakening successful. Hidden class, berserker, the announcement rang out causing an uproar. No one expected the first successful awakening to be a rare hidden class. The principal was overjoyed and immediately instructed his secretary to award Shu Shu a 100,000 yuan scholarship. The awakening ceremony proceeded fervently, with every person's fate being rewritten at that moment. Soon, it was the turn of Xiaoyu's class six. Their homeroom teacher earnestly reminded them, remember, maintaining a calm mind is the biggest secret to a successful awakening. Other superstitions are useless. The first group of students stepped onto the stage, and among them, the awakening process of the school beauty by Xiao Xiao was particularly astonishing. Her magic circle erupted with dazzling white light, accompanied by a sacred celestial melody. By Xiao Xiao, awakening successful, hidden class, holy priest. This result caused the entire crowd to erupt, even prompting the principal to stand up in excitement. Immediately, invitations from various factions poured in like a tidal wave. However, the awakening ceremony did not stop. When the broadcast called Xia Yu's name, he took a deep breath and followed his homeroom teacher onto the stage. The moment Xia Yu stepped into the magic circle, an anomaly occurred. Light particles surged into his body at an unprecedented speed, prompting the ceremony's master of ceremonies to exclaim about the lack of magic power. Other masters quickly stepped in to assist, and the situation almost spiraled out of control. Meanwhile, Xia Yu found himself in a completely new world. Before him appeared a line of striking text, Divine Level Selection System Initiating 99 100 Initiation Complete. Please choose host. Become a mage. Reward. Innate magic ability. Spellcasting mental energy consumption halved. Become an elementalist. Reward. True god level skill. Summon flame sovereign. Become a necromancer. Reward. Main god level pet. Sanus ghost. Absolute loyalty. Growth potential. Skill to learn them summon item ranks. Common. Excellent, Master, Hero, Legendary, Mythical, True God, Main God, Supreme God. A divine choice system suddenly appeared before Xia Yu, leaving him stunned. He had three mage classes to choose from, each coming with a reward. He had never heard of such a thing. Is this a cheat code coming to life? Xia Yu thought excitedly, recalling his tough 18 years of life. He carefully considered the three options, Regular Mage, Elementalist, and Necromancer. The Regular Mage had the talent to have mental energy consumption, the Elementalist was a hidden class, but the Necromancer was not only a hidden class, but also came with a god-tier pet. System, I choose Necromancer. Xiaoyu decided without hesitation. Immediately, he felt a gray-white figure appear in his mental realm, surrounded by gray mist infused with intense death energy. This phenomenon caught the attention of the surrounding students, who cast envious glances his way. However, the phenomenon quickly dissipated. The masters looked incredulous, clearly disappointed with the result. When the broadcast announced that Xia Yu had awakened as a hidden class necromancer, everyone still found it hard to believe. The principal sighed and applied for a 100,000 scholarship for Xia Yu, while arranging an even more generous reward for Bai Xiao Xiao. Bai Xiao Xiao breathed a sigh of relief, feeling that Xia Yu's class didn't match her own status. A member of the Blackfoot Mage Tower approached Xia Yu, inviting him to join. The system presented another choice join and gain an intelligence potential boost, or refuse and enhance his necromancy summoning skills. After a moment's hesitation, Xia Yu politely declined the invitation. He then received a boost to his necromancy summoning skills and checked his attribute panel. While the classmates discussed their awakening results, either envious or disheartened, Bai Xiao Xiao suddenly invited Xia Yu to team up and explore the dark forest, surprising everyone. The system gave him three options again. Refuse and gain master level necromancy summoning, accept and gain a random master level skill, or invite another female and gain minotaur bloodline. Weighing the pros and cons, Xiaoyu chose to refuse by Xiao Xiao's invitation. Sorry, I'm not considering teaming up right now, 
He politely declined, inwardly thrilled about his imminent power boost. What? Everyone stared at Xiaoyu in shock. Even the homeroom teacher looked incredulous. The school's beauty, Bai Xiaoxiao, had invited him to team up. This was a golden opportunity. The internet is full of stories about teaming up with a beauty and ending up as a couple. After all, facing life and death together can spark flames. But Xiaoyu actually refused. Bai Xiaoxiao instantly dropped her good girl act and angrily shouted, Xiaoyu, are you out of your mind? How dare you reject me? Xiaoyu quickly explained, Xiao Bai, calm down. I have my own plans. I'm a necromancer and I want to level up in the pharaoh's tomb first. The monsters there are all neurotoxic and my summoned undead are immune to poison. Aren't you terrified of scorpions and bugs? Bai Xiaoxiao immediately reverted to her sweet demeanor as if her outburst had been an illusion. She softly asked, what's wrong with going to the dark forest with me? Everyone's gossip radar went off. Xiaoyu called her Xiao Bai? They must be close. Could it be a secret relationship, betrothed since childhood? Or maybe a forbidden love between a rich girl and an orphan? The homeroom teacher cleared his throat, interrupting their thoughts. Xiaoyu has a point. The Pharaoh's tomb is indeed an excellent leveling ground for a necromancer. Even at level 1, you can easily defeat level 5 monsters there and gain 80 extra experience. Bai Xiao Xiao stared at Xiaoyu and asked, Are you really not going to team up with me? You'll regret it. With that, she stormed off. Everyone could see the situation and felt a pang of sympathy. They all sighed. If I had that chance, I'd team up with Bai Xiao Xiao without hesitation. Some even began to question Xia Yu's orientation. Choice complete, system rewards. Necromancer summoning upgraded to master level. At level 2, you can summon a level 1 undead soldier with a heavy strike skill, summon limit 10. Xia Yu smiled wryly. Looks like he'll have some explaining to do tonight. The awakening ceremony continued. Although no more hidden classes appeared, the number of ordinary classes increased compared to previous years, making the principal smile a bit stiff. As the ceremony neared its end, the principal began his speech. Students, today we witnessed the awakening of three hidden classes and many successful awakenings. Congratulations to them. May they bring glory to Long Country and Lingnan City and defend humanity against terrifying monsters. Those who haven't awakened, don't lose heart. Every role in society needs you. Prepare well for the cultural exams and aim for college. For those who have awakened, don't forget the vocational exams in seven days. Perform well, and even with an ordinary class, you can attract top schools or major forces. Lastly, for those looking to level up, team up and head to the recommended beginner monster nests. Don't challenge places beyond your level. May you all fight for your dreams after graduation and make the most of your youth. The students cheered excitedly. Becoming a professional meant they could hunt monsters like the stars on TV and become heroes protecting the public. Filled with passion, they began looking for teammates to head to the monster nests. After all, who wanted to continue studying when they had just become professionals? Xiaoyu quietly packed his things and rode his bike home. Perhaps because he had awakened a class, he found climbing the hill much easier than before. He stopped in front of a villa by the hillside just as a luxury car pulled up beside him. Bai Xiao Xiao got out of the car, looking at Xiaoyu mockingly. Oh. Isn't this Xiaoyu who awakened a hidden class? Xiaoyu apologized immediately. I'm sorry. After all, he had broken their previous agreement. Hearing his apology, Bai Xiao Xiao's expression softened slightly. My team still needs one more person. Her meaning was clear. Just as Xiaoyu was about to speak, Bai Xiao Xiao snorted and walked into the villa. Xiaoyu pushed his bike and followed her in. Although Xiaoyu was an orphan, his father and Bai Xiao Xiao's father were as close as brothers. After Xiaoyu's parents' accident, the Bai family took him in when he was just two years old. Sixteen years had passed, and Xiaoyu and Bai Xiao Xiao were as close as siblings, though they kept this relationship secret during their three years at school. The butler took Xiaoyu's backpack and said kindly, Young master, you're back. The master is very pleased with your and the young lady's awakening ceremony, and is on his way back with a surprise for you both. Xiaoyu replied, There's no need to trouble Uncle Bai. Didn't he just return from a business trip yesterday? The butler merely smiled mysteriously and didn't answer. By the way, Uncle Yu, I'll head to my room first. Xiaoyu said, eager to summon his new god-tier pet. Young master, dinner is ready. I'll eat later. The holy maiden ghost suddenly appeared before Xiaoyu. She was wearing a pure white dress, her transparent body floating in the air, revealing a pair of delicate feet. Her face was exquisitely cute, yet completely expressionless. When she opened her eyes, Xiaoyu saw pupils as pure and untouchable as gold and jade. Master, the holy maiden ghost called softly. Xiaoyu carefully examined the attributes of this god ear unit. Holy Maiden Ghost, Evolving Race, Undead Level. Attributes, 1 Strength, 65 Agility, 65 Wisdom, 80 Talent. Talent, Inspirer Nearby Allied Units, 
gain a 50 boost in your strength and agility, with an additional 100 increase in movement speed. Skills. Great Heal. Restores health to nearby allies equal to 500 of wisdom. Resurrection. Revives one unit 24-hour cooldown. Dispel. Removes negative statuses from one unit. Thunder Aura. All nearby allies attacks deal additional lightning damage equal to 100 of wisdom. Xiaoyu is stunned by these stats. Such high attributes at level 1 and those overpowered skills. Resurrection. Inspire talent. Thunder or each one could significantly enhance a regular unit's power. Just then, a series of urgent knocks interrupted Xiaoyu's thoughts. Dad's back, come out quickly. Bai Xiao Xiao's voice called from outside the door. Xiaoyu quickly summoned back the Holy Maiden ghost and replied, Got it coming. He left the room to find that Bai Xiao Xiao was no longer there. Downstairs, a middle-aged man in a neat suit was sitting on the sofa. Seeing Xiaoyu come down, the man waved with a smile. Xiaoyu, come here. This is a surprise your aunt and I prepared for you. Xiaoyu approached and saw the coffee table filled with gear. One item stood out a staff adorned with a human skull. Staff of the deceased master level. One wisdom. All undead skills one level. Not bad, right? Bai Bin Bin said with a grin, we spent 10,000 on this. The professional who owned it wanted to keep it for collection. Xiaoyu was astonished by the set of equipment, momentarily at a loss for words. Uncle Bai had not only bought this staff, but also prepared full sets of gear ranging from excellent to master level, clearly spending a significant amount. Your aunt and I are just regular people. We can't help you much in terms of being a professional. Bai Bin Bin laughed heartily. We can't afford high level gear, so we got you these level 1 items to give you a good start. Bai Xiao Xiao unceremoniously put on her set of gear, instantly transforming into a holy priestess wielding a glowing staff and wearing a cleric's robe. Thank you, Uncle Bai. Xiaoyu accepted the gift, silently noting the kindness in his heart. After dinner, Bai Bin Bin spoke earnestly to Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu, I don't know why you won't team up with Xiao Xiao, but you must be careful if you go out alone. Contact us immediately if anything happens. Don't worry, Uncle Bai. I'm an adult now. Xiaoyu responded with a smile. True, you've always been mature, Bai Bin Bin chuckled. When you were little, I even suspected you were a little grown up. Bai Xiao Xiao snorted from the side. All right, Xiao Xiao, don't be mad. Bai Bin Bin patted his daughter's head. Men need their space sometimes. We worry when you go leveling up, but we won't stop you. Just remember to stay safe and come back home. Your aunt and I will always be waiting. Early the next morning, Xiaoyu got up and prepared to leave, avoiding the hassle of traveling with Bai Xiao Xiao. He quickly pedaled away on his bike, not noticing the resentful gaze following him. Xiaoyu arrived at the expansive teleportation center, surrounded by heavily armed individuals, the atmosphere noticeably tense. As soon as he entered, a system prompt appeared before him. Please choose. 1. Dark Forest Level 1 Monster Nest. Level Up. Reward. 1 Strength Attribute Potential. 2. Twilight Ruins Level 2 Monster Nest. Level Up. Reward. 1 Random Common Skill. 3. Pharaoh's Tomb Level 5 Monster Nest. Level Up. Reward. 1 Skill Point. 4. Silent Death Domain Level 10 Monster Nest. Level Up. Reward. 1 Random Hero Level Equipment. System, can I take them all? Xiaoyu asked. No, you can only choose once, the system replied. Xiaoyu swallowed hard at the tempting rewards of the higher level nests, but he knew his strength. Going to a high level nest would be suicide. Choose Pharaoh's tomb, Xiaoyu told the receptionist. Please teleport me to Pharaoh's tomb. Please show your professional information, the receptionist said with a smile. Xiaoyu took out his phone and displayed his professional details. The receptionist frowned after checking. You're only level one. Are you sure you want to go to the level 5 pharaoh's tomb? I recommend the dark forest. Her voice wasn't loud, but the surrounding professionals heard it. Level 1, going to a level 5 nest? Is he looking for death? Idiot. Even level 7 or 8 can't handle the scorpions in pharaoh's tomb. Little brother, how about I take you with me? No charge, a female professional suddenly offered. Damn, can good looks really be this useful? Already getting carried by a pro. Sis, take me too. Xiaoyu stood on the teleportation array, ignoring the other's attempts to dissuade him. He firmly said, please teleport me to the pharaoh's tomb. The receptionist, seeing his determined attitude, reluctantly activated the array. With a flash of bright light, Xiaoyu's figure instantly vanished. Sigh, such a handsome guy, and a rare class like a necromancer, just going to throw his life away like that, the receptionist lamented. Her words caught the attention of the nearby adventurers. A necromancer? That guy was a necromancer, one of the adventurers asked in surprise. The receptionist nodded in confirmation. Yes, his class information listed him as a necromancer. A hidden class like a necromancer. No wonder he dared to head to the pharaoh's tomb at level 1, someone realized. What do you mean? A hidden class can handle the pharaoh's tomb at level 1. 
A necromancer's undead soldiers are immune to the neurotoxin of the scorpions. While the pharaoh's tomb is a tough dungeon for other classes, it's the perfect leveling ground for a necromancer. As the crowd discussed, Xiaoyu had already appeared in a small village near the pharaoh's tomb. The village was sparsely populated, serving as an outpost for adventurers at the entrance of the monster lair. The atmosphere was tense, with everyone wearing expressions of impending life-and-death trials. Xiaoyu's solitary arrival immediately drew everyone's attention. A young man in armor approached, followed by an archer and a gentle-looking female cleric. Hey there, what's your class and level? My team could use another member. The young man invited warmly. Xiaoyu smiled politely. Thanks, I'm a level 1 necromancer, but I didn't plan on joining a team. Appreciate the offer, though. With that, he turned and walked away, leaving the young man with a look of realization. As he exited the outpost, a massive pyramid came into view. Xiaoyu knew this was just the tip of the iceberg, with an even larger structure hidden underground. Without hesitation, he began summoning his undead. Summon undead! With a momentary daze, a skeletal soldier wielding a sword and shield appeared beside him. He then summoned a pure white, ghostly maiden and instructed her to turn invisible. Xiaoyu carefully inspected the attributes of his skeletal soldier and nodded in satisfaction. Empowered by the ghostly maiden's presence, the skeletal soldier's strength and agility were significantly enhanced. He summoned a total of 10 skeleton soldiers and then drank an expensive mental potion to restore his energy. Let's go! Today I must find some divine gear to repay Uncle Bai. Leading his undead army, Xiaoyu marched into the pharaoh's tomb. The interior of the tomb was dark and eerie, with faint screams echoing from the distance. The skeletal soldiers remained vigilant, ready to respond to any sudden threats. Using the unique ability of his summoned undead life, Sensia, you easily avoided the scorpions hidden in the sand. Suddenly, the lead skeletal soldier signaled a warning. Xiaoyu focused and spotted an inconspicuous sand mound. He immediately summoned a bone spear and launched it at the mound. Bang! The sand scattered, revealing a giant scorpion about a meter long, covered in sand-colored armor. Xiaoyu quickly checked the creature's attributes. Desert Scorpion Common Species, Desert Scorpion. Level 5. Strength, 30. Agility, 30. Wisdom, 30. Trait. Desert Toxin Attacks inflict a layer of Desert Toxin, dealing 100 all-attribute poison damage per second, slowing the enemy by 50 for 5 seconds stackable. Skill. Burrow greatly reduces presence and hides the body. Faced with a sudden bone spear, the venomous scorpion was caught completely off guard and was pierced through its body. Green liquid spurted out, and the scorpion let out a piercing screech, using its last bit of strength to lunge at Xiaoyu. However, it was immediately skewered by the swords of ten undead soldiers, ending its life. A system notification sounded. Killed venomous scorpion, level 5, normal, experience 45. Xiaoyu's heart leaped with joy. Just one venomous scorpion had given him nearly half the experience needed to level up. This was his first monster kill, and instead of feeling uneasy, he was filled with excitement. Pressing on, Xiaoyu led his undead army deeper into the cold, dark pharaoh's tomb. The undead soldiers, emotionless, scoured the sand for hidden scorpions, and once they found one, they simultaneously pierced it with six swords. Against the undead soldiers, who boasted a strength of 81 and were immune to poison, the scorpions were utterly defenseless, letting out only a brief shriek before falling. Killed Venomous Scorpion, Level 5, Normal, Experience 45. Killed Venomous Scorpion, Level 5, Normal, Experience 45. Your level has increased to Level 2. With the system notification, Xiaoyu celebrated his first level up. Selection complete. Rewards granted. Skill points 1. Please choose your level up reward. 1. Master Level Undead Summoning 1. 2. Basic Poison Mist, Level 1. Deals poison damage equal to 20 of your intelligence per second to enemies in the area, lasting 10 seconds. 3. Basic Berserk, Level 1. Puts a unit into a berserk state, increasing strength and agility by 20. After careful consideration, Xiaoyu chose Undead Summoning. The system immediately rewarded him. You can now summon Undead Archers. While the skill choices this time weren't ideal, thanks to the Divine Selection System, Xiaoyu avoided the dilemma of choice. He quickly summoned an undead archer, draped in tattered cloth and wielding a bone bow. Undead archer master level. Race, undead. Level, 2. Strength, 36 potential 18. Agility, 36 potential 18. Intelligence, 30 potential 15. Skill, double shot fires two precise shots in quick succession, each dealing 100 of strength as physical damage. With the Saintus Ghost Encourager talent boosting its stats, the undead archer's strength and agility exceeded 100, far surpassing the venomous scorpions on the first level. 
It could kill these stationary targets with a single arrow, greatly increasing Xiaoyu's kill speed. Watching the experience points rapidly accumulate, Xiaoyu felt more confident, believing he would stand out in the future professional exams. More importantly, as an undead mage, he wouldn't have to pause his leveling up due to physical or mental exhaustion like other professions. Soon, Xiaoyu leveled up again. Your level has increased to level 3. Please choose your level up reward. 1. Bone Spear Skill 1. 2. Advanced Corpse Explosion, level 1. Detonates a corpse your undead summon, dealing 150 of intelligence as fire damage and an additional 100 of the detonated unit strength as fire damage. 3. Basic Poison Mist, level 1. Deals poison damage equal to 20 of your intelligence per second to enemies in the area, lasting 10 seconds. This time, Xiaoyu didn't hesitate to choose Corpse Explosion, a core skill for an undead mage. The system rewarded him. Units killed by Corpse Explosion will explode. Xiaoyu was thrilled, imagining the chain explosions he could trigger with Corpse Explosion. He continued to advance, but soon found that all the scorpions around had been cleared out. Reluctantly, he ventured deeper, hoping to encounter elite monsters or a boss. Before proceeding, Xiaoyu remembered he had three and used skill points and allocated them all to Undead Summoning. Undead Summoning Master Level 7 Summons a Level 3 Undead Soldier or Undead Archer with skills. Heavy Strike, Leap Attack Double Shot, Triple Shot. Summon Limit, 35. The attributes of the Undead Soldiers also increased. Race, Undead. Level 3. Strength, 48. Agility, 51. Intelligence, 45. Skills. Heavy Strike. Leap Attack leaps towards an enemy while attacking, dealing 120 of strength as physical damage. With a Saintus Ghost boost, Xiaoyu estimated these attributes should be sufficient to face the first level boss. Taking a deep breath, he continued his exploration into the unknown, eager for greater challenges. According to the guide, there should be an elite spawn point here, but I'm not sure if it's still active. Surrounded by a host of summoned undead, Xiaoyu stepped into an oasis within the pyramid. The sight was astonishing. Lush trees and green grass thrived inside the ancient structure, and in the distance, a sizable lake shimmered under the light. The scale of this pyramid was staggering, with adventurers constantly discovering new areas. However, due to the monster threats, many professions avoided it. As a hidden class, there were fewer than a hundred necromancers worldwide, and high-level ones had little interest in such low-level areas since killing bosses here yielded neither valuable loot nor experience. Suddenly, a low growl shattered the tranquility. A black panther leaped at Xiaoyu from a tree, but before it got close, several arrows split it in two. The system prompt popped up, killed Oasis Panther level 5, experience 35. Xiaoyu smiled, thinking that there must indeed be elite monsters here. Otherwise, this would be a safe zone. He continued toward the lake, encountering three more panthers along the way, all of which were precisely shot down by the undead archers. The auto-targeting capability of these summoned creatures was even better than hacking showcasing the necromancer's advantage. By the lake, Xiaoyu spotted a large black panther leisurely drinking water. The system immediately provided detailed information. Black Storm, Elite Species, Oasis Panther, Level 7, with all attributes and skills clearly listed. Black Storm sensed the danger and growled at Xiaoyu. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu ordered his summoned undead to attack. A fierce battle erupted instantly. Black Storm's Black Wind Blade shattered a shield held by an undead soldier, but didn't diminish its combat effectiveness. The rain of arrows from the undead archers followed as expected. Despite Black Storm's efforts to dodge, two arrows hit their mark. Enraged, Black Storm charged at the nearest undead soldier, only to be caught off guard when the soldier suddenly exploded. The power of corpse explosion was astonishing, leaving Black Storm charred and bleeding profusely. Taking advantage of the moment, the undead soldier swarmed their swords piercing into Black Storm's body. Despite its desperate struggles, Black Storm couldn't escape its fate against such overwhelming numbers. Finally, a heavy blow severed Black Storm's head. The system prompt immediately appeared. Killed Black Storm Level 7, Elite, Experience 156. Your level has increased to 4. You have obtained a superior item, Panther Head Cap. Next came the Level Up Reward Selection screen. After careful consideration, Xiaoyu chose Corpse Explosion. Although the other options were tempting, the opportunity to upgrade Corpse Explosion to Master Level was too valuable to pass up. As levels increase, the chances of randomly getting core skills significantly decrease, making it crucial to enhance key skills early on. He selected Corpse Explosion. Master Level Corpse Explosion at Level 2 detonated a corpse, and the scene before Xia Yu was nothing short of spectacular. The undead minion that was blown up transformed into a blazing fireball, with the explosion's power far exceeding expectations. The flames swept through, 
dealing damage equivalent to 200 of CIU's intelligence, plus an additional fire damage equal to 100 of the detonated unit's strength. Even more astonishingly, enemies killed by the corpse explosion also exploded, creating a chain reaction. As the smoke of battle began to clear, an unexpected find caught Xiaoyu's eye. He bent down and picked up a piece of gear that was glimmering on the ground the panther had had. After carefully examining its attributes, Xiaoyu couldn't help but exclaim, excellent grade, 7 intelligence, and 21 agility, plus a 10-point dual attribute bonus. This is a high-level hat for someone at level 7. Despite his excitement, he sighed, too bad I can't wear it yet. I'll have to stick with Uncle Bai's hat that adds 3 intelligence for now. While Xiaoyu was lost in thoughts about his new gear, he keenly sensed a disturbance around him. You've been watching for a while, come on out, Xiaoyu suddenly called out loudly. No sooner had he spoken than he heard rustling behind him, and three figures slowly emerged in front of him. Xiaoyu took a closer look and realized it was the same trio who had invited him to join them at the outpost. Though he remained cautious, seeing familiar faces allowed him to relax a bit. It's you guys, he thought, they do seem pretty friendly. The young man in the group eyed Xiaoyu's undead army with a look of surprise. Are you really just level one? He asked pointing at the imposing undead soldiers and archers. So many undead, and each one looks like it could easily overpower a black storm. Their strength and agility must be close to 100 points each. This doesn't seem like something a level one could summon. Xiaoyu replied vaguely, leveled up a few times. The cleric-like woman exclaimed, Wow, little brother, you're amazing. You've leveled up several times in just half a day. It took me two whole days to get from level one to level two. The archer in their group also remarked, It took me two days as well. Comparing ourselves to you is just frustrating. The young man shrugged, a bit envious but still explanatory. All right, all right, he's a necromancer. It's different for us. Necromancers do have an advantage in leveling up quickly in the Pharaoh's tomb early on. It's normal for them to level up faster, yeah, just a bit. Seeing this, Xiaoyu decided to end the conversation. If there's nothing else, I'll be on my way. I'm heading to the next elite spot. However, just as he was about to turn and leave, the young man suddenly called out, Wait, do you know about the challenge space? Xiaoyu raised an eyebrow and smiled, fully aware of the challenge spaces. As a professional, he knew that these unstable spaces, which appeared randomly around the world, were common knowledge. He succinctly explained their characteristics to the three, randomness, specific requirements, diverse challenges, and the high-risk, high-reward nature. You found a challenge space? Xiaoyu quickly picked up on their intention. The young man nodded in confirmation and invited Xiaoyu to join their team. Seeing Xiaoyu's impressive strength, they believed that his help would greatly increase their chances of success. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu asked about the level and requirements of the challenge space. Upon learning that it was a level 7 challenge space, restricted to professionals below level 10, he readily agreed. As Xiaoyu reached level 4, his necromancy abilities had significantly improved. He could now summon 40 level 4 undead, each equipped with skills like heavy strike and leap attack. With the attribute boost from the level 4 ghost saintus, this undead army was more than capable of handling higher level challenges. After joining the team, Xiaoyu reviewed the other members' information. Level 7 warrior Zhong Pingyi, Level 7 archer Yi Hui, and Level 7 priestess Sing Wanru. The team marveled at Xiaoyu's combat power at Level 4, especially since he had already mastered the core skill, Corpse Explosion. The group set off quickly. The few scorpions they encountered along the way were no match for Xiaoyu's undead army. However, just as they were about to reach their destination, Xiaoyu suddenly became alert. His undead soldiers had relayed that there were multiple life forms ahead. Xiaoyu quietly warned his teammates to be cautious and positioned the undead soldiers at the front. Sure enough, moments later, several fireballs came hurling toward them, only to be blocked by the shields of the undead soldiers. Four figures emerged from the shadows. Two warriors, an archer, and a mage. They wore expressions of disdain, clearly underestimating Xiaoyu's group. Tensions rose, and a conflict seemed imminent. Xiaoyu decisively ordered an attack. The undead soldiers surged forward like a tide, catching the opponents off guard with their overwhelming strength. In just one round, the enemy archer was turned into a pincushion. The situation quickly reversed. Seeing things go south, the one-eyed warrior hastily pleaded, Brother, spare us, and I'll tell you a secret worth millions. How about it? Ten million. These three words hit Zhong Pingyi, Yi, and Zheng Wanru like a sledgehammer. An unmistakable glint of longing flashed in their eyes. As novice players who hadn't yet reached level 10, the most valuable equipment they typically found was worth only a few hundred to a few thousand. Ten million was an astronomical figure to them, a sum they'd have to work years to earn. However, Xiaoyu's face twisted into a sneer. Without hesitation, he raised his undead archer's bow and aimed it at the trio across from him. Xiaoyu, wait. Zhong Pingyi called out, turning back to look at Xiaoyu with a moment of hesitation. But it was too late. 
Xiaoyu's arrows had already been released. Three arrows flew like the scythe of death, precisely hitting their targets. The enemies were torn apart in a chorus of anguished screams, leaving none alive. After finishing the task, Xiaoyu turned to Zhong Pingyi and calmly asked, Do you have 10 million, or do I? Zhong Pingyi looked puzzled. I don't have it, you. Xiaoyu cut him off. Neither do I. So, why would someone weaker than us have it? They were just stalling for time. His tone carried a hint of a lesson. When someone weaker tries to bribe you in a fight, the chances of them having the money are less than winning the lottery. Don't hesitate in such situations. Zhong Pingyi, though a bit embarrassed, nodded in agreement. Lesson learned. He, looking conflicted, said, I hesitated too. Ten million could have got me a full set of great gear. Zheng Wanru smiled. Luckily, Xiaoyu was here. Otherwise, the three of us might not have made it. We owe him thanks? No need. Xiaoyu waved it off. We're a team now. He scanned their surroundings, his expression growing serious. Let's move. It looks like someone has already gone ahead. If we want the rewards, we need to finish faster than them. Remember, that one-eyed warrior said he was waiting for others to come out, meaning some have already gone in. We don't have much time. Hearing this, the group tensed up. Quickly, they led Xiaoyu to a floating crystal cube. This is the entrance to the challenge space. Zhong Pingyi explained. Let's go. They reached out to touch the crystal cube. A system prompt echoed in Xiaoyu's mind. Checking. Would you like to enter the challenge space as a four-person team? Please make a choice. Enter solo. Reward. Strength potential one inch. Enter as a team. Reward. Agility, potential one inch. Xiaoyu thought to himself, what's the point of going solo? He chose to enter as a team without hesitation. In the next moment, Xiaoyu felt a sudden drop and the scenery changed abruptly. They found themselves in a lush forest, with towering trees blocking most of the sunlight, allowing only a few rays to penetrate through the leaves. The system prompt sounded again. Selection complete. Reward granted. Agility, potential one. Challenge task. Defeat the boss at the center of the forest. Rewards will be based on individual performance. It's a speed challenge. Zhong Pingyi whispered a glint of excitement in his eyes. Xiaoyu understood. A speed challenge meant multiple teams entered simultaneously, and the first to defeat the boss would get the best rewards. Other teams might only get leftovers. The system provided another choice. Please make a selection. Slack off. Killing the boss is out of the question. Reward. Master level profession specific weapon. Speed demon. Defeat the boss within 30 minutes. Reward. Undead summoning upgraded to heroic level. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu chose to defeat the boss. His goal was the challenge space's reward, and upgrading undead summoning to the heroic level would greatly enhance his power. A master level weapon, while nice, couldn't compare to the boost from the summoning upgrade. 30 minutes, Xiaoyu's eyes narrowed. Time is tight, and we need to beat the team that went ahead. We might not even have 30 minutes. With that, Xiaoyu immediately began summoning undead soldiers and archers. Thanks to the spacious area, he summoned 20 undead soldiers and 20 undead archers in one go. Zhong Pingyi and the others watched in shock. Normally, a level 1 undead summoner could only summon 5 creatures, but Xiaoyu had summoned 40. They thought to themselves, a level 4 necromancer with level 8 summoning skills? And high-grade summoning at that? His gear must enhance skill levels. Otherwise, this is impossible. The three began to recall any prominent families in Longwa with the surname Xia. Getting a set of gear that could enhance summoning skills at level 4 would cost at least millions. Gear that boosted skill levels typically included rings, necklaces, and staffs, with staffs being the cheapest. Rings and necklaces were priceless treasures. After summoning, Xiaoyu took out a bottle of mental potion, gulping it down to restore his depleted mental energy. Let's move, Xiaoyu said, looking back at the three. We need to find and kill the boss before they do. Got it? The three responded in unison, fully aware of the urgency. They ventured deeper into the forest. Suddenly, a thick vine lashed out from the bushes, sweeping toward them. Fortunately, the undead soldiers shielded them, and the vine only struck the shields. Following the vine, they saw a massive tree exuding dark energy. Its trunk bore a twisted human face, adding to its eerie appearance. The system immediately provided the monster's details. Corrupted Treant. Elite Type. Treant. Level 7. Strength. 91. Agility. 77. Wisdom. 84. Abilities. Dark energy corrosion. Attacks reduce the target's attributes by 1, up to 10. Killing an enemy spreads dark energy. Hardened bark. Increased defense. Double effectiveness against arrows. Skills. Vine attack. Controls vines to attack enemies, dealing 120 physical damage. Leap attack. Xiaoyu commanded decisively. With the Trent's heightened defense against archers, melee was the way to go. Ten undead warriors leaped forward, 
their swords gleaming, slicing into the Trent's trunk as if it were butter. Green liquid spurted from the wounds, and the undead soldiers quickly hacked the Trayan into pieces. The system prompt followed. Corrupted Trayan defeated, level 7 experience 28. As they continued, they encountered more corrupted Trayans, but Zhong Pingyi and the others barely had a chance to fight. This left them feeling somewhat embarrassed, as if they were mere bystanders. However, Xiaoyu didn't mind, focused solely on finding and defeating the boss to claim the rewards from the Divine Selection System. Their efforts paid off when they sensed a powerful dark energy ahead, far surpassing that of the ordinary corrupted trance. Corrupted tree spirit? Their eyes lit up with excitement. As the group moved closer, a sudden, piercing scream shattered the silence. Zeng Wanru's shriek caused the other three to frown, their gazes falling upon a horrifying sight. The trees were draped with impaled, desiccated corpses, and behind them loomed a massive tree exuding an aura of malevolence, as if it were bleeding. This blood-soaked demon tree was a level 9 Trayant boss, boasting 207 strength, 162 agility, and 153 wisdom. It possessed two formidable talents, bloodlust and corruption aura. Bloodlust allowed it to drain blood to heal itself and increase its strength by 10 upon hitting an enemy. Corruption aura could reduce an enemy's attributes by 1 per stack, up to 10, and corrupt them upon death. Its skill, Thorn Whip, could deal physical damage equal to 150 of its strength and potentially cause a bleeding effect lasting 10 seconds. Xiaoyu felt a twinge of unease, realizing they had to confront this boss. Zhong Pingyi exclaimed, A double talent level 9 boss? There's no way our three-man team can handle that. Yi Hui's hands trembled as he asked Xiaoyu if he had a plan. Otherwise, they should retreat. Without waiting for a reply, Xiaoyu charged forward, demonstrating his resolve through action. He immediately unleashed his most powerful skill, triple shot, rapidly firing three precise arrows, each dealing 120 of his strength and physical damage. In a low voice, he commanded, Holy Ghost, activate the thunder aura, but don't let those three benefit from it. With a crisp sound, a pale blue light enveloped all of Xiaoyu's summoned undead, their weapons crackling with electricity. Thirty arrows whizzed through the air, most of them striking the blood-soaked demon tree each hit accompanied by blue flashes and sizzling sounds. Noticing the anomaly, the trio glanced back at Xiaoyu, but asked no questions. They understood everyone had their secrets. The demon tree retaliated fiercely, launching multiple thorny vines from its trunk, sweeping through the undead soldiers. Against a boss with 207 strength, several undead soldiers were instantly shattered. However, the remaining soldiers managed to leave deep gashes in the tree's bark with their swords. Just as Xia Yu's initial assault proved effective, a thorny vine suddenly lashed out from behind, targeting the undead archers. The unsuspecting ranged units were instantly killed by the dozens. As the vine aimed for Xia Yu, a figure stepped in its path. Zhong Pingyi raised a shield to block the attack, but the power difference was too great, and he was sent flying with a scream. However, this bought enough time for Xia Yu to cast Corpse Explosion. With a thunderous boom, an undead soldier detonated lifting the demon tree and exposing its blood-red roots, while creating a deep crater in its trunk, spewing green and red fluids. On the other side, Zeng Wanru raised her staff and cast a healing spell on Zhong Pingyi. Holy light descended, mending his wounds. Standing up, Zhong Pingyi gratefully said, Thanks, Sister Ro. He raised his sword and shield warily, fully aware that this boss would use underhanded tactics. Iwi also began attacking the boss with fire arrows. Although his damage was not as significant as the undead archers, it was better than nothing. As the demon tree retaliated furiously, the fallen undead soldiers started to rise again, cloaked in black smoke, attacking their former allies. Xiaoyu furrowed his brows, realizing they couldn't leave any corpses behind, or they would be corrupted and become enemy forces. Fortunately, the resurrected undead soldiers were weaker than Xiaoyu's summons and were quickly cut to pieces. At that moment, an undead soldier had its head pierced by a thorny vine, its soul fire extinguished. Xiaoyu didn't hesitate to use corpse explosion again. Another loud blast struck the previous wound, splitting the demon tree in half. Blood-soaked demon tree boss defeated. Level 9 experience 157. Your level has increased to 5. Your party has obtained the master level bloodstained longsword. The system notification sounded. Choose your level up reward. Three options appeared. Upgrade bone spear to excellent. Level 1 basic corrosion ball or level 1 Excellent Pain Curse. Pain Curse inflicts 12 additional damage on the target and doubles their pain. After a quick assessment, Xiaoyu chose Pain Curse. The system reward tripled the inflicted pain, enhancing its effectiveness against bosses. He then allocated his skill points to Corpse Explosion, considering his summon limit had been reached and the skill's immense power. 
Zhang Pingyi handed the bloodstained longsword to Xiaoyu, explaining it was for the team leader. This master-level weapon offered 35 agility and 15 strength, along with a thorn skill that caused a bleeding effect. Such a weapon was worth nearly a million for anyone below level 20, and Zhong Pingyi's generosity surprised Xiaoyu. Though the teammates were a bit taken aback, they didn't object. Typically, loot was equally shared among the team, and those who wanted specific items had to offer equivalent value. Xiaoyu accepted the sword without hesitation since he had borne the brunt of the battle. Zhong Pingyi gratefully said, No way, without you leading us, we might have been wiped out. Suddenly, a voice interrupted the warm scene. Zhong Pingyi, what a coincidence. Didn't I tell you that if I saw you again, I'd send you down to join your brother? Yu Zhengyi. Zhong Pingyi's eyes turned bloodshot as he roared furiously. His reaction revealed an extraordinary hatred between him and the newcomer. Xiaoyu squinted as he sized up the new group. All of them were level 10 players, well equipped with even rare necklaces and rings, far superior to the few outside. These were clearly wealthy scions, daring to enter a level 7 challenge dungeon, evidently confident in their abilities. The mage beside Yu Zhengyi keenly noticed the weapon in Xiaoyu's hand and quickly reported, Young master, they just killed the boss. That kid sword is at least master level. Perfect for you. Upon hearing this, Yu Zhengyi's face lit up with joy. Although wealthy, a level 9 master weapon could easily cost hundreds of thousands, and he usually wouldn't get a chance to use one. Now having the opportunity to get one for free was an unexpected boon. Kid, hand over the sword, and I'll let you die a little less painfully, Yu Zhengyi commanded arrogantly. Zhong Pingyi whispered a warning to Xiaoyu, Brother Xia, he's from the Yu family. They have businesses all over the country and are not to be trifled with. Even if there's a deep-seated grudge, Xiaoyu interrupted, it's not about us provoking him, it's about them not planning to let us go. He had already seen the murderous intent in their eyes. Exactly, today you're all going to die here, Yu Zhengyi said with a sinister smile, his gaze falling on Zeng Wanru, licking his lips, causing her to shiver in disgust. Bastard, Zeng Wanru couldn't help but curse. Go on, keep cursing. You'll be screaming even louder later. Ha ha. Yu Zhengyi laughed loudly, and his companions wore lecherous smiles, already imagining the show to come. Xiaoyu silently memorized their vile faces, becoming more alert. In the wild, fellow humans were often more dangerous than monsters. Kill those three guys, but be careful not to hurt my little darling. Yu Zhengyi ordered, and two warriors immediately charged forward. Savage charge. The two warriors' speeds suddenly increased as they charged ferociously towards Xiaoyu and the others. The mage beside Yu Zhengyi wasn't idle either. Waving his staff to conjure two fireballs aimed directly at Xiaoyu and Yi Hui, intending to prevent them from interfering with the charging warriors. The trio coordinated seamlessly, clearly not their first time doing such things. Yu Zhengyi watched from the sidelines, well aware of the vast gap between his four fully equipped level 10 players and the opposing level 7 novices. However, the situation unfolded contrary to everyone's expectations. Two undead soldiers swiftly blocked the charging warriors. Get out of the way, the warriors shouted disdainfully, but they were bounced back several steps upon colliding with the undead soldiers' shields. Shock flashed across their faces. How is this possible? These undead soldiers are stronger than us. Indeed, although the undead soldiers originally had less than 100 strength points, with the blessing from the level 5 Saint Ghost, their strength had reached 243 and their agility was a staggering 248. As the warriors were stunned, Xiaoyu dodged the fireballs and countered with a corpse explosion spell. The nearest undead soldier exploded instantly, engulfing the two unprepared warriors in flames. The explosion dealt 100 of the undead soldier's strength in fire damage, catching them off guard. The two warriors were blasted away, bodies charred, and fell unconscious on the spot. Meanwhile, the remaining undead archers fired a volley of three arrows each, throwing Yu Zhengyi and his mage into disarray. The mage, distracted, was hit in a vital spot by an arrow and was swiftly killed by a concentrated volley from the undead archers. The last remaining member of their team, Yu Zhengyi, looked at the dire state of his comrades and was filled with terror. His gaze swept over the bodies of his fallen companions, then lingered on his unconscious teammates, and finally fixed on the face of the sadistic necromancer, Xiaoyu. Without mercy, Xiaoyu uttered in a low voice, curse of agony. Instantly, a wave of curse energy struck Yu Zhengyi. The moment the curse took effect, Yu Zhengyi's body convulsed violently, his face contorted in fear of the infamous spell. At that moment, an arrow whistled through the air, piercing Yu Zhengyi's right arm with precision. Amplified by the curse, the pain was fourfold, and he let out the most harrowing scream of his life. Ah, it hurts, it hurts so much. His heart-wrenching cries echoed through the space. The excruciating pain stripped Yu Zhengyi of all dignity. 
He rolled on the ground, tears and snot streaming down his face, even losing control of his bladder. In that moment, he forgot everything around him. His mind was consumed only by endless agony. Zheng Wanru couldn't bear to watch the pitiful scene and turned her head away in pity. Meanwhile, Zhang Pingyi displayed a look of satisfaction, inwardly shouting, Brother, do you see this? This beast is finally getting what he deserves. Yi Hui, eager for more action, pulled out a small knife and asked, Brother Zhong, should I go up and give him a few more stabs? Zheng Wanru, troubled, said, maybe we shouldn't? Zhang Pingyi did not answer immediately. Instead, he looked at Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu silently turned his head away, indicating that he would not participate, but also would not stop Zhang Pingyi from avenging his family. He thought to himself, if it were him, he would likely be even more ruthless towards his enemy. The screams continued for a full two minutes before stopping. If they weren't in the challenge space, Zhong Pingyi could have tortured Yu Jingyi all day. Zhong Pingyi collected all the equipment and approached Xiaoyu. Brother Xiaoyu, this is their equipment, he said, handing over all the items. Xiaoyu first took the rings, jewelry, and Yu Jingyi's gear, then turned to the others and said, see if there's anything you need, take a few pieces. He didn't want to hoard all the benefits. The three hesitated briefly, their faces full of gratitude. Thank you, Brother Xiaoyu, they said in unison. Each of them selected a few pieces of equipment, and the rest they gave to Xiaoyu. Among them, Xiaoyu found some items that suited his needs. After equipping the Wilderness Robe of Excellence, the Lizard Skin Gloves of Excellence, and the Master Level Yellow Crystal Necklace, Xiaoyu's attributes saw a significant boost. As a human necromancer, his strength reached 515,500, agility 8, wisdom 8, with many unassigned potential and skill points. Xiaoyu spent a few minutes replenishing his summoned undead, thanks to the improved mental recovery speed from his new gear. The team then continued their journey, encountering groups of corrupted trance along the way. Although these enemies posed little threat to Xiaoyu, they indicated that they were nearing the final boss area. Suddenly, the sight of several corrupted trance corpses caught Xiaoyu's eye, and he frowned. Clearly, another team had gotten here first, signaling fiercer competition in the dungeon than he had anticipated. Just as the group was about to quicken their pace, a white figure sped towards them from a distance. It was a woman in a white dress, carrying another woman in a green dress who bore a striking resemblance to her. The woman in the green dress had a ghastly wound in her abdomen, with blood continuously flowing out, her face pale as paper, and her eyes losing focus. The woman in white, upon seeing Xia Yu and his team, rushed over, tears streaming down her face, and pleaded, Please, is there a priest among you? Save my sister. Zheng Wanru, the team's priest, immediately stepped forward and cast a healing spell without hesitation. However, the grievous wound refused to heal, and the life force of the woman in green had already faded completely. The woman in white, grasping at straws, urgently said, I am Qing Yu Ming from the Qing family. If you save my sister, I will give you a million oh, ten million. The Qing family? Xiaoyu raised an eyebrow. This was a family even more prestigious than the Yu family, known for producing powerful figures. Yi Hui whispered, she is indeed Qing Yuming. I've seen her on TV. The Qing family has 60th level mythic warriors and several 50th level legendary warriors. Despite the urgency, Zheng Wanru did not cast another healing spell. Qing Yuming, in her desperation, handed over numerous mental potions to Zheng Wanru. After a long hesitation, Zheng Wanru softly said, There's nothing more healing spells can do for your sister. Qing Yuming, unwilling to accept this harsh reality, continued to plead with everyone to save her sister even offering hero equipment, legendary gear, or skill books as rewards. However, everyone present understood that practitioners below level 10 could not cast resurrection spells. And even if they found a holy priest capable of resurrection, it would be impossible to reach them within 10 minutes. At that moment, Xiaoyu suddenly spoke, I can revive your sister, but the price is 10 million and a necromancer lord's summoning skill book. His words stunned everyone, including his teammates. Though Qin Yuming agreed to the terms, she became wary upon seeing the undead around Xiaoyu, fearing he might desecrate her sister's body. Xiaoyu explained that he had a way to truly revive her sister, not just raise her as an undead. With her permission, Xiaoyu commanded his ghostly saint to use the resurrection spell. The ghostly saint floated gently beside the body, chanting a holy hymn, as beams of light emanated from her, enveloping the woman in green. Everyone watched in amazement as Xiaoyu, bathed in holy light, appeared more like a holy priest than a necromancer. Soon, the chanting ended, and the woman in green suddenly coughed violently, miraculously coming back to life. Revived, it's revived, the crowd exclaimed in astonishment. Despite Xia Yu's earlier assurances, everyone had been skeptical that a necromancer could actually perform a resurrection spell. However, 
when the corpse truly came back to life, the undeniable reality forced them to believe in this incredible miracle. Yeah, yeah. Qing Yueming lunged towards her newly revived sister, hugging her tightly. This sudden action, however, caused Qing Yumun's wounds to reopen, and blood gushed out. Seeing this, others quickly pulled Qing Yueming away. Miss Qing, your sister still has injuries. Realizing her mistake, Qing Yueming immediately turned to Zeng Wanru. Miss, please use a healing spell on my sister. I'll transfer one million to you later, and these mental potions are all yours. She handed over dozens of mental potions to Zeng Wanru. Zeng Wanru didn't refuse, and promptly began casting a healing spell. Under her continuous treatment, Qing Yumun's gaping wounds gradually healed, and her complexion turned rosy. Seeing her sister recover, Qing Yuming bowed deeply to everyone in gratitude. Sister, am I really alive? Qing Yuemun slowly opened her eyes, incredulous at seeing her proud sister bowing to others. Qing Yuemun briefly explained what had happened. I died. Qing Yuemun was shocked. Experiencing death and revival was something most people could never imagine. The sister stood up and solemnly addressed Xiaoyu. Thank you, necromancer, for your resurrection spell. We will personally deliver your reward later. Xiaoyu nodded in acknowledgement. We still need to go kill the boss. You should find a safe place to hide. He calculated that if anything happened to the sisters again, his million and skill book would be at risk. You're going to challenge the boss? Qing Yuaming warned. That boss is terrifying. It killed two of our four fully equipped level 10 members instantly. I was the only one who escaped. Ihui proudly added. Don't worry. Xiaoyu's strength far exceeds our expectations. They had witnessed Xiaoyu effortlessly defeating for level 10 powerhouses. Qing Yuaming hesitated for a moment thinking that someone who could perform resurrection might indeed be capable of defeating the boss. Can we go with you? She suggested. We'll pay each of you one million. We don't need protection. We just want to see that thing die with our own eyes. A glint of hatred flashed in her eyes. Xiaoyu was taken aback by the generous offer, but agreed readily. With the Qing sisters leading the way, the group soon arrived at a sinister dark forest. The trees looked like human skin, covered in bulging tumors that occasionally burst, oozing disgusting slime. Be careful not to touch those liquids. They are poisonous, the Qing sisters warned, prompting everyone to heighten their vigilance. As they ventured deeper, an invisible pressure enveloped them. The system prompt read, affected by the demon lord's aura, all attributes reduced by three. Xiaoyu's expression became serious. Stay alert, we're getting close. He commanded all summoned undead to enter free attack mode to ensure they could respond immediately. The Qing sisters began sharing the costly information they had gathered. The demonized Tran attacks with vines, much stronger and more numerous than regular Trans. They are very afraid of fire. I'm a mage, so I'll support you with fire skills. Do you know Corpse Explosion? That also deals fire damage. Xiaoyu declined her offer. Just protect yourself and your sister. Leave the boss to me. He didn't want the Qing sisters to take any more risks, as his reward depended on their safety. As they were talking, several black red vines suddenly shot out from the darkness. The undead soldiers, already in combat mode, immediately reacted, leaping to intercept and slicing the vines into pieces. Blood-like liquid oozed from the severed parts. However, some undead soldiers were ensnared and dragged into the depths. Soon, Xiaoyu received notifications of their demise. Replenish the undead soldiers. Xiaoyu turned to Zeng Wanru. Lend me ten mental potions. I'll repay you later. He had run out of mental potions and anticipated needing a lot more for the upcoming battle. Here, take them. No need to repay. Zeng Wanru generously handed over twenty bottles. Xiaoyu took the potions, immediately drinking one to restore his mental energy, then charged towards the direction where the vines had retracted. Along the way, the black-red vines continued to harass them, but everyone was now highly vigilant, preventing any further casualties. Finally, they arrived at a bizarre village. In the center stood a towering, blood-red magic tree, its branches adorned with dried animal and human corpses, creating a ghastly scene. Countless black-red vines writhed around the tree like serpents. The trunk was even more horrifying, with numerous human faces contorted in agony, making one feel their sanity slipping away just by looking at it. Xiaoyu quickly assessed the boss's attributes. Demonized Treant Legendary Boss. Race Treant. Level 10. Strength 324. Agility 301. Wisdom 333. Talent. Gluttony can enhance its power by devouring life, stealing flesh to restore health upon hitting. All attributes increased by 20. Millennium Magic Tree, significantly increased physical defense, double defense against water attacks, vine quantity 200. Skills, 1. Gluttony Vines, 
manipulates vines to attack, dealing 150 physical damage based on strength, stealing flesh to restore health on hit. 2. Corruption. Manipulates dark energy to corrupt corpses, driving them to attack enemies. Seeing these attributes, Xiaoyu couldn't help but feel daunted. High recovery, high defense, and life-stealing attacks made this legendary boss far too formidable for an ordinary level 10 foreman team to handle. Xiaoyu felt the trouble, and the others drew a sharp breath. Facing the level 7 challenge space boss, a deep fear rose in their hearts. This demonized Treant not only dealt high damage but also stole energy, increased its defense, and could summon minions. Just as everyone was about to lose hope, their eyes turned to Xiaoyu, rekindling a glimmer of hope. Suddenly, the demonized Treant let out a deafening roar, and countless black and red vines shot towards the group like iron snakes. Xiaoyu made a quick decision and growled, Protect yourselves! He swung his staff and cast corpse explosion, detonating an undead soldier. The explosion turned a large swath of vines to ashes, but many still continued their relentless advance. Triple shot, Xiaoyu commanded. Twenty undead archers simultaneously drew their bows, releasing a rain of arrows towards the demonized trant. This forced it to retract some of its vines for defense, while the remaining ones were cut down by the undead soldiers. Xiaoyu continued his incantations, Curse of Agony, a red glow enveloped the demonized Treant, increasing the damage and pain it received. He then issued a full assault order. All undead soldiers charge. Undead archers keep shooting. Holy Ghost, cast Thunder Aura on everyone and be ready to protect me. In an instant, all weapons were covered in electric arcs. Each hit on the black and red vines triggered a burst of lightning, reducing the vines to ashes. Qin Yueming asked in astonishment, Sister, did you learn Thunder Aura? Isn't that a skill for mages above level 10? She shook her head and looked at Xiaoyu again, thinking to herself, This man, how does he know every skill? With the Thunder Aura enhancement, each of their attacks carried the equivalent of 400 points of the Holy Ghost intelligence and thunder damage, easily breaking the vine's offensive. Seeing its vine attacks fail, the demonized Treant let out another earth-shaking roar. The countless faces on its trunk twisted in pain, and the corpses hanging from it fell to the ground writhing as they crawled towards the group. These demonized zombies, while not particularly strong or skilled, were overwhelming in number, numbering in the hundreds. The hope that had just ignited in the group's hearts was doused, replaced by despair. Someone whispered, should we just run? However, they didn't notice the slight smile on Xiaoyu's face. Undead soldiers charge, Xiaoyu ordered. An undead soldier fearlessly plunged into the horde of demonized zombies, while the others corralled the zombies together. Qin Yueming and the others were puzzled, not understanding why Xiaoyu would send the undead soldiers to their deaths. Zhong Pingyi speculated, is he buying us time to escape? This thought seemed to enlighten the group. Zhong Pingyi resolutely said, Brother Xiaoyu, we won't abandon you and run. Yi Hui, despite his pale face, also declared, let's fight to the last moment together. It would be a shame not to see this monster die with our own eyes. Xiaoyu looked at them in confusion. What are you thinking? His plan was to use Corpse Explosion to take down the demonized Treant in one go. By chain exploding the hundreds of demonized zombies, the Treant would be hit by hundreds of Corpse Explosions simultaneously. Given its weakness to fire, Xiaoyu was confident he could defeat it in one strike. By now, hundreds of demonized zombies had been gathered beneath the demonized Treant. Sensing the danger, the Treant frantically swung its black and red vines, trying to kill the undead soldiers. Xiaoyu knew the critical moment was approaching. As a corrupted corpse lunged at an undead soldier, Xiaoyu squinted his eyes and a cold smile crept onto his lips. Enjoy the fireworks, he whispered. Corpse explosion. With a thunderous boom, the chosen undead soldier exploded instantly, the powerful shockwave obliterating a dozen nearby corrupted corpses. But this was only the beginning. The fragments of the shattered corpses ignited with eerie flames, triggering a chain reaction of more explosions. The deafening blasts echoed continuously. A corrupted treant let out a harrowing wail, frantically flailing its vines in a desperate attempt to protect itself, only to watch helplessly as its branches turned to ash upon contact with the explosion's radius. Zhong Pingyi and the others stared in shock at the astonishing chain of explosions, each blast causing them to involuntarily shudder. Boom, 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 the explosion seemed endless. Suddenly, a colossal explosion resonated. The massive body of the corrupted treant crashed to the ground, its lower trunk blown to pieces. Fragments of its flesh-like wood splintered in all directions, and a torrent of sap gushed from its severed stump, painting the ground a vivid crimson. A system notification chimed in. Legendary boss corrupted Treant defeated, 1,000 XP gained. You have leveled up to level 6. Your party has obtained the heroic Scarlet Staff. 
Selection complete. Boss defeated. Rewards granted. Your necromancy skill has advanced to heroic level. Choose your upgrade reward. Three options appeared before CIU. 1. Necromancy upgraded to legendary level. 2. Master level corrosive orb level 1. 3. Master level poison mist level 1. Without hesitation, CIU chose necromancy. The system immediately presented the reward. Legendary necromancy level 1. All attributes of your undead creatures increased by 20. Next, the system offered two more choices. Select Corrosive Orb. Reward. Reduces enemy physical resistance by an additional 20. Select Poison Mist. Reward. Enemies in the mist lose two physical and magical resistance per second. Up to 30. Xiaoyu felt a surge of joy. He hadn't expected to jump directly from heroic to legendary. He unhesitatingly chose Necromancy again. This skill not only enhanced his summoned undead, but also amplified the power of Corpse Explosion, making it a win-win. Congratulations on completing the challenge space mission. Beginning score calculation. The system's voice echoed in Xiaoyu's ears, followed by a string of exciting reward announcements. Your personal score? SSS. Your personal rewards? 1,000 experience points, a legendary class exclusive staff, and a legendary class exclusive skill book. Your level has increased to 78. A smile spread across Xiaoyu's face, and his teammates also beamed with joy. Although the trio of Zhong Pingyi didn't perform outstandingly in the battle, they still received substantial rewards as members of the same team. The two ladies from the Qing family were elated, having avenged their great enemy, even if their rewards were relatively modest. The system continued. Please choose your level-up reward. Undead Summoning Skill, Level 1. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu chose Undead Summoning. The system then provided an additional reward. Undead Summon Strength Potential 2. Next, the system offered another choice. Please choose your level-up reward. Master Level Weakening Curse 1. Decreases all enemy attributes by 7 for 60 seconds. Among Bone Spear, Poison Mist, and Weakening Curse, Xiaoyu decisively chose Weakening Curse. The system immediately granted an additional effect. Weakening Curse also reduces enemy movement speed by 20. Meanwhile, Xiaoyu's backpack now contained two staves and a book. One staff was the Scarlet Staff dropped by the boss, the other was the Skull of the Unfortunate, and the book was titled Bone Shield. Xiaoyu quickly checked the attributes of these items and immediately learned the Bone Shield skill. Ihui, Zhong Pingyi, and Zeng Wanru all expressed their gratitude to Xiaoyu, clearly satisfied with their gains. In contrast, the Qing sisters appeared somewhat downcast. Not only did they not receive any rewards, but they also lost two team members and nearly lost the younger sister. Qing Yueming, holding her sister Qing Yumun's hand, solemnly said to Xiaoyu, Xiaoyu, we will never forget your kindness today. Within three days, we will personally deliver the skill book to your home. With that, the sisters vanished from the challenge space. With the boss defeated, everyone needed to exit the challenge space within an hour, or everything would disappear. As soon as the Qing sisters emerged, they were surrounded by a crowd. When the crowd saw only two people coming out, they were shocked. Qing Yueming briefly explained the situation, mentioning that a necromancer had helped them complete the challenge, which astonished everyone even more. The Qing family immediately issued an order. Everyone, investigate all necromancers below level 10. At that moment, within the challenge space, the blood on the ground suddenly flowed back into the demonized Trent's body. A sinister voice echoed, Ah, oh, who killed my servant? He was my vessel for collecting blood. How do you plan to compensate me? Everyone was at a loss. Could there be a hidden boss after defeating the main boss? A dark figure emerged from the blood, cloaked in black, with large bat wings, a pale face, and two fangs protruding from its mouth a classic vampire. The system promptly provided information about this new boss. Viscount Porter. Mythical boss. Race, vampire. Level 103. Attributes. Strength 525. Agility 525. Intelligence 525. Traits. Vampire Viscount Noble of the Abyss. Attributes increased by 30. Gluttony can enhance its power by devouring life and steal flesh to restore its own life when attacking. All attributes increased by 20. Skills. Misform, blood magic, dark magic, corrosion ball, poison mist. In a low voice, Zhong Pingyi said to Xiaoyu, Xiaoyu, let's just leave the challenge space. We can exit directly now. Clearly, he didn't want to face such a powerful boss. Xiaoyu, however, was resolute. You all go first. I'm afraid I won't be able to take care of you later. His eyes were fixed on the vampire Viscount. Despite wanting to say more, Zeng Wan retugged at Zhong Pingyi and said, Let's go. Xiaoyu must have a plan. Ihui, not forgetting to add, said, Goodbye, Xiaoyu. Take me along next time. The three quickly chose to exit the challenge space, leaving only Xiaoyu and Viscount Porter. Viscount Porter, noticing the sudden disappearance of the three, was momentarily stunned but quickly turned his attention to Xiaoyu. 
you're not running? Everyone else fled. Do you intend to stay and accompany Viscount Porter? Since you're so considerate, I might as well turn you into a noble member of the Dark Vampire family. Ha ha ha. Xiaoyu calmly replied, No, I stay because someone asked me to kill you. Xiaoyu stared at the two options before him. Weighing the pros and cons, escaping the challenge space would grant him five agility potential, a seemingly safe and prudent choice. However, staying to defeat Viscount Porter would reward him with a necromancy space talent, a god-tier ability that allows the storage and instant summoning of undead. The rarity of this talent astonished Xiaoyu. Typically, talents are only gained at milestone levels such as 10 or 20, or through extremely rare opportunities. The necromancy space, in particular, is a dream come true for necromancers. This talent not only solves the problem of not being able to carry summoned undead, but also enables the instantaneous summoning of a large number of undead for surprise attacks. Xia Yes' eyes gleamed, envisioning scenarios where he could turn the tide of battle with this talent. As Xia Yu pondered, Viscount Porter's arrogant laughter echoed. Ha! Huh, you think you can kill me? Even with my power suppressed in this space, I am far beyond what an apprentice necromancer like you can handle. The Viscount narrowed his eyes, his tone dripping with temptation. Even though your undead seems special, human, it'll give you one more chance. Swear loyalty to me, and it'll make you a noble of the dark, granting you eternal life. Isn't that what you short-lived humans desire the most? A cold smile curved at Xiaoyi's lips. Eternal life? Bowing down for eternity isn't worth it. With his god-tier choice system, becoming a true god wasn't out of reach. Mythical beings could live for over a thousand years, and true gods might even be immortal. He had no need to become anyone's slave for such a promise. Then you must die. Viscount Porter's expression twisted as he lunged at Xiaoyu with a roar. Saintus, Xiaoyu said calmly. A pure white figure instantly appeared in front of him, blocking the Viscount's attack. The Viscount's face contorted in disbelief as he stared at the eerie ghost before him. How can an undead use holy light? What are you? Kill him, Xiaoyu's cold voice commanded, giving the Viscount no time to think. Yes, master. The Saintus responded, casting a grand healing spell. For ordinary people, it would restore life, but now it burned Viscount Porter's body like corrosive acid. Ah! Uh -huh. The Viscount screamed in agony as white smoke rose from his decaying skin. Damn it, Dark Veil! Viscount Porter tried to counter with dark magic, but the Saintist dispelled it effortlessly. Xiaoyu marveled at the Saintist's formidable combat instincts. She appeared elegant and noble, but in battle, she was ruthless and decisive, giving her enemy no chance to breathe. Her skills were executed seamlessly, almost instantaneously. Seeing that Viscount Porter was about to be killed, Xiaoyu had a thought. While the Saintist was indeed superior, he wanted to torment this arrogant foe a bit more. Pain curse! Xiaoyu seized the moment, casting a red glow over the Viscount, amplifying his agony fourfold. Ah! Damn it, damn it, damn it! Viscount Porter's screams grew even more horrific. If my power wasn't suppressed, you'd all be dead. Dead! The Saintist ignored his threats raining down grand healing spells. The Viscount's screams weakened and finally ceased as he dissolved into a puddle of blood. The system prompt sounded in CIS ears. You have slain the mythical boss Viscount Porter. 1680 experience points awarded. Your level has increased to level 9. You have obtained the mythical blood ring. After enduring a grueling battle, CIU's wisdom had grown significantly. A system notification chimed in his ear. Wisdom potential 2. Choice completed. Successfully defeated the boss, rewards issued. You have acquired the Necromancer's space talent. Immediately after, a selection screen appeared before CIU. Please choose your upgrade reward. Necromancy Mastery Skill Level 1. Legendary Corrosive Orb Level 1. Legendary Poison Mist Level 1. Without hesitation, CIU chose Necromancy Mastery. The system provided an additional reward. Necromancy Mastery grants an extra 50 movement speed to undead. Choosing Necromancy Mastery, I'll never pick Poison Mist or Corrosive Orb. Xiaoyu thought to himself. Suddenly, a flash of light appeared, and Xiaoyu was thrilled to discover he had obtained a mythical ring. He eagerly checked its attributes. Bloodline ring mythical level. Wisdom 70. Strength 40. Noble charm. You gain an additional 10 charm, and all creatures have a higher chance of developing a favorable impression of you. Xiaoyu raised an eyebrow. It even adds hidden charm attributes. Isn't this the perfect tool for attracting girls? He thought sarcastically. Although, with my looks, I don't really need it. He sighed. Too bad I can't use it until level 10. Softly, Xiaoyu said, System, exit challenge space. After a moment of dizziness, Xiaoyu found himself back in the pharaoh's tomb. Zhong Pingyi and the other two were overjoyed to see him return safely. I knew there was no way something would happen to Master Xiaoyu. One of them exclaimed excitedly. A female member asked with concern, Great, Xiaoyu, are you hurt anywhere? Let me check. 
Zhang Pingyi eagerly inquired, Brother Xiaoyu, it's so good to see you're okay. What happened to the monster? Xiaoyu calmly replied, I'm fine. The monster is dead. His brief answer sent shockwaves through the trio. They were well aware of the monster's terrifying attributes. How could Xiaoyu defeat it at his level? They looked at each other in awe and finally said in unison, As expected of you, Zhang Pingyi extended an invitation. Brother Xiaoyu, are you heading back? Want to go together? Xiaoyu shook his head. No, I plan to stay here a bit longer. He calculated that he was now level 9 with 880,900 experience points, just 20 points shy of leveling up. He decided to level up before heading back. All right then, see you later. The trio bid farewell and left. Xiaoyu, now alone, ventured deeper into the tomb, ready to seek new challenges. Not long after, Xiaoyu appeared at the outpost. By this time, he had reached level 10, but to advance further, he needed to complete a crucial step. Xiaoyu's attribute panel showed. Race, human. Class, necromancer. Level, 10. Strength, 10271000, potential 134. Agility, 92, potential 8. Wisdom, 341, potential 17. Skill points, 0. Talents, 1. Necromancer space. 2. Necromancer Lord New. Doubles the limit of summoned undead. Skills, legendary bone, shield level 3. Legendary Necromancy, level 12. Legendary Undead Mastery, level 4. Master Corpse Explosion, level 8. Master Weakening, Curse, level 1. Excellent Pain, Curse, level 1. Basic Bone Spear, level 3. At level 10, Xiaoyu chose to enhance his Necromancy skill by two levels and gained a second talent, Necromancer Lord, which doubled his Undead Summoning Limit to 120. He also equipped a level 10 ring, significantly boosting his Wisdom Attribute. Reaching level 10 in a single day was an achievement even Xiaoyu you found hard to believe. Typically, a four-person team could only kill a few monsters of the same or lower level in a day, and leveling up often took more than a month. But Xiaoyu not only challenged higher level monsters but also cleared a level 7 challenge space and its hidden boss, a performance rarely seen in a century. Looking at his backpack filled with equipment, Xiaoyu decided to sell the unnecessary items at the World Consortium, keeping only the gear suitable for Xiaobai. He used a teleportation array to return to Lingman City. The bustling cityscape was in stark contrast to the eerie and bloody challenge spaces he had been through, a reminder of why most adventurers couldn't stay in the wild for long periods. Riding a small bicycle, which now seemed unworthy of him, Xiaoyu headed straight for the World Consortium on the other side of the city. Along the way, he pondered whether he should get a better vehicle. After all, he had the 10 million reward and skill books from Miss Ching, and his equipment was worth millions. Plus, he already had a driver's license, so upgrading his ride seemed like a good idea. Inside the World Consortium building, a receptionist in a black silk skirt approached him. Xiaoyu straightforwardly stated his purpose. I'm here to sell equipment. The receptionist respectfully led him to a private room and quickly called for a professional appraiser. The appraiser, Qin Yueshue, had a voluptuous figure and carried herself with elegance. She also wore a black silk skirt, but hers was clearly more fashionable and high-end. Xiaoyu noticed her name and wondered if she was related to the Qing family, but chose not to ask. He laid out 20 to 30 pieces of equipment on the table, and Qing Yueshue's eyes flashed with surprise before she began her professional assessment. Half an hour later, Qing Yueshue quoted a total price, 6.88 million. The number shocked Xiaoyu, but he quickly agreed. Qing Yueshue then processed a gold card for him, offering a two discount on future purchases. While waiting for the card, Xiaoyu enjoyed some refreshments and took a moment to relax. After completing the transaction, Xiaoyu initially thought of buying some items, but ultimately decided to go home and rest, planning to return tomorrow. He wanted to bring Xiao by along and surprise her. Riding his small bicycle, he quickly left the building. Unexpectedly, Qin Yueshue ran out of the building, asking about Xiaoyu's destination. She had just received a family message instructing her to keep an eye out for a young man, who turned out to be Xiaoyu. Learning he had already left, Qin Yueshue felt a bit disappointed, but decided to visit him tomorrow with her niece to express the Qin family's gratitude. When Xiaoyu arrived home, he saw Bai Binbin and his wife Tang Chui waiting at the door. Seeing Xiaoyu, they both sighed in relief. Xiaoyu felt a pang in his heart and softly said, I'm back. Bai Binbin replied, Good to have you back. We're waiting for you to eat. Xiaoyu pushed open the door to his house and immediately saw Bai Xiaoxiao lounging on the sofa watching TV. He walked over and sat down next to her, asking, Leveled ups? Bai Xiaoxiao replied grumpily, Not that fast. We only killed a few goblins. Two teammates couldn't handle it and came back. Hearing this, Xiaoyu decided not to reveal his own level to avoid discouraging Xiaobai. After all, leveling up 10 times in a day was absurd, while Xiaobai hadn't even gained 50 experience points. 
Bai Xiaoxiao turned to him and asked, Did you level up? Xiaoyu avoided her gaze and mumbled a bit. Bai Xiaoxiao frowned and said, A bit? Who says a bit when leveling up? A sense of unease crept into her heart. How many levels had this guy really gained? At that moment, Aunt Tang's voice interrupted their conversation. All right, come eat. Relieved, Xiaoyu quickly stood up and headed to the dining room. Dinner time. I'm starving. Bai Xiaoxiao chased after him. Wait, how many levels did you gain? But Xiaoyu just kept repeating, dinner, dinner, as he hurried to the table. After dinner, the four of them sat together. Aunt Tang directly asked, Xiaoyu, how many levels did you gain? In this world, everyone knew the importance of levels. Facing the elder's question, Xiaoyu realized that the Qing family would find out eventually. So he told the truth. I'm at level 10 now. Level 10. Bai Xiaoxiao stood up abruptly, shouting in disbelief. How is that possible? 10 levels in one day. Uncle Bai and Aunt Tang were equally shocked. They knew very well what gaining 10 levels in one day meant. Really? Uncle Bai asked worriedly. Xiaoyu recounted his day's experiences in detail, though he omitted the part about the system enhancing his abilities. Uncle Bai and Aunt Tang listened, frowning deeply. That damned you family again. Uncle Bai cursed under his breath. Bai Xiaoxiao listened to Xiaoyu's story, a glint of fear in her eyes. Killing eight people on the first day of leveling? Passing a challenge space? Could a human really do that? Xiaoyu took some equipment out of his backpack and placed it on the table, saying to Bai Xiaoxiao, Xiao Bai, I think this gear suits you. You should take it. Looking at the equipment ranging from excellent to master level, Bai Xiaoxiao was internally shocked but feigned indifference. Is this your apology for not taking me along? Uncle Bai and Aunt Tang silently watched the scene unfold. To them, Xiaoyu was already part of the family, and siblings giving each other valuable items was perfectly normal. All right, Uncle Bai said, you both had a long first day of leveling. Rest early. Tomorrow, Xiaoyu. Take Xiao Xiao to the World Consortium to broaden her horizons and buy yourself a level 10 sublimation pearl. Got it, Xiaoyu responded. As they walked up the stairs, Bai Xiao Xiao suddenly stopped and turned to Xiaoyu, saying, Brother, don't get too cocky. I'll catch up to you soon. With that, she quickly ran back to her room. Xiaoyu walked to Bai Xiao Xiao's door, knocked gently, and said, No rush, safety first. Then he went to his own room to rest. The next morning, Xiaoyu rode his bike out, while Bai Xiao Xiao was driven by a chauffeur. The World Consortium building operated 247, bustling with people even early in the morning. As levels increased, professionals often needed less rest. High-level individuals sometimes didn't need to rest for a week. Xiaoyu's goal was clear sublimation pearls. Only by using a sublimation pearl to become a formal professional could he break through the level 10 cap. These pearls dropped from level 10 boss monsters, but Xiaoyu had been unlucky, not getting one despite defeating both a level 10 legendary boss and a level 10 mythic boss. I'd like to buy a formal level sublimation pearl, Xiaoyu told the receptionist. The receptionist, dressed in a short skirt and black stockings, looked surprised at his young face. She thought, so young and already buying a sublimation pearl? But she maintained her professional smile. Sure, the sublimation pearls are on the third floor. Please follow me, sir and miss. The elevator took them to the third floor, where counters displayed various level 10 equipment. Guided by the receptionist, Xiaoyu and Bai Xiaoxiao quickly arrived at a showcase holding three fist-sized blue pearls. Formal level sublimation pearl, level 10 effect, used to break through to formal level, can reach up to level 20. Limited to level 10 use, Xiaoyu read the description and then saw the price. One million. So expensive. Bai Xiaoxiao exclaimed despite being mentally prepared. After all, every level 10 professional needed one, but not everyone could get one to drop. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu pulled out a gold card. I'll take it. A gold card? Bai Xiaoxiao was shocked. How do you have a World Consortium gold card? Doesn't it require at least 10 million in deposits to apply? Xiaoyu was puzzled. 10 million? I sold items for 6.88 million yesterday, and the appraiser said I could apply, so I did. Bai Xiaoxiao's eyes filled with suspicion. Are you involved with that appraiser? She knew the significance of a gold card 9.8 off all World Consortium products. Just this 1 million purchase would save 20,000 a benefit not everyone could easily obtain. Of course not. I only met her once. Xiaoyu quickly denied it. At that moment, a soft, charming voice came from behind Xiaoyu, Mr. Xia. Here's your sublimation pearl and gold card. Please take them. Xiaoyu turned and saw the appraiser from yesterday, Qing Yueshua. Qing Yueshua stepped closer, almost pressing against Xiaoyu, and bowed. Mr. Xia, it's been too long. By the way, thank you for saving my nieces, Yuan Ming and Yuan Moon, in the challenge space. This scene made by Xiao Xiao raise an eyebrow. Xiaoyu took a step back and said calmly, That was just a paid job, not a rescue. Bai Xiao Xiao immediately chimed in. Exactly, it was purely a business transaction. Without waiting for Xiaoyu's response, she pulled him away, 
All right, we need to buy other things. Let's go. Ching Yue Shua followed with a smile. All your purchases today will be 20 off. Let me guide you. 20 off. Bai Xiao Xiao stopped in her tracks. Really? Really? Ching Yue Shua confirmed. Bai Xiao Xiao quickly said, I want a sublimation pearl too. Surprised by the discount. Xiao Yu thought about needing higher level pearls soon and asked, How much for a master level sublimation pearls? Ching Yue Shua replied, Master level sublimation pearl. 30 million, 24 million with a discount. After a shopping spree, Xiao Yu finally got his hands on two official grade sublimation gems. He handed one to buy Xiao Xiao and kept the other for himself. In addition, he upgraded his gear with a new staff, the staff of the undying. This master grade staff, exclusive to necromancers, increases intelligence by 10 points and strength by 36 points. It also boosts all necromancy skills by 5 levels and enhances the movement speed of undead units by 10. Xiao Yu admired his new equipment setup. His main hand weapon was the skull of the unfortunate, and his offhand was the newly purchased staff of the undying. The attributes of this combination were quite impressive, and the price was reasonable originally 1.7 million, but he got it for 1.36 million after a discount. Xiao Yu thought to himself that he wouldn't have bought it without the 20 discount. He glanced at Qin Yue Xue, who was smiling beside him, and wondered if this was all part of her plan. In the end, Xiao Yu's shopping list was as follows. Two sublimation gems for 1.6 million, the staff for 1.36 million, and a level 3 master jewelry piece for Bai Xiao Xiao for 70,000, totaling 3 million. Noticing that both of them were getting tired, Qin Yue Xue suggested, Would you like to rest in a private room for a while? Mr. Xia, my niece has also teleported over and will be bringing the skill book you need. They should arrive shortly. Xiao Yu nodded in agreement and took Bai Xiao Xiao to the private room, where they enjoyed some tea and snacks. Soon, there were three knocks on the door, followed by Qin Yu Ming's voice. Mr. Xia, it's Yu Ming. May I come in? Upon receiving Xia Yu's permission, two beautiful women in elegant blue and white dresses entered the room. They looked even more radiant than they did in the challenge space, clearly having taken the time to dress up. Bai Xiao Xiao raised an eyebrow at the sight. Qin Yu Ming smiled and said, Nice to see you again, Mr. Xia. Xia Yu corrected her. No need to call me Mr. Xia. It makes me feel old. Just call me Xia Yu. He thought to himself that Qin Yu Ming might actually be older than him, although in this life, he was just an 18 year old young man. Men are forever 18. Qin Yu Moon, who was more lively and adorable than her sister, peeked out and waved at Xia Yu. Hey, Xia Yu, big bro. It seems she had recovered from the trauma of dying and coming back to life. Xiao Yu invited them to sit, and Qin Yu Ming immediately handed him a box. This is the hero level undead lord skill book. Please accept it. 11 million has already been transferred to your gold card. Hero level? Then I won't be polite, Xiao Yu said as he accepted the skill book. After the transaction, a brief silence fell over the room. Finally, Qin Yu Ming broke the stillness. Xiao Yu, my grandfather heard about your performance in the challenge space and wants to meet this genius. Bai Xiao Xiao suddenly looked at Xiao Yu and demanded, Meeting the family? What exactly did you do yesterday? Xiao Yu patted her head soothingly and then replied to Qin Yu Ming, I'm currently preparing for the professional entrance exams, so I don't want to be running around for now. I need to focus on improving my strength. Qin Yu Ming nodded understandingly. All right, I'll let my grandfather know. By the way, if you're considering universities, you might want to think about Qianlong University. Although it's ranked second in the nation, it won't disappoint you. She stood up, ready to leave. I will definitely catch up to you. Qin Yu Moon, seeing her sister about to leave, waved goodbye to Xia Yu and handed him a card. This is our contact information. Let's add each other as friends later. Xia Yu had no reason to refuse friend requests from two beauties. After they left, Bai Xiao Xiao asked with a hint of jealousy, What exactly is your relationship with them? Xia Yu nonchalantly replied, Not even friends, really. To someone from a big family, I'm just a lifesaver worth a million and a hero level undead lord skill book. The rest is about my other values, like being strong enough to catch their attention. If you really consider them friends, you might end up counting money for them after being sold out. Really? Bai Xiao Xiao was half convinced. Really? Xiao Yu confirmed. Oof, you better be honest. Let's go home, Bai Xiao Xiao said, somewhat appeased. As they left the private room, they found Qin Yu Xue standing at the door. She approached Xiao Yu and handed him a white jade box. Mr. Xia, you saved the lives of my two precious nieces. As their aunt, I want to thank you. Please accept this. Xia Yu didn't take it immediately and explained. My dealings with Qin Yu Ming and Qin Yu Moon were purely monetary transactions. There was no life saving grace involved. Qin Yu Xue insisted, pushing the jade box into Xia Yu's hands. The fact is, you did save them. If you don't accept this, I won't know how to thank you. Do I have to offer myself in gratitude? Feeling the killing intent from Bai Xiao Xiao behind him, Xia Yu quickly said, All right, I'll accept it. Qin Yu Xue nodded in satisfaction. Good. You're always welcome at the World Consortium. If you need anything, feel free to contact me. Here's my business card. 
Leaving the World Consortium building, Xiaoyu looked at Bai Xiao Xiao, who was pouting. He tried to comfort her. Don't worry about it, okay? I really have nothing to do with them. It's just social etiquette. Yeah, right, social etiquette that involves offering oneself in gratitude. Bai Xiao Xiao turned her face away, clearly still upset. Xiaoyu sighed. You know she was just joking. Bai Xiao Xiao still wasn't buying it. The two of them returned home, and Xiaoyu eagerly opened the jade box given to him by Qin Yueshua. Inside lay a pristine, master-level sublimation gem, emitting a faint glow. Xiaoyu gasped. This was a treasure worth 30 million. Wow. Qin Yueshua must be loaded, giving away 30 million just like that. Xiaoyu muttered to himself. This is just as valuable as what Qin Yueming gave me. Despite obtaining such a precious gem, Xiaoyu knew well that he could currently only use a formal-level sublimation gem. Carefully, he put away the master-level gem and began preparing for the advancement ceremony. The three members of the Bai family sat around Xiaoyu, their expressions a mix of nervousness and anticipation. Uncle Bai couldn't help but ask, Xiaoyu, can you really advance to become a formal professional? Xiaoyu smiled confidently. Of course. He took out the sublimation gem and, following the tutorial, began channeling his mental energy into it, guiding the mysterious power within into his body. In an instant, a dense aura of death emanated from Xiaoyu, making him appear like the Grim Reaper incarnate. The Bai family quickly backed away in fear. However, soon all the deathly aura was absorbed back into Xiaoyu, and the ceremony was complete. A system notification sounded in Xiaoyu's mind, sublimation complete. Your attribute potential has been enhanced. Your magic pet, the Saint Ghost, has been elevated to formal level and has learned Hammer of Retribution, Sword of Judgment, and Aura of Retribution, gaining the new talent War Goddess. Xiaoyu eagerly checked his attribute panel. Xiaoyu, Race, Human, Class, Necromancer, Level, 10271000, Strength, 307 Potential, 24, Agility, 252 Potential, 24, Wisdom, 715 Potential, 51. Seeing these astonishing attribute increases, Xiaoyu couldn't help but marvel at the power of sublimation. Each stage presented a threefold difference, making it nearly impossible to defeat higher level monsters with the vast base attribute gaps. However, when Xiaoyu saw the Saint Ghost attributes, he was utterly stunned. Saint Ghost, main god level, growth potential, undead, level 10, strength 2220 potential, 222, agility 2220 potential. 222. Wisdom. 2970 potential. 297. Talent. Inspirer. War Goddess. Upon entering battle, increases all attributes by 5 per second, up to a maximum of 30, and all attacks gain 50 of all attributes as holy light damage. Skills. Grand Healing. Resurrection. Dispel. Thunder Aura. Hammer of Retribution. Holy Light forms a hammer to strike the enemy, dealing 500 wisdom and 500 strength as holy light damage. Sword of Judgment. Holy Light forms a Sword of Judgment to attack the enemy, dealing 800 Wisdom as Holy Light damage, with an additional 500 All Attributes damage against dark and undead enemies. Aura of Retribution. All nearby allies gain 100 Strength as Fire damage. Staring at this array of powerful attributes and skills, Xiaoyu muttered, Are you planning to switch to a Retribution Paladin? No longer a Saint? Although Uncle Bai and Aunt Tang were surprised by Xiaoyu's rapid level up, they weren't exactly new to such sights. The next day, when Xiaoyu wanted to take Bai Xiao Xiao along to level up, she refused. No need, Bai Xiao Xiao shook her head. You're already at level 10, and I'm just at level 1. In places where you can gain experience, I won't get any. And in places where I can gain experience, you won't. It's pointless, but don't slack off. I'll catch up to you soon enough. Understanding her reasoning, Xiaoyu nodded. He mounted his bicycle and headed back to the teleportation center. Standing on the teleportation platform, Xiaoyu thought to himself, with my current attributes, I'm ready to take on level 15 monsters. I can enjoy the full experience bonus from defeating higher level creatures. The Pharaoh's Tomb is out of the question because the second floor isn't suitable for a necromancer to level up bad terrain and annoying monsters. At that moment, the system prompt sounded. Please make a selection. Go to the Gloomy Forest level 1 monster nest to level up. Reward. 1 strength attribute potential. Go to the Twilight Ruins level 2 monster nest to level up. Reward. A random common skill. Go to the Underground Sewers Level 15 Monster Nest to level up. Reward. Heroic Grade Ring 1. Go to the Dawn Forest Level 16 Monster Nest to level up. Reward. 6 Wisdom Attribute Potential. Xiaoyu focused on the Underground Sewers and Dawn Forest options. He weighed his choices carefully. The Underground Sewers were just the right level, but the cramped terrain was unfavorable for summoning large groups of undead. The monsters mainly had poison attacks, which were tricky to handle. 
However, for a mage with a firewall skill, it was an excellent leveling spot since one firewall could block all monsters, and most of them were weak to fire. On the other hand, Dawn Forest had typical forest terrain with various orcs as monsters. Orcs primarily used physical attacks, had high strength and health, and were difficult to handle once they got close. Some orc shamans could cast debuffs on players and buff other orcs. Additionally, orcs had basic intelligence and had set simple traps throughout the forest. Newbies might find themselves tormented by these traps before even encountering an orc. Xiaoyu scratched his head, deep in thought. Both monster nests were far less comfortable than the first floor of the pharaoh's tomb. As he hesitated, a voice suddenly came from behind. Looking for a place to level up, brother? Xiaoyu turned around to see a young man dressed as a warrior, with scars on his face and body indicating he was a seasoned fighter. Yes, Xiaoyu admitted. After all, standing here for so long, what else could he be doing but looking for a leveling spot? The young man smiled and recommended, I suggest Dawn Forest. Rumor has it that treasure box monsters have appeared there recently, and many players are searching for them. If you're strong enough, Dawn Forest is a great choice right now. Xiaoyu wasn't particularly interested in treasure box monsters, but since he needed to level up, it wouldn't hurt to try his luck. Really? Then I'll go to Dawn Forest. Maybe I'll get lucky. Please teleport me to Dawn Forest. The teleportation attendant was the same woman from yesterday. She was about to say, you're only level one but then saw that Xiaoyu was now level 10. She looked up at Xiaoyu in surprise, then back at her computer screen, incredulously asking, you leveled up 10 levels in one day. Can I teleport you? Yes, yes, yes. She nodded repeatedly, quickly completing the teleportation for Xiaoyu. Meanwhile, the young man who had recommended Dawn Forest to Xiaoyu smiled slightly and turned to another well-equipped rich kid. Looking for a place to level up, brother? I have a great spot for you. Recently, Dawn Forest, as soon as Xiaoyu landed, he took a deep breath. Ah, the air here is so sweet. Compared to the pharaoh's tomb, this place was much more pleasant. The outpost at Dawn Forest was significantly larger than the one at the pharaoh's tomb. It had shops from global corporations and smaller trade groups selling a limited range of equipment and various potions, and they also bought equipment. Some players even set up stalls on the ground to sell their gear or potions. Seeing the bustling outpost, Xiaoyu recalled the young man's mention of treasure box monsters. These creatures were extremely unique. Although their combat ability was average, they dropped very valuable items. They could drop rare gems, heroic, or even legendary equipment. Most importantly, they always dropped a treasure map. Using the treasure map would teleport the player to a challenge space filled with monsters and elite creatures where they could dig for treasure. The most precious treasures were artifacts. A team of players from America had once unearthed an artifact, making treasure box monsters highly sought after. Never mind, I'll leave it to fate. Let's focus on leveling up first. Xiaoyu shook his head and walked out of the outpost. He had barely taken a few steps when a group of 10 or so people started following him. Is it that kid? Yeah, I saw him going in and out of the global corporation, and someone from the corporation even gave him a gold card. A gold card? He can't be more than a newbie who just changed his class. Damn rich kid. Should we do it? Do it. As he walked into the forest, Xiaoyu's brow furrowed slightly. With his strong mental powers, he could sense the eyes on him. He quietly summoned the Holy Maiden Ghost who confirmed that 13 people were indeed following him. Criminals who hunt players? Xiaoyu raised an eyebrow. Some players found that robbing others was faster than killing monsters for loot and chose a life of crime. However, under the Holy Maiden Ghost's perception, Xiaoyu realized these people weren't very strong, at least not stronger than the Holy Maiden Ghost. This brought a smile to his face. If you want to rob me, don't blame me for turning the tables, Xiaoyu thought. Indeed, robbing other players was faster than hunting monsters. The Yu family had already given him quite a bit. To Xiaoyu, this was just extra income, and he didn't feel guilty he was even doing a public service. Pretending to be cautious, Xiaoyu summoned a dozen undead soldiers to clear the path ahead instead of summoning them directly from the undead space. As he ventured deeper into the forest, two hulking green-skinned orc soldiers appeared. System prompt, orc soldier common. Strength, 480. Agility, 288. Wisdom, 258. Talent, mighty strength, strength 50. Easier to overpower enemies with lower strength. Skill. Smash full force attack, dealing 120 physical damage. Undead soldiers attack. Xiaoyu commanded loudly, while secretly ordering. Hold back with all your might. As a legendary undead summon, the undead soldiers now possess attributes far surpassing those of ordinary orc soldiers. Xiaoyu worried that his opponents might not dare to make a move, which would thwart his plans. The system prompted him to make a choice. Flee immediately ignoring the criminal squad and escaping directly, which would reward him with five agility potential, or act as the arbiter of justice, annihilate the criminal squad, and be rewarded with the location of a treasure chest monster. 
Xiaoyu was surprised at the mention of the treasure chest monster, as the system often mentioned it without any follow-up. But since the system said it existed, it must be true. He chose to act as the arbiter of justice, thinking it would be nice to get the location and then loot the treasure chest monster. Although the potential boost was also good, agility potential wasn't very significant for a necromancer. Xiaoyu commanded the undead soldiers to engage the orc soldiers. The orc soldiers struck like the wind, landing several blows on the undead soldiers, who retaliated sluggishly. In the back-and-forth skirmish, ten undead soldiers fell for every two orc soldiers killed. The system notified, killed ordinary orc soldier, level 16 experience 700. Killed ordinary orc soldier, level 16 experience 700. Your level has increased to 11. Xiaoyu sighed inwardly, noting that the experience gained from defeating higher-level monsters was substantial. It would take killing 20 monsters of the same level to gain one level. The system then prompted him to choose an upgrade reward. Heroic Undead Lord Skill Level 1, Heroic Corrosion Orb Level 1, or Heroic Ghost Legion Level 1. After weighing the pros and cons, Xiaoyu chose the Undead Lord. The system rewarded him with ordinary undead subordinates equal to his level times 100. This meant he would have 1,100 subordinates at level 11, outnumbering what he could summon as a necromancer, though the quality would differ. At that moment, the criminal squad surrounded Xiaoyu. A bald, muscular man sneered. Kid, if you want to live, hand over all your gear and give us your family's contact number. Xiaoyu realized this group wasn't just criminals, but experienced kidnappers. They had blocked all escape routes, and their faces were filled with brutality and malice. Most people would be terrified and comply, but Xiaoyu knew that such people rarely released hostages even after getting the ransom. After the Holy Maiden ghost confirmed that these were all the enemies, Xiaoyu calmly said, Since you're all here, none of you are leaving. As soon as he finished speaking, he summoned hundreds of legendary undead soldiers and undead archers. The bald man recognized Xiaoyu's level 10 talent as undead space and immediately ordered an attack. He led the charge against an undead soldier, thinking his strength as a level 20 warrior would easily defeat an ordinary undead. However, when his hammer struck the undead soldier's shield, the shield remained intact and the undead soldier was unmoved. This was due to the undead soldier's level 10 talent, chance block, which had a 30 chance to completely block an enemy's attack. More astonishingly, with the blessing of the level 11 Holy Maiden Ghost, the level 11 undead soldiers had strength reaching 2,332 and agility reaching 2,343, far surpassing a fully equipped level 20 warrior. Before the bald man could react, the undead soldier's broken longsword flashed and severed his head. The other criminals were also swiftly taken down by the undead archers or soldiers. The system notified that the task was complete, rewards had been issued, and prompted Xiaoyu to check the map. A translucent screen appeared, marking the location of the treasure chest monster not far away. Before heading to the treasure chest monster, Xiaoyu collected the criminal's gear. Most were excellent or ordinary grade, but the bald man's hammer and a ring were master grade. Blood Rift Master Grade, level 18. Strength 210, armor-piercing attacks are more likely to break the opponent's defense. Scholar's Long Ring Master Grade, level 11, Wisdom 118, Agility 15, Mental Recovery Speed 15. Xiaoyu estimated that the loot was worth at least 3 million. He put on the ring, a satisfied smile appearing on his face. Next up, the treasure chest monster, here I come, he said excitedly. Boss, there really is a treasure chest monster. One of his followers exclaimed in awe. The treasure chest monster was located in a deeper area, so Xiaoyu summoned the undead lord before proceeding further. As a massive magic circle appeared, a tall figure gradually emerged at its Sentara knight clad in armor, wielding a two-handed warhammer. This undead lord was named Buck Kalin the Hero, with the following attributes. Strength, 2618 potential, 11138100. Agility, 2552 potential, 132100. Wisdom, 1320 potential, 120. Talent, Demigod Physique, reduces damage taken by 20, gains strength and agility equal to level 100. Skills, 1. Earth Shattering Strike, slams the ground with a war hammer, dealing 350 physical damage based on strength to the area in front. 2. Vengeance, increases the damage of the next use of this skill when taking damage, dealing 350 strength, 100 of the damage taken as physical damage. 3. Heavy Blow, attacks the enemy with full force, dealing 350 strength as physical damage, with a small chance to knock the enemy back. Xiaoyu nodded in satisfaction. This battle-hardened berserker-type lord was exactly what he needed. What delighted him even more was that Buck's undead subordinates were also heavy-armored berserkers. A smile tugged at his lips as he realized his combat power had significantly increased. With Buck's synergy with the Saintist Ghost's encourager talent, 
He could even take on master-level professionals. As his level increased, he might even be able to crush ordinary master-level professionals. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu allocated skill points to undead summoning, raising it to level 13. This meant he could now summon 130 legendary undead soldiers. Treasure chest monster, here I come. Xiaoyu eagerly glanced at the map and sped toward the location of the treasure chest monster. He knew that if someone else got there first, all his preparations would be in vain. However, things didn't go as smoothly as planned. A subordinate came running in a panic. Boss, what should we do? That damn treasure chest monster has hidden in the orc camp. There are hundreds of orcs inside, including elite orcs and an orc lord. Their boss was a middle-aged man exuding a menacing aura, his face scarred. Pei Chu frowned as he looked at the treasure chest monster hiding in the orc camp, gritting his teeth in thought. Although he was on par with the orc lord in strength, he only had 11 subordinates, all formal level professionals. Facing hundreds of orcs and their formidable elite warriors, they stood no chance. He knew that if they attacked forcefully, the elite orcs would first kill his subordinates and then surround him, leading to certain death. Damn it, Pei Chu cursed. I just wanted to trick those rich kids into being my cash cows. But I didn't expect a treasure chest monster to actually appear. With so many people in the Dawn Forest, the treasure chest monster will definitely be discovered by others if we delay any longer. If a hero level powerhouse shows up, we won't stand a chance. Suddenly, Pei Chu had an idea. I can lure the orcs to those rich kids, then go back and kill the treasure chest monster. His eyes lit up as he called a subordinate over, spread the word about the treasure chest monster's location, but give a slightly incorrect position. Then I'll arrange for someone to lure the orcs over there. Boss, you're brilliant. I'll go right away. The subordinate immediately took off to carry out the orders. Just then, another sinister-looking man approached Pei Chu and whispered, Boss, we've spotted a young necromancer heading our way. He's wearing Old Three's ring, and Old Three hasn't contacted us for ten minutes. Something must have happened. His eyes flashed with a murderous glint. Pei Chu sneered. Old Three is always screwing things up. But anyone who dares to mess with my blood flame gang won't get away with it. What do you all say? Kill him. Take him down. The members of the blood flame gang raised their weapons and shouted in unison. All right, before we deal with the treasure chest monster, let's have some fun with that kid. Move out. Pei Chu waved his hand, leading his men towards Xiaoyu. Pei Chu's confidence stemmed from his status as a level 21 master professional. He believed it was unlikely to encounter other master professionals in a level 16 monster lair. Even if his third brother was foolish, he wouldn't have attacked a master professional. Pei Chu assumed the opponent was at most a level 20 formal professional, who used the advantage of the hidden necromancer profession to kill his third brother. However, the difference in attributes between formal and master professionals was threefold, making it impossible to defeat a master professional. Even if the opponent was a necromancer, a relatively weak hidden profession, or even a high-level hidden profession like the Dragon Knight of the Zheng family genius, they couldn't compete with him at the formal level. What Pei Chu didn't know was that he was about to face a far stronger opponent than he imagined. Xiaoyu keenly sensed someone approaching. Raising an eyebrow, he thought that since he was close to the treasure chest monster, those appearing here likely had also discovered it. Moreover, the twenty-odd people sneaking toward him clearly had ill intentions. Could they be criminals? Xiaoyu pondered. Why are there so many criminals here? He knew that criminals were usually wanted by the state and often roamed the wilderness. In areas with state outposts, criminals wouldn't dare to show their faces easily. Once their identities were exposed, strong individuals would teleport over to hunt them for the bounty. The head of the bald man was still in Xiaoyu's backpack. He planned to check if there was a bounty on him when he returned to town. At that moment, the saintist ghost warned him. Among them, there is someone whose strength is comparable to yours, likely a master-level professional. Xiaoyu's heart skipped a beat. The saintist ghost's highest attribute had reached 3,100, and if the opponent's strength was similar, they were at least an ordinary master-level professional. A level 20 master professional's main attribute was around 3,100. For a level 20 master professional to appear in a level 16 monster lair with 20-odd companions, it was almost certainly criminals. Xiaoyu's expression turned serious as he prepared for battle. He was ready to summon Buck and a host of undead, and he instructed Buck to prepare to summon his 1,100 undead subordinates. With a numbers advantage, how could we lose? Xiaoyu calculated, especially since the Sainus Ghost now has dual talents. And her war goddess talent is even beyond mythical warriors, plus her high damage skills. Despite this, Xiaoyu didn't slow down, but instead quickened his pace slightly. Soon, with the Sainus Ghost reminder, he realized he was already surrounded. Hiding for so long, aren't you coming out? Xiaoyu said calmly, his tone laced with provocation. Oh, you've noticed us? Did you learn the Ghost Legion skill? Pei Chu sneered as he emerged, followed by twenty-odd people who surrounded Xiaoyu. Since I've been discovered, there's no need to hide, Pei Chu said coldly. 
Kid, whose ring are you wearing? The sinister man beside him demanded harshly. Unfazed, Xiao Yu took out the bald man's head. Whose? Probably a criminal's. I was planning to take his head back for the bounty. Old three. The sinister man instantly flew into a rage, clearly having a close relationship with old three. Kid, you're courting death. The sinister man snarled through gritted teeth, his eyes filled with murderous intent as he glared at Xiao Yu. Xiao Yu found himself surrounded by a group of people. He let out a light chuckle, his eyes gleaming with contempt. Pei Chu's face twisted with rage, but a hint of caution crept into his heart. This young man showed no fear could he have something up his sleeve? Pei Chu glanced around, confirming that there was no one else within a few kilometers. His expression darkened as he stared at Xia Yu, calculating his next move. Boss, avenge third brother. Get this punk. Let's do it. The surrounding lackeys were fired up. Pei Chu knew that if he didn't torture this kid to death today, he would lose his authority. Brothers, charge together. Capture him alive and show him the might of the Blood Flame Gang. With that command, Pei Chu charged at Xia Yu. Xia Yu raised an eyebrow. Blood Flame Gang? That notorious group? He quickly assessed the situation, realizing he was up against a formidable foe. Buck! Xia Yu called out, summoning a creature as massive as a tank. As soon as Buck appeared, he swung his war hammer at Pei Chu. Pei Chu's face paled, and he quickly used a warrior skill to dodge. However, the moment Buck's war hammer hit the ground, a shockwave erupted, instantly turning the lackeys behind Pei Chu into a bloody mist. A level 20 master, Pei Chu's face turned ashen. His lackeys were level 18 warriors, yet they were annihilated in one blow. Damn it, how did third brother get involved with a master necromancer? Pei Chu cursed internally. Everyone, give it your all. In an instant, various spells rained down on Xia Yu. Yet, Xia Yu effortlessly summoned dozens of undead soldiers, who raised their shields and blocked all the attacks. Then, he summoned undead archers, whose arrows fell like a storm, taking down a dozen criminals in seconds. Pei Chu finally realized the gravity of the situation. Retreat! He was the first to flee, and the others quickly scattered in panic. Using his powerful abilities, Pei Chu managed to put some distance between himself and the battlefield. Just as he breathed a sigh of relief, a massive warhammer descended from the sky with a thunderous crash, smashing him into the ground and shattering his bones. A white figure hovered in the air, and a sword of holy light pierced through Pei Chu's throat. Master, here is the head of the one who tried to escape, the Sainist said, handing Pei Chu's head to Xia Yu. Xia Yu took the head and nodded in satisfaction. Well done. Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. Good. Continue to stay hidden and protect me. Yes, Master. The Sainist's form slowly faded as she resumed her vigil by Xia Yu's side. What a reliable undead, Xia Yu thought to himself with admiration. He quickly began collecting the equipment from the fallen bodies scanning the ground and picking up each item. Over 20 corpses lay there. None had escaped, yielding more than 100 pieces of gear. Xia Yu calculated silently. It wasn't surprising that these level 15 and above adventurers had a full set of equipment. He carefully examined each item. Most were of decent to average quality, with a few reaching master level. Suddenly, two usable pieces of equipment caught his eye. Symbol of wisdom, a master level helmet, glowed with an aura of intelligence. Xia Yu noted its attributes, a 10-point boost in wisdom, a 36-point increase in strength, and a 5-point enhancement in meditation ability. Wearing it would allow him to enter a meditative state and double his mental recovery speed. Next, a pair of leopard fur boots grabbed his attention, also master level. They offered an 11-point agility boost and a 40-point increase in swiftness. The special effect was even more exciting. When used, it could increase the movement speed of all nearby allies by 30 for 30 seconds. Xia Yu's eyes sparkled as he looked at his bag, now brimming with equipment. He was ecstatic and eager to return to town and sell his spoils. However, the treasure chest monster ahead drew his focus even more. Let's deal with the immediate threat first, he decided. Following the minimap's guidance, Xia Yu arrived at the location of the treasure chest monster. The sight before him made his heart race with excitement. A fully populated orc camp lay in front of him. Monsters, all monsters, my level is going to soar. Xia Yu was overjoyed at the dense cluster of monsters. Taking a deep breath, he turned to the undead commander beside him. Buck, summon your undead subordinates for the first wave of attack. Xia Yu wisely chose to let the undead lead the charge. Yes, master. Buck obeyed. In an instant, a thousand heavily armored undead berserkers appeared in Xia Yu's sight, lurking not far from the orc camp. Xia Yu closely inspected these undead warriors, though they were of a common race. Their strength had been significantly boosted by the Saint Ghost Inspirer's innate talent. Both their strength and agility had reached 16-17 points, far surpassing ordinary orc soldiers. 
the heavily armored undead berserkers were ready to strike. They possessed the bloodthirsty warrior talent, which increased their strength by one for every hit dealt or received, up to a maximum of ten. Their skills included heavy strike, leap attack, and berserk. Once in berserk mode, their strength increased by 20 and their movement speed by 30, though they also took 30 more damage. Taking a deep breath, Xia Yu's eyes gleamed with determination. He gave the order, attack. Immediately, the undead army surged toward the orc camp like a tidal wave. The heavily armored undead berserker, wielding a battle axe in each hand, charged into the orc camp like a tidal wave. The dozen or so orc soldiers guarding the entrance barely had time to react before they were cut down by the berserker, empowered by the saintly ghost. Blood sprayed, limbs flew, and chaos ensued. The system notification sounded immediately. Orc soldier normal killed, level 16, XP 630. Orc soldier normal killed, level 16, XP 630. Your level has increased to 12. You have obtained an ordinary orc club. Xiaoyu glanced at the skills and system options, feeling a bit disappointed. Without hesitation, he chose Bone Shield. Bone Shield skill level 1. Reward. Your Bone Shield now has an additional Bone Shield. The battle continued, and two more Orc soldiers fell to the undead Berserker's Axis. Orc soldier normal killed, level 16, XP 560. Orc soldier normal killed, level 16, XP 560. Your level has increased to 13. This time, Xiaoyu chose the Ghost Legion. Heroic Ghost Legion level 1. Reward. Your Ghost Legion is harder to detect. The thrill of leveling up twice in a row excited Xiaoyu. This was the joy of fighting enemies above his level and mass slaughter. He glanced at his experience bar and saw that he was close to leveling up again. At that moment, more orc soldiers poured out of the camp. Xiaoyu keenly noticed some of them were mounted on giant wolves. The system immediately provided information on this new enemy type. Orc Wolf Rider Elite. Level 19. Strength 900. Agility 761. Wisdom 657. Talent. Elite Cavalry Movement Speed on Mount 100. Strength 20. Skills. 1. Wolf Pounce. Commands the giant wolf to pounce on the enemy, dealing 150 strength physical damage and suppressing the target. 2. Sweep. Swings the long sword towards the enemy, dealing 150 strength physical damage. A squad of orc wolf riders charged at the heavily armored undead berserker, their long swords whistling through the air. However, the berserker's battle axes held firm, blocking the deadly strike. The orc wolf riders were stunned. They were elite orcs with the added strength of their giant wolves. How could they not overpower what seemed like a mere undead? The next moment provided a brutal answer. The heavily armored undead berserker leaped into the air, his battle axe carving a blood-red arc, and the entire squad of orc wolf riders fell. Blood rained down, staining the ground red. The system notification sounded again. Orc wolf rider elite killed. Level 19. XP 2000. Your level has increased to 14. Orc Wolf Rider Elite Killed, Level 19, XP 1800. Orc Wolf Rider Elite Killed, Level 19, XP 1800. Your level has increased to 15. The annihilation of an elite Orc Wolf Rider squad allowed Xiaoyu to level up twice more. This time, he chose to upgrade his Undead Summoning and Undead Lord skills. Undead Summoning Skill, Level 1. Reward. You can now summon Undead Assassins. Undead Lord Skill, Level 1. Reward. You can choose one of three undead lords to summon. Heroic Undead Lord Level 5. Summon an undead lord of the same level as you. Summon Limit. 2. Xiaoyu nodded in satisfaction. The rewards this time were quite good. Suddenly, a thunderous roar echoed across the battlefield. A three maternal orc, muscles bulging, charged into the ranks of the heavily armored undead berserkers. Its massive club swept through the air, smashing undead berserkers to pieces. The boss is here. Xiaoyu shouted excitedly. He quickly checked the orc leader's stats and smiled. This was just another experience delivery. A mere level 21 master orc leader, with a maximum strength of only 3,500. With the saintly ghost's blessing, Xiaoyu's undead lord Buck had a strength of 5,235 and agility of 5,145, far surpassing this orc leader. Buck, take it down, Xiaoyu commanded. Yes, master. Buck responded, charging into the fray with his warhammer. Orc soldiers along the way were smashed into pulp. Orc soldier normal killed, level 16, XP for 20. Your level has increased to 16. With this level up, Xiaoyu obtained the soul fireball skill. Master soul fireball. Detonate a corpse your undead summon. Summoning a tracking fireball that deals 200 wisdom fire damage, plus an additional 100 strength fire damage from the corpse your summon. Choose soul fireball. Reward. You can detonate an additional corpse undead summon. 
at level 16, Xiaoyu had now acquired all the core skills below Heroic Undead Mage, so there was no need to add new skills to his skill pool for now. Meanwhile, Buck was engaged in a fierce battle with the orc leader. The surrounding orc soldiers and heavily armored undead berserkers were shattered by their immense power. This pained Xiaoyu. The orc leader's attacks were indiscriminate, killing many undead soldiers and even orc wolf riders, causing Xiaoyu to lose a lot of potential experience. Saintly Ghost, activate Thunder and Retribution Aura. Let Buck finish this in one strike. Xiaoyu ordered decisively, Curse of Agony. He quickly buffed Buck and cursed the orc leader, determined to end it in one decisive blow. Buck let out a deafening roar. He had been enduring the orc leader's attacks for this very moment. Vengeance. Buck's war hammer, glowing with a dark light, descended on the orc leader like a mountain. Boom. Thunder and fire erupted on the orc leader, sending charred flesh and shattered bones flying. Orc leader boss killed. Level 21, XP 22,000. Your level has increased to 17, 18. You have obtained the master's giant orc club. Killing a boss and leveling up twice made Xiaoyu burst into laughter. It seemed that an orc camp alone could push him to level 20. For an ordinary player, defeating so many orc soldiers would be impossible. Even handling the orc wolf riders would be a challenge. Usually, killing a dozen orc soldiers and a couple of orc wolf riders would force them to retreat. Sharing experience among four players would barely allow them to level up once. But Xiaoyu was different. He challenged enemies five levels above him, earning a full 100 experience bonus, and single-handedly wiped out the entire orc camp without anyone else to share the experience. This was why he gained so much experience. Suddenly, Xiaoyu noticed a red dot moving on the map. Hmm? The treasure chest monster is trying to escape? He sneered. Saintly Ghost, go take care of the treasure chest monster. The two-level upgrade in necromancy left Xiaoyu ecstatic. He couldn't wait to choose the necromancy skill, immediately gaining the ability to summon undead knights. Shortly after, a second upgrade pushed his necromancy to a mythical level. This leap significantly boosted Xiaoyu's power enhancing the potential of all his undead soldiers' attributes. At that moment, a common treasure chest monster was defeated. Although it was just a common grade chest, it dropped a legendary staff soul fire. Xiaoyu eagerly examined this level 20 legendary item, which not only provided substantial boost to intelligence and strength, but also had a terrifying ability to directly attack souls. Despite its immense value, Xiaoyu decided to keep it to enhance his own strength. Meanwhile, a common grade level 20 treasure map also appeared in Xiaoyu's inventory. As he pondered how to utilize these newfound treasures, the ghostly Saintus swiftly cleared the battlefield. A massive number of heavily armored undead berserkers, powerful undead soldiers, and undead archers, along with the godlike buck, were slaughtering every visible orc soldier and orc wolf rider. On the other side, a member of the Blood Flame group was leading several teams towards the orc camp. He felt uneasy, worried that something had happened to his boss. However, under the watchful eyes of a master archer, he dared not act rashly. When they discovered a headless corpse along the way, the Blood Flame member recognized it as his boss, Pei Chu. Despite his shock, he maintained his composure and continued to lead the team forward. By then, Xiaoyu had reached level 20 and was preparing to find a safe place to absorb the Master Level Ascension Orb. The system prompted him to choose a talent reward, and Xiaoyu decisively chose the Undead Emperor. This choice increased his undead summoning limit by 300 and granted him a cap of 2,000 elite-level undead summons. When a group of people appeared behind Xiaoyu, they were met with a suffocating sight. The ground was littered with shattered orc corpses and scattered bones, while Xiaoyu stood without a trace of blood on him. Powerful undead creatures roamed around him, exuding an aura of dread. It was as if death itself had descended upon the world, leaving everyone breathless and frozen in place. Xiaoyu turned to look at the dozen or so people behind him, his expression calm. The master level archer quickly waved his hand, indicating there was no problem. He secretly felt relieved. A hidden profession necromancer who could single-handedly wipe out an orc camp was certainly not someone he could afford to provoke. Even if the necromancer did obtain the treasure chest monster, he could only grit his teeth and pretend nothing had happened. Damn, how could a necromancer of this level appear here? Is he after the treasure chest monster? The master level archer was filled with regret. The treasure chest monster was a rare prey. Suddenly, a young warrior in the group pointed at Xiaoyu and exclaimed, Weren't you the one who just awakened the day before yesterday? He had witnessed the awakening ceremony at Lingnan High School. Although the holy priest was the most eye-catching, the other two hidden profession awakeners had also left a deep impression on him. Awaken the day before yesterday? The master level archer's pupils contracted. This was a level 16 monster nest and a newly awakened professional reaching level 5 in such a short time would already be impressive. 
Yet, this necromancer had managed to annihilate an entire orc camp, which must have included a level 20 orc boss. Could it be that he had reached level 20 and changed his profession to master in just two days? Such leveling speed was simply unheard of. Are you sure you're not mistaken? The master level archer tried to deny the shocking reality. How could a newbie who just awakened the day before yesterday be here? You must be mistaken. Apologize to the expert quickly. Xiaoyu smiled and admitted. So you watched the awakening ceremony at Lingnan High? He knew that his awakening time couldn't be hidden and there was no need to conceal it. Everyone gasped in disbelief and began to discuss fervently. Although Xiaoyu was not truly a master, in his eyes, even masters were not much of a challenge now. Are you here for the treasure chest monster? Xiaoyu asked. The master level archer hesitated for a moment, then nodded, yes. I've already killed the treasure chest monster. Sorry you came all this way for nothing. Go back. Xiaoyu waved goodbye and prepared to leave. As they watched Xia Yu's departing figure, everyone sighed in amazement. They asked the young warrior for Xia Yu's name and immediately began discussing how to encourage their own children to study harder. The master level archer thought to himself that if Xia Yu didn't meet an untimely end, becoming a mythical warrior or even a true god in the future was within reach. Xia Yu made his way back to the outpost, but the orc soldiers along the way could no longer provide any experience for him. He decided to return to Lingnan City for a day's rest before heading to a higher level monster nest to continue leveling up. After teleporting back to Lingnan City, Xiaoyu rode his bike to the World Consortium building. He had over 200 pieces of equipment to sell and planned to exchange them for some better gear. Upon arriving at the building's entrance, the receptionist in a short skirt and black stockings immediately recognized Xiaoyu. She respectfully asked, Hello, Mr. Xia. How can I assist you today? I'm here to sell equipment. I have a large quantity this time, so please arrange a bigger room for me. Xiaoyu stated directly. The receptionist led Xiaoyu to a larger and more luxurious room than before and asked if he needed any special services. After Xiaoyu politely declined, Qin Yueshua soon arrived in the room. Seeing the room filled with equipment, Qin Yueshua was astonished and quickly called for help. Ultimately, Xiaoyu sold 221 pieces of equipment, totaling 72.1 million. He then spent 27 million on two pieces of equipment and another 20 million on gear and skill books for by Xiao Xiao. Xiaoyu had intended to buy a heroic ascension orb, but learned that such orbs were extremely rare, typically only dropped by level 30 or higher heroic bosses or auctioned for over a billion. Even master level ascension orbs were only occasionally sold by the World Consortium. Well, this is quite troublesome, Xiaoyu thought to himself. I better go home and advance to master level first. That afternoon, Xiaoyu had already returned home, but Bai Xiao Xiao had not yet arrived, and Uncle Bai and Aunt Tang were also not at home. The butler saw Xiaoyu coming back and showed a concerned expression on his face. Welcome home, young master. Are you okay? No injuries? His tone was tinged with worry, as he had watched Xiaoyu and Bai Xiao Xiao grow up and consider them his own. Xiaoyu smiled and replied, I'm fine. He then added, by the way, I'm going to my room now. No matter what you hear, don't come in. Xiaoyu was worried that the death aura generated during his ascension might affect the elderly butler, who was not a professional. The butler nodded, understood, young master. Once in his room, Xiaoyu immediately took out the master sublimation orb and began absorbing it. As the process progressed, a massive death aura began to spread, quickly engulfing the entire villa. The dogs in the nearby villas sensed this aura and started barking madly. Sensing something amiss, the butler quickly got into his old car and left the villa. Watching the villa gradually shrouded in gray, he showed a relieved smile and murmured to himself, the young master has grown up. After the ascension was complete, a system notification sounded. Your attribute potential has been enhanced. Your pet, the Holy Ghost Maiden, has ascended to master level, learning twin angels, radiant rebirth, and sacred aura, and gaining the new talent radiant wings. Xiaoyu checked his attribute panel. Race, human. Profession, necromancer. Level, 207. Strength, 1809, potential 72. Agility, 1815, potential 72. Wisdom, 5648, potential 153. He couldn't help but lament. Compared to a god-level being, my attribute potential is too weak, even with full gear. Next, Xiaoyu turned his attention to the Holy Ghost Maiden's attributes and was once again astonished. Holy Ghost Maiden. Level, god-level. Race, evolving undead. Strength, 13320, potential 666. Agility, 13320, potential 666. Wisdom, 17820, potential 891. Talents, inspirer. Goddess of War, Radiant Wings, Sprouts Radiant Wings, increasing movement speed by 100 and restoring 20 of health every 5 seconds. Skills, Greater Heal, Resurrection, Dispel, Thunder Aura, 
Hammer of Retribution. Sword of Judgment. Retribution Aura. Twin Angels. Summons a clone with 100 of the original's attributes and all talent skills. Duration 1 hour. Cooldown 1 hour. Radiant Rebirth. Instantly revives at full health upon death. Cooldown 24 hours. Sacred Aura. Clears all abnormal statuses and restores 20 health of allies within the aura every 5 seconds. Xiaoyu noticed that the Holy Ghost Maiden now had a pair of wings formed from radiant light, making her look more like an angel than an undead. Xiaoyu then began to consider how to allocate his 10 skill points. He decided to put 7 points into Undead Lord, allowing him to summon 2 more Undead Lords, each capable of bringing along 2,000 regular Undead minions. With the Holy Ghost Maiden support, these Undead would be as strong as Mythic Level Undead without enhancements. Heroic Undead Lord Level 10 Summons an Undead Lord of the same level as the caster. Summon Limit 3 Additional Effect Each Undead Lord comes with 100 regular Undead minions per level. The remaining 3 points were allocated to Undead Summoning, raising the limit for summoning Mythic Level Undead to 800. To summon the Undead Lords, Xiaoyu went to the underground garage at home. Apart from Xiaoyu's bicycle, there were no other vehicles left as by Xiao Xiao and Uncle Bai had taken their cars out. The spacious garage, covering hundreds of square meters, was perfect for summoning the Undead Lords. Summon, Undead Lord! As Xiaoyu activated the skill, his consciousness was abruptly pulled into a dark space. In the distance, he saw three shadows of varying sizes. Fearsome Bird Hero, Undead Lord, Bone Dragon. Xiaoyu's gaze was immediately drawn to the enormous shadow in the center. Though he couldn't discern its exact appearance, he could feel its overwhelming power compared to the other two undead lords. After making his choice, Xiaoyu's consciousness snapped back to his body, causing a moment of dizziness. Before him, a much larger magic circle than when summoning Buck had formed. From the void, a bone dragon covered in icy scales emerged, its presence causing the temperature in the garage to plummet to single digits. Su, at your service, master. The bone dragon lowered its head slowly, greeting Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu examined the bone dragon's attributes. Race, Undead, Level, 20, Strength, 10080, Potential 504, Agility, 10080, Potential 504, Wisdom, 10080, Potential 504, Talents, Dragon's Might. In a certain range, all enemy units with strength lower than the Frostbone Dragon have their attributes reduced by 10. If an enemy unit has strength equal to or greater than the Frostbone Dragon, the Frostbone Dragon's attributes are increased by 10. Skills. Frost Breath. Releases a breath of frost, dealing 300 all attribute frost damage and freezing units with wisdom lower than the Frostbone Dragon. Hatred Aura. Adds 50 all attribute frost damage to all allies' attacks within the aura and reduces the movement speed of enemies within the aura by 5 per second, up to a maximum of 30. Frost Scales. Covers the body with frost scales, blocking 300 all attribute damage. If not attacked for 10 minutes, the scales regenerate. If broken, it enters a one-hour cooldown. Looking at the evenly distributed attributes, Xiaoyu thought, this 504 potential seems to be the upper limit of the heroic undead lord skill, not the bone dragon's limit. Though Xiaoyu was tempted to ride the frostbone dragon over Lingnan City, he decided against it, knowing it would draw too much attention and break the law. Return to the undead space for now, he said, waving his hand to send Su back. Having started summoning, Xiaoyu decided to summon all the undead lords at once. This time, it would be a random summon, unlike before when he could choose from three options. Undead Lord, summon. As the magic circle appeared again, this time, instead of a massive dragon, a tall, thin, undead mage emerged. He wore tattered robes and held a staff that looked like a piece of withered wood. When Xiaoyu saw the mage's attributes, he couldn't help but exclaim, A forbidden spellcaster? What is this? Xiaoyu stared at the attribute panel in front of him. His robust physique contained astonishing power. 20 points in strength, potential of 9,400. 470 points in agility, potential of 9,400. 470 points in wisdom, potential of 10,080. His talent, Mad Will, only allowed him to use forbidden spells. While the consumption of these spells was reduced by 50, each use would devour 30 of his life. His skills were terrifying. Death's Finger Forbidden Spell, a beam imbued with the law of death shoots toward the enemy, dealing 99.99 of his wisdom as death damage with a 50 chance to instantly kill the target. For each level he is below the enemy, the success rate decreases by 2. Plague Catastrophe, Forbidden Spell, releases a plague imbued with the Law of Death, dealing 500 of his wisdom as death damage per second, spreading infinitely among enemy units. Xiaoyu's vision darkened as he stared at Edward's skills. 
Who could withstand such terrifying destructive power? He secretly felt relieved, knowing this would be his trump card. Even against legendary powerhouses, he might have a slim chance of survival provided he wasn't instantly killed. After all, legendary powerhouses had attributes exceeding 80,000. Best to avoid provoking them. As the vision faded, Xiaoyu left the room. The butler approached, asking if he needed any food prepared. Xiaoyu requested some snacks and inquired about Xiao Bai's whereabouts. The butler informed him that the young lady had gone leveling with three friends and should be back soon. Sure enough, Bai Xiao Xiao returned home shortly. Seeing Xiaoyu slumped on the couch, she showed a mix of pride and concern. During their conversation, Xiaoyu learned she had reached level 4 today. To avoid discouraging his sister, he lied, claiming he was only level 15. Xiaoyu handed over the equipment and skill books he had spent millions acquiring to buy Xiao Xiao. She was astonished by the expensive items, especially the two core skill books for a holy priest. Xiaoyu vaguely explained that a kind person had given him the money, and Bai Xiao Xiao warned him to be careful. The next day, the butler handed Xia Yu a note left by Bai Xiao Xiao. It said she would soon catch up to him and that he would have to beg to join her team then. Xia Yu smiled, thinking he wouldn't mind begging if she could really catch up. Learning that Bai Xiao Xiao had gone to a monster nest in Lianzi town today, Xia Yu felt a bit worried. Town areas had limited visibility, making it easy for monsters to ambush. The butler reassured him that the young lady's team included a mage who could use detection spells, so there should be no problem. Xiao Yu decided to dig for treasure maps. Using a standard level treasure map, he was instantly swallowed by a black vortex and transported to a dark red land. The map indicated two treasure points, and he chose the eastern one, which promised more potential points. Summoning a host of undead minions, Xiao Yu prepared to both hunt for treasure and level up in this level 20 treasure space. Although experience gain was reduced, the sheer number of monsters would allow him to level up a few times. Gazing at the twisted figures of monsters in the distance, Xiao Yu waved his hand and led his team forward. The undead legion marched eastward, their twisted silhouettes becoming clearer. These were bizarre creatures, their elongated bodies unlike anything natural, resembling shadows with limbs, exuding an ominous aura. Xiao Yu closely observed these elite twisted beings. Their stats were astounding. Level 20, 2340 strength, 2248 agility, and 1987 wisdom. Even more alarming was their innate ability harbinger of doom. Non-allied units within their vicinity would lose one of their health per second, increasing by one every five seconds, up to a maximum of ten. They also possessed a skill called Curse of Agony, which could reduce an enemy's movement speed by fifty for a full sixty seconds. What strange monsters, Xiaoyu mused. This innate ability means we absolutely cannot engage them in a prolonged fight. Losing 10 health per second? Who could withstand that? He quickly ordered the undead archers to attack. Arrows rained down like a storm, tearing the creatures to shreds in an instant. The system notification popped up. Elite Twisted being killed. Level 20 XP 500. Elite Twisted being killed. Level 20 XP 500. You have obtained a superior shadow necklace. Xiaoyu raised an eyebrow. Already dropped equipment? And it's a rare necklace. He knew the drop rate for elite monsters was only about one. The Shadow Necklace had impressive stats. Superior Grade, 468 Wisdom, 87 Strength. Even better, it came with a stealth skill, allowing the wearer to hide and significantly reduce their presence, consuming only a small amount of mental energy. Not bad, say you thought with delight, high attributes and a stealth skill. Undead mages can't learn stealth even with skill books, so they have to rely on equipment. Eagerly, he put on the necklace and immediately activated the stealth skill. Instantly, he felt his form blur with only a slight fluctuation in his mental energy. The consumption was minimal, even slower than his recovery rate, allowing for nearly indefinite use. This greatly enhances my safety, Xiaoyu thought with relief. Even if I encounter a powerful boss, they might not notice me right away. Maintaining his stealth, Xiaoyu continued eastward, eliminating every twisted being he encountered. Soon, the system notified him again. Elite twisted being killed, level 20 XP 500. Your level has increased to 21, Please choose your upgrade reward. Three options appeared. 1. Undead Lord Skill Level 1. 2. Heroic Corruption Orb Level 1. 3. Heroic Summon Rotten Corpse Level 1 summons a level 20 rotten corpse with heavy strike, corrosive claw skills, and decaying limbs talent, self-destructs upon death. Summon Limit 40. After careful consideration, Xiaoyu chose the Undead Lord upgrade. The system immediately rewarded him with 50 strength potential. Boosting potential is always better done sooner he muttered to himself. As a dilapidated temple came into view, Xiaoyu realized the treasure was near. He commanded a dozen undead soldiers to scout ahead. As the soldiers entered the temple, a fierce wind mixed with countless wind blades lashed out, 
leaving numerous wounds on their bodies. Despite this, they remained standing. It seems the guardian inside isn't too strong, Xiaoyu assessed, then ordered more undead soldiers to charge deeper into the temple. Soon, wind blades and tornadoes continuously shot out from within. Through the vague feedback from his undead soldiers, Xiaoyu deduced that the guardian was likely a wind element boss and not very large in size. As he speculated, an elderly man in a green robe with a long green beard was surrounded by numerous undead soldiers. The old man frantically waved his staff, releasing gusts of wind to fend off the attackers, his face twisted in madness, occasionally letting out inexplicable laughter. As more undead soldiers fell, the encirclement tightened. Finally, a soldier's sword broke through the old man's defenses, leaving a wound on him. The next second, the soldier was shredded by wind blades. The battle dragged on, and the old man's mana gradually depleted. In despair, he swung his staff for a final stand, but was soon overwhelmed and torn apart by the swarming undead soldiers. The system notification appeared. Crazy Mage Mori Boss killed. Level 20 XP, 4000. You have obtained the Master Staff, Song of the Wind Elements. A humanoid boss? Xiaoyu raised an eyebrow. No wonder it killed so many undead soldiers. Humanoid bosses are often high ear beings turned into monsters for various reasons. Although they become weaker, they retain high ear combat skills and techniques. Confirming that there were no more enemies in the temple, Xiaoyu entered. The scene was a mess, with wind blade marks and scattered bones everywhere. A broken corpse lay on the ground, still bleeding it, was the crazy Mage Mori. Even in death, his face remained twisted with madness. Where's the treasure? Xiaoyu looked around, following the red that on his map to the temple hall. It was empty. He even had the ghostly Sanus fly up to check, but found nothing. It must be underground, Xiaoyu concluded, then ordered, start digging. As soon as the foreman Xiaoyu gave the order, the undead labor soldiers raised their shields and began the excavation work. Their immense strength easily moved the boulders, making the process incredibly efficient. Watching these tireless undead soldiers, Xiaoyu couldn't help but recall the online comments suggesting that becoming a necromancer would allow undead soldiers to work around the clock and make a fortune. It seemed there was some truth to that after all. Suddenly, the actions of one of the undead soldiers caught Xiaoyu's attention. Did you find something? He immediately ordered all the undead soldiers to stop working and jumped into the dug hole to inspect. Before him lay a skeleton, half buried in the earth, clutching three books. Xiaoyu realized that these books were the true treasure. He had initially expected just two skill books, valuable in the millions, but still far from priceless artifacts. However, considering this was just a common treasure map, obtaining items worth millions was already quite fortunate. Xiaoyu carefully took the three books from the skeleton's grasp. To his surprise, the skeleton then turned to dust, merging with the surrounding soil, as if it had fulfilled some kind of mission. As Xiaoyu examined the two books closely, a joyful smile spread across his face. Wow, legendary skill books. Spatial blink and spatial teleportation. Two spatial skills, he exclaimed. Spatial blink skill book. Legendary level, zero effect. Learn spatial blink upon use. At level one, the legendary spatial blink allows a single blink up to 100 meters. Spatial teleportation skill book. Legendary level, zero effect. Learn spatial teleportation upon use. At level one, the legendary spatial teleportation allows setting a spatial anchor point, and subsequent use will instantly teleport back to the anchor point. Cool down, 24 hours. These two spatial skills were as valuable as artifacts, almost guaranteeing the user an unbeatable advantage. Excitedly, Xiaoyu chose to use the skill books without hesitation. You have learned legendary spatial blink. You have learned legendary spatial teleportation. The system notification followed. Selection complete, rewards granted. Your intelligence, potential 10, strength, potential 5. Xiaoyu was overjoyed, feeling like he had hit the jackpot twice. He noticed the third book was a special item. Although he had already learned spatial teleportation, this book could be a gift for Xiao Bai. Book of Space. Special item, legendary level, zero space teleportation. Allows setting a spatial anchor point, and subsequent use will instantly teleport back to the anchor point. Cool down, 24 hours. She will be thrilled, Xiaoyu thought with satisfaction and was then transported out of the treasure space. Back in reality, Xiaoyu checked the time. It was just past 1 p.m. Considering he had only gained one level in the treasure space, he decided to continue leveling up. Killing monsters of the same level yields too little experience. I need to go for higher level ones, he murmured to himself. After informing the butler, Xiaoyu rode his bike to the teleportation center. However, upon entering, he sensed something was amiss. The receptionists were extremely busy, constantly communicating with various locations. Is everything okay over there? The teleportation array was damaged, 
and the city lord and deputy city lord have already led a team to the monster ride area. Please hold the outpost. Respond if you hear this. One of the receptionists anxiously called out. Almost simultaneously, distress signals came from seven or eight monster nest outposts. From level 3 to level 23, monster nests were under massive attack. The situation in Lianzi town was particularly dire, with casualties among the professionals. Xiaoyu's heart tightened as he remembered the butler mentioning that Xiao Bai had gone to Lianzi town to level up this morning. He rushed forward and urgently said, I need to teleport to Lianzi town, immediately. The receptionist shook her head helplessly. The teleportation array in Lianzi town has been damaged. Teleportation is not possible. Xiaoyu's eyes hardened. Which is the closest monster nest outpost to Lianzi town that can still teleport? The receptionist quickly replied, The level 21 Tranquil Lake, about 200 kilometers from Lianzi town. You will have to pass through four monster nests. Level 11 Black Sand Domain, Level 14 Rocky Ridge, Level 17 Giant Rock Hill, and Level 27 Decayed Hell. Are you sure you want to go? No problem. Teleport me there now. Xiaoyu said firmly. After a moment of dizziness, Xiaoyu found himself on a hill overlooking a beautiful lake in the distance. But he had no time to enjoy the scenery and headed straight for the outpost. Many others, mostly middle-aged, were also preparing to cross multiple monster nests to reach the ride area, likely worried about their children leveling up in lower-level monster nests. Two, so, Xiaoyu summoned his Frostbone Dragon and mounted it. Roar! The Frostbone Dragon let out a deafening roar, intimidating the surrounding professional's pets into submission. Whoa, a Frostbone Dragon? A necromancer's undead lord or a pet? That's incredible. My level 26 pet is scared stiff. Exclamations arose from the crowd. Xiaoyu had only one thought. Xiao Bai, you must wait for me. He then summoned the Holy Maiden Spirit to boost the Frostbone Dragon's agility, skyrocketing its speed to an astounding 17,000. The Frostbone Dragon soared into the sky like a whirlwind, its speed surpassing that of an airplane. Ten minutes, it'll be there, Xiaoyu calculated in his mind. Flying over Black Sand Domain, Rocky Ridge, and Giant Rock Hill was smooth, as the monsters lacked ranged attack capabilities. However, when the landscape turned into a decayed region, a massive black bird covered in rot suddenly blocked Xiaoyu's path. A level 27 hell scream bird. Holy Maiden, take it down. Xiaoyu commanded decisively. The Holy Maiden spirit unleashed her full power. Thunder Halo. Retribution Halo. Twin Angels. Retribution Hammer. The two Holy Maiden spirits lifted massive hammers and smashed them down on the hell scream bird, crushing it into a pulp instantly. The system notification followed. Killed hell scream bird normal. Level 27, experience 8000. Holy Maiden, anyone who stands in our way will be destroyed, Xiaoyu declared resolutely, continuing his race towards Lianzi town. A dragon's roar echoed through the sky, causing everyone running to look up. A massive shadow swept over their heads. By the time they looked up again, the colossal figure had already become a small black dot on the horizon. Suddenly, a piercing scream descended from above, accompanied by the carcass of a giant bird crashing to the ground. Whoa, did it get taken out in one hit? Someone exclaimed. When did Lingnan City get a hero-level necromancer? Another person wondered aloud. What an impressive dragon. And an even cooler dragon rider, a young boy said excitedly. You only saw the dragon's tail. It's a hero-level necromancer. It could well be an old man. An elderly man beside him calmly analyzed. Among the crowd were not only ordinary citizens seeking help, but also teams and guild members who had accepted official rescue missions from Lingnan City. A system prompt suddenly echoed in Xiaoyu's mind. Please make a choice. Support Liangzi Town. Reward Corpse Explosion Skill Level 1. Support Silent Spirit Domain. Reward Spirit Fireball Upgraded to Hero Level. Xiaoyu chose Liangzi Town without hesitation. Even though the reward for supporting the Level 23 Monster Nest was better, he stuck to his decision. Inside the outpost, cries and complaints from novice adventurers echoed continuously. Oh my god! There are monsters everywhere outside. When will the teleportation gate be fixed? I want to go home, boohoo. The outpost guard commander frowned deeply, cursing to himself, widespread monster nest riots, and the teleportation array being destroyed at the same time, damn it. It's definitely those monster protection organizations at work. Bang, bang, bang. Beasts relentlessly struck the outpost's protective magic barrier. On the other side, level 10 corrupting zombies from the silent spirit domain fiercely attacked, causing small cracks to appear on the shield. This outpost was only meant to guard against level 3 monster nests with its strongest member being a level 21 Master Warrior. While capable of self-defense, protecting hundreds of low-level adventurers was unrealistic. Is the support here yet? Muin asked anxiously. A teammate replied, the city lord and others went to support the level 23 monster nest first. 
We have to wait for the adventurers who accepted our mission to arrive. Muin gritted his teeth. Damn. I'll take at least an hour for the adventurers to get here from the nearest monster nest. The magic barrier can hold for no more than ten minutes. If thousands of level three, four, and five monsters break into the outpost, along with the hundreds of corrupting zombies behind them, we can't protect these novice adventurers. There will be massive casualties. He felt his hands grow cold. If novice adventurers suffered heavy losses, earning Dragon Kingdom points would be out of the question. They'd be lucky if they weren't penalized. Have all low-level adventurers confront the level 3, 4, and 5 monsters hidden. Adventurers level 10 and above, come with us to hold off the corrupting zombies. Every second counts, Muin ordered. Yes, Captain, his teammate responded. Muin coldly observed the thousands of corrupting zombies behind them, thinking, if we can't hold them off, they'll have to abandon this place. As a master warrior, I can't save everyone, but I can definitely get my three level 19 teammates out. He loudly announced, attention all adventurers. The shield can only hold for another five minutes. If you want to survive, hold off the level three, four, and five monsters in front. Those level 10 and above, come with our team to resist the corrupting zombies from behind. If we hold out for half an hour, reinforcements will arrive. The low-level adventurers panicked instantly. Most of them had just awakened their abilities in the past few days and found it difficult to kill even one or two monsters. Now they were being asked to face thousands of monsters of the same level, or even higher. It was a death sentence. There weren't many level 10 adventurers present, and only 10 or so volunteered to fight the corrupting zombies. Most of them were here to sell low-level equipment to newly awakened adventurers. What should we do, Xiao Xiao? A tall, graceful woman asked, her face pale. Bai Xiao Xiao frowned, but remained calm. We have no other choice. Stay alert, everyone, and don't let the monsters drag you away. If you get injured, they'll heal you. We just need to hold out until reinforcements arrive. I'll all be fine. It's just leveling up, leveling up in this sea of monsters? That's a death sentence, a petite archer said with a wry smile. Don't worry, I'll block all the monsters. You just focus on attacking, said a muscular woman wielding a large shield and warhammer, her muscles as defined as any man's. Come on, everyone, we need to survive. Bai Xiao Xiao encouraged. While Bai Xiao Xiao's group still had some morale, most low-level adventurers were in a daze, not knowing what to do. Muin saw this and could only sigh helplessly, thinking, they're just starting to get used to combat, and now they face this situation. There's nothing to be done. His biggest fear was the front line collapsing, leading to a two-front attack from the monsters. Prepare to retreat, Muin quietly told his teammates. The three teammates shuddered and slowly nodded. Got it? Bang! A visible crack appeared and then the entire protective shield shattered into countless fragments. The shield is down, someone shouted. Roar! 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 The monster horde from Lianzi Town charged at the low-level adventurers. Anyone with ranged attacks, fire now! Someone shouted, snapping everyone out of their stupor. Arrows, fireballs, and wind blades flew towards the monster horde, slowing their advance slightly with explosions. But soon, the monsters were close to engaging in melee combat with the low-level adventurers. Charge! Muin drew his great sword and led the charge. Whirlwind slash. He spun like a tornado into the corrupting zombies, his master level attributes overwhelming the level 10 zombies. With Muin leading, the other high level adventurers also unleashed their skills, cutting down the corrupting zombies. Though fewer in number, their battle was much more favorable compared to the low level adventurers. On the low level adventurer's side, the muscular woman's face changed as she saw the monsters closing in from all sides. Damn it. Why are they all running? She quickly retreated as well. Several frontline warriors who couldn't retreat in time were pounced on by the monsters, torn apart and devoured. Tiger, we need to retreat faster. Bai Xiao Xiao realized they couldn't rely on the others and focused on outrunning them. Bai Xiao Xiao and her group quickened their pace, retreating further into the outpost. More and more people were pounced on by monsters and torn apart. The faces of many low-level adventurers turned pale. At least a hundred had died in this short time. Suddenly, they found themselves with nowhere left to retreat. Any further, and they would face the level 10 corrupting zombies. Muin noticed the retreating low-level adventurers and signaled to his three teammates, prepare to retreat. He had decided to abandon everyone here. Xiao Xiao, what should we do? Hu Weiyong was covered in wounds, bleeding profusely. Bai Xiao Xiao was panting heavily, her mental strength nearly depleted. Gritting her teeth, she pulled a precious mental elixir from her backpack and downed it in one gulp. Hang in there, sister Hu. Reinforcements are on the way. Before she could finish her sentence, Bai Xiao Xiao noticed the guards at the outpost fleeing in all directions. At the same time, hordes of poisonous zombies were closing in on them at frightening speed. They're running? Even the high-level practitioners are running. Everyone, run for your lives. Help. 
I don't want to die. Panic spread like wildfire. With Muin fleeing, the other high-level practitioners who had been holding off the poisonous zombies also chose to save themselves. The low-level practitioners were in complete disarray as they stood no chance of outrunning the level 10 poisonous zombies. Despair washed over by Xiao Xiao like a tidal wave. Are we really going to die here? She murmured, tears welling up in her eyes. The women in the team had already started to sob. Bai Xiao Xiao bit her lip, forcing herself to stay calm. Run, head for Lianzi Town. If we can break through the monster horde and reach Lianzi Town, we might still get help. Break through the horde, someone questioned. There are thousands of monsters. That's pure madness. Despite the skepticism, Bai Xiao Xiao's words gave everyone a target. Just as the four were about to make a run for it along the side of the monster horde, a deafening dragon roar echoed from above. Bai Xiao Xiao looked up to see a massive frost dragon hovering in the air. A familiar voice followed. Sue, Buck, summon your undead minions and clear the battlefield. Saintus, activate your holy aura and heal all the humans present. As soon as the command was given, countless undead emerged from the void, each capable of instantly killing the monsters on the battlefield. They quickly pushed the front lines back, annihilating the monsters one by one. Simultaneously, a holy light enveloped the entire battlefield, removing any abnormal status every five seconds, including the poison from the zombies, and restoring 20 of everyone's health. Reinforcements are here. Reinforcements are here. Cheers erupted all around. Xiao Yu leaped off the frost dragon's back and hurried to Bai Xiao Xiao's side. Xiao Bai, are you okay? Seeing that his sister was only pale, he breathed a sigh of relief. Brother, why are you here? Bai Xiao Xiao looked at her half-brother in surprise. I heard about the monster outbreak at the teleportation center and rushed here when I found out it was at Liangzi town, Xiao Yu said, relieved. Luckily, I made it in time. A few minutes later, Bai Xiao Xiao could no longer hold back her emotions. She threw herself into Xiao Yu's arms, sobbing. I almost, I almost never got to see you or mom and dad again. It's okay now. Everything's okay. Xiao Yu gently patted her back to comfort her. Xia, Xiao Yu. Someone in Bai Xiao Xiao's team recognized him. It was a student who had awakened on the same day as Xiaoyu. She knew he was a necromancer, but seeing the countless undead, she couldn't believe they were summoned by the boy who had awakened alongside her. Yes, I'm Xiaoyu. What's the matter? Xiaoyu responded calmly. Did you summon all of these? Hu Weiyang pointed at the densely packed, heavy-armored undead berserkers and draconian undead warriors around them. The number of undead seemed even greater than the monsters, and they were powerful enough to kill level 10 poisonous zombies in one strike. More or less, Xiaoyu Yu answered nonchalantly. Everyone gasped in shock. Even Bai Xiao Xiao stared at her brother in disbelief, stunned by the vast difference in their abilities. At that moment, a voice cut in, Excuse me, which necromancer came to our aid? I am Muin, the garrison officer of Liangzi Town's outpost. Muin had barely escaped when he saw the undead slaughtering the monsters and quickly ran back. However, everyone had witnessed his earlier desertion, and now they glared at him with contempt. The low-level practitioners hadn't fled mainly because they couldn't outrun the monsters. But for the garrison officer to lead the retreat was disgraceful. Xiaoyu cast a cold glance at Muin. He had seen him fleeing when he arrived, but didn't know his identity then. Learning that he was the garrison officer only deepened his disdain, making him unwilling to respond. Brother, he's calling you, Bai Xiao Xiao whispered. Ignore him, Xiaoyu whispered back. A garrison officer who abandons his post deserves to be reported. Talking to him now will only give him a chance to make excuses. With that, Xiao Yu led by Xiao Xiao and the others away, and everyone else followed in silent agreement. Muin panicked. If he couldn't establish a connection with the supporter, once these low-level practitioners reported him, he wouldn't just lose points. He'd face penalties. Desperately, he trailed behind, trying to explain, but no one paid him any mind. Hey bro, are you there? If you are, answer me. Necromancer, are you here? Muin called out anxiously, his voice echoing across the desolate battlefield. Silence surrounded him broken only by the eerie rustling of bones from the undead army. Muin glanced around, taking in the sight of the countless undead, each exuding an overwhelming aura. He swallowed hard, feeling a wave of despair wash over him. Damn it, why isn't the necromancer responding? If you want to complete the mission and earn Dragon Kingdom points, at least confirm it with me. Faced with an army that could easily obliterate him, Muin dared not say more. He sighed and muttered to himself, forget it. Losing points is better than provoking a necromancer and getting wiped out, forcing himself to stay calm. Muin began organizing his team to restore order at the outpost. He directed the soldiers to gather the relatively intact bodies, preparing to send them back to the city for identification by their families. Fortunately, the holy aura from the Saintus ghost had protected them, leaving no one severely injured. However, 
Those with missing limbs would need to seek out a master-level priest skilled in limb regeneration for treatment. Meanwhile, outside the city on the battlefield, Bai Xiaoxiao's group of four was valiantly fighting off a horde of undead. Xiaoyu had deliberately released some monsters for them to practice on, ensuring they were unscathed and intact. Standing to the side, Xiaoyu quietly observed, making sure Bai Xiaoxiao's team could safely gain experience. The long-legged warrior woman continuously launched fireballs, her eyes occasionally drifting towards Xiaoyu. Bai Xiaoxiao noticed this and grumbled. What kind of support is this? He's not helping us at all. We're doing all the fighting ourselves. Stop staring at him all the time. You almost hit Tiger Sister with your fireball just now. Okay, okay. The long-legged warrior woman replied hastily, refocusing on the battle at hand. At that moment, a voice called out, Lure the level 23 monsters over here. This necromancer is at most master level, but his summoning skills have mutated and evolved. Yes, Captain, someone responded. Yay, leveled up to 6. When Xiaoyu wiped out all the monsters, Bai Xiaoxiao's team reached level 6. Everyone was thrilled, almost addicted to this nearly risk-free way of leveling up. However, the teleportation array was still under repair, and they couldn't move to the next monster nest just yet. Bai Xiaoxiao noticed her sisters looking at Xiaoyu with admiration and felt displeased. She frowned and said, Relying on someone else to level up won't get us far. What if we encounter danger? Who can guarantee he'll always be by our side? No sooner had she finished speaking than her sisters retorted. It's not a big deal to level up a few times now. Exactly. I think Xiao Xiao just wants to hog the benefits. What? Bai Xiao Xiao's face turned red with anger, and she pointed at her sisters, momentarily speechless. Xiaoyu, having heard everything, said thoughtfully, Actually, Xiao Bai is right. I need to level up myself, and I can't always stay with you. He had realized that soloing higher-level monsters yielded much more experience than being in a team. Except for bringing Xiao Bai along, he wasn't too keen on babysitting others. Xiaoyu pulled a book from his backpack and handed it to Bai Xiao Xiao. Xiao Bai, this is for you. Set your anchor point at home, and if you encounter danger, teleport back home immediately. Bai Xiao Xiao was shocked as she looked at the spatial book in her hand. Such a unique item that allowed space teleportation at level zero could fetch billions on the market. She hesitated for a moment and pushed it back. I don't want it. You take it. You go on adventures often. Xiaoyu shook his head with a smile. I don't need it. I have a skill for space teleportation. As he said this, he channeled a bit of energy, letting Bai Xiao Xiao feel the spatial teleportation's fluctuation. Bai Xiao Xiao widened her eyes, staring at Xiaoyu for a long time without saying anything. Finally, she snatched the spatial book and muttered softly, Thanks. Xiaoyu looked around and saw that everyone seemed a bit tired. He suggested, You all seem exhausted. Let me teleport you back. Everyone exclaimed in amazement. Brother Yu is incredible. He even knows space teleportation. I heard a legendary mage from the US offered 2 billion for a space teleportation skill. This guy is unbelievable. Does he have a girlfriend? Just as Xiaoyu was about to cast the teleportation spell, he received a message from Su. Her undead minions were dying, having encountered a powerful enemy. At the same time, the system notified him of a kill. Killed frenzied orc warrior, level 23, experience 2800. Xiaoyu raised an eyebrow and then smiled. How could level 23 monsters appear here? Looks like he could level up a few more times today. Stay here and don't move. I'll be back soon, Xiaoyu instructed, then heads to assist him. When he arrived at the scene, he saw hundreds of frenzied orc warriors gathered below, led by a frenzied orc general. Excitement flashed in Xiaoyu's eyes this could level him up several times. Meanwhile, at the outpost, Muin also received news of the frenzied orc warrior's appearance. What? Didn't the city lord suppress the orc fortress? How are orcs showing up here? This is supposed to be a level 3 monster nest. Muin stood up in shock, his gaze falling on the undead outside, feeling slightly relieved. Luckily, this necromancer hasn't left yet. He should be able to hold off the frenzied orc warriors, right? However, his subordinate's report made Mu An's face turn pale. Captain, the frenzied orc warriors are led by a level 30 heroic frenzied orc general. Mu An's heart sank. A level 23 monster nest like the orc fortress shouldn't have a heroic level boss unless there had been a mutation or the monster nest had upgraded. The strongest in Lingnan City was only heroic level, and while these undead were stronger than the average master, they weren't at the heroic undead's level. Defeating a heroic boss would be impossible, even for the necromancer. While the necromancer's undead are holding off the monster boss, organize a group to lead low-level professionals to Lianzi Town for refuge. The monsters there have emptied their nests, so it's relatively safe. Go quickly, Muin ordered decisively. Yes, Captain. The subordinate obeyed and left. On the battlefield, Xiaoyu summoned undead soldiers and archers. Previously, only the ordinary undead had been fighting. 
Even with the Holy Maiden Ghost enhancement, they weren't enough against a heroic level boss. With the addition of mythic undead soldiers and archers, the frenzied orc warriors were quickly overwhelmed and pushed back. The system notifications kept coming. Killed frenzied orc warrior, level 23, experience 2800. You obtained ordinary level equipment. Frenzied orc club. Killed frenzied orc warrior, level 23, experience 2800. Your level has increased to 22. Choose your upgrade reward. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu chose to upgrade his blink skill. This would make him more agile in battle, allowing him to perform I'm here, now I'm not maneuvers. Suddenly, a flaming battle axe slashed down on Xiaoyu's undead soldiers. With a loud bang, a dozen undead soldiers were blasted away, and those directly hit were incinerated. Xiaoyu smiled. Oh, a boss. He quickly scanned the boss's attributes. Frenzied Orc General Heroic Boss. Race Orc. Level 30. Strength. 20,130. Agility. 17,867. Intelligence. 16,892. Talents. Pure Blood Orc created by the God of War gains 50 strength per level, health regeneration 100. Frenzy gains 1 strength per level for every attack or hit, up to 10. Skills. Heavy Strike. Whirlwind Slash. Leap Attack. Double Strike. War Cry boosts all allied units' strength by 10. Fearless in battle. Infernal Strike channels infernal flames into the weapon, dealing 300 strength as fire damage and causing an additional 150 strength explosion damage. With 20,000 strength and 18,000 agility, Xiaoyu's eyes narrowed. This raging orc general turned out to be a level 30 hero boss. He quickly assessed the situation, realizing that the boss's stats even surpassed those of the highest ranking Holy Ghost under his command. Inside the outpost, the recently erupted cheers died down instantly. A hero level boss. Someone whispered in shock, and it appeared in a level 3 monster nest. Panic spread quickly as people realized this was an entity even the city lord might struggle to defeat. Everyone, retreat in an orderly manner. A steady voice commanded, leave this to the necromancer. We'll fall back to Lianzi town. Muin joined the effort to maintain order. As a master warrior, he knew he was useless against a hero level boss. A tall woman with long legs urgently asked, what should we do? They're going to abandon brother you. A little girl gritted her teeth, glaring at the retreating defense officer. Damn it, that officer is worthless, running away again. Bai Xiao Xiao remained calm, though her clenched fists betrayed her tension. It's fine, he has spatial teleportation and won't die. Besides, he's not one to take unnecessary risks. Should we follow the main group to Liangzi town? Hu Weying asked. Bai Xiao Xiao analyzed the situation. No, running around with them might lead us into more danger. If he can't handle the boss, he'll come and teleport us away. Plus, haven't you noticed the undead around us are also protecting us? He didn't send them all into battle, which means he's confident. Everyone suddenly understood. Under Xiaoyi's protection, they felt safer than blindly fleeing with the main group. On the battlefield, the raging orc general let out a thunderous roar, frantically attacking Xiaoyi's mythic undead soldiers. However, these undead soldiers, boasting over 15,000 strength and the newly acquired soldier battalion talent, were able to hold their ground. Even though they couldn't defeat the orc general, they could stall it while easily annihilating its minions. The soldier battalion talent increased the entire battalion's defense by one for each additional undead soldier, up to a maximum of 100. Only when the raging orc general used Inferno Strike could it inflict casualties on the undead soldiers. With the Holy Aura's blessing, the orc general found it nearly impossible to kill an undead soldier while its own wounds multiplied. Meanwhile, CIS undead army mercilessly slaughtered the surrounding raging orc soldiers. A system notification sounded in Xia Yes' mind. Killed raging orc soldier normal. Level 23 experience, 2400. Your level has increased to 23. Choose your level up reward. Three options appeared. 1. Upgrade bone spear to excellent grade. 2. Excellent grade poison mist level 1. 3. Excellent grade summon rotten corpse level 1. Xia Yu sighed. Such lousy choices. He ultimately chose summon rotten corpse, as it was the best among the poor options. Bone Spear and Poison Mist were among the weakest necromancer skills. As Xiaoyu advanced to level 23, his undead soldier's attributes also increased, making it even harder for the raging orc general to cope. At this moment, the outpost's inhabitants were just gathering to prepare for retreat. Suddenly, someone shouted, Look, the necromancer is gaining the upper hand. All eyes turned to the battlefield. Hundreds of undead soldiers and archers relentlessly attacked the orc general. The general expended significant effort to kill each undead soldier while its body was already riddled with arrows. More notably, the frostbone dragon in the sky hadn't yet joined the battle, 
occasionally emitting a red glow as the necromancer used curses to weaken the orc general. Cheers erupted from the crowd. We can win. The necromancer can win. A master necromancer's undead soldiers are terrifying. I want to switch to necromancer. Riding a dragon is so cool. Necromancer, I want to marry you and give you little undead babies. Muin stood stunned. His worldview, built over a decade-long career, utterly shattered. Can a master really defeat a hero-level boss? Impossible. How could such a monstrous necromancer exist? He muttered. Captain, should we still retreat? A teammate asked softly. Muin sighed, seemingly aging several years in an instant. No, we stay. Defend the outpost. On the battlefield, another wave of arrows rained down. The raging orc general, already burdened with countless arrows, moved sluggishly. This arrow rain pierced its scarred body, causing it to let out a final wail before collapsing. The system notification sounded again. Killed raging orc general hero boss, level 30 experience, 100,000. Your level has increased to 24 and 25. You have obtained heroic general's boots. Two levels up. Perfect. Xiaoyu nodded in satisfaction, then made his choices. 1. Corpse Explosion Skill Level 1. 2. Undead Summon Strength Potential 5. Xiaoyu chose Corpse Explosion, upgrading it to Hero Grade. He then chose Undead Summon, increasing his summon's agility potential by 10. The system displayed the acquired equipment information. General's Boots Hero Level. Strength 2430. Agility 1342. Skill, Earth Stomp. Effect, unleashes an Earth Stomp, dealing 280 strength physical damage to all surrounding enemies and affecting their stability. Cool down, 30 seconds. See how you thought, strength boots, huh? Not really what I need. He'll trade them for something that boosts wisdom later. As a necromancer, he valued wisdom over strength. Nonetheless, reaching level 25 was a significant gain, and the multiple choices had notably enhanced his abilities. Amid the puzzled gazes of the crowd, Xiaoyu flew back to the group surrounded by undead, where by Xiaox Xiao's team was. He said, looks like we can't go back just yet. Who knows when monsters might attack this outpost again. Since we're here, we might as well keep watch and see if any new high-level monsters show up for us to level up. Can you let some monsters in for us to level up to? Even if the experience is low, someone in the group suggested. Xiaoyu shook his head. No, there are no monsters left. I've killed them all. What? The group exclaimed in shock. After that, no more monsters appeared which left Xiaoyu feeling quite disappointed. He muttered to himself, can't there be more? As the teleportation array was repaired, a large number of professionals immediately teleported away, not wanting to stay in such a dangerous place any longer. Xiaoyu teleported back home with Bai Xiao Xiao and the others. After seeing off Bai Xiao Xiao's friends, he gave her a brief greeting and then headed straight to the World Consortium building. Although he didn't have much equipment on him at the moment, he decided to sell everything he had and see if he could buy the gear or items he needed. At the entrance of the building, a receptionist in a short skirt and black stockings immediately recognized this important client. She smiled and asked, Mr. Xia, here to sell equipment again? Xia Yu nodded in confirmation. The receptionist continued, Mr. Xia, Miss Ching is out on business today. Can we get another appraiser for you? She remembered that this client always looked for Miss Ching, and now that she wasn't around, she nervously watched Xia Yu, afraid he might leave and cost her a commission. Doesn't matter, Xia Yu replied calmly following the receptionist into a room similar to the one he had used before. Soon, a middle-aged appraiser walked in, smiling and respectfully greeting Xiaoyu. Hello, Mr. Xia. My name is Zhao Ritian. You can just call me Xiao Zhao. Xiao Zhao. Xiaoyu looked at the man who was clearly about 24 years older than him and felt a bit awkward. As an energetic 18-year-old, he decided to get straight to the point, just appraise the equipment. With that, he began taking out the equipment he had just obtained. Zhao Ritian immediately got to work. Although his efficiency was noticeably lower than Qing Mingxue's, Xiaoyu wasn't in a hurry and quietly watched as he appraised and priced each piece of equipment. Finally, Zhao Ritian wiped the sweat from his forehead and began to report, Mr. Xia, there are a total of 17 pieces of equipment. 10 are ordinary, 6 are excellent, and 1 is a level 30 hero grade general's boots. Because these boots have a high strength attribute and come with a short cooldown area damage and control skill, they are valued at 24 million. The other equipment, due to their high level but lower grade, total 1.7 million. Altogether, it's 25.7 million. Does that work for you? No problem. Xiaoyu agreed, thinking that the World Consortium's offer was fair. This transaction increased his assets to over 60 million. Xiaoyu then asked, Do you have any skills suitable for me now? He remembered asking before and being told there were none available, but they had promised to restock soon. Zhao Ritian responded immediately, Yes, we do. The higher-ups heard that a necromancer like you appeared in Lingnan City, so they quickly transferred two necromancer skillbooks here. I'll go get them for you. 
With CIU's approval, Zhao Ritian quickly left and soon returned with two boxes. Mr. Xia, please take a look. Xiaoyu opened the boxes and found two skill books inside. Master Level Ghost Legion and Hero Level Ghost Guard. He pushed the Ghost Legion book back and said, I'll take this Ghost Guard. How much is it? Seeing Xiaoyu wanted to buy the Ghost Guard, Zhao Ritian's eyes lit up. Mr. Xia, the original price for the Hero Level Ghost Guard is 100 million. However, considering it's you, we can offer a 30 discount, so it's 70 million. Also, as a valued gold card member of the World Consortium, you get an additional discount bringing it down to 67 million. How does that sound? 67 million? Xiaoyu's eyes narrowed slightly. This price was just within his acceptable range. He had to admit, skill books were indeed expensive, especially high-grade ones. I'll take it. Xiaoyu gritted his teeth and took out his gold card. Thank you for your patronage. Zhao Ritian happily took the card. Xiaoyu immediately began learning the new skill. Hero Level Ghost Guard Level 1. Summons a Level 25 Ghost Guard. The Ghost Guard can wear equipment and gain attribute bonuses from it, including using equipment skills. The Ghost Guard receives a 120 equipment bonus and gains skills and talents based on the weapon. If the Ghost Guard dies, all its equipment is destroyed. Summon Limit 1. Such a money sink, Xiaoyu sighed inwardly. But the Ghost Guard was the most reliable assistant for a necromancer, and high-grade ones were rare opportunities. Equipping the Ghost Guard with a set of strength-boosting gear and melee weapons could make it stronger than a warrior of the same level and a fully equipped hero-grade ghost guard might even surpass a mythical level undead lord. Zhao Ritian returned with a black card. Mr. Xia, since you have spent 100 million with us, your gold card has been automatically upgraded to a black diamond card. From now on, you can enjoy a 5 discount on any purchases at the World Consortium. Xiaoyu took the black diamond card and tossed it into his backpack, then turned and left the World Consortium building. He had only a few tens of thousands of yuan left, not enough to buy anything substantial there. Riding his bike home, Xiaoyu sighed deeply. I need to find a way to make money. Isn't there anyone foolish enough to cross my path? He couldn't help but recall the previous encounter with the blood group. They were practically saints, bringing me so much equipment. I really hope more of those blood group guys come along. Their heads are quite valuable. When he got home, Xiaoyu found that Uncle Bai and Aunt Tang were on a business trip again, leaving only him, Bai Xiao Xiao, and the butler in the villa. Bai Xiao Xiao was lying on the couch in the living room watching TV. She only glanced up when she heard the door open then laid back down without saying a word when she saw it was Xiaoyu. What are you watching? Xiaoyu walked over and sat down, noticing that Bai Xiao Xiao was watching the news. The TV was reporting, Today, a monster riot occurred at the Orc Fortress in Liangzi town, resulting in the destruction of several outposts and the death of over a thousand people. Our side discovered the involvement of the anti-human organization Monster Protection Society. If you spot any members of this organization, please report them to the Professional Management Bureau immediately. Additionally, a mysterious hero appeared in Liangzi town, a benevolent necromancer who stopped countless monsters by himself during the crisis. He even killed the level 30 hero boss, the berserk orc general, fording the Monster Protection Society's plot. If anyone knows this hero, please contact us. The people of Lingnan City are deeply grateful to him. The footage even showed Xiaoyu's undead slaying the berserk orc general, but no one had captured the moment when he was riding the frost dragon. Gonna pick up a banner? Bai Xiao Xiao pointed at the TV, a hint of teasing in her voice. Forget it, too much hassle. Xiaoyu shook his head. Just tell your friends not to reveal my identity. Oof. They're not blabbermouths, Bai Xiao Xiao pouted, then seemed to remember something. By the way, there's a dual recruitment fair at school tomorrow. Several major guilds will be there. Are you going? Dual recruitment fair? Xiaoyu thought for a moment. I'll go check it out. I could use a day off. Returning to his room, Xiaoyu sat on his bed, frowning slightly as he sank into deep thought. Joining a guild was a necessity. That much was certain. However, he couldn't help but worry whether he would find a suitable guild tomorrow given his current strength and potential. He was well aware of the numerous benefits of joining a guild. Increased base attributes, higher drop rates and luck values, and even perks like the guild warehouse where he could exchange contribution points for various items. In fact, truly valuable treasures often never hit the market but are instead circulated within guilds or traded between them. Although Lingnan City was just a small town, Xiaoyu still held a glimmer of hope. He mused to himself that with his title as a holy priest, he might attract some decent guilds tomorrow. With that thought, he lay down and went asleep. The next morning, Xiaoyu rode his somewhat shabby bicycle to school. At the same time, Bai Xiao Xiao drove off in her car. Though both of them knew the situation, they subconsciously chose to go to school separately. Upon reaching the school gate, Xiaoyu sensed something was off. His classmates had varied expressions, some excited, some worried. He soon heard the news about a monster riot that had happened yesterday, resulting in the unfortunate deaths of several classmates. This news weighed heavily on his heart. Carefully storing his gear, 
Xiaoyu changed into casual clothes and walked onto the campus. The sports field was lined with colorful tents, each representing a different guild. He walked slowly, scrutinizing the recruitment information of each guild. Three Fireballs Guild is recruiting, a loud voice announced. We specialize in fireball spells and have been doing so for 30 years. We have a harmonious internal environment and only recruit mages who can use fireball spells. Not far away, a burly warrior stood in front of another tent. Golden Tiger Guild is recruiting newcomers. We're a second-tier guild led by a level 34 heroic warrior. We have several masters who specialize in training new members, guiding you through the ins and outs of the profession and sharing insider tips. The new Swift Wind Guild is also recruiting, a young man enthusiastically shouted. We have professional bus skilling experience and specialize in challenging bosses that others fear to face. Team members are rewarded based on their performance in battles. Don't miss this opportunity. See how you walk past these tents in silence, feeling a bit disappointed. The highest tier was only second tier, and the strongest members were merely heroic level. He sighed softly. This was the reality of a small town. Just as he was about to leave, he overheard some whispers nearby. Did you hear? A fifth-tier guild from the Imperial Capital is here to meet with by Xiao Xiao, personally. A fifth-tier guild? Don't they have mythic-level powerhouses? No wonder she's a holy priest. Even a fifth-tier guild is inviting her personally. We can only choose between first- and second-tier guilds. Be grateful if any guild wants you. Joining a guild boosts your attributes by several percentage points. True that. A fifth-tier guild? Mythic-level powerhouses? Xiaoyu's interest was piqued. He thought to himself that such a guild might have a heroic ascension orb. Although he had already enlisted the help of the World Consortium in searching for one, he knew that even if they found it, he couldn't afford it with his current financial situation, or it would take a long time to save up enough money. As Xiaoyu was lost in thought, a gentle voice suddenly spoke behind him. Hi, are you Xiaoyu? He turned around to see a smiling woman. Can I help you? Xiaoyu asked politely. Yes, the woman said enthusiastically. I'm the vice president of the second tier Tianmei Guild. We're in need of a necromancer. I heard you've recently switched to a necromancer, so I wanted to see if you'd be interested in joining us. We offer great benefits, including formal level ascension orbs and even master level ascension orbs at internal prices. We also provide equipment and have masters to help you level up. Without raising an eyebrow, Xiaoyu smiled and replied, Sorry, I'm still considering which guild to join. If I need anything later, I'll contact you. Unwilling to give up, the woman continued. Our guild already offers a four intelligence attribute increase, which is perfect for you. I'll think about it, Xiaoyu said as he walked away. The woman sighed in resignation. A man with shifty eyes approached her and scoffed, just because he switched to a hidden class, huh? If not for that, we wouldn't even consider a rookie like him. Let's keep looking, the woman replied. See if we can find a beast master or elementalist, someone who can summon. Otherwise, that boss will be hard to deal with. Xiaoyu continued to wander around the field, occasionally approached by guilds, but the highest tier was still only second tier. He politely declined each offer. Suddenly his phone rang. It was a message from Bai Xiao Xiao. Meet at the usual spot. The usual spot? Xiaoyu was surprised. He hadn't expected to go there even after graduation. He walked slowly towards the small forest behind the teaching building. Under the familiar big tree, he saw Bai Xiao Xiao's figure. Her shoulders were trembling, clearly crying. Xiaoyu frowned, a sense of unease rising within him. What happened? He asked softly. Bai Xiao Xiao looked up, her eyes filled with tears. They want me to marry the guild leader's son to let me join their guild. And if I don't join, They've threatened other forces in Nanling City to prevent me from joining, or else they'd be making an enemy of them. Upon hearing those words, a surge of anger ignited within Xiaoyu. Clenching his fists, he thought incredulously, a mere fifth-tier guild dares to be this unreasonable. Turning to Bai Xiao Xiao beside him, Xiaoyu spoke with determination, Xiao Bai, don't worry. With your holy priest profession, you'll never lack guild offers. A glint of inspiration flashed in his eyes. Moreover, even if no one else wants us, we can always start our own guild. The idea exhilarated Xiaoyu. He suddenly realized, yes, we can create our own guild. His eyes sparkled with excitement at the thought. Creating a guild requires a master level player, and I'm already at master level. Why should we join someone else's guild and work for them? We can be our own bosses. Bai Xiao Xiao's eyes also lit up upon hearing this. After this incident, she no longer wanted to join someone else's guild. She thought to herself, with my rare, breathtaking beauty, I attract attention wherever I go. It's better to start my own guild. Just then, an arrogant young man stepped forward. He first stared at Bai Xiao Xiao, then frowned at Xiaoyu standing beside her. This young man was Wei Fenghua. With an air of arrogance, he spoke. Bai Xiao Xiao, have you made up your mind? If you join our Tianfeng guild and marry me, your dowry will be a top-tier resurrection spell worth three billion. You won't have to worry about ascension orbs. 
You'll get a full set of equipment at every level, and someone will help you level up. I'm a hidden class elemental swordsman. After all, Wei Fenghua then turned his gaze to Xia Yu, his tone filled with displeasure. And who are you, kids? Clearly, from the moment he first saw Bai Xiao Xiao, he had considered her his own. Seeing her talk to another man now enraged him. Suddenly, a system prompt appeared before Xia Yu. Please make a choice, host. 1. Abandon your childhood friend by Xiao Xiao and flee in disgrace. Reward. Agility potential 20, space, blink skill level 1. 2. Confront the son of a mythical powerhouse, Wei Fenghua. Reward. Talent Soul Burn Yu can designate an undead summon to enter a soul burn state, increasing all attributes by 50, losing 5 health per second, lasting for up to 60 seconds. After 60 seconds, the undead summon is forcibly destroyed. Facing Wei Feng was question, Xia Yu smiled faintly, a resolute gleam in his eyes. He looked directly at Wei Feng Hua and spoke clearly and firmly. Who am I? Im Bai Xiaoxiao's childhood friend of 16 years. And you must be the scum forcing her. It's amazing how meeting you in person reveals what a true beast in human clothing looks like. Xia Yu took a step forward, positioning himself in front of Bai Xiao Xiao, and continued, Since you've chased us all the way here, let me make it clear. Xiaoxiao's choice is me. As for you, you can get lost. You're courting death. Wei Fenghua roared, his fury palpable as a magnificent sword materialized in his hand. As the only son of a mythic warrior, he had been spoiled since childhood. After switching to a hidden class, his arrogance knew no bounds. Now, being insulted to his face, he was seething with rage, ready to tear his adversary apart. However, Xiaoyu remained calm, a slight smile playing on his lips. Just as Wei Fenghua was about to strike, his bodyguard quickly restrained him. Young master, no fighting in the city. The bodyguard whispered urgently. Even your father can't protect you if you break this rule. The laws of Longwo were strict. No combat between individuals within city limits, except against monsters. Attacking another person was punishable by death. And not even Wei Fenghua's powerful father could defy this law. Longwo's elite mythic squad, led by demigods, ensured compliance. I thought you had the guts to make a move. Xiaoyu taunted, a mocking smile on his face. But here you are, waiting for your bodyguard to hold you back. Wei Fenghua's eyes blazed with fury, but his bodyguard warned Xiaoyu sternly, Watch your mouth, kid. Xiaoyu's smile turned cold, his eyes flashing with a dangerous light. Interesting. When did you ever show me respect? Forcing my woman to marry this beast, and now trying to attack me. Do you think sparing my life is showing me respect? His voice grew sharper, his gaze like a blade. If we weren't in the city... None of you so-called hero-class warriors would make it out alive. The four hero-class warriors were taken aback. Their instincts told them Xia Yu wasn't bluffing, but logic insisted it was impossible. Xia Yu had only recently become a necromancer in Lingnan City, barely transitioning to his new role. How could he possibly threaten hero-class warriors? The gap between each class was immense, with a threefold difference in potential attributes. Unless he had some incredible trump card. Xia Yu, we were wrong before. We apologize, one of the bodyguards said cautiously, his eyes wary. Apologize? See how you sneered. Do you even mean it? Look at your young master, eager to kill me. He locked eyes with Wei Fenghua, his murderous intent unhidden. I hope we don't meet outside. Otherwise, I hope your father can always protect you, young master. With that, Xiao Yu grabbed the stun by Xiao Xiao's hand. Xiao Bai, let's go start our own guild. Who needs theirs? Before leaving, Xiao Yu turned to the four bodyguards. I've memorized your faces. They'll be coming for each of you. Don't get caught alone, and tell your guild master to keep a close eye on you. Finally, he waved at Wei Feng while his smile chilling. Young master, I hope you remain as arrogant the next time we meet. My pain curse inflicts four times the pain, after all. Wei Feng Hua and his group stood frozen, bewildered by Xia Ye's audacity. How could he dare to threaten them so brazenly? Shouldn't that be their role? It wasn't until Xia Yu had walked away that Wei Feng Hua snapped out of it, his face contorted with rage. It'll kill him. I will definitely kill him. Xiaoyu chuckled to himself, knowing he had just unlocked the soul burn talent, a powerful gift. How could you dare? They're a fifth tier guild by Xiao Xiao said, staring in disbelief at Xiaoyu. A fifth tier guild is nothing, Xiaoyu replied confidently. Once I reach the legendary level, I can contend with mythic warriors. Besides, mythic warriors rarely act directly against me. He continued, even now I can escape if I can't win. Spatial blink and spatial teleport are life-saving skills. Teleport back to the city, and no mythic warrior would dare strike within city limits. They've fallen for less. Sacrificing themselves for their son's woman? They'd rather start a new account. Mythic warriors aren't short on women. Xiao Yu warned by Xiao Xiao, Xiao Bai. Always watch the cooldown on your spatial book when you're out leveling. If anything happens, teleport back immediately. 
He knew that while mythic warriors wouldn't act, Wei Fenghua wouldn't let them off. If they came for him, it would be their end. But if they targeted Xiao Bai, Xia Ye's eyes flashed cold. He needed to eliminate this threat quickly. Reaching the guild hall, Bai Xiao Xiao suddenly stopped Xia Yu. But you need at least one masterclass professional to establish a guild. I'm a masterclass professional, Xia Yu said proudly, giving her a thumbs up. What? Bai Xiao Xiao looked at him in shock. You become a master in just a few days? Then again, if you can kill a level 30 hero boss, being a master isn't surprising. She sighed heavily. As they entered the guild hall, a receptionist approached them. Are you here to join a guild? Which one would you like to join? No, we're here to create a guild, Xiao Yu responded confidently. The receptionist was taken aback by the request to create a guild. She looked the two young people up and down, wondering if it was their parents who wanted to create the guild. Hello, creating a guild requires the applicant to be present, the receptionist said politely. I'm the one creating the guild, Xiao Yu repeated, a hint of impatience in his voice. Oh, all right, please follow me, the receptionist said, still a bit hesitant, but led Xiao Yu and his companion to the front desk. She handed Xiao Yu a form that required basic information like name, ID number, and guild name. Xiao Yu filled out the form quickly and then underwent an identity verification scan. The receptionist was surprised by the scan results and looked up in astonishment. You're level 25? Xiao Yu nodded, slightly annoyed by her reaction. Yes, is there a problem? No, no problem at all, the receptionist quickly replied, hastily completing the data entry. The receptionist then guided Xiao Yu and his companion to the upper floors of the guild building. A floating diamond-shaped crystal caught their attention. Just touch the crystal to create the guild in the system, the receptionist explained. Xiao Yu stepped forward and touched the crystal. The system prompted, please enter the guild name. Xiao Yu raised an eyebrow. They hadn't discussed the guild name beforehand. Unable to let go, he blurted out, Wang Xing Hall. Wang Xing Hall Guild, creation complete, the system announced. A panel appeared in front of Xiao Yu, displaying the guild's basic information. Xiao Yu looked at the guild name, a slight twitch at the corner of his mouth. This name seems a bit grim. Can it be changed? Guild names cannot be changed, the system responded coldly. All right then, Xiao Yu released his hand and walked back to Bai Xiao Xiao. Is it done? Bai Xiao Xiao asked nervously. Xiao Yu nodded and sent her an invitation. A system prompt appeared before Bai Xiao Xiao. Xiao Yu has invited you to join Wang Xing Hall Guild. Do you accept? Wang Xing Hall Guild? Bai Xiao Xiao's mouth twitched as she looked at Xiao Yu. What were you thinking? I was thinking about sending that guy to the afterlife, so I chose this name, Xiao Yu replied with a faint smile. Bai Xiao Xiao agreed to join. The system then prompted Xia Yu to choose an attribute bonus. He chose the intelligence bonus, considering it would benefit both of them. The system reminded them that they needed to have at least four members within 24 hours, or the guild would be automatically disbanded. Xia Yu sighed, having initially planned to recruit only by Xiao Xiao. No problem, I'll get my sisters to join, Bai Xiao Xiao said with a smile, realizing she could monitor Xia Yu's level changes after joining the guild. Are you sure? They could join better guilds, Xia Yu frowned. Oomph will become the best. Bai Xiao Xiao declared, clenching her fist. Not only will we surpass that guy's guild, but we'll also become the number one guild in Long Wano, the entire world. All right, good luck. By the way, I'll make you the vice president, Xia Yu said, updating the guild information in the system. As they left the guild building, Xia Yu stopped. Xiao Bai, even though I don't care about the other hero level professionals, they do have a myth level backer. It's unlikely they'll act against us, but just in case, I need to improve my strength. I understand you go ahead. With the Book of Space, I'll be fine, Bai Xiao Xiao replied with a smile, though there was a hint of loneliness in her voice. Take care of our guild, and I'll put any equipment I find in the guild storage for you to use, Xiao Yu said, waving goodbye before heading to the teleportation center. Meanwhile, Wei Fenghua received the news. I don't believe you can hide in the city forever. Who's going after him? He asked coldly. I'll go. A hero-level warrior stepped forward, eyes gleaming with revenge. Can you handle it alone? Someone asked uneasily. Oomph. He's just a level 25 master necromancer. I'm a level 34 hero warrior with hero level whirlwind slash and master level charge skills. I don't believe he can escape my grasp, the warrior said confidently. The rest of you follow me. Once by Xiao Xiao steps out, capture her alive. She dared to defy us, Wei Feng was said with a vicious look, recalling how Xia Yu had humiliated him earlier. Yes, young master, the others replied in unison. Xia Yu teleported to the decaying inferno, a level 27 monster lair the highest level accessible from Lingnan City's teleportation center. His targets were the level 30 hero level boss Death Screecher and the fixed level 30 challenge base Hell's Journey. All right, this will teleport you out, said the teleportation operator. With a flash of light, Xiao Yu disappeared from the teleportation center, followed closely by Wei Fenghua's warrior. Returning to the decaying inferno for the second time, 
See how you observe the still repairing buildings damaged by the previous monster rampage. Fortunately, the city lord had arrived in time to minimize the destruction. No time for sightseeing. Level up, kill the boss, and hopefully, I'll get a hero level ascension orb this time. See how you thought. At level 25, he was close to level 30. Without a hero level ascension orb, his level would be stuck at master level 30. See how you left the outpost and plunged into the swampy, decaying inferno. Following the strategy guide, he headed straight for the Death Screecher, summoning undead soldiers and archers to guard him, along with a saint ghost. Suddenly, a sharp screech sounded as a hell-screeching bird swooped towards Xiaoyu. Before it could get close, it was riddled with arrows from the undead archers. The system prompt sounded, killed hell-screeching bird normal, level 27, gained 5,600 XP. Obtained normal grade screeching dagger. The warrior following behind witnessed the scene. Such speed and damage. Are his undead soldiers legendary? Or even myth level? No wonder he's so arrogant. But it ends here, the warrior thought, stealing himself for the confrontation. Xiaoyu ventured deeper into the decay hell, encountering the screaming hell birds seven times along the way. His experience points soared to 48,800 out of 60,000. Just three more monsters to level up, and a slight smile tugged at Xiaoyu's lips. However, his expression quickly darkened this was the territory of the death screecher, yet there was no sign of it. More alarming was the stalker trailing him. In fact, Xiaoyu had noticed Wei Feng was lackey following him since he entered decay hell. Rather than confronting him immediately, Xiaoyu deliberately led him deeper into the hell. This was a common tactic among professionals in the wild, where the absence of city regulations often revealed the darker sides of human nature. The trailing warrior grew increasingly uneasy. Xiaoyu's undead soldiers were formidable, making it hard for him to find an opening. He knew he couldn't let Xiaoyu continue to grow stronger, or the consequences would be dire. Recalling Xiaoyu's promise to settle scores with them, the warrior shuddered. He discreetly drew out a hero-grade, great sword worth 24 million. Dying by this sword wouldn't be the worst fate, he thought. The warrior cautiously approached Xiaoyu, constantly checking if he had been detected. He noticed that Xiaoyu hadn't summoned his ghost legion, secretly relieved that Xiaoyu might not have mastered that skill yet. Just as the warrior prepared to launch a fatal strike, a piercing scream echoed from the sky. The sound was sharp enough to shatter an ordinary person's mind. Xiaoyu looked up, and there was his target, the Death Screecher. This level 30 hero boss had astonishing attributes. Strength 18,630, Agility 19,078, and Wisdom 16,872. Its talent, Soul Piercing Scream, dealt 20 of its strength as damage during attacks or when attacked, reducing the enemy's overall attributes by 2, stacking up to 10. Its skills included the wide range damage screech, the enemy grabbing prey, and the mentally disturbing Hell's Voice. Seeing this, the warrior retreated several dozen meters. This boss not only had terrifying attribute reducing abilities, but also three control skills. In reality, a one-second stun could be fatal. Facing the charging death screecher, Xiaoyu immediately summoned his frostbone dragon. As the dragon appeared, the temperature around them plummeted. Due to the death screecher's superior strength, it triggered the dragon's might talent, boosting the dragon's overall attributes by 10. Combined with the Inspire buff from the Holy Ghost, the frostbone dragon's attributes surged to an impressive 22,185. With a thunderous crash, the frostbone dragon smashed into the death screecher sending it flying. The dragon then unleashed its frost breath, freezing the death screecher in a storm of ice. Chunks of ice hit the ground, and the dragon relentlessly pursued, smashing the ice to pieces with its tail. The death screecher struggled to get up, only to face another round of attacks from the frostbone dragon. The boss opened its mouth wide, letting out an ear-splitting scream that sent the dragon and a horde of undead soldiers flying. Xiaoyu quickly raised his bone shield to block the attack, while the nearby warrior, caught off guard, spat out a mouthful of blood. Despite his injury, the warrior saw an opportunity. With many undead soldiers destroyed and Xiaoyu's attention focused on the boss, it was the perfect moment for an ambush. He calculated that if he could benefit from the clash between the two powerful opponents, he could eliminate Xiaoyu and claim the boss's rewards a perfect double win. The frostbone dragon roared and charged again, while the death screecher let out a bizarre cry that seemed to directly affect the soul, making Xiaoyu frown. The closest frostbone dragon was stunned on the spot. The death screecher seized the moment, clawing at the dragon's skull. The intense pain jolted the dragon awake, and it furiously unleashed another frost breath, freezing the boss again. At this critical juncture, Xiaoyu made his first personal move, casting a curse of agony on the death screecher. Kill it, he growled, and the frostbone dragon launched a ferocious charge. Just then, the warrior behind Xiaoyu also made his move. Die, necromancer, he roared, swinging his sword. Xiaoyu was ready. 
Without turning around, he shouted, Holy ghost, take care of him. The distance of just a few dozen meters was nothing for a level 34 hero warrior. It was as if it were within arm's reach. He felt a surge of joy within. As long as he could get close, the necromancer would surely be defeated. However, just as he took a step forward, a heavy hammer formed from holy light suddenly appeared in front of him. Bang! The massive impact sent the warrior flying, his bones seemingly shattered. He didn't even have time to react before he was lying on the ground, unable to move. At the same time, Xiaoyu decisively activated his talent, Soul Burn, which granted his Sainus Ghost clone a 50 boost to all attributes. The clone's stats skyrocketed instantly. Strength 24,975, Agility 24,975, Wisdom 33,412. Such power was more than enough to crush an ordinary hero-level warrior. Three Aura's Thunder, Retribution, and Sanctity swirled around the Saintus Ghost clone, emanating an overwhelming pressure. Two Saintus Ghost clones simultaneously launched a fierce attack on the down warrior. The warrior barely managed to lift his head, his face filled with despair as he saw the enemies charging at him. The sudden heavy blow had not only rendered him temporarily immobile, but also deprived him of any chance to use potions. How is this possible? What is this thing? A magic pet? A summon undead? Damn it! The warrior roared internally, struggling desperately to stand, but with his bones shattered, he couldn't perform even the most basic movements. Retribution Hammer Both Saintus ghosts swung their hammers, smashing down on the warrior on the ground. Boom! Xiaoyu watched as a mass of bloody flesh splattered from the impact. The hero-level warrior was unequivocally dead. Simultaneously, on the other side, the Hell Screamer was also shattered into countless ice shards by a single strike from the Frostbone Dragon. A system notification promptly appeared. You have killed the Hell Screamer hero boss. Level 30 experience, 100,000. Your level has increased to 26, 27. You have obtained a master-level sublimation orb and a master-level screaming ring. Xiaoyu frowned slightly. A master-level sublimation orb? Why not hero-level? He sighed but gaining two levels is still a good haul. Then, the system prompted him to choose a skill upgrade. Your Curse of Agony has been upgraded to Master Level. Choose Curse of Agony. Reward. Triple Pain increases to 10x additional pain for the enemy. Undead Summoning Skill Level 2. Choose Undead Summoning. Reward. Undead Summon Strength Potential 5. 10x Pain? Yu's eyes narrowed. Young Master. I can't wait for you to taste this. He quickly allocated 7 skill points. 4 to Undead Lord gaining a new Undead Lord slot. The remaining three to Undead Summoning. His skill levels now stood at Mythical Level Undead Summoning 25, Hero Level Undead Lord 15. Summon Undead Lord. A familiar magic circle appeared once again, and a seemingly ordinary undead soldier slowly rose. However, its bones had a rare golden hue. Golden Undead Hero, Undead Lord. Race, Undead. Level, 27. Strength, 16,362 potential, 506100. Agility, 13,392 potential, 496. Wisdom, 13,122 potential, 486. Talent, Golden Bone Special Bones with extremely high potential among the undead. Defense 100, gains 100 strength per level. Skills, Whirlwind Slash, Double Strike Charge. Although the stats seemed unremarkable, Xiaoyu keenly sensed something different about this undead it had its own sharpness, even showing defiance towards Xiaoyu, not greeting him upon being summoned. Interesting, Xiaoyu chuckled. Is this what they call a promising individual? Despite its defiant attitude, Xiaoyu knew it would obey his commands without question. That was enough. After recalling the golden undead, Xiaoyu ordered the undead soldiers to dig up the warrior's equipment a full set of level 30 master level gear. Not bad, not bad, Xiaoyu calculated. When I reach level 30, I'll equip my Ghost Guardian with this set. Then I'll have another powerful warrior protector by my side. A sly smile appeared on his lips. The young master is really kind, gifting talents and equipment. I wonder if he'll offer his head next? With that, Xiaoyu headed towards the fixed challenge space. Located in a cave on a small mountain deep within the corrupt hell, it was known as the level 30 challenge space. Hell's journey. Inside were five level 30 hero bosses, each a child of demons. The most powerful boss was the level 34 legendary boss, the Demon Mother. These high-level bosses had a decent chance of dropping hero-level sublimation orbs. However, Hell's Journey only opened once every two weeks for a single day, and a maximum of four teams, or 16 people, could enter each time. Due to the high difficulty of Hell's Journey and the remote location of Lingnan City, which lacked other suitable monster nests for level 30 professionals, few people made a special trip to challenge this fixed space. Usually, they would go in without a full team, 
So there was no ticket selling or competition like in some popular challenge spaces, but rather a first-come, first-served basis. As Xiaoyu approached the cave entrance, he heard the sound of loud chatter from inside. Are there so many people for Hell's Journey this time? He quickened his pace and walked in. Upon entering the cave, Xiaoyu saw at least five teams present, including himself, then made six teams. His arrival caused the arguing crowd to pause, their eyes turning towards him. Seeing the undead following Xiaoyu, someone whispered, a hidden class, a necromancer? Hmm? Just one person. Seeing Xiaoyu alone, the crowd breathed a slight sigh of relief. A burly man stepped forward and bluntly said, Brother, there's no room this time. Come back next time. Xiaoyu stood firm, resolutely walking forward. No, I want a spot. He glanced around challengingly and asked, Are we deciding who gets to enter the challenge space? By paying, fighting, or an all-out brawl? His words silenced everyone. Someone muttered, This guy must be a battle maniac, stirring up trouble right away. A calm voice spoke up, We're all professionals here. There's no need to kill each other. We're civilized people. Why not discuss it peacefully? Xiaoyu sneered. Can you really come to an agreement? Or are you just going to haggle like in a market? In situations like this, it's almost impossible to solve things through negotiation. As the saying goes, what you can't get on the battlefield, you definitely won't get at the negotiation table. The initial burly man, seeing Xiaoyu's arrogance, flexed his muscles and stepped closer. Brother, do you think you alone can take on all of us? Even a necromancer can't do that. Xiaoyu scoffed. Take on all of you? No need. Your team of four can come at me together. If you lose, give up your spot and leave. Xiaoyu's unwavering stance stunned the crowd, making them think he must have something to back up his arrogance. The burly man roared. I don't believe a hidden class can be that strong. With that, he lunged at Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu casually summoned a few undead soldiers to stand before him. These undead soldiers were unlike ordinary level 30 masters. Their strength attribute reached an impressive 10,800. With the addition of the Holy Maiden Ghost's Inspirer talent, their strength soared to a staggering 22,000. A burly man saw this and disdainfully swung his fist towards the undead soldiers. Confident that his near 10,000 strength would be enough to send these seemingly ordinary undead flying, he was taken aback when his punch landed on their shields with no effect. The undead soldiers didn't budge. Instead, they charged forward with a powerful impact. Boom! Bang! The burly man was instantly knocked back crashing heavily against the stone wall. His face was filled with disbelief, unable to comprehend the sheer power of these undead soldiers. Legendary tier undead summoning? The surrounding people exclaimed in shock. They finally understood why Xiaoyu was so confident. Achieving legendary tier at level 30, if his level continued to rise, he could potentially reach mythic or even god tier skills. At that point, Xiaoyu alone would be comparable to an elite army. The burly man decisively admitted defeat and quickly led his team out of the cave. Xiaoyu turned to the remaining people and calmly said, I want one spot. No problem, right? Though hesitant, everyone slowly nodded in agreement. At that moment, a woman stepped forward. Her face was flawless, yet expressionless, exuding an icy aura that kept others at a distance. Are you Xiaoyu? She asked. Xiaoyu nodded in acknowledgement. The woman directly asked, Team up? This question shocked the man behind her. However, Xiaoyu unhesitatingly refused, No. Splitting experience? Not interested in such a losing deal. The three men behind the woman were even more astonished. They couldn't believe someone would reject an invitation from Dong Han's Han. She was one of the most beautiful girls at Qianlong High School, with stunning looks and a captivating figure, her long legs drawing everyone's attention. Why? Dong Han's Han pursued the question, as it was the first time she had been so bluntly refused. Xiaoyu glanced at her indifferently and replied, No reason. Dong Han's Han didn't press further and turned to leave. With Xiaoyu setting a precedent, Another team was forced to leave. Eventually, only four teams remained. Xiaoyu alone, Dong Han Tan with her three followers and two standard assault teams. A glowing crystal in midair signaled that the level 30 challenge space, Hell's Journey, was now open. Xiaoyu was the first to step forward and enter. A sensation of weightlessness followed, and he landed on a crimson landscape. The system prompt immediately sounded. Please make a choice. 1. Prioritize killing the demon mother. Reward. Bone shield skill level 2. 2. Prioritize killing five demon sons and challenge the enraged demon mother. Reward. Legendary deer class specific staff 1. Skill points 2. 3. Challenge mission. Kill the demon mother at the center of hell and receive rewards based on performance evaluation. Xiaoyu unhesitatingly chose the most difficult option killing the enraged demon mother. This was his true objective. Suddenly, Xiaoyu noticed a white figure not far away it was Dong Han Tan, who had also chosen to go solo. Their eyes met and Dong Han Tan merely nodded before moving on. Sue, 
Xiaoyu summoned his frostbone dragon and mounted it, flying towards the direction of the demon sons. He had to kill five demon sons before any other team killed the demon mother, triggering her enraged state. Dong Han Tan watched as Xiaoyu flew overhead on his frostbone dragon, feeling a hint of envy. She quickly realized that Xiaoyu was likely also targeting the demon sons. With his displayed strength, he could indeed challenge the enraged demon mother. Deciding to follow him, she wanted to see just how powerful this mysterious necromancer was. Xiaoyu flew to the edge of a volcano and saw a dense group of red rock demons on the ground. Su go level up, he commanded. Yes, master, the frostbone dragon responded, diving downwards. The level 28 ordinary red rock demons were no match for Xiaoyu's mythic tier undead soldiers and were quickly slaughtered. System prompts continuously appeared. Killed ordinary red rock demon, level 28, experience 5400. Killed ordinary red rock demon, level 28, experience 5400. Your level has increased to 28. You have obtained an ordinary red rock demon dagger. The 64,000 experience points from the 12 red rock demons, combined with previous accumulated experience, successfully leveled Xiaoyu up. Xiaoyu faced a crucial decision. Upgrade Ghost Sentinel by two levels, learn a level 1 superior poison mist spell, or obtain a level 1 superior corrosive orb. Each option offered unique benefits. Ghost Sentinel could equip gear up to five levels higher than its own, the poison mist spell level would increase by one, and corrosive orb would lower the enemy's magic resistance by an additional 10 upon hitting. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu chose Ghost Sentinel. This decision meant that Ghost Sentinel could now equip gear up to level 33, including the full set from the previous warrior. The attributes of the Ghost Sentinel changed significantly. Race, Undead, Level, 28, Strength, 24,731, Potential 252, Agility, 9,526, Potential 252, Wisdom, 8,452, Potential 252, Its Talent, Two-Handed Sword Mastery, Increased damage by 20 and attack speed by 30 when using a two-handed sword. Skills included heavy slash, charge, and power strike, with the latter increasing physical damage by 150 of its strength for every 0.5 seconds charged, up to a maximum of 5 seconds. Additionally, it became more resistant to control and knockback effects. The warrior's gear primarily boosted strength, resulting in the Ghost Sentinel's strength reaching an impressive 24,000, comparable to a level 30 hero warrior. With the added bonus of the Saint Ghost's Inspirer talent, it became a formidable opponent even at the hero level. As it leveled up and acquired better equipment, it would only grow stronger. However, the downside was that all gear would be lost upon death, making it a risky investment. Xiaoyu gazed at the distant volcano with anticipation. He hoped to obtain a heroic ascension ore from the five level 30 hero bosses and one level 32 enraged legendary boss he was about to face. Entering the boss area, Xiaoyu chose to walk, advancing slowly with the protection of undead soldiers rather than riding his frost skeleton dragon. He needed to defeat the bosses and level up by killing monsters. As one red rock demon after another fell, Xiaoyu's experience for level 28 was more than halfway filled. Suddenly, a deafening roar echoed around. Foolish necromancer, how dare you slaughter my minions? Today, I will sever your head and use it as a chamber pot. A massive demon appeared before Xiaoyu. Standing four to five meters tall, it had a pair of demonic horns, its body covered in crimson scales, and wielded a heavy warhammer. The demon boss's attributes were as follows. Race Demon. Level, 30. Strength, 17,010. Agility, 17,248. Wisdom, 18,701. It possessed the flame demon talent, allowing it to wield more destructive hellfire. When using fire skills, the flames would transform into hellfire increasing damage by 30 and adding an extra 10 soul damage. Its skills included Massive Fireball, Fire Rain, Flame Burst, and Fire Repulsion Ring. Facing this formidable opponent, Xiaoyu summoned the fully equipped Ghost Sentinel. With the Saint Ghost Blessing, the Ghost Sentinel's strength soared to 34,000 and its agility reached 18,000, both surpassing the hero-level boss. From afar, Don Han Tan, who had been following Xiaoyu, witnessed the scene. She was astonished by the power of the level 30 hero boss and began to doubt Xiaoyu's strength. She had initially believed her good equipment would allow her to challenge the boss, but now her confidence waned. Unaware of Xiaoyu's background, Dong Han Tan assumed his gear was ordinary. She looked forward to the impending battle, curious to see how Xiaoyu would handle the powerful adversary. However, her confusion deepened when she saw Xiaoyu deploy only one Ghost Sentinel. Although a well-equipped Ghost Sentinel could indeed counter a hero boss, she was skeptical considering the high cost of good equipment. The demon boss, however, grew wary of the ghost sentinel, sensing a threat comparable to its irate mother. Yet, its demonic pride wouldn't allow it to retreat. 
Perish once more undead, the demon boss roared, launching a massive fireball, several meters in diameter, resembling a small sun, toward the ghost's sentinel. The ghost sentinel quickly charged up, causing the air to momentarily freeze. Then, it unleashed a sword beam that cleaved the fireball, causing it to explode midair, with the remaining force continuing toward the demon boss. The sword beam struck the demon boss directly, leaving a several meter long gash on its body. The demon boss staggered back, eyes filled with fear as it realized the gap in strength. As the demon boss attempted to flee, the ghost sentinel charged forward, its form becoming a blur. The demon boss hastily cast fire repulsion ring, but the ring was sliced apart by another sword beam. The ghost sentinel's great sword thrust forward, piercing the demon boss's abdomen. The demon boss let out a horrific scream, trying to pull out the sword, but the vast difference in strength made it impossible. Finally, the ghost sentinel pulled its sword apart with both hands, splitting the demon boss in two, with blood spraying like sparks. Ah, no ascension orb, Xiaoyu sighed. Behind him, Dong Hans Han stood in shock, her mouth agape, murmuring in disbelief. How is this possible? Defeating a level 30 hero boss, so easily? Dong Han Shan's eyes narrowed in fear. She thought to herself, this ghost guardian must be Xia Yu's real trump card. Meanwhile, Xia Yu had long since noticed the woman following him, but he didn't mind. Using the abilities of the Holy Ghost, he easily detected Dong Han Shan's presence. In the next moment, Xia Yu mounted his frostbone dragon and headed straight for the next demon child's location. The dragon's wings spread wide, and with a gust of cold wind, they quickly disappeared into the sky. At that exact moment, in a dark palace, a bloated four-horned demon opened its blood-red eyes. The demon mother roared in fury. My son Yindi has been slain. Damn humans, you will all die. The system immediately sent a notification to all players. The demon mother has entered a rage state, increasing all attributes by 1.1 times and drop rates by 1.5 times. Two other teams were enraged upon hearing the news. Who was so reckless to kill the demon child early? Now the demon mother is even harder to defeat. Xiaoyu, however, was unfazed and secretly pleased. Soon, a pitch-black forest appeared before him. In the center of the forest, a towering tree, over 10 meters tall, was slowly moving. This was the second demon child. The system displayed the boss's information. Race demon. Level, 30. Strength, 18,110. Agility, 18,348. Wisdom, 17,753. Talent, demon of wood. Traits, lifesteal 10, life recovery speed 50, trait effect 100 when severely injured. Skills, life steal, vine attack, trance summon. The demon boss roared. I have found the murderer of my brother. I will offer your head to our mother to quell her anger. Before the words even finished, dozens of vines shot towards Xia Yu like arrows. Xia Yu remained calm and softly commanded. Ghost guardian, Su, dragon breath. The frostbone dragon let out a long howl, spread its wings, and deftly dodged the vines. Simultaneously, it exhaled a breath of freezing air instantly freezing all the vines. The ghost guardian descended from the sky, heading straight for the demon boss. Charge! Xiaoyu ordered. The ghost guardian dove down, taking five full seconds to charge its attack. The terrifying physical damage, at 1500 strength, struck the demon boss's head with a resounding crack, splitting it in half from head to tail. The system notification popped up. Demon horn. Hero level, 30. Wisdom, 1801. Strength, 701. Life steal. Steals life equal to 300 of your wisdom every two seconds from a target. Xiaoyu nodded in satisfaction. Not bad. I can equip it when I reach level 30. Without hesitation, he chose the necromancer profession, gaining a skill level 2 and wisdom potential 50 as rewards. Checking his experience points, Xiaoyu saw he had reached 2, 953, 6000, and 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Just one more boss kill, and he would reach level 30. Then he would need a heroic ascension orb. At that moment, Another deafening roar echoed from the Dark Palace. All players received a system notification. The Demon Mother is even angrier, increasing all attributes by 1.2 times and drop rates by 2 times. The two other teams looked at each other, hesitant. Someone killed another demon child? This is trouble. If we go in and they kill another, we'll be trapped inside. They decided to change their strategy. Forget it. Let's go kill the demon children. Let that necromancer or the genius girl from Qianlong Academy handle the Demon Mother since they're so confident. Meanwhile, Dong Hans Han, who was running at full speed, was shocked by the system message. That guy killed another demon child in seconds? How terrifying! Could his ghost guardian be of true god level? She quickly dismissed the thought. Impossible. Only mythical level powerhouses, 
known as demigods, possess true god skills. I've never heard of anything below mythical level having such skills. Finally, she found a reason that convinced her. Maybe his talent has some unprecedented high ear abilities. Hidden professions are so rare, and many rare talents have yet to be discovered. She couldn't help but sigh. No wonder Ching's sisters are so infatuated with him. Even to me, he's like a miracle. In 19 years, I've never been so astonished, nor have I ever been so preoccupied with a man. Dong Hans Han quickly guessed Xia Yu's goal. He must be aiming to kill all five demon children and then challenge the demon mother. The purpose is clearly to obtain the heroic ascension orb. She knew such an orb, even if available on the market, was beyond the reach of ordinary people. But is this man really ordinary? Xia Yu mounted his frostbone dragon again and flew towards an icy mountain. Soon, an ice crystal demon appeared before him. Ghost Guardian, Xia Yu commanded. With a few crisp sounds, the ice crystal demon shattered into countless ice shards, scattering across the icy mountain. The system notification popped up. You have reached level 30. Please choose your talent reward. 1. Undead Scourge. The lives you take will be converted into ordinary undead soldiers under your command for one hour. 2. Sacrifice. The damage you take will be shared by your summoned undead by 50. 3. Undead Avenger. When your summoned undead's health is below 20, they will self-destruct, dealing 100 of their total attributes as fire damage. Xia Yu chose Undead Scourge without hesitation. Gaining the reward, convert ordinary undead to elite undead. Next, he chose Sacrifice, increasing the shared damage to 99. Finally, he chose Undead Avenger, doubling the self-destruct damage. Faced with such generous rewards, Xia Yu was secretly delighted. Is there even a choice to be made? Choice, dedication. Xia Yu unhesitatingly chose this powerful ability. With 99 of the damage he receives transferred to his summoned undead, it meant that as long as his undead minions were around, he would be nearly invincible. Of course, if that one damage was fatal, then no talent would matter. Taking a deep breath, Xiaoyu continued to choose undead summoning skills. As he leveled up his skills by two levels, he was thrilled to discover that he could now summon undead mages. Reaching the milestone of level 30, he began equipping his new gear. However, as he searched through his bag, he couldn't find the heroic ascension orb and sighed in frustration. He picked up a shimmering ice crystal robe and carefully examined its attributes. Ice crystal robe, heroic level. Level, 30. Intelligence, 1977. Agility, 1004. Frost armor. Special effect. Grants a shield equal to 100 of extra intelligence and reduces the movement speed of nearby enemies by 30. If the shield is not attacked within 30 minutes, it will automatically regenerate. If broken, it has a 24-hour cooldown. Oh. An upgraded version of the bone robe. Not bad, Xiaoyu muttered to himself as he donned the powerful gear. Meanwhile, the guild chat suddenly buzzed with activity. Oh my god, Xiao Xiao, look! Your undead mage is level 30 now. Hua Xiaoyu, a long-legged mage, exclaimed in shock. Bai Xiao Xiao responded coolly, oh. She had been keeping an eye on the guild's updates and naturally noticed Xiaoyu rocketing from the 20s to level 30 in just a few minutes. She felt both admiration and frustration recalling how she had jumped with joy upon reaching level 6, while Xiaoyu had already left her far behind. The guild leader is so strong. I wonder when he can help us level up again, Ling Yin said, her eyes sparkling as she gazed at the guild panel displaying the dazzling level 30 figure. Tiger Weiyang couldn't hold back and suggested, Xiao Xiao, shall we go level up too? Bai Xiao Xiao hesitated for a moment, then remembered she had the space book, which could teleport everyone to safety if they encountered danger. She nodded, let's go. We can't let him look down on us. We can level up on our own too. Yeah. Everyone responded excitedly. With a wave of her hand, Bai Xiao Xiao teleported the team to a level 6 monster nest. As soon as they left, Wei Fenghua stood up, his eyes flashing with malice. Finally out? Are they? Follow them. He and his subordinates quietly slipped away. Meanwhile, Xiao Yu was wreaking havoc in the demon realm. With a thunderous crash, a demon spawn fell heavily to the ground, killed instantly by a single attack from a ghostly guardian. Glancing at the drop gear, Xiaoyu was slightly disappointed. Just master level gear? Although its attributes were slightly better than his current equipment, the skills were terrible, so he decided not to switch. The demon mother's fury had reached its peak. Stomping in anger, her attributes increased by 1.4 times, and the drop rate tripled. The fourth one, just one more to go, Xiaoyu said, mounting his frost WYRM and heading straight for the last demon spawn. Two other teams were still on their way to the demon spawn when they heard a dragon's roar overhead. Looking up, they saw a frost WYRM flying by. Damn it, a flying undead, and it's a frost WYRM. This travel speed is enviable, someone remarked. That dragon rider is really something. Stop admiring and hurry up, 
or we'll miss out on everything, urged another, and they quickened their pace. But before they could arrive, word spread that the last demon spawn had already been killed. Both teams were stunned. What? The demon spawn was killed in seconds? How long did that undead mage take? A minute? 30 seconds? A level 30 hero boss demon spawn killed in seconds? They all had the same thought. Never provoke this undead mage. If they ever encountered him, they should steer clear. Someone who could kill a level 30 hero boss demon spawn in seconds was beyond their league. As Xiaoyu looked at the excellent grade gear dropped by the demon spawn, he was a bit dazed. Am I out of luck? A hero level boss drops excellent grade gear? Will the demon mother drop ordinary gear next? No way, right? Just then, Xiaoyu felt a powerful presence locking onto him, likely the demon mother herself. He immediately prepared for battle, summoning undead mages and archers for ranged support instead of undead soldiers, as they would be instantly killed by a 1.5 times attribute, level 32 legendary boss. The tanking would be handled by Buck, Sue, the Golden Undead, and Ghostly Guardians, while the Saint Ghost was ready to ambush the Demon Mother. Here she comes. Xiaoyu looked up to see a massive lump of flesh flying towards him. Compared to her enormous body, her wings seemed incredibly small, clearly not the source of her flight. Human, you will pay for your slaughter. Your soul will be tormented in the flames for eternity, the Demon Mother roared. Demon Mother Legendary Boss. Race Demon. Level. 32. Strength. 42,688. Agility. 35,357. Intelligence. 44,019. Talents. Demon Lord. Truly powerful demons have their own domains. 200 strength, 200 intelligence per level. Reduces incoming damage by 20. Vast fat. Millennia of accumulated fat absorbs 30 of damage. Once the fat is depleted, 200 agility per level. Skills. Hellfire Rain, Bewitch, Whip of Torment, Curse of Agony, Curse of Weakness. Xiaoyu frowned. Why is this demon mother stronger than usual? He recalled from the strategy guides that the fully enraged demon mother's highest attribute should be around 35,000. Yet this one had attributes as high as 44,000, a whole 9,000 more. 40,000 attributes on the demon mother. Both teams showed terrified expressions. Even a level 40 hero with maxed out main attributes and full gear would struggle to reach such stats. In quitting the challenge space. In the next second, both teams chose to exit. Fortunately, it was a fixed challenge space, which still allowed them to leave. From a distance, Dong Hans Han watched in disbelief, wondering, can Xiaoyu really handle this demon mother? Can a level 30 master truly defeat a legendary boss with 40,000 attributes? Humans perish, roared the mother of demons. Her massive arms suddenly transformed into a flaming whip, lashing directly at Xiaoyu. She knew the tactics of necromancers well. Strike the main body first, not the summoned undead. The fiery whip sped towards Xiaoyu with astonishing speed, reaching him almost in the blink of an eye. At this critical moment, Xiaoyu's spatial blink, vanishing instantly. With a loud thud, only a few unfortunate undead archers were hit, turning to ash instantly. Reappearing a short distance away, Xiaoyu immediately commanded, Attack! All the summoned undead surged towards the mother of demons like a tidal wave. Arrows and corrosive balls filled the air as Xiaoyu seized the moment to cast a curse of agony. The mother of demons scoffed, swatting away many of the arrows and corrosive balls. But the sudden, intense pain made her look at her arm in horror. Though there were only minor wounds, the pain seemed to pierce her very soul. Curse of agony. Eleven-fold pain. Damn you, human. How is your curse so insidious? Enraged, the mother of demons summoned a hellfire rain. Dark red fireballs descended from the sky, but they failed to hit the nimble Xiaoyu. With another spatial blink, he easily escaped the attack range. At that moment, an ice frost dragon seized the opportunity, unleashing a breath of icy frost. With a loud boom, a thin layer of ice formed on the mother of demons. But with a mere shake, she shattered the ice. Weak dragon, she sneered, then whipped the flaming lash at an odd angle. With a crack, the ice frost dragon was shattered in half, letting out a pained howl as it crashed heavily to the ground. The mother of demons fixed her icy gaze on Xiaoyu. Human, I didn't expect you to use spatial blink, but how many more times can you use it? Xiaoyu smiled and replied, who knows? Inwardly, he calculated the toll each spatial blink took on his mental energy and the subtle damage to his body, realizing he couldn't overuse it. Suddenly, a spectral guardian charged at the mother of demons from Adair. Three halos surrounded it, its dual swords wreathed in fire and lightning. Sensing the threat, the mother of demons cast enchantment. If you're so strong, then serve me. But just as the Spectral Guardian was about to be controlled, the Holy Maiden Ghost Purity Aura activated, 
dispelling the enchantment. The Spectral Guardian swung its sword without hesitation, leaving a massive gash on the Mother of Demons, black and yellow fluid gushing out. Ah! She screamed in agony, the eleven-fold pain curse becoming unbearable. At that moment, two holy maidens summoned judgment swords, enveloped in fire and lightning, aiming directly at the Mother of Demons. This was Xiaoyu's trump card. With multiple buffs, the Holy Maiden Ghost's intelligence attribute had reached an astonishing 52,124. The Mother of Demons stared in horror at the twin angels radiating a terrifying aura. Angels? Why are there angels in this realm? She felt the impending threat of death, but was too weak to evade. With dark red flames encasing her fists, she desperately struck at the Judgment Swords. With a PFF, the swords pierced through her chest, shattering her hands and leaving two large holes. Blood gushed out as she glared at Xiaoyu, roaring her final words, Damn you, human. Don't think you've won. The abyss is coming, and the world will be engulfed by it. Two massive hammers suddenly smashed down on her head. With a resounding boom, she exploded in midair. A system notification then sounded, declaring Xiaoyu's victory. He received abundant rewards. The legendary boots Inferno Stompers, the legendary Lord's Ring, a hero-level ascension orb, and the legendary Staff Ashwalker. Most excitingly, he also obtained the mythical ring Great Demon Fingerbone and an additional hero-level ascension orb. Gazing at these precious rewards, Xiaoyu couldn't help but sigh. Thank you for giving your life for such bountiful rewards. His eyes lingered on the mythical Great Demon Fingerbone and the legendary staff Inferno Blaze, sparkling with excitement. The Legend of the Demon Lord's Fingerbone, Mythical Tier, 30 Intelligence, 2835 Strength, 1347 Hellfire Skill converted to Hellfire Skill, 30 Fire Damage, and an additional 10 soul damage. Ash Walker, legendary tier, 30 intelligence, 2268 strength, 1057 to all undead skills. Ash Walker leaves a trail of ashes when your undead minions walk, causing enemies on it to take 20 intelligence as fire damage per second. Infernal Boots, legendary tier, 30 intelligence, 2273 agility, 1042 movement speed 50. Lord's Ring, legendary tier, 30 intelligence, 2307 agility, 987 commander. Your allies deal 30 more damage. Xiaoyu glanced over his equipment with satisfaction, thinking to himself, half legendary, one mythical, and the lowest tier is heroic. There can't be many in my level with gear like this. If I sold everything, it could fetch billions. Damn, money really isn't a thing for professionals. Suddenly, Xiaoyu sensed something unusual and turned to look at Dong Han's Han. Her eyes were wide open her face full of shock, staring at the sky. Her lips trembled slightly. We, we won? What was that angel? Dong Hanshan's mind raced as she tried to make sense of what she had just seen. Xiaoyu's undead summon? An undead lord? Since when do undead have angels? Could it be a demonic pet? A pet that can one-shot a legendary boss with 40,000 attributes? A true god? A main god? Her worldview shattered. She muttered to herself, on earth, those with true god equipment are fewer than 10, and there's not even one main god tier. Xiaoyu hasn't even taken the professional exam yet. This year's national top scorer has to be him, right? I mean, who in his generation could compare to this monster? Dong Han's Han quietly chose to exit the instance, pretending she hadn't seen Xiaoyu's trump card. Exit instance. Xiaoyu also chose to exit, noticing Dong Han's Han standing nearby, seemingly waiting for him. Trying to appear calm, Dong Han's Han smiled and asked, Big Hall, you took down five demon sons. Did they drop anything good? Xiaoyu replied indifferently. The drops from the demon's sons were mediocre. One even dropped a common grade item, which was ridiculous. Dong Han's Han continued probing. That demon mother was insane. I exited the challenge space as soon as I saw her. You took so long. Did you lose or win? I won. Xiaoyu glanced at her. Dong Han Shan's face was full of shock. Oh my god. That was a legendary boss with 40,000 attributes. And you won? Seriously? Someone nearby exclaimed. What? A demon mother with 40,000 attributes? Isn't the highest attribute in this hell journey supposed to be 35,000? Another person doubted. Dong Han's Han wouldn't lie to us. If she says there was a 40,000 attribute demon mother, I believe her. But I don't buy that this guy could defeat it. He must be tricking you, Dong Han's Han, to pique your curiosity. A woman's curiosity about a man is the beginning of her downfall. Dong Han Shan's lips twitched as she thought. If I'm being honest, my curiosity right now could drown everyone here. What was that angel? What level is this guy's undead summon? Why is an undead mage this strong? Someone suddenly realized and slandered Xiaoyu. You punk, so young and already so good at seducing girls. You must be the infamous player from Lingnan City. Xiaoyu scoffed. Believe it or not. Sue, let's go. 
With that, he walked out of the cave, summoned his frostbone dragon, mounted it, and flew away. Someone exclaimed, a frostbone dragon? Didn't Lingnan City recently face a monster outbreak? And there was an undead mage riding a frostbone dragon who single-handedly defended an outpost against a level 30 boss. Could it be him? What's the big deal? We could do that too. Someone remarked truthfully as they were students from the second best school in Longwa Qianlong Academy. Dong Han's Han watched Xiaoyu fly away and sighed. I wanted to add him on VX, but he just left like that. She glared at the guys who had been following her around, ruining her plans. Let's go back to school and find Qing Mei to get his VX. Meanwhile, elsewhere, leveled up, finally level 7. Ling Yin shouted excitedly. They had been out for a while and finally gained a level. Everyone was happy with the slight boost in power. Hu Weiyang grinned. Guys, I have some good news. Bai Xiao Xiao smiled but said dismissively. You must have learned a good skill, right? He got me. Master level shield bash, Hu Weiyang said, swinging her shield. Hua Chaiyu looked envious. Master level? I'm jealous. The best I got was a 1 to fireball skill. Ling Yin pouted. I'm not happy. I only got a common level triple shot. Bai Xiao Xiao rolled her eyes. Triple shot is a core skill for archers, and you're not happy. Just then, a cold voice interrupted. Everyone seems happy now, but you won't be laughing soon. The four girls turned to see Wei Fenghua, their smiles vanishing instantly. Wei Fenghua, who Wei Yang and the others had heard from Bai Xiao Xiao how he had tried to force her to marry him and despised him for it. They admired Xia Yu's actions. Now that he had shown up, it was clear what he wanted. The four huddled together. Wei Fenghua laughed arrogantly. What you think you can resist? Three level 30 hero class professionals against you four little level seven trainees? Just lie down and enjoy it. Ling Yin cursed, bastard. Idiot. Scum. Wei Fenghua seemed pleased, knowing what was about to happen. A few insults didn't bother him. He knew there would be more to come. Bai Xiao Xiao's voice was eerily calm. For what you've done these past two days, I will repay you a hundredfold, no, a thousandfold. Wei Fenghua. This made Wei Fenghua uneasy. He shouted, grab them, spatial teleport. The four girls vanished before Wei Fenghua's eyes. Watching his prey disappear, Wei Fenghua clenched his fists, recalling by Xiao Xiao's words and the man who had recently intimidated several hero class professionals. Fear slowly crept in, making him regret the past two days' actions. Maybe I should have listened to my father and brought enough sincerity to invite the holy priest to join our guild. Housekeeper, you can head home early today, Xiao Yu said, standing at the villa's entrance and speaking to the elderly housekeeper. He noticed that only the housekeeper was at home today and decided to give him the day off. Returning to his room, Xiaoyu retrieved a heroic ascension orb from his drawer. The orb glimmered under the light, more beautiful than any gemstone in the world. However, Xiaoyu didn't treat it as a mere decoration. Without hesitation, he began to absorb its mysterious power. As the power surged into him, Xiaoyu felt a tremendous transformation within his body. The skill seemed to meld into his flesh and bones, becoming second nature. At the same time, a gray-black mist emanated from his body, quickly enveloping the entire villa and catching the attention of several strong individuals in the city. Someone's advancing to the heroic level again. Who could it be? The city lord, situated in the city center, looked up, his gaze directed towards Xia Yu's villa. It's fascinating that this small city can still produce new heroes. Hmm, this aura? Could it be that necromancer who disrupted our plans earlier? After the ascension was complete, Xia Yu felt the profound changes within him and thought to himself, the transformation at the heroic level is much greater than at the master or official levels, just as expected. A system notification sounded. Ascension complete. Your attribute potential has been enhanced. Your magic pet, the Holy Ghost, has ascended to heroic level. Your retribution hammer has evolved into divine punishment, judgment sword into God's judgment, and retribution aura into solar aura. You have gained a new talent. Brilliance master. Xiaoyu checked his attribute panel and found that his potential had tripled. He meticulously reviewed the detailed attributes and skills of both himself and his magic pet, the Holy Ghost. Seeing the incredible attributes and skills of the Holy Ghost, Xiaoyu couldn't help but smile wryly. No wonder the divine selection system gave this as a welcome gift. Every time I think I've made significant progress, I look at the Holy Ghost and realize the gap is immense. And with higher levels, this gap will only widen. Just then, a spatial disturbance caught Xiaoyu's attention. He immediately realized that Xiao Bai had used spatial teleportation, possibly due to danger. Xiaoyu quickly opened his door and saw Bai Xiao Xiao stepping out of her room as well. Are you all right? Xiaoyu asked with concern. Bai Xiao Xiao replied in a somber tone, We're fine, it's just that the young master has come knocking again. She explained that she had just leveled up when she was forced to return, her voice filled with resentment and anger. Wei Fenghua. Xiaoyu's eyes darkened instantly. 
a heavy killing intent brewing within them. You were at that monster's lair just now, right? Is he still there? Bai Xiao Xiao frowned and asked. What are you planning to do? Give him a lesson he'll never forget, Xiao Yu said coldly. Hua Chao Yu, somewhat uneasy, reminded him. He has heroic level professionals around him. At that moment, a change in the guild panel drew everyone's attention. Sister Hua, look at the guild. The guild leader is at heroic level now, someone exclaimed. Everyone quickly opened the guild panel, and there it was displayed. Guild leader. Xiaoyu, level 30, heroic necromancer. He's really reached hero level. Ling Yin exclaimed, her eyes sparkling with disbelief. She scanned Xiaoyu up and down, as if seeing her teammate in a new light. This is ridiculous. We're only level 7. Xiaoyu smiled casually and said lightly, there was some luck involved. Let's go. If we don't get rid of him, it won't be easy for you to level up, right? Though his tone was calm, he had already made up his mind. Since the opponent dared to attack Xiao Bai, they wouldn't be leaving unscathed. All right, Ling Yin nodded. We encountered him in the corrupted village of the level 6 monster lair. With the answer, Xiaoyu immediately set off. Bai Xiao Xiao followed closely, saying firmly, I'm coming too. Xiaoyu glanced at her and nodded slightly. Stay behind me when the time comes. Not wanting to be left out, Hua Xiaoyu and her two friends hurried to catch up. Can we come too? Clearly, they were enraged by the unprecedented threat and couldn't calm their anger. Xiaoyu nodded in agreement. Sure, you can level up there while I keep an eye out for you. Yay, we're getting a boost from a hero level player. This is awesome. The three cheered excitedly. The group of five used the teleportation center to arrive at the corrupted village outpost and rushed to the last known location of Wei Fenghua, only to find it deserted. Xiaoyu frowned and softly ordered, Ghost Legion, dig out all the information on everyone around here. It was his first time summoning the Ghost Legion. Several ghostly blue flames scattered, covering a radius of several kilometers. As the information gathered, Xiaoyu's frown deepened. He muttered to himself, Escaped, huh? Consider yourself lucky this time. Hope you won't be so fortunate next time. Bai Xiao Xiao noticed and asked cautiously, Can't find him? Xiaoyu sighed and forced a smile, Yeah, he got away this time. Since we're here, you guys can level up. I'll keep watch. Bai Xiao Xiao gritted her teeth. All right, but I swear I'll make him pay a thousandfold. I'll curse him with pain, so bad he'll scream. Xiaoyu added, I'll heal him halfway through the torture, just to prolong his suffering. Their sinister laughter sent chills down Hua Xiaoyu and her friend's spines, thinking how well-matched the two were. With Xiaoyu's protection, Bai Xiaoxiao's group found leveling up much easier. They targeted the undead corrupted, allowing Bai Xiaoxiao, a holy priest, to join in the attacks with significant damage. Every time Bai Xiaoxiao cast a healing spell, the corrupted would howl in agony, its body sizzling as if corroded by acid. Then Hua Xiaoyu's fireball and Ling Yan's double shot would severely wound it. This cycle continued until the corrupted was finally defeated. Xiaoyu observed silently, inwardly criticizing. So slow. It took them over two minutes and two rounds of skills to kill a single corrupted. At this rate, they could only kill a dozen or so in a day. However, Bai Xiao Xiao and her friends were quite satisfied with their progress, high-fiving in celebration after each kill. Xiaoyu knew this was normal efficiency for typical adventurers. His method of summoning an undead army to sweep through was something even other necromancers struggled to achieve. Suddenly, Xiaoyu's eyes lit up, found the boss. He had kept the Ghost Legion searching for the boss or elites in the corrupted village. And finally, there was a result. I found the boss. Let's go kill it. Xiaoyu called out to them. Kill the boss? Can we handle it? Hua Xiaoyu, the team mage, was the first to express doubt. Can we? The young archer Ling Yin frowned, unsure. Hu Weiyang, however, was excited. Boss fight, let's go. We can get good loot. Bai Xiao Xiao nodded in agreement. Since he's helping us find the boss, we can't let him down. Besides, with him watching, we won't be in danger. Hearing this, the other two brightened up, realizing there was no real risk in practicing against the boss now, and they were eager to try. Without further delay, Xiaoyu led them to the center of the corrupted village. A massive, patchwork-like corrupted boss appeared before them. The Butcher, a common boss, corrupted species, level 7, strength 71, agility 62, intelligence 38. Xiaoyu quickly analyzed. This boss has two skills, charge and heavy strike with a dash ability. Be careful, Xiao Xiao. Hu Weiyang raised her shield warily. If the boss charges into our back line, we'll fail this challenge. You be careful too, Bai Xiao Xiao reminded. If the boss's attacks hit, they'll inflict a poison effect that stacks. If it gets too much, call out, and I'll dispel it for you. Bai Xiao Xiao's team immediately began discussing strategies to deal with the opposing boss. Xiaoyu stood nearby, nodding approvingly from time to time. Despite being a young team, they showed potential to grow into a formidable force. After formulating their plan, the four of them cautiously approached the boss. Suddenly, 
They launched their attack simultaneously. Arrows whizzed through the air. Flames danced. Healing light shimmered. And Hu Weiyang charged forward like an arrow released from a bow. The butcher boss was instantly dealt a heavy blow. Three arrows pierced deep into its body. Half of its form was charred, and melting marks appeared all over. Hu Weiyang's charge forced it back a step, but the boss quickly counterattacked, swinging a massive arm at Hu Weiyang. Heavy strike! Hu Weiyang shouted, swiftly raising her shield to block. Bang! The tremendous impact forced Hu Weiyang to stagger back several steps, her face turning pale in an instant. Are you alright, Sister Hu? Bai Xiao Xiao asked anxiously. I'm fine, stick to the plan. Hu Weiyang gritted her teeth and responded. The battle continued with the team working in perfect harmony. Hu Weiyang skillfully drew the boss's attention with her excellent threat control, allowing the mage and archer to unleash their full power. Bai Xiao Xiao focused on removing debuffs and healing injuries. The butcher boss accumulated more and more wounds, and victory seemed imminent. Just then, three arrows suddenly flew in from a distance, aiming directly at the nearly defeated boss. Someone's trying to steal the boss. Bai Xiao Xiao's team realized the danger simultaneously. Xia Yu reacted swiftly, commanding his undead archer to shoot three arrows, intercepting the incoming projectiles. Keep fighting, I'll handle these guys, Xia Yu said, turning to face the four newcomers with a faint smile on his face. Stop right there, you won't get this boss, Xia Yu said calmly. The young man at the front glared at Xia Yu. Necromancer, are you Xia Yu? Step aside, we found this boss first. You're the one stealing from us. Oh, classmates, it? Xia Yu's tone remained calm. Then turn around and leave, and I won't hold your arrows against you. The young man wanted to argue, but when he saw the frost dragon hovering above Xia Yu and felt the overwhelming aura, he fell silent. Impossible, what level is this undead lord? As Xia Yu ascended? Official level? The young man was shocked. You can leave now, Xia Yu smiled. Since we're classmates, I don't want to go too far. Though Xia Yu maintained his smile, the group felt a chill run down their spines. They realized that if they angered Xia Yu, they might not leave alive. All right, all right, we're leaving now. The young man quickly led his group away. Meanwhile, Bai Xiao Xiao and her teammates successfully defeated the butcher boss. An excellent great staff dropped to the ground, and the four of them leveled up to level eight. Jackpot! The team cheered, exhilarated by their successful adventure. In the following days, Xia Yu focused on helping the four women level up. The teleportation center in Lingnan City no longer had monster nests suitable for his training so he dedicated his efforts to assisting them in reaching level 10. However, he did not allow them to undergo ascension, as the difficulty of the professional entrance exam is based on the practitioner's level and rank. A level 10 apprentice practitioner would only face level 10 monsters in the exam, avoiding opponents with doubled attributes due to ascension. Thus, most candidates chose to stay at level 10 for the exam. Only a select few family geniuses or those with powerful hidden professions would risk ascending to formal levels, confident in their ability to reach level 20 within seven days. Someone like Xia Yu, who had already reached level 30 as a hero class, was a rarity even in the entire history of the game merging with reality. In his spare time, Xia Yu went to the World Consortium to sell off and used equipment. Gear that was suitable for the four women was stored in the guild warehouse for them to use once they reached the appropriate levels. Considering the small size of the team and their novice status, Xia Yu did not set up a contribution points exchange system. Although the level 2030 equipment was not immediately useful, it would prepare them for future growth. The sale was highly profitable, netting CIU 170 million. Combined with the tens of millions he had left, his total assets reached 220 million. He then spent 70 million on a new necklace for himself. Cold Skull Legendary Level, Level 30. Intelligence 2830. Strength 1766. Special Effect. Your undead summons deal additional frost damage equal to 50 of your intelligence. The professional entrance exam was about to start. Early in the morning, Xia Yu sat on the balcony, watching the rising sun, and wondered if he could become the national top scorer. If even I can't be the top scorer, how terrifying must the actual one be? He shook his head and went downstairs. Since it was the professional entrance exam, Uncle Bai and Aunt Tang were both at home for a change. Aunt Tang warmly invited Xia Yu to have breakfast. Xia Yu, just do your best. Come on, have some breakfast. I made it myself, Uncle Bai added with a smile. Your Aunt Tang rarely cooks, but her skills are as good as those of the chefs at the Imperial Capital State Banquets. I hardly ever get to enjoy it. Bai Xiao Xiao also joined them for breakfast. After they finished eating, Uncle Bai personally drove the four of them to school. The school gate was crowded with students returning for the professional entrance exam. Groups of classmates gathered, discussing excitedly. Are you level 10 yet? I'm only level 9, just 300 experience points away from level 10. I won't make it in time. Ah, I'm level 10. 
But I heard Shu Shu awakened a hidden profession and was invited to join the Muscle Modification Guild. He's already level 20, and his core skill Rage has reached master level. His other skills are all at excellent level. That's really strong. Shu Shu might be this year's provincial top scorer. Too bad by Xiao Xiao is a holy priest, not in the same league as combat professions. I heard someone in Haifang City awakened a hidden profession as an ocean mage and also reached level 20. It's hard to say who will be the provincial top scorer. The highest tier combat profession has to be that advanced hidden profession, the evil dragon knight from the Zheng family. His mount is said to be a legendary dragon pet his grandfather, a mythical level powerhouse brought back from the abyss of dragons. He's a strong contender for the national top scorer. I wish I had a grandfather like that. Me too. Aunt Tang held Xia Yu's hand, full of concern. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Just do your best. Xiao Xiao won't be participating in combat since she's a healer, so make sure to stay safe during the exam. I've heard some students have died during the exam in previous years. After so many years, she had come to see Xiaoyu as her own son and future son-in-law, naturally worrying about him. Xiaoyu reassured her, Don't worry, I have a plan. If there's any danger, I'll exit the exam immediately. Good, good. That's a relief, Antang said, slightly more at ease. The students gradually entered the school building while their parents watched from the classroom doors. Xiaoyu sat in the classroom, looking around and noticing many empty seats. Some classmates had joined full-time guilds for work, some had switched to liberal arts due to not awakening a profession, and sadly, some had passed away. The homeroom teacher entered the classroom, adjusted his glasses, and spoke warmly. I'm very pleased to see you all here. It's an honor to be your homeroom teacher. Now that you're all practitioners who have survived in the monster-infested world, I don't have much to say. I wish you all the best in the exam and hope you get into your desired colleges. Let's go. The classes formed orderly lines, filing out of the classroom and gathering on the sports field. On the high platform sat the principal, vice principal, and two individuals the students had never seen before. Despite being unfamiliar, the students as practitioners could sense their powerful or undoubtedly hero-level practitioners and today's examiners. A middle-aged man looked at the young faces, silently praying for them. These students are really unlucky, facing Feng's last exam before retirement. The difficulty will be high. He quietly asked the younger man beside him, Zizhua, do you think there will be a provincial top scorer among them? The young man confidently replied, impossible. Before coming, I confirmed that this school only has three hidden professions. The holy priest is out of the running because it's not a combat profession. The berserker might be okay if he had a team specifically supporting him to tackle bosses of the same level, but the exam doesn't allow for that. The last one is a necromancer. Though necromancers have become provincial top scorers before, that was only when there were no powerful hidden professions in the province. Now, with the evil dragon knight from the Zheng family, the necromancer stands no chance. The middle-aged man seemed somewhat disinterested in this analysis. Your analysis is sound, but I'd like to see something different for a change. I hope this school can surprise me. The principal stood up and solemnly announced, Examiner Li, Examiner Huang, the time has come. Yes, let the exam begin. The two examiners nodded. Turning to the students, the principal spoke in a serious yet gentle tone. Students, today is the second most important day of your lives. I wish you all great results, but please prioritize your safety. Taking a deep breath, he announced loudly, the exam officially begins. The students entered the examination site one by one. The middle-aged examiner stepped forward, holding a glowing disc-like object. As he moved, a portal of light, several meters high and equally wide, appeared out of thin air before everyone, emitting a faint blue glow. The students filed in, and as soon as they stepped through the portal, they found themselves unable to see each other. Each was transported to an individual space seemingly floating above the clouds, surrounded by a vast expanse of white. Here, they would face the exam alone, striving to earn as many points as possible. These points, like grades, would directly influence their chances of getting into prestigious universities. Xiaoyu stood in the empty white space, recalling the important points for the college entrance exam. He knew that special items like by Xiao Xiao's magical book of space were forbidden. Additionally, all candidates' equipment attributes would be standardized to ensure fairness. However, the skills on their equipment were not affected giving those with superior equipment skills a distinct advantage. Just before Xiaoyu entered the exam site, Bai Xiao Xiao had whispered to him, make sure to come back as the national top scorer. Xiaoyu had nodded confidently and replied, absolutely. About half an hour later, an elderly voice echoed through the white space. Students, the exam is about to begin. Let me explain the content of this year's college entrance exam. The voice paused, then continued. The theme of this year's vocational exam is abyssal monsters. This announcement was like a bombshell, causing an uproar among the candidates. Many faces turned pale as they whispered, Abyssal monsters? Wasn't it orcs last year? 
This is way too difficult. Outside the exam site, the middle-aged examiner's face also changed upon hearing the theme. He turned to his younger colleague and said, Feng Lao is insane. The exam theme is abyssal monsters, creatures capable of killing human professionals three levels above them. How did the authorities approve this? The young examiner sighed. It looks like there will be a lot of deaths and eliminations this time. The elderly voice continued to explain the exam content, ignoring the reactions of the students and the examiners outside. The first test will assess your ability to handle monsters of the same level. You will face continuous waves of melee demons, ranged fire demons, and frost demons. In normal difficulty, each kill earns 1 point, in hard difficulty 1.5 points, and in hell difficulty 2.5 points. Surviving for 10 minutes will multiply your total points by 0.2. You have 5 minutes to choose your difficulty level. If you don't make a choice within 5 minutes, you will be considered to have forfeited the exam and will not be allowed to take the vocational exam again. Immediately, a countdown timer appeared above each student's head. 459. Outside the exam site, the middle-aged examiner quietly discussed with his colleague, most people will probably only choose normal difficulty this time. The hard difficulty monsters have 1.15 times the attributes. And with abyssal monsters, the students can't handle that. The young examiner agreed. Yes, if you don't score at least 700 points across three subjects, you won't even get into the worst universities. Although higher difficulty offers more points, the monster strength increases exponentially. It's safer to kill more monsters and extend survival time in normal difficulty. The principal wiped the sweat from his forehead and muttered. I hope our students choose normal difficulty and don't try to take on hard or even held difficulty. At this moment, a holographic screen appeared on the school playground, displaying the basic information of all the students. Shu Shu, level 20 berserker, hard difficulty. The principal's heart tightened upon seeing this information. Shu Shu is challenging hard difficulty? That body modification guild must have given him a lot of support. I hope he doesn't have to give up in the first test. Suddenly, the middle-aged examiner's attention was caught by a piece of information in the corner of the screen. CIU, level 30 heroic necromancer, held difficulty. ZZ, the middle-aged examiner said in shock to his younger colleague. This necromancer is already level 30 and has ascended to heroic class. The young examiner frowned. What? A necromancer who awakened seven days ago is already level 30? Which family is he from? No big family would let their child ascend so quickly. They noticed that CIU only had a dozen or so undead soldiers wandering around. The middle-aged examiner frowned and said, Only this many summoned undead? Could he be a necromancer specializing in corpse explosion? That's a misguided path. The true strength of a necromancer lies in their summoned undead. The young examiner scoffed. Oomph. Another reckless youngster trying to invent a new strategy and ending up trapped. This is the real world. Not a game where you can reset your skills. The principal had initially been delighted that a student had reached level 30. But after hearing the examiner's comments, his hope was dashed. He had thought a level 30 necromancer would bring fame to the school, but Xiai Yu seemed to be on the wrong path. Moreover, he had ascended to heroic class just before the exam and chosen held difficulty. The young examiner analyzed, held difficulty means the monsters are two levels higher, so he'll face level 32 abyssal monsters. He'll probably be eliminated in the first round. The middle-aged examiner nodded in agreement. That's why most people cap their levels at 10 or 20 before taking the vocational exam. That way, even in higher difficulty, the monsters are capped at 10 or 20, reducing the challenge. Parents discussed among themselves. A student reaching level 30? That's terrifying. My son is only level 10. How can he compete with level 20 and 30 students? It's not fair. Get real. It's unfair to them. They have to face level 20 and 30 monsters while your son only faces level 10 ones. A heroic class hidden profession, only a few levels below the city lord. Hidden professions are truly terrifying. Someone pointed out that even without attending university, a heroic necromancer could become a regional lord. There was no need for further education to live well. The examiner's discussion was purely within the context of the exam and the future development of professionals. At that moment, CIU heard a system prompt. You have chosen held difficulty. This choice cannot be changed. Monsters will appear in five minutes. Please prepare. Select an objective. Earn at least 1,000 points in normal difficulty. Reward. Intelligence potential 10, skill point 1. Earn at least 5,000 points in hard difficulty. Reward. Intelligence potential 20, skill point 2. Earn at least 9,999 points in hell difficulty. Reward. Intelligence potential 30, skill point 3, pet saint ghosts all attribute potential 50 inch. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu made his choice in his mind. 9,999 points. Xiaoyu directly chose 9999. To him, level 32 normal monsters were hardly worth mentioning. Five minutes later, 
two small demons with crimson skin, standing less than 1.4 meters tall and wielding small knives, appeared 100 meters away. The system immediately displayed their attributes. Small demon common race. Level, 32. Strength, 9547 agility. 9776 intelligence. 8921. Talent. Cruel attack when hitting an enemy. Strength 1, up to 10, 20 chance to cause bleed effect. Bleed deals 20 of strength as physical damage per second. Skill. Rending attack attacks the enemy with a weapon, dealing 120 of strength as physical damage. 50 chance to cause bleed effect. Xiaoyu glanced at the attributes and dismissed them with disdain, casually commanding an undead soldier to confront the demons. Outside the exam room, a middle-aged examiner observed and immediately speculated. He must be a necromancer specializing in corpse explosion, planning to detonate that undead soldier. However, with only level 30 intelligence, it's unlikely to instantly kill a level 32 small demon. He might follow up with a spirit fireball to deal additional damage. Though he believes Xia Yu had chosen the wrong development path, a level 30 hero class appearing in the exam was rare. Everyone's attention turned to Xia Yu, and the middle-aged examiner devoted half of his screen to live-streaming Xia Yu's battle. The principal watched the screen nervously and whispered words of encouragement. Come on, Xia Yu. The small demons noticed Xia Yu and charged at him, brandishing their knives, only to collide with the undead soldier. With two swift sword flashes, the small demons were instantly sliced in half and vanished. The system prompt immediately popped up, killed small demon common, level 32, points 2.5. The two examiners were stunned. The younger examiner guessed, could it be that this isn't an undead soldier, but an undead lord? The middle-aged examiner frowned. This looks like an undead soldier to me. Seeing this, the principal was overjoyed and thought, excellent. Soon, three small demons replaced the previous two, one of which had unusually bright skin and was named Flame Demon. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu summoned a dozen undead archers and commanded, Undead archers, fire. Arrows rained down. And before the three small demons could react, they were pierced and fell to the ground. The middle-aged examiner was puzzled. Are all these undead lords? It's impossible for anyone to have so many undead lords. Could this necromancer be hiding his true power? And his undead summoning rank is actually very high. Upon hearing this, the principal's eyes lit up so our student hasn't gone astray. He's just playing the fool to catch the tiger. As time passed, the number of small demons kept increasing from four to five, and then to six. Initially, Xiaoyu's undead archers could wipe out the enemies with one volley, but gradually, some demons started reaching the undead soldiers. Half an hour later, Xiaoyu had accumulated 4,568 points. Each wave now had over 50 small demons appearing at once. The middle-aged examiner was shocked by the score, thinking that it was enough to get into a top 10 college, but Xiaoyu showed no signs of stopping. Other students gradually finished their exams, most scoring only a few hundred points. Even the highly anticipated Shu, Shu only scored 785 points and was visibly frustrated. Xiaoyu yawned, feeling that the 20-second spawn interval was too slow. He waved his hand and summoned 50 more undead archers and 50 undead soldiers, drastically increasing the number of undead on the field. The middle-aged examiner exclaimed, he can still summon more undead. No, he should have been able to summon more from the start. Generally, hero-level necromancers can summon nearly 200 undead, and those with the undead lord talent can summon up to 300. The younger examiner tried to calm him. Brother Huang, calm down. But his astonished expression betrayed his inner turmoil. Huang pondered. To instantly kill small demons with nearly 10,000 attributes, he must at least be a hero-level undead summoner. If he has hero-level undead summons at level 30, that provincial top scorer's position is in jeopardy. As the small demons continued to be slaughtered, Xiaoyu's points finally reached 9999 and then stopped increasing. The principal urgently stood up and asked, Examiners, is there a bug? Why aren't the points increasing? Huang rolled his eyes and patiently explained, It's not a bug. The maximum score for one subject in the exam is 99.99. He should be forcibly stopped from continuing this part of the exam. It's extremely rare to see a student reach 9,999 points in the first subject in a century. Sure enough, Xiaoyu received a system prompt. You have achieved the highest score of 9,999 points in this subject. You will enter a rest period in three seconds. Selection complete. Rewards granted. Rewards. Intelligence potential 30. Skill points 3. Pet Saint Ghost all attributes potential 50. During the three-hour break, Xiaoyu sat on the ground, bored and yawning. Meanwhile, the crowd outside was in an uproar. Holy crap. Xiaoyu scored 9,999 points for first place, while Shu Shukai is only at 785. Can the gap between people really be this wide? Shushukai struggled against a dozen small demons, 
but Xiaoyu handled nearly a hundred with ease. A necromancer has such an advantage in this field. He doesn't even need to exert physical strength, just summon his undead minions. But isn't that the point of being a professional? If someone is better at killing monsters, then they're just better. What? Do you expect a necromancer to scream and bash monsters' heads in with a staff? Exactly. Why don't you go tell the monsters it's unfair? How fat chance? The middle-aged examiner looked at the scores with a headache. He wanted some surprises, but not this kind. Now, several big shots had personally ordered him to keep an eye on this necromancer. By the way, that Dragon Knight also scored over 8,000 points. The candidates this year are really impressive, the young examiner remarked. When I took the college entrance exam, the national top scorer had a total of just 19,000 points, averaging around 6,300 per subject. Now, this province alone has two candidates surpassing 6,300, and Xiaoyu hit the maximum of 9,999. If it weren't the limit, he could have kept going until he starved. 9999 is the score cap, not his limit. Three hours flew by. The head examiner announced, the second test will assess your ability to handle powerful bosses. You will face the Lord Boss Flame Demon, which has formidable melee capabilities, powerful and wide-ranging fire skills, and swift movement speed. This will comprehensively test your combat ability against a strong boss. The boss has infinite health, and you will be rewarded points based on the damage dealt. After receiving a certain amount of damage, it will summon elite-level flame imps, but killing these imps won't earn you points. The difficulty levels are normal, hard, and hell, with different point multipliers for each. You will also earn a final 0.2x multiplier for every 10 minutes you survive. A system prompt appeared. Please make your choice. Earn at least 1,000 points on normal difficulty. Reward. Strength potential 10, skill point 1. Earn at least 5,000 points on hard difficulty. Reward. Strength potential 20, skill point 2. Earn at least 9,999 points on hell difficulty. Reward. Strength potential 30, skill point 3. Pet Go Sanus, all attributes potential 50 inch. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu chose hell difficulty and aimed for 9,999 points. Look, the necromancer chose hell difficulty again. No way. This is a boss fight, and he still picked hell? Hell difficulty increases attributes by 1.3 times. This kind of boost makes the strong even stronger. In previous years, even powerful candidates would lower the difficulty for boss fights hell to hard. Hard to normal, and normal had no other option. Throughout history, there have been candidates who chose hell difficulty for boss fights, but most ended badly, some even dying to the boss before they could opt out of the exam. Brother Huang frowned at Xiaoyu's choice and asked, Zizhua, do you think this necromancer can still get a perfect score? Li Zizhua shook his head, not very optimistic. While his undead soldiers performed well against small demons due to attribute suppression, it's well known that undead soldiers are strong against the weak and weak against the strong. The flame demon at hell difficulty with level 32 attributes around 23,000 is a significant challenge. A legendary grade undead summoning at level 30 has around 21,000 attributes. To rely solely on undead summons to fight the flame demon, you'd need a mythic grade summon. Do you think a hero level necromancer can have a mythic grade undead summon? Brother Huang nodded in agreement. And you forgot, this flame demon has infinite health and will summon elite flame imps after taking damage. It's almost impossible for him to get a perfect score this time. The principal smiled. Exactly. He doesn't need a perfect score, just the provincial top scorer. If Xiaoyu gets 5,000 points here and another 5,000 in the third test, he could almost certainly be the provincial top scorer, maybe even the national top scorer. As they discussed, the second test began. Various flame demons appeared on the screen, the smallest being four or five meters tall and covered in blazing flames. The strongest, of course, was Xiaoyu's held difficulty level 32 flame demon. Xiaoyu's flame demon is enormous. It's at least 20 meters tall. Is this the boss for the college entrance exam? The size difference made Xiaoyu look like an ant next to the flame demon. The flame demon Lord Boss's attributes were displayed. Species, flame demon. Level, 32. Strength, 24,230. Agility, 23,847. Wisdom, 24,896. Talent, flame demon from the abyss, carrying abyssal fire. Being near the flame demon inflicts 10 of its wisdom as fire damage per second. Fire damage 20. Fire skills hit enemies with an additional 30 of wisdom as soul damage. Undying special talent. Will not die. After taking a certain amount of damage, it will summon one elite level flame imp. Each summon increases the next summon count by one. Skills. Rain of fire. Exploding fireball. Fire repulsion ring. Flame trail leaves a trail of fire as it moves causing 20 of wisdom as fire damage per second to enemies on it. Brother Huang looked at the boss's attributes and immediately realized, this boss is really strong. 
This year's exam flame demon isn't a normal one. It's been modified by Feng Lao. This level 32 flame demon would be a formidable enemy even for my team. I wonder how many points this necromancer can score against it. Zizhua, how many points do you think he can get? Li Zizhua confidently replied, around 2,000. This flame demon isn't something you can deal with at the same level, let alone being two levels lower. I'll go a bit higher 3,000. Wanna bet? Bet what? A level 30 hero grade equipment. Deal? While they were betting, the flame demon had already launched its attack on Xiaoyu. Massive fireballs, each larger than Xiaoyu himself, hurtled towards him. Reacting swiftly, Xiaoyu commanded his undead archers to form a defensive line. In an instant, a barrage of arrows, dense as a torrential rain, was unleashed, intercepting each fireball with precision. Boom! 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 The fireballs exploded midair, creating a spectacular wall of flames. Undead soldiers charge! Xiaoyu's command rang out, and dozens of undead soldiers shot forward like arrows from a bowstring. To onlookers, it seemed as if these soldiers had teleported, reaching the feet of the fired demon in the blink of an eye. Bang! 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 The undead soldiers launched a fierce assault. Thanks to mythical level undead summoning, legendary level undead mastery, and multiple potential enhancements, each soldier boasted a strength of 36,000 points. With the added boost from the Sainas Ghost 61,440 strength attribute, their power surged to 66,720 points. Their agility was equally impressive. Facing these undead soldiers, whose strength was twice his own, the Fire Demon, if it had any sense, would surely regret its immortality. The massive fire demon was instantly shattered into pieces, and several flame imps were summoned in its place. However, in the next second, both the fire demon and the flame imps vanished without a trace. A system prompt sounded. You have achieved the highest score of 9,999 points in this subject. Entering rest period in three seconds. Selection complete. Rewards will be distributed. Rewards followed in quick succession. 30 to strength potential, 3 skill points, and 50 to all attributes for the Sainas Ghost Pet. Is it over already? Xiaoyu raised an eyebrow, wondering if his performance had been too astonishing. Meanwhile, in a high tower, an elderly man with white hair stood up abruptly, staring incredulously at the screen displaying the young Xiaoyu. Feng Lao, calm down. What's the matter? Several distinguished men and women around him hurried to soothe the old man. In a deep voice, Feng Lao said, do you believe that a level 30 hero necromancer could, with just undead summoning, deal damage to a fire demon that surpasses the full force attack of a level 40 legendary mage's heightier skill? Impossible, exclaimed a voluptuous female mage. Does that mean a level 30 hero necromancer's combat power is on par with a level 40 legendary mage? Considering a necromancer's sustained combat capability, such a necromancer would be equivalent to a legendary team's strength. A burly man frowned and asked, Feng Lao, are you saying that such an individual appeared among this year's candidates? Feng Lao nodded, confirming, Yes, just now, a necromancer used 48 undead soldiers to deal a blow to a master-level fire demon with 40,000 attributes, a blow comparable to a heightier skill of a level 40 legendary mage. In the corner, a person in a black robe, holding a bone staff, spoke coldly. That's indeed terrifying. Is it because the undead summoning was of high quality? To cause such damage, it might be due to high-tier undead summoning and high-evil undead mastery, possibly combined with the Bone Emperor talent. Feng Lao looked around and asked, Is there any objection to admitting him to Hualong Academy? A smiling, plump man nodded, No objections. With such potential, I would certainly want him. A middle-aged man in a neat suit interjected, Feng Lao, I think he would be better suited for Qianlong Academy. He should be on the front lines, experiencing death to progress faster as a necromancer. Qing Mo. Are you trying to steal my student? The plump man snorted discontentedly. At Hualong Academy, they're all bookworms. How can they improve as quickly as on the front lines? Let the kid choose for himself. Meanwhile, in the examination hall, two examiners stood up abruptly, staring in disbelief at Xiaoyu, who had begun his rest period with a perfect score of 19,998. Another perfect score, and this time it's even more outrageous. His undead soldiers took down a 40,000 attribute fire demon with a single charge. Huang Gu, recalling the charge of the undead soldiers, shuddered, so fast, too fast. I almost couldn't see it clearly. If that many undead soldiers charged at me, Li Zizhua was bewildered. How is that possible? Does he have mythical level undead summoning and high level undead mastery, and even the legendary Bone Emperor talent? To have that talent at the hero stage? Huang Gu sighed. His future is limitless. I thought, as an experienced hero class professional, I would have an advantage over these newcomers who reached hero level in a few days. 
But it turns out they reach hero level so quickly because they're overwhelmingly strong. If I faced him, I'd probably be instantly killed. The new wave always overtakes the old, and the old wave dies on the beach, alas. Parents in the audience, watching Xiaoyu begin his rest period, rub their eyes in disbelief that someone could defeat a boss and achieve a perfect score. And Tang, looking at Xiaoyu's perfect scores in both subjects, pinched Uncle Bai's waist and murmured, What on earth happened to Xiaoyu? Uncle Bai winced in pain, ouch, stop pinching. I don't know either, but he's still our Xiaoyu. Looking at Xiaoyu's score, he too was incredulous. This is absurd. It's not just about perfect scores anymore. Others are struggling to survive for more points, and you're already resting with a perfect score. The gap is just too wide. Other parents began to question, did that necromancer cheat? How did the boss vanish instantly? Was there foul play? Does he have connections? I think it's possible. Otherwise, how could a supposedly invincible boss disappear in an instant and give him a perfect score of 9,999? Parents were chattering, making the principal anxious, unsure how to explain to them. Huang Gu sneered coldly. What's there to explain? If they don't believe it, they don't believe it. Any master-level professional can see why. The ones shouting are mostly ordinary people. They can think whatever they want, it's useless. Li Zizhua said calmly. Just tell them that the scores are supervised by mythical-level experts. If they have any complaints, they can take it up with them. When the principal relayed this, the parents immediately fell silent. Mythical-level experts were the guardians of the nation, who would dare to confront them for an explanation. Time gradually moved to the final subject, subject three. The final exam of the vocational entrance test was about to begin, and the candidates were about to face an unprecedented challenge. Fonda, the esteemed figure, stood at the front of the exam hall, his gaze piercing through the crowd of examinees. He announced in a deep voice, This time, you will not face a single ordinary monster or a lone boss, but a horde of ordinary monsters mixed with bosses. As before, you can freely choose from three difficulty levels. Normal, hard, and hell. Fonda's voice carried a hint of encouragement. I wish all of you the best of luck. May you perform to the best of your abilities and achieve outstanding results. Whether you aim to attend your dream college, join a guild, or serve a faction, remember to contribute your strength to humanity in resisting monsters from other realms. No matter where you are, never forget that you are not just human, but also proud citizens of long country. As his words settled, a countdown suddenly appeared before everyone. Five minutes, begin your selection. In the crowd, Xiaoyu's eyes flashed with surprise. It's actually Feng De, he thought to himself. Although Feng De wasn't a professional, his importance far surpassed that of mythic professionals. Feng De had perfected the job transfer array, reducing the death rate from 30 to zero. He also co-developed the Guardian Magic Array with mythic mages, allowing humans to monitor monster movements from outpost stations outside the city. These contributions had increased the number of high-level professionals over the past few decades tenfold. CIU's heart raced. I can't believe Fongdo is personally overseeing the vocational entrance test this time. If I can achieve the national top score, the prestige would be immense. He was thrilled, unaware that several mythic-level figures along with Fongdo were closely monitoring him from a tall tower. At that moment, a system prompt sounded in CIU's mind. Please make your selection. Achieve at least 1,000 points on normal difficulty. Reward. Agility Potential 10, Skill Point 1. Achieve at least 5,000 points on hard difficulty. Reward. Agility Potential 20, Skill Point 2. Achieve at least 9,999 points on held difficulty. Reward. Agility Potential 30, Skill Point 3. All Attribute Potential 50 for the Saint Ghost Pet. The system then presented another choice. Please make your selection. Achieve perfect scores in all three subjects, surpassing all prodigies and becoming the national top scorer. Reward. Upgrade the Undead Lord skill to Legendary Tier. Lose by even one point. Reward. Upgrade the Bone Shield skill to Mythic Tier. Xiaoyu furrowed his brows. Two choices at the same time, and this system is really stirring things up. He weighed the temptation of upgrading Bone Shield to Mythic Tier against his ambition to become the national top scorer. After a moment, he decisively made his choice. System. I choose held difficulty, 9,999 points, and perfect scores in all three subjects. As Xiaoyu made his choice, the atmosphere in the exam hall grew increasingly tense. Other candidates made their selections, but no one was surprised by Xia Yu choosing Hell difficulty. In the audience, Huang Gu whispered, Has anyone ever achieved perfect scores in all three subjects since the vocational entrance test began? Li Zizhua shook his head. No, the highest score so far is 26,147, held by the current mythic professional Zhou Qinghuai. Huang Gu smiled. It looks like we're about to witness history today. Li Zizhua nodded vigorously in agreement. At that moment, a group of auxiliary profession candidates emerged from the teleportation light, including Bai Xiao Xiao. Uncle Bai quickly approached her. 
asking with concern, Xiao Xiao, how did you do? Bai Xiao Xiao proudly raised her head, of course, I did great. My level 10 talent is sacred, which is the best talent a holy priest can get at level 10. Guess my score, dad? 2000. Uncle Bai guessed tentatively. Dad, what are you thinking? 2000 would get me directly into Hualong College. Bai Xiao Xiao jumped with excitement. I got 18,000. I might even win the provincial top scorer for auxiliary professions. Aunt Tang suddenly chimed in. Just 18,000? That's not even as much as CIU's two-subject score. Bai Xiao Xiao looked up at the screen in confusion, seeing a familiar handsome figure dominating 99 of the display. The screen read, CIU, level 30 heroic necromancer, score 19,998. Perfect scores in two subjects? Bai Xiao Xiao exclaimed in shock, drawing approving glances from surrounding parents. Unbelievable. You really are something else? Bai Xiao Xiao looked at CIU's score, more excited than when she got her 18,000 points. She waved her fist at CIU's image on the screen, internally cheering, get the national top scorer for me. Meanwhile, in a hidden dark space, a conspiracy was brewing. Are you ready? A mysterious voice echoed in the darkness. Several shadows knelt on the ground, trembling as they answered, Master, we are ready. We have arrangements in place in seven major cities and 16 remote cities in Long Country. At your command, Long Country will be engulfed in a monster tide, and their mythic squads will be tied up in major cities, allowing us to capture the remote cities. The voice responded with satisfaction, Very well done. Go now, and let this world descend into greater chaos. Then, my God will descend and grant you eternal life in the divine realm. Eternal life to our God. Eternal life to our God. Eternal life to our God. The shadows chanted in unison. The voice continued. It has begun. The barrier against the gods has dimmed. Humankind, your time to submit has arrived. Soon, it will be the era of the gods. Back in the exam hall, Xiaoyu faced a group of small demons. Teams of fire and frost demons charged at him. But they fell instantly under his reign of arrows. Xiaoyu's power completely overwhelmed the exam difficulty. With his 6,000 attributes against monsters with 7 or 800 or 3 to 4,000 attributes, making it effortless. He even stifled a yawn. In the audience, Huang Gu pointed at Xiaoyu on the screen, shouting angrily, I just saw that guy yawn. He yawned during the entrance exam. Is the exam that boring? Remembering how he had struggled for every point during his own exams, Huang Gu stomped his feet in frustration. Li Zizhua had given up, gulping down his soda. The gap between people is bigger than between people and dogs. Forget it, I'm done. Meanwhile, the principal watched Xiaoyu on the screen, beaming with joy. National top scorer, national top scorer. Ha ha ha. Our school produced a national top scorer with perfect scores in three subjects. His laughter made the secretary beside him cover her eyes in exasperation. As time passed, Xiaoyu's score continued to climb, eventually freezing at 29,997. The system prompt sounded, perfect scores in three subjects. You have achieved the maximum score of 9,999 in this subject. The exam is over, and your total score is being calculated. Your total score is 29,997. Selection completed, rewards granted. Xiaoyu felt a warm surge flow through his body, increasing his agility potential by 30 points and gaining three skill points. His magical pet, the Holy Ghost Maiden, also experienced a 50-point boost in all attributes. Immediately afterward, his undead lord skill advanced to legendary rank. The exam concluded, and Xiaoyu walked out of the examination hall. The portal flickered as students emerged one by one. Some were ecstatic, while others were despondent. Although it only took a thought to end the exam, some students paid with their lives for a few extra points. This year's exam saw eight students from Lingnan No. 1 High School tragically fall. Parents began picking up their children, but everyone's eyes remained on the portal, waiting for one particular person. Suddenly, a tall figure stepped out of the portal, and thunderous applause erupted. The principal and two examiners stood up and smiled at Xiaoyu, acknowledging his prowess. Perfect scores in all three subjects, first in history, someone announced loudly. Xiaoyu was taken aback by the commotion, but quickly regained his composure, waving to the crowd. The students who had just exited looked at each other, puzzled by the special treatment Xiaoyu was receiving. If you scored perfect in all three subjects, I'd faint on the spot, someone explained. The students looked up at the still visible screen, where Xiaoyu's results dominated 99 of the display. Level 30 hero necromancer, 29,997 points. The score and level sparked a wave of exclamations. Bai Xiao Xiao rushed forward excitedly. Great job. Uncle Bai and Aunt Tang followed closely behind. See you, your dad would be so proud of you. Uncle Bai said, his eyes red, giving Xiaoyu a firm pat on the shoulder. We're proud of you too, Aunt Tang added, her voice trembling with emotion. Let's go home. 
Xiaoyu said, trying to contain his excitement. Yes, let's go home. That evening, the five of them enjoyed a sumptuous dinner. Antang advised Xiaoyu and Bai Xiaoxiao to rest well and be prepared for the final results announcement the next day. Lying in bed, staring at the starry sky, Xiaoyu thought to himself, this is just the first step of my journey. I must explore this mysterious and strange world and maybe even find a way back home. Early the next morning, Xiaoyu was awakened by Bai Xiaoxiao's urgent knocking. Get up, the phone's been ringing off the hook. Bai Xiaoxiao's irritated voice came through. Xiaoyu quickly got ready and walked out of his room. What's going on? The results are out. Bai Xiaoxiao beamed at him. I'm a national top scorer, right? Xiaoyu said calmly. Aren't you excited? Bai Xiaoxiao asked, puzzled. What's there to be excited about? If a perfect score doesn't make me the top scorer, who would be? Xiaoyu chuckled. They went downstairs to find Uncle Bai and Aunt Tang excitedly watching TV. Xiaoyu's principal was being interviewed, singing praises about Xiaoyu's respect for teachers and eagerness to learn, while also boasting about his own role in nurturing Xiaoyu's talents. Xiaoyu shook his head, uninterested in the vanity. Suddenly, he sensed a visitor outside the door with considerable strength, at least hero level. Master, Lord Lu Nong from London City is here, the butler announced softly. Uncle Bai hurried to greet the visitor. Outside stood three burly men, one of whom was nearly three meters tall Lord Lu Nong, a level 37 hero with a hidden class Titan warrior. Please come in, Lord Lu Nong, Uncle Bai invited, leaving the two bodyguards outside. Entering the house. Lu Nong immediately noticed Xiaoyu and exclaimed, What a fine young man. Hello, I'm Lu Nong, the lord of London City. Truly, heroes emerge young. When I was your age, I was only a few levels ahead. You've already caught up to me now. Thank you for helping defend the outpost in Liangzi town. Without you, the younger generation of London City would have suffered greatly. After a few days of investigation, Lu Nong had confirmed that Xiaoyu had indeed been at the outpost. Though initially skeptical that someone who had only awakened a few days ago could defeat a hero-level boss, the facts were undeniable. Xiaoyu smiled and replied, I was just doing what I could within my abilities. If everyone only did what they were capable of, the world wouldn't be as it is today. The fact that you can do what you're capable of is already impressive. Lord Lunong's words echoed in the air as his gaze fell upon Xiaoyu, his eyes glinting with approval. Xiaoyu stood there, feeling the warmth of the Lord's affirmation wash over him. Lunong continued, I didn't come here just to thank you for your help in Liangzi town. You've become the top scholar in the nation, and as the lord of Lingnan city, that brings me great pride. As he spoke, he took out an item from his robe. This is a small token of my appreciation. Please accept it. Xiaoyu looked closely and saw that the lord was holding a staff that emitted a faint silver glow. Lunong handed the staff to Xiaoyu, explaining, I acquired this earlier, but my team has no use for it. It's perfect for you. The attributes of the staff instantly appeared in Xiaoyu's mind. Silver Staff, Legendary Level. 30 Wisdom, 2250 Strength, 1002. Silver Undead. Your summoned undead creatures gain 50 defense and 20 damage. Special Effect. Summoned undead creatures transform into silver skeletons. Xiaoyu was astounded. The staff not only had exceptional attributes, but also came with rare and dazzling effects. He estimated that such a treasure would fetch a fortune on the market. Thank you, Lord, Xiaoyu said sincerely accepting the staff with both hands and feeling the immense power it contained. Lunong nodded and suddenly remembered something. By the way, have you decided which university you will attend? You know that each of the top three universities in Longhua has its own focus, right? Xiaoyu smiled confidently and replied, Of course I know. He then briefly introduced the features of the three top universities. Hualong University, the top university in Longhua, specializes in the study of monsters and professionals, benefiting from substantial national resources. All the latest discoveries in the professional field come from here. Qianlong University ranks second and is dedicated to training combat ready talents. The school has numerous high level monster nest portals and can even arrange for students to engage in actual combat at the borders. Yuanlong University is the third and focuses on potion making, equipment crafting, and technological inventions for professionals. It also delves into career planning, skill selection, monster weakness analysis, and team coordination. Lunong listened and nodded with satisfaction. It seems you are well informed. That puts my mind at ease. With that, he bid farewell to the others and turned to leave. At that moment, someone curiously asked, Xiaoyu, which university are you planning to attend? Bai Xiaoxiao anxiously watched Xiaoyu, waiting for his response. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu said, Qianlong High School. Aunt Tang's face immediately filled with worry. Going to the border? Isn't that dangerous? Xiaoyu, with your grades, you could easily get into Hualong. Xiaoyu shook his head and explained, Aunt Tang, I'm not interested in Hualong's research on monsters and professionals. Qianlong's advanced monster nests 
and even the border areas are more suitable for leveling up. He had considered Hualong and even Yuinglong, but ultimately decided against them. Only by continuously leveling up and triggering the divine selection system through various events could he follow his true path. Hualong didn't advocate solo leveling. They preferred using their research results to assemble the optimal team. This might be great for others, but not for Xiaoyu. Why team up when he could do things on his own? No one at the same level could keep up with him, and teaming up would only mean sharing his experience and loot. Qianlong also recommended teaming up, even forming multiple teams to level up together, but they acknowledged that some professions and individuals were better off alone. This was precisely why Xia Yu chose Qianlong High School. Uncle Bai gently pulled Aunt Tang aside and said to Xia Yu, It's good for a man to have his own choices and goals. I support you. Do what you want to do. At that moment, Bai Xiao Xiao suddenly spoke up. I'm going to Qianlong too. Xia Yu turned to look at her and saw her determined expression. He nodded reluctantly. Even if you come to Qianlong, you know it's hard for me to take you along. Bai Xiao Xiao retorted defiantly. I don't need you to take me along. By the time I catch up to your level, you'll be begging me to team up. I'm a holy priest, and people will be lining up to team with me. Sure, sure, Xiaoyu replied dismissively. Then, the phone rang incessantly. Various factions called, hoping to sponsor Xiaoyu. Major guilds in the dragon country and even global conglomerates wanted him to join them. But Uncle Bai politely declined all these invitations. Xiaoyu didn't need those millions, and he wasn't interested in joining any forces that promised more resources. He didn't want to be constrained by others at this point. Suddenly, the phone rang again. Uncle Bai was about to hang up dismissively, but after listening, he nodded and turned to Xiaoyu. It's your principal. Representatives from the three major high schools are here. Xiaoyu sighed. That was fast. He recalled that applying to use the city-level teleportation array required a week's notice, but these people had arrived in a day and waited overnight. The three major high schools coming personally indicated that the national top scorer would undoubtedly choose one of them. Though there were rankings among them, their faculty levels were comparable, each excelling in different areas. All right, I'll head over now, Xiaoyu said. Despite being the national top scorer, he didn't dare to be complacent in front of the three major high schools. After all, these schools had many top scorers. For the first time, Xiaoyu rode by Xiao Xiao's luxury car to the school. In the principal's office, the principal was trembling as he faced three prominent figures three legends who had come to this remote city. A man in a suit chuckled and said to a lightly dressed woman, Ms. Jun, long time no see. I thought you died in the dragon tomb. The woman's face darkened. We'll settle that score later. We're here to recruit students today. A burly man in full armor sighed. Stop arguing. Let's get this over with. I need to head back. Things are unstable in the white elephant nation. The man in the suit waved dismissively. Zhuang Zhuang, if you want to go back, you can leave now. The armored man grinned sheepishly. No can do. The principal sent me to bring back this year's national top scorer. He said if I can't bring him back, I'll have to snatch him. The man in the suit and the lightly dressed woman were both taken aback clearly not expecting Qianlong to be so forceful. The principal trembled even more, fearing they might start a fight in his office, which would be disastrous for the school. At that moment, there was a knock on the door, and Xiaoyu's voice came through. The principal quickly called out, Xiaoyu, come in. Xiaoyu entered and saw three strangers. He introduced himself confidently. I'm Xiaoyu, the examinee. The three scrutinized the casually dressed young man, satisfied that he showed no surprise in their presence. The man in the suit praised, not bad, good material and you're almost as handsome as me. The lightly dressed woman rolled her eyes. You're only 9% as handsome as Xiaoyu. The armored man stepped forward. You must be Xiaoyu. Come with me to Qianlong. Xiaoyu looked at the three seemingly unreliable recruiters, his lips twitching slightly. The man in the suit quickly pulled the armored man back. Wait, we're here to recruit, not to snatch. Let Xiaoyu make his own choice. He turned to Xiaoyu with a smile. I'm Su Yu, a teacher from Hualong. You can call me Brother Su. I hope you'll choose Hualong. We'll provide you with slevel resources, including three legendary items of the same level, all core skill books for necromancers, and a custom team backed by hundreds of strategists. Xiaoyu was tempted. Three legendary items of the same level were worth billions, and their value would increase with higher levels. The core skill books for necromancers were rare resources that couldn't be bought for tens of billions. This meant he could master all core skills by level 30 and focus on enhancing his strength with each level up rather than choosing new skills. The lightly dressed woman added, Yuinglong also offers slevel resources. Besides all core skills for necromancers, we have specialized potion and equipment crafting. Every 10 levels, we'll custom make an item perfectly suited for necromancers. The armored man wasn't to be outdone. Little brother, come with me. Qianlong can also provide all core skills for necromancers, and you'll get more frequent frontline combat experience. No need to mess around. Just level up directly. What could be better? 
As Xiaoyu was about to choose his university, the earth suddenly shook violently. The sky outside split open with several black cracks, and chaotic energy surged out like a tidal wave. The faces of three legendary professionals changed simultaneously with Xiaoyu's they all knew this was a sign of a high-evil monster nest appearing. At that moment, the office door was violently kicked open. Linen City's mayor, Lunong, rushed in, looking panicked. Professors, something terrible has happened. All the monster nests around Linen City have erupted in chaos, and a massive number of monsters are swarming into the city. Even worse, several high-evil monster nests have appeared on the outskirts, including an unstable legendary monster nest. I implore you to help Linen City. A legendary monster nest? The three legendary professionals stood up abruptly, a hint of shock in their eyes. They knew well that if legendary monsters invaded the city, Linen would face utter destruction. At the same time, they also realized this was a rare opportunity heroic-level monster nests were extremely scarce, and those that consistently produced high-evil monsters were even rarer. Each appearance of a heroic-level monster nest brought both disaster and opportunity. Su Hiyu, with a grave expression, asked the mayor, We'll handle the legendary monster nest, but are the other areas secure? Lunong, looking troubled, quickly responded, The legendary monster nest appeared in the south part of the city, so it should be fine with you handling it. My troops can hold the mid-level monster nests in the north and west. However, the east side, which has mostly low-level monster nests, is severely understaffed. Now, facing hundreds of thousands of monsters, we are even more shorthanded. This statement caused the three legendary professionals to frown deeply. The three of them were already stretched thin dealing with a new legendary monster nest, and they couldn't spare anyone to help guard the east side. However, if the east side were breached, the influx of hundreds of thousands of low-level monsters would cause as much devastation as the legendary ones. A burly man anxiously asked, Have you requested reinforcements? Can't they use the teleportation arrays to send help immediately? Lunong smiled bitterly and replied, I requested reinforcements as soon as the monster chaos and the new nests appeared. But all the teleportation arrays have failed, and nearly 20 cities are experiencing monster outbreaks. Even the higher-ups are overwhelmed. Lunong's words plunged everyone into silence. The sheer scale of the monster chaos brought a single term to everyone's mind. The Monster Protection Organization. The burly man roared in anger. It must be the Monster Protection Organization. Traitors to humanity. There's no doubt it's them. Just then, a voice broke the silence. I'll go to the east side. Everyone turned to look at Xiaoyu, who had just spoken, a hint of surprise in their eyes. Suhiyu suddenly realized. I almost forgot. Although you're just a high school graduate, you're also a heroic level professional and a necromancer, the best at handling large scale battles. Mayor Lunong looked at Xiaoyu with hope. Xiaoyu, can we really entrust the East Side to you? Xiaoyu smiled confidently. Don't worry, you've seen my strength. Most of the monster nests in the East are low level, between levels 1 and 10. With me there, they won't get through. If I can't handle these low level nests, I wouldn't deserve to be the top student in the country. Although there was still some concern in their hearts after all, Xiaoyu was still seen as just a student who hadn't received formal training at a university their confidence in his exceptional performance in the entrance exams reassured them. Defending the east side should be manageable for him. Given the urgency, the four quickly made their decision. Xiaoyu, we'll leave the east side to you. Got it, Xiaoyu replied succinctly. The five of them exited the principal's office. The three legendary professionals flew directly towards the spatial rift, the location of the legendary monster nest. Xiaoyu, without hesitation, summoned his frostbone dragon. So let's go. Meanwhile, on the East City Wall, over a thousand professionals anxiously watched the approaching monster horde, many already feeling their scalp tingling. Captain, is the city's reinforcement still not here? A soldier asked urgently. The captain replied, not yet, but the mayor said they would arrive soon. It's our national top student coming to support us. Top student? Isn't he still a student? Another soldier exclaimed in surprise. What can he do? We're facing hundreds of thousands of monsters, even if they're low level. It's like ants overwhelming an elephant. Captain, we should request reinforcements again, a mage suggested. Aren't there many heroic level professionals in the city? Can't they come to help us? The captain shook his head and explained, we're only dealing with low level monsters here. The south side has a legendary monster nest and several heroic level nests. The heroic level professionals can't spare anyone to help us. These words brought a look of despair to the faces of the professionals on the wall. As a small, remote city, the highest level of monster nests they had faced before was level 27. Now, there were several heroic level nests and even a legendary nest, all while dealing with a monster chaos. Most of them were only in their teens in terms of levels, with the highest being level 20 and none had advanced to master level professionals. Captain, the monsters are getting closer, a soldier suddenly shouted. 
The captain immediately issued attack orders. All professionals with ranged attacks. Use your abilities while the monsters are still attacking the defensive magic array to reduce their numbers. Even the warrior professionals took out bows and arrows from their backpacks. Warriors, we have no retreat. Behind us are our people, our families. Attack, the captain shouted. Over a thousand professionals launched a barrage of arrows and magic at the monsters still hundreds of meters away. The goblins in the front, only level three, were skewered by arrows and blown to pieces by concentrated magic. But the number of monsters seemed endless. The soldiers couldn't even see the fallen monsters before they were trampled into the ground by those charging from behind, as if they had never existed. Keep firing, the captain ordered. Wave after wave of arrows and magic rained down on the monsters, but their numbers showed no sign of diminishing. With a series of dull thuds, the monsters reached the defensive magic array, relentlessly striking it with their weapons. Ranged monsters also targeted the array with their attacks. Under the continuous assault, the array's light began to fade. The captain decisively drew his melee weapon and ordered, Warriors, prepare for the flying monster's attacks. Protect the mages, archers, and healers. Hundreds of warrior professionals drew their weapons and shields, forming a line in front of the ranged units. They were about to face a terrifying wave of monsters. At that moment, a warrior suddenly said to the captain, Captain, after this battle, I'm going back home to get married. The captain forced a smile, then I'll make sure to have a drink with you. Just as he finished speaking, with a crisp sound, the magic array shattered. A swarm of flying monsters descended upon the soldiers on the city walls. Fear flickered in their eyes, and their bodies trembled slightly. Yet, knowing their families lay behind them, no one retreated. They gripped their weapons tightly, clenched their teeth, and held their ground, silently praying for reinforcements. The captain glared at the oncoming horde of monsters and let out a thunderous roar. Though puzzled as to why the Lord had sent only a student for support, he trusted there was a deeper reason. Suddenly, a commanding voice echoed from above, long-range, undead, spread out and shoot to intercept the aerial monsters. The rest pushed the ground monsters away from the walls. As the words fell, thousands of undead appeared from the void, occupying the walls. This undead army, summoned by Xia Yu, consisted of a thousand undead archers and three thousand chaotic undead mages. Saintus, activate the Holy Aura and the Solar Aura. Xia Yu continued to command. The Holy Aura ensured the survival of the undead, while the Solar Aura enhanced their efficiency in clearing monsters. The slain monsters would explode, creating a chain reaction. With Xia Yu's current undead attributes, any monster touched would die instantly. A dense rain of arrows and magic shot into the sky, piercing through the flying monsters instantly. Not a single monster could withstand the arrows of the 60 attribute undead archers. The exploding monster corpses released golden red sparks, killing nearby monsters on contact, as if Xia Yu's corpse explosion skill was in play. On the ground, the undead lord subordinates pushed the monster lines back with their overwhelming attributes. The soldiers watched in astonishment. What they thought was certain death turned into a sweeping victory by tens of thousands of undead. Each slain monster triggered a chain explosion, obliterating monsters within a 10-meter radius. The undead moved through the enemies with ease, their blows annihilating all monsters within several meters. Holy crap, are these undead cheating? One soldier exclaimed, even cheats aren't this insane. No wonder the Lord sent only him. He's worth an entire army, another soldier remarked. Ah, weren't you the one saying one person wouldn't be enough? A comrade teased. The soldiers looked up at the frost skeletal dragon in the sky. Though Xia Yu was out of sight, their eyes were filled with awe and gratitude. Who is this necromancer? Summoning so many undead alone, what level is his skill? The soldiers whispered, full of curiosity. In the shadows, several figures watched the monster army being decimated, seething with anger. He Xia Yu, the top scorer in this year's National College entrance exam in Longhua, with perfect scores in all subjects, the first in the country's history. I didn't expect him to be on the battlefield already. That's bold, one voice murmured. This shows how desperate Longhua is, another voice sneered. Should we use that thing? Killing a future talent of Longhua won't get us in trouble with the boss. A third voice suggested. I agree. Count me in. In just a few words, the shadowy figures made a significant decision. Xiaoyu watched his undead slaughter countless monsters without gaining any experience or equipment. Sign. It seems this is it. I should have sent a few undead lords and gone to the South City myself. Maybe I could have leveled up. Just then, a system notification sounded. Please make a choice. 1. Head to the Southern City to assist the struggling fighters. Reward. Pain curse skill upgrade to heroic level. 2. Suppress the heroic level, mutated monster nest in the eastern city. Reward. 
20 summon limit per level for undead summoning skill. 3. Go to the northern western city for leisure. Reward. Bone spear skill upgrade to heroic level. Xiaoyu frowned. The southern city is in a tough battle? Even the three legendary teachers can't handle a legendary monster nest? He then relaxed. That makes sense. A legendary monster nest usually has a large number of master level monsters, quite a few heroic level ones, and several legendary bosses. I hope nothing goes wrong. Xiaoyu's gaze shifted to the eastern city option, mentioning a mutated heroic level monster nest. A slight smile forming on his lips, the system doesn't make mistakes. If the eastern city is getting a heroic level monster nest, I can gain some experience there. Suddenly, black lightning shot from the ground, striking the space above. Instantly, spatial rifts appeared, spewing out black chaotic energy. This energy intertwined, seemingly creating something terrifying. Gradually, several evil eyes emerged. Their upper bodies were massive, bloodshot eyeballs radiating a malevolent purple glow. Their lower bodies were writhing tentacles, floating ominously in the air. The system immediately displayed the evil eye's attributes. Evil eye common mutated. Level, 34. Strength, 12,852. Agility, 13,148. Wisdom, 13,970. Talent, malevolent thought 20 chance to cause confusion when hitting an enemy with a mental skill. Skills. Telekinesis, Mental Shockwave Evil Curse, Xiaoyu smirked. The mutation has indeed made its attributes stronger than a typical level 34 monster, but it's still too weak for me. However, the fighters on the wall were terrified. Oh my god, a heroic level mutated monster nest. Quick, get the lord here, one fighter shouted. And it's a mutated monster. Even though it's common, its attributes rival those of typical bosses, another added. Nearly 14,000 wisdom, and all of the evil eyes' attacks are mental and hard to defend against, someone analyzed. Xiaoyu, get out of there. Don't let them target you, the captain yelled urgently. He knew that while Xiaoyu was at the heroic level, facing multiple monsters of the same level was extremely dangerous, especially with the evil eyes' unique attack methods. Xiaoyu's voice reached everyone. Fall back, the evil eyes have a wide attack range. Everyone paused, surprised that Xiaoyu was still concerned for their safety. Go, don't make me look after you. That'll only hinder me, Xiaoyu said firmly. Though he was confident in defeating the evil eyes, if they attacked the soldiers on the walls, it could cause unnecessary casualties. Seeing Xiaoyu's resolve, the soldiers quickly retreated from the walls. They understood that this battle was beyond their capabilities, and not being a burden was their greatest contribution. Xiaoyu, be careful, the captain shouted one last time. With steely eyes, Xiaoyu ordered, Undead archers, chaotic undead mages, attack the evil eyes, and don't let them escape. They're all experience points. Dense volleys of arrows and magic surged toward the evil eyes, and the battle intensified. Six malevolent eyes simultaneously fixed their wicked gaze on Xiaoyu. Alarm bells rang in his mind. He had no desire to fall into a state of chaos, which would bring endless trouble. Take to the skies, Su. Xiaoyu commanded decisively. The frost dragon Su immediately understood, letting out a roar as she soared into the air. At the same time, the six eyes launched their attack, firing multicolored beams from their massive pupils in hot pursuit. However, Sue's agility far outmatched theirs, allowing her to easily dodge the assault. Seizing the opportunity, the undead archer took aim and released a volley of arrows at the evil eyes. With a force of 60,000 strength behind them, the arrows pierced through the eyes almost instantly. Boom, boom, boom six simultaneous explosions turned the eyes into a shower of light. A system notification chimed. Killed Evil Eye, Normal, Mutated Level 34. Gained 45,900 XP. Your level has increased to 31. Killed Evil Eye, Normal, Mutated, Level 34. Gained 40,800 XP. Killed Evil Eye, Normal, Mutated, Level 34. Gained 40,800 XP. Your level has increased to 32. Xiaoyu patted Su, signaling her to stop. Even with his current physical condition, the high-speed flight made him feel a bit uncomfortable. The system prompted again. Please choose your level up reward. Space teleportation skill, one level. Basic corrosion ball, one level. Basic poison, missed one level. Please make your selection. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu chose the space teleportation skill. He had no interest in the other two skills for now. The system immediately granted the reward. Space teleportation will ignore spatial locks. Next, the system offered another choice. Ghost guardian skill, two levels. Xiaoyu selected ghost guardian. The system granted the reward. Ghost Guardian will not destroy its equipment upon death. This brought Xiaoyu some relief, knowing he could now equip his Ghost Guardian with good gear without the fear of losing it due to a single death. Just as Xiaoyu was about to relax, chaotic energy, 
began to churn violently. A creature even larger than the previous evil eyes emerged from the center of the energy. The system provided information on the new monster. Evil Demon Eye Hero Boss. Mutated Species. Level 35. Strength 33,075. Agility 32,487. Wisdom 36,821. Ability 30 damage to mental skills. 50 chance to cause chaos on hit with mental skills. Skills Telekinesis, Mental Shockwave, Evil Curse, Frenzied Will. The moment the evil demon eye appeared, it used Frenzied Will, instantly throwing the undead soldiers below into chaos, causing them to attack each other. This scene sent the human observers into a panic. However, just as they shouted, Siyu, take it down, a holy light enveloped all the undead, dispelling the chaos. This was the sacred aura of the holy maiden ghost at work, leaving the spectators in awe. Siyu ignored the commotion below, focusing on the evil demon eye. When the boss launched another attack, Xiaoyu commanded the undead archers to retaliate. In just two rapid volleys, the evil demon eye was riddled with arrows and exploded midair. The system notified, killed evil demon eye hero boss, mutated, level 35. Gained 183,000 XP. You obtained the master level great eye staff. The warriors within the city walls cheered, praising Xiaoyu's prowess. However, in the shadows, dissatisfied voices murmured. Several dark figures decided to sacrifice themselves to summon greater power. As Xiaoyu anticipated more bosses to level up, the chaotic energy suddenly became extremely turbulent. Crimson hues spread through the murky energy, and several twisted faces were drawn into it. Xiaoyu's eyes narrowed, realizing something was amiss. Look, that massive energy is getting restless again. A powerful aura instantly pressed down on everyone making it hard for the lower-level warriors to breathe. Is this the full force of a legendary powerhouse? Xiaoyu felt the heavy pressure and recalled the three legendary teachers he had met before. He had thought that was the limit of a legend, but the power before him far exceeded his imagination. Clearly, the opponent had been hiding their true strength all along. Meanwhile, a fierce battle raged in the south part of the city. Three legendary professionals were fighting two legendary bosses when they suddenly felt the terrifying aura from the east. Their faces changed dramatically as they realized Xia Yu might be in danger. Hold them off. Don't let them support the East. A man in a black robe, hiding behind a legendary boss, let out a piercing laugh. We might not be able to destroy the city today, but killing the top scholar of Long Nation, the highest scorer in history, is still a significant achievement. The two legendary bosses launched a ferocious attack, entangling the three legendary professionals tightly. Don't get distracted, Su Yu shouted to her companions. Use your trump cards and kill these beasts first. We can only hope Xia Yu can hold out until we get there. With that, she pulled out a scroll and shouted, Die! The other two also unleashed their ultimate moves, launching deadly attacks on the legendary bosses. On the eastern battlefield, Xia Yu watched the monster before him with a grim expression. It was a terrifying creature with hairy legs and a massive tumor on its back, covered in evil eyes all staring greedily at him. A system prompt appeared. Fusion monster legendary boss, mutant species. Level, Legendary. Attributes, Strength 90340, Agility 89214, Wisdom 103400. Talent, Evil will a mix of hundreds of malicious spirits. Mental skill damage 50, adds 20 of wisdom as evil damage, 80 chance to cause confusion. Skills, Telekinesis, Mental Shockwave, Evil Curse, Frenzied Will, Charge, Whirlwind Slash, Fireball, Wind Blade, Healing Dispel, Undead Summoning. Xiaoyu's scalp tingled as he looked at the monster's endless list of skills. What is this thing? Who has ever seen a monster with hundreds of skills? Even more bizarrely, many professionals saw familiar faces in the monster. Some recognized relatives who had disappeared months ago. Others saw old friends. Despite the monster's towering, grotesque form, it evoked a sense of familiarity. This was clearly the effect of the monster's talent. Even without actively using mental skills, it was already affecting everyone's minds. Ha ah, what a beautiful creation of the gods. A figure standing atop a pit of corpses laughed maniacally. God's creation, destroy this human city. Let all know that monsters are divine gifts, not to be slaughtered. Let these blasphemers fall into an endless abyss, suffering forever. The figure rose into the air, pointing towards the city behind Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu immediately recognized him as a lunatic from the Monster Protection Association. These anti-human, antisocial elements were practically traitors to humanity. The top scholar of Long Nation, the highest scorer in history, the man sneered. Today, your life will mark the beginning of humanity's end. Xiaoyu smirked. You? 
or that grotesque monster. According to you humans, God's creation is a legendary boss with the souls of hundreds. It can use countless skills, the Monster Protection Association member boasted, pointing at the fusion monster. And you, you're just a hero-level necromancer. How can you compete with God's creation? The man muttered something under his breath, then shouted, God's creation, kill this blasphemer. The fusion monster emitted an indescribable sound, which to Siyu's ears seemed like some unknown language. Suddenly, the monster's numerous eyes glowed, and hundreds of spells were cast simultaneously fireballs, wind blades, and ice arrows rained down on Siyu. Damn it! Siyu was startled by the barrage. A boss using hundreds of spells at once, even low-level ones, was overwhelming. Before Siyu could issue a command, his frost dragon had already taken to the sky, dodging the incoming spells. Explosions roared behind him. At that moment, dozens of beams shot from the monster's eyes, targeting the frost dragon. The attack was too fast to dodge. The professionals below watched in horror as the beams enveloped Siyu. Is this the end? The Monster Protection Association member sneered. Humans are worthless. Even heroes have frail bodies. Only by becoming God's creation can one achieve eternal life. As the light faded and the sky cleared, the member was about to celebrate when Siyu's voice came from behind him. Sue, dragon breath, kill this chatterbox first. Before he could turn, a blast of cold air froze him into an ice sculpture, which shattered instantly. You're right, the human body is too weak, Siyu said calmly, looking at the broken pieces. That includes you. He then turned to the fusion monster. As for you, die. Before he finished speaking, dozens of beams of light enveloped the fusion monster. It was the saint ghost, who had been invisible beside Siyu, splitting into multiple forms to simultaneously cast divine punishment on the monster. With her war goddess talent increasing her attributes by 30, the level 32 saint ghost's wisdom reached a staggering 119,517 points. With a thunderous roar, the divine punishment's white light nearly swallowed the entire sky. The supreme power of the gods filled the fusion monster's many eyes with fear before it was crushed into dust. A system prompt appeared, successfully killed. Legendary boss! After defeating the fused monster boss, Xiaoyu felt a surge of powerful energy flow into his body. The system notification chimed, experience 1.11 million. Your level has increased to 33, 34, 35. Xiaoyu excitedly examined the loot. A legendary two-handed greatsword named Song of the Evil Soul and a Titan Strength skill book. He gently patted the skull of his frostbone dragon and murmured, This is the first time I've gotten a skill book, and it's legendary. Just perfect for Xiao Bai. Immediately, Xiaoyu began selecting his level-up rewards. He chose Undead Summoning and Corpse Explosion, enhancing these skills with each selection. Although Soul Control was also an option, Xiaoyu decided not to learn it, knowing he could acquire it for free at the Academy. The attributes of Song of the Evil Soul made Yu's eyes light up. 40 Strength, 90 72 Agility, 47 31 Attack Speed, plus a 50 Attack Speed bonus and a 30 chance to cause confusion. He decided to give this weapon to the Ghost Guardian. Although the Ghost Guardian was only level 35, its special skill allowed it to use equipment up to 5 levels higher than its own. The battle ended, and the monsters fled in disarray, leaving a field of corpses behind. Yu signaled the Frostbone Dragon to land sensing that the other battles had also concluded. The system chimed again, selection complete, rewards granted. The maximum number of summons per level for undead summoning has increased by 20. The surrounding crowd erupted in cheers. We won, we won. Someone asked in confusion, did anyone see how that legendary boss was killed? Another voice responded, don't ask. That flash of white light was too bright. No one could see anything. As Xiaoyu dismounted from the dragon, he was greeted with thunderous applause and praise. People in the crowd began comparing the strength of the new generation from various countries, speaking highly of Xiaoyu. At that moment, three streaks of light approached recruiters from three prestigious academies, all legendary professionals. They looked somewhat disheveled and urgently inquired about the fate of the legendary boss. The crowd explained in a cacophony that the boss was insta-killed by Xiaoyu. Faced with these exaggerated accounts, the three legendary professionals were skeptical. They directly questioned Xiaoyu, but he gave vague answers ultimately deciding not to reveal the existence of the Holy Maiden Ghost. Although the three professionals were doubtful, they couldn't ascertain the truth. They then urged Xiaoyu to quickly choose a school. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu chose Qianlong Academy. Su and Yu sighed. The light-armored woman expressed understanding, while the burly man excitedly began arranging Xiaoyu's enrollment. Xiaoyu nodded in agreement, already planning how to use the Academy's resources to enhance his abilities. In three days, he would embark on a new journey to report to Qianlong Academy. 
For the next three days, Xiaoyu had nothing to do but take Xiao Bai to level up every day. On the third day, Bai Xiao Xiao stood on the teleportation array and shouted to the departing Xiaoyu, I'll be there next month, so wait for me. Xiaoyu waved goodbye with a smile and was then teleported away. Welcome to Lingnan City, the top scorer in the National College Entrance Examination, Xiaoyu. Before Xiaoyu even opened his eyes, he heard a mechanical voice. When he opened them, he found himself in a massive room with a metallic dragon head speaking to him. Raising an eyebrow in thought, Xiaoyu mused, although Yuan Long is known for its technology, Qin Long is not bad either. He then asked, where do I go to register? Proceed directly to registration. Please stand still in the teleportation array. I will transport you to the admissions office. As the dragon head slightly opened its mouth, Xiaoyu once again felt the fluctuation of the magic array, and his vision blurred. Are you Xiaoyu? A gentle and pleasant voice asked. Xiaoyu opened his eyes to find himself in an office, with a beautiful woman in a long dress sitting at a desk nearby. Yes, I am, Xiaoyu nodded. Is this the admissions office? I am Feng Xiao. You can call me Ms. Feng. I'll be handling your enrollment. Feng Xiao motioned for Xiaoyu to take a seat, and then carefully verified his documents and identity. She finally used specialized equipment to check Xiaoyu's profile. Xiaoyu, level 35 necromancer. Feng Zhao's eyes flashed with surprise. She thought he was reported to be level 30 before. Although he dealt with a high-level hero-class monster nest, increasing so many levels is quite unusual. His combat power already surpasses 95 of the students. Not to mention, a legendary level boss appeared later, and although it died mysteriously, it's suspected that a mythic-level priest or mage intervened. Collecting her thoughts, Feng Xiao smiled and said, All right, welcome to the Qianlong school family. Would you like me to explain some of the school's basics now? After Xiaoyu confirmed, Feng Xiao patiently explained the rules of Qianlong school. She detailed the school's universal currency, Qianlong points, and how to earn them. Breaking through personal limits in the Dragon God Tower, completing school assignments and tasks, etc. She also informed Xiaoyu of the additional 3,000 Qianlong points awarded to him and guided him on how to check them via his phone. Feng Xiao continued to explain the uses of Qianlong points, including exchanging them for entry into monster nests, purchasing equipment, or consulting teachers. Xiaoyu immediately checked the exchange list and found that he could use 3,000 points to redeem an entry into the level 41 legendary monster nest, Dungeon of Sin, which made him quite happy. Noticing Xiaoyu's thoughts, Feng Xiao reminded him, don't rush into leveling up. The school also offers some basic benefits. You can challenge the Dragon God Tower once a week, apply to enter a monster nest once a month, up to the hero level, and apply to enter the hero level challenge space once every six months. Make sure to remember these. Xiaoyu nodded seriously. Feng Xiao then informed him of an important decision. The administration has decided to place you at rank 100 on the Jialong list. You will receive 500 Qinlong points every Monday. However, because you were specially admitted to the top 100, everyone can challenge you during the first month. You must accept at least one challenge per day. If you lose, you'll drop in rank, but if you win, your rank will improve. She thoroughly explained the rules of the Jialong list, including the challenge restrictions and reward mechanisms. Xiaoyu showed great interest in the higher rank rewards, and Feng Xiao answered all his questions. When choosing a dormitory, Xiaoyu decisively opted for a villa that cost 100 Qianlong points per week. Feng Xiao was a bit surprised but didn't say much, arranging villa number 23 for him. Finally, she informed Xiaoyu that his core necromancer skills would be delivered within 48 hours. After thanking her, Xiaoyu was teleported away. Watching his departing figure, Feng Xiao chuckled softly. This handsome young man might attract some resentment for being directly placed in the top 100. I wonder what the administration is thinking. After another teleportation, Xiaoyu shook his head, feeling a bit dizzy from the frequent transfers in a short period. It seemed that Xianlong School relied entirely on teleportation arrays for movement, which made Xiaoyu, a newcomer, feel somewhat uncomfortable. Taking out his phone, he opened the map navigation on the school app and followed the directions to his dormitory. The so-called villa was actually just a two-story residential building, but for a student, it was quite a good deal. Xiaoyu dropped his luggage casually, without any intention of unpacking, and headed straight out the door, setting his navigation target to the teleportation center. Qianlong School covered a vast area, reportedly spanning several dozen kilometers, yet it had fewer than 10,000 students. As he walked, Xiaoyu encountered only a handful of students, and those he did see paid no attention to the early arriving freshmen. As Xiaoyu walked alone, he suddenly heard a lively female voice behind him. Hey, are you a new student? He turned around to see a vibrant girl with tan skin, dressed in a tank top and denim shorts, waving at him. Yes, Xiaoyu replied briefly with a nod. The girl's eyes lit up, and she raised her voice. Then you must be Xiaoyu, the top scorer in the national exams this year, with perfect scores in all three subjects. 
This string of impressive titles caught the attention of about a dozen students nearby. Some whispered, a freshman? Isn't school starting in a month? Didn't you hear those titles? He must be a special recruit. Look at the Jialong ranking. The 100th spot has changed. It's this Xiaoyu. What? He entered directly at 100th place in the Jialong ranking? A level 35 hero necromancer with a hidden class. Xiaoyu frowned slightly, clearly displeased with the impolite gossip. What do you want? He asked, his tone tinged with impatience. The girl smiled excitedly. I want to challenge you. Xiaoyu raised an eyebrow, surprised to be challenged so soon after arriving. The surrounding whispers grew louder. Isn't that Yang Qianqian? She was ranked 98th last week, and she's challenging a freshman. Yang Qianqian is a level 38 hero archer, specializing in defeating mages. This freshman is in for a tough time. Can he refuse the challenge? Of course not. Freshmen can't refuse a challenge on their first day. At that moment, Xiaoyu's phone buzzed with a notification. Yang Qianqian, level 38 hero archer, ranked 107th in the Jialong ranking, has challenged you. What now? Xiaoyu asked, looking at the suddenly challenging Yang Qianqian. Of course, we go to the challenge stage. Oh right, you're new. Follow me, Yang Qianqian said, grabbing Xiaoyu's hand and running so fast that he almost got dragged off his feet. Xiaoyu was secretly amazed at Yang Qianqian's speed, thinking that Qianlong school was indeed impressive, with even random students displaying such prowess. They quickly arrived at the challenge area, where ten massive stone platforms, each nearly a kilometer in size, stood. Each platform was inscribed with various magical arrays, indicating their high cost. Yang Qianqian briefly explained, in the challenge stage, you won't actually get hurt. Instead, your health is shown as data. Roughly, one point of strength equals ten points of health, and then damage reduces health. It's a bit complicated, but you'll understand once you're up there. She led Xiaoyu to an empty platform and stepped onto it first. Xiaoyu followed, and a system prompt immediately appeared. Do you want to enter the challenge stage, along with a series of rules? After confirming his entry, Xiaoyu saw his stats displayed. Health, 16053016-0530. The platform also showed the same information. Xiaoyu, level 35 hero necromancer. Health, 16053016-0530. He then looked at his opponent. Yang Qianqian, level 38 hero archer. Health, 385980385980. Wow, Xiaoyu, you have over 16,000 strength? That's almost double the typical mage of your level. Yang Qianqian exclaimed in surprise. Xiaoyu sighed, it's all right, but still far from your level. Yang Qianqian responded with a hint of jealousy. I'm an archer. I can't compare to a mage. Your wisdom must be high too, given your strength. Your equipment must be top-notch as well. By now, a crowd had gathered below, chatting excitedly. Who's Yang Qianqian's opponent? He looks unfamiliar. It's Xiaoyu, this year's national top scorer, specially recruited to start early. Today's his first day. Wow, Yang Qianqian is being unfair, challenging someone on their first day. He entered the Jialong ranking at 100th place. After this fight, he'll earn 500 points next week. Why couldn't I meet this new student? Seeing more and more people gathering. Xiaoyu asked, can we start? Yang Qianqian playfully replied, oh, let's chat a bit more. I love talking to handsome guys. I'm a sucker for good looks. Xiaoyu ignored her and directly chose to start the challenge. The system prompt immediately sounded. Due to the difference in professions, the necromancer will have 10 seconds to use summoning skills. Countdown starting, 9-8. Xiaoyu began summoning undead immediately, while Yang Qianqian drew her weapon a large bow and her outfit transformed into a light green armor. Summon undead. 10 undead soldiers appeared in front of Xiaoyu. Summon Su. With Xiaoyu's command, a massive frost WRM nearly 20 meters long and several meters tall, emerged from the void. Its imposing presence made everyone present swallow nervously. The audience gasped, a necromancer lord's skill, and of high rank too. A hero? Maybe even legendary? The pressure is immense. No wonder he's the national top scorer with perfect scores. His strength is no joke, entering the top 100 right away. Seeing the frost WRM, Yang Qianqian hesitated but quickly encouraged herself. It's fine. He only has 160,000 health. One critical hit should take him down. As the countdown reached zero, Yang Qianqian instantly fired a barrage of arrows. Bone shields. Four thick bone shields, each adorned with a menacing ghost face, instantly appeared around Xiaoyu. As the arrows whistled through the air, the shields moved to protect him. Thud. Thud. Thud the arrows struck the shields, but only managed to break two. The rest of the attack was completely blocked by this legendary defense. Four bone shields? That's a mutated skill, an observer exclaimed. Yang Qianqian's expression changed, realizing she had missed a critical opportunity. 
Xia Yu's undead soldiers surged toward Yang Xianqian like a tide. Even without summoning the Holy Maiden's ghost, his mythic level undead soldiers, with their 40,000 agility, were not inferior to her. Speed burst, a green light flashed over Yang Qianqian, and her speed dramatically increased, allowing her to barely escape the relentless pursuit of the undead soldiers. Shoot! Xia Yu commanded. A dozen undead archers responded, releasing a volley of arrows that filled the sky and rained down on Yang Qianqian. Her face turned pale. Wind Dancer, she activated another speed boosting skill, but with such a dense barrage of arrows, evasion was impossible. Thud, 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 several arrows pierced her body. Challenge over. Xia Yu wins. No changes to the Jialong ranking. The crowd fell silent. Yang Qianqian looked at Xia Yu in disbelief, unable to accept her crushing defeat. That must be mythic level undead summoning and high tier necromancy mastery. An experienced student from Qianlong Academy analyzed. Just look at the damage those undead archers inflicted. A hero level necromancer with mythic level summoning? No wonder he's the national top scorer. Mythic skills? So envious. The best I have is master level. Sigh, I've only got one hero level skill. The surrounding students buzzed with envy. Yang Qianqian, still upset, said, You should have told me you had mythic level undead summoning. I wouldn't have bothered. That really hurt. Xiao Yu rolled his eyes, thinking, We're not that close. Why would I tell you everything? Since it's over, I'm leaving, Xiao Yu said, turning to go. Yang Qianqian caught up with him. Hey, I'm the first girl in school to challenge you. How about adding me as a friend? Don't say things that could be misunderstood. Xiao Yu sighed but still took out his phone to add her. At that moment, two beautiful girls approached it. it was the Qing sisters, whom Xiao Yu hadn't seen in days. Yuga, national top scorer, first in history. You're amazing. Qing Yiye greeted him excitedly. Congratulations, Qing Yuaming also smiled. Just lucky, Xiao Yu replied modestly. The crowd began to murmur again. This freshman knows the Qing family? He must have some serious background, not just knows them. They seem to be friends. Envy and jealousy, man. He's handsome, strong, and surrounded by school beauties. Don't just envy him. Being close to the Qing sisters isn't all good. They have plenty of admirers, and some are really possessive. Yet yeah, true. Suddenly, a towering figure blocks Xia Yu and the Qing sisters. Freshman, the newcomer asked coldly. Move aside, do you you? Qing Yuiming said sternly, frowning. You big oaf, get lost. Our business has nothing to do with you. Qing Yiya scolded, pointing at do you you. Yuiming, I'm not meddling. I just want to have some fun with this freshman, Du Yu said, his eyes fixed on Xia Yu. You're a level 40 hero warrior, been at Qianlong for nearly three years, and now you want to bully a freshman? Qing Yiya stomped her foot in anger. Qing Yuiming warned Xia Yu, don't accept his challenge. He's from the Du family. Most of his gear is hero level, with some legendary pieces. His attributes are extremely powerful. He has all the core warrior skills and has increased his potential through multiple successful boss challenges. His combat power is top tier among heroes. Xiao Yu thought to himself, Why would I run? Do you know my current strength? I'm not afraid of a level 40 hero warrior. I could easily crush a legendary warrior. Seeing Qing Yuiming so close to Xiao Yu only fueled Du Yu Yu's anger. I see the national top scorer, the first in history, is nothing special. Xiao Yu wasn't buying it. What's your rank on the Jialong list? Humph, 47th. Du Yu Yu replied proudly. Ah, so low, Xiao Yu scoffed. I thought you'd be in the top 10. Yuiming, if I beat him, I get his 47th rank, right? Qing Yuiming quickly replied, Yes, but you can't beat him. That's good enough for me. Xiao Yu said, turning to Du Yu Yu. I'll accept your challenge, but I have one condition. Can you agree to it? What's that? Speak. Du Yu Yu said, excited that Xiao Yu was willing to face him. If I win, you stay away from these two. They clearly don't like you. Being a sycophant won't get you everything you want. Xiao Yu's words made the onlookers stifle their laughter, but Du Yu Yu's darkening expression kept them silent. Huh? Well said, Yuga. I've been fed up with this big O for ages. Qing Yiya laughed heartily. Du Yu Yu glared at her. Fine, let's go to the stage. Du Yu Yu said through gritted teeth. If not, then forget it. I won't force it. To the stage. Xiao Yu agreed without hesitation. In no time, the news of the freshman challenging Du Yu Yu, ranked 47th on the Jialong board, spread like wildfire throughout Qianlong School. Students buzzed with discussions, amazed by the newcomer's audacity. Challenging the 47th rank on the first day? This guy's got guts. Du Yu Yu is no pushover. Even though he's just 47th, his gear makes him a powerhouse among heroes. The Du family has poured everything into training him. A wild card profession, even a hidden one, can't possibly match him. Don't forget, this freshman was specially recruited. He must have some serious skills. Even if he can't beat Du Yu Yu, the gap won't be that big. A necromancer against a warrior? 
The necromancer actually has the upper hand. If the warrior can't crush the summoned undead, he might get worn down. Before long, thousands of students and faculty gathered around the challenge stage. Among the crowd were geniuses ranked in the top 10 on the Jialong board. Notable figures like Wu Xiang, ranked 7th, Song Ge Fei, ranked 5th, and others showed up intensifying the atmosphere. Qin Yueming watched the stage with a worried expression, while Qin Yuemun excitedly shouted, Go you go, beat that big oaf. At that moment, a tall, slender man with delicate features appeared beside Qin Yueming, speaking softly. I heard this is all because of you again, fighting over someone. Qin Wen, Qin Yueming sighed, unsure how to respond. Qin Yuemun greeted cheerfully. Hey, Wen Mei Jiejie, what brings you here? Ro Wen Mei patted her head. Call me Wen Mei Gij. Got it? Wen Mei Jiejie, Qin Yuemun replied playfully. Qin Yuemun asked quietly. Wen Mei, do you think Xiaoyu has a chance? Ro Wen Mei smiled mysteriously. The necromancer's win rate is a solid 100%. Wow, really? Are you sure you're not kidding? Wen Mei Jiejie? Qin Yuemun was skeptical. Though she believed Yu Gu was strong. Do you use prowess was undeniable. Just watch. No need to worry, Ro Wen Mei said confidently. On the challenge stage, Xiaoyu sighed as more onlookers gathered. Didn't expect to cause such a commotion on the first day. Seeing this, Do Yu Yu assumed Xiaoyu was afraid and arrogantly said, What's wrong, scared? If you kneel and apologize, I might accept your surrender. Xiaoyu only glanced at him before checking Do Yu Yu's stats. Do Yu Yu, level 40 heroic warrior, 6706806706808 HP. Do Yu Yu's strength of 67,000 drew gas from the crowd. This figure was significantly higher than other level 40 heroes without legendary gear, a testament to his family's meticulous training. The crowd's astonishment greatly satisfied Do Yu Yu's vanity, and he smugly raised an eyebrow at Xiaoyu. However, Xiaoyu remained indifferent and initiated the battle. Given the class disparity, the necromancer is granted five seconds to use summoning skills. Countdown. Five, four, three. Xiaoyu acted swiftly. Summon undead Buck. Ten undead soldiers and Buck appeared instantly. The five seconds elapsed quickly, and Do Yu Yu brandished a massive, crimson, double-handed battle axe, radiating immense power. Undoubtedly, it was a level 40 legendary weapon. Whirlwind Slash. Do Yu Yu roared, spinning violently creating a massive tornado on the stage. Xiaoyu could feel a powerful pull. A mutated skill. Xiaoyu's eyes narrowed, recognizing this wasn't an ordinary whirlwind slash. Bone shield. Xiaoyu summoned a bone shield to resist the pull, but the undead soldiers weren't as fortunate. Without the Saint Ghost blessing, their strength was no match for Du Yuyu, and they were quickly swept into the tornado. Bang, bang, bang. The undead soldiers were shredded, and Xiaoyu saw the tornado approaching him. The audience exclaimed, it's over, the freshman is going to lose. His undead summons can't hold against Du Yu Yu. Even if he summons undead archers, they can't hit Du Yu Yu in the whirlwind slash. His combat experience is lacking. The undead warrior's strength is insufficient, and they'll be wiped out by area skills. Du Yu Yu's whirlwind slash is a mutated skill with strong pull force. The undead archers will be dragged in too. Look, the freshman's bone shield is about to break. Bang, bang, bang. Three bone shields shattered in succession. Why did he summon a melee undead lord? If he had summoned the frost dragon earlier, he might have had a chance. Die, you damned freshman. Do you, you, thrilled, charged at Xiaoyu with the tornado. At the critical moment, Xiaoyu shouted, corpse explosion, boom. An undead soldier's corpse within the tornado exploded into dark flames. Do you, you, and the audience were caught off guard. They had assumed Xiaoyu was solely a summoning necromancer, not expecting such an attack. Unprepared, Do you, you was engulfed in the explosion. Following this, Xiaoyu triggered the Hellfire Touch skill from his gloves. A dark flame formed demonic hand reached for the stunned Du Yu Yu. Booms! Another explosion ensued. Challenge over. Xiaoyu wins. Xiaoyu rises to rank 47 on the Jialong board. Du Yu Yu drops to rank 48, the system announced. The audience was in an uproar. No way. The freshman just took down Du Yu Yu with 670,000 HP. How did he do that? One corpse explosion and an equipment skill. And Du Yu Yu's down? Am I dreaming? What kind of gear and high-grade corpse explosion does he have? How high is this freshman's intelligence? What level is his corpse explosion? Eyes filled with respect turned towards Xiaoyu, for strength always commands respect. Du Yuyu stood up, unwilling to accept defeat, and charged at Xiaoyu. I refuse to accept this. I still have equipment skills. I haven't used my legendary skills. How could you beat me? This is impossible. At that moment, a figure stepped between Xiaoyu and Du Yuyu. Du Yuyu, a bed is a bed. You lost, accept it. Go back and stop embarrassing yourself. Seeing it was Wu Xiang. Do you use face changed? 
and he reluctantly retreated. Wu Xiang turned to Xia Yu and said, Hello, Xia Yu. I'm Wu Xiang, a level 40 magic swordsman. I sincerely invite you to join my team. Xia Yu stood in the plaza of Qianlong School, contemplating Wu Xiang's invitation. The surrounding students held their breath, waiting for the decision of the national top scorer. Joining Wu Xiang's team was undoubtedly a tempting option. A top 10 powerhouse on the Jialong list, strong teammates, and luxurious equipment, all these were incredibly appealing. Many cast envious glances, thinking that if Xia Yu joined, he would secure a solid foothold in the school and his upgrade speed would be limitless. However, Xia Yu did not immediately agree. He smiled and asked, What's your rank on the Jialong list? Seventh, Wu Xiang replied. Xia Yu's next words shocked everyone. Challenge me. If you win, I'll join you. If you lose, then it's nothing. This statement caused an uproar among the crowd. A freshman daring to challenge the seventh-ranked Wu Xiang? Even Rou Wenmei and the Qing sisters were stunned. Wu Xiang was a hidden-class magic swordsman, vastly superior to Du Yu Yu, with a myriad of combat techniques. Wu Xiang's gaze turned cold. You want to challenge me on the platform? Yes, that's right. Xiao Yu calmly nodded. Anyone can challenge me this month. If the first rank is here, I'll let him challenge me too. Wu Xiang replied icily. If I win, do you really think I'll still want you in my team? If you're unwilling, then I refuse to join your team, Xia Yu said, turning to leave. Wait, Wu Xiang called out. All right, I accept your challenge, but I have one condition. Speak. If I win, you drop out. Qin Yi hurriedly shouted, Brother Yu, you can't agree to that. Dropping out for a challenge isn't worth it. To everyone's surprise, Xia Yu nodded in agreement. Fine. This scene stunned everyone, including Wu Xiang. He hadn't expected Xia Yu to agree so readily to such a condition. Ultimately, they agreed to the challenge in seven days. The news quickly spread throughout the school, causing a sensation. Principal Qing Yimou was furious when he heard about it. But Xia Yu and Wu Xiang had already left the school, making it impossible to stop them. He could only hope nothing serious would happen. Meanwhile, Xia Yu had ventured deep into a dark underground labyrinth. Wisps of chaotic, demonic energy floated around, posing both mental and physical threats if one wasn't careful. So, this is a hero-level monster lair? It's even creepier than that mutated monster lair, but it won't stop me from leveling up. Let's go. Time to level up. Xia Yu resolved, stepping into the darkness. Due to the narrow pathways of the underground demon city, Xia Yu cautiously summoned only around 20 undead soldiers, positioning them in front and behind him. At the same time, he called forth the Holy Maiden's ghost and directed the ghostly legion to scout the surroundings. Suddenly, the ghostly legion sounded an alarm. Xia Yu immediately ordered the undead guards to advance. Soon, two humanoid creatures appeared in his sight. The system prompt displayed. Underground demons, common species, level 34. As soon as the underground demons saw Xia Yu, they let out a roar and charged madly. However, their attributes, which were less than 10,000, were no match for the 70,000 sampless attributes of the undead soldiers. In no time, they were cut down. The system prompt sounded. Defeated common underground demon, level 34. Experience 20400. Ugh, the experience is so little, Xia Yu sighed. Ever since he reached the hero level monster nests, not only had the nests become rare, but the monster levels also varied significantly. In this level 39 monster nest, there could be monsters as low as level 20, while true level 39 monsters were very rare. Xia Yu continued forward, calculating in his mind, according to the strategy for the underground demon city, if I go a bit further, I should encounter the first elite monster. Hopefully, it's still there. He had specifically chosen a more difficult monster nest to avoid popular leveling spots. In those hot spots, it was extremely difficult to even snatch a single monster, let alone a boss. In the cold and damp dungeon, Xia Yu proceeded cautiously. Occasionally, monsters ranging from level 20 to 30 would emerge from the darkness, but he dealt with them effortlessly. Suddenly, the path opened up into a large cavern, surrounded by numerous small holes, obviously the dwelling of the underground demons. However, it was unusually quiet here. Xia Yu quickly noticed the scattered corpses of underground demons on the ground, one of which was particularly large. Someone got here first, Xia Yu sighed in disappointment and quickly approached to inspect the bodies. Judging by the state of the corpses, these monsters had been killed not long ago. I must hurry to the next boss location, or I'll miss out entirely. A thousand three dragon points are at stake. Xia Yu quickened his pace, heading deeper into the underground demon city. Along the way, he saw more and more monster corpses, which increased his anxiety. Damn, that team must also be chasing after the boss. Sure enough, when Xia Yu reached another large cavern, he heard a commotion inside. Watch out, the boss is mutated, it's too tough to handle. Lan, should we retreat? We can't break through its defense. Let's go. 
a cold voice commanded. Xiaoyu felt a surge of joy. They can't beat it. The boss is mine. Suddenly, a scream pierced the air. Ah, Lan, help, help. Followed by a flurry of panicked footsteps, Xiaoyu entered the cavern and saw four people running towards him in a panic. Leading the group was a heavily armored warrior. And to Xiaoyu's surprise, the voice coming from the armor was female. Run, the boss has mutated. It's a level 39 mutated boss. Xiaoyu ignored them and walked straight towards the depths of the cavern. Behind them, a massive creature was in pursuit. It was a giant lizard, several meters tall and over 10 meters long, covered in sinister black scales emitting a faint magical aura, and its head resembled a dragon's, exuding an air of majesty. The system promptly provided detailed information. Dragon Blood Demon Lizard Hero Boss, Mutated Species. Level, 39. Strength, 40,755. Agility, 39,325. Wisdom, 38,936. Abilities. Mutated Dragon Blood, Mutated by Infected Dragon Blood. 100 Strength per Level, 100 Agility per Level. Dragon Scales Sinister Scales Emitting Magical Aura. 30 Magic Resistance, 50 Physical Resistance. When attacked, releases a magical aura that deals 100 all attribute damage and reduces enemies' physical and magical resistance by 10. Skills, Bite, Demon Claw Tear, Curse of Pain, Dragon Breath Breathes Dragon Fire at the enemy. Dealing 300 all attribute damage and reducing enemies' physical and magical resistance by 30. Experience, Xia Yu's eyes lit up and he immediately commanded the 20 undead soldiers to charge forward. The four people behind him were stunned. How can this necromancer dare? The armored warrior exclaimed. This is a mutated hero boss, not weaker than a legendary boss. Maybe he hasn't learned the undead space skill? The male priest wondered. Just 20 undead soldiers to fight a boss? Other necromancers would summon hundreds of undead creatures before swarming the boss, continually summoning to replenish their ranks. Maybe he specialized in corpse explosion? The female archer speculated. Corpse explosion specialization? The armored warrior pondered. Should we help him? Tao Tao, you take Yushu out, and Zhang Lu, and I will go in to save him. Even though this guy is foolish, charging in alone while we all ran, we can't just leave him to die. Big Sis is really kind. The priest Zhang Lu smiled warmly. That's what I love about Lan, the archer Tao Tao said, carrying a severely injured mage on her back. All right, let's go. The armored warrior Lin Lan ordered decisively. Meanwhile, the dragon blood demon lizard was already covered in deep wounds. Its golden red eyes warily watched the seemingly ordinary skeletons. These undead soldiers wielded worn swords and shields, yet they could easily pierce its prized dragon scales and even sever its bones. Even though its claws could chip the undead soldier shields, they still held firm without losing a speck of dust. If not for its large size, the undead soldier's long swords would have been like oversized toothpicks to it, and it wouldn't have lasted this long. When Lin Lan and her team returned to the cavern, they saw the dragon blood demon lizard being pushed back by the 20 undead soldiers, and they were incredulous. Zhang Lu even rubbed his eyes, doubting if he was dreaming. Could this young-looking necromancer actually be a hidden legendary player? Lin Lan wondered. At that moment, a voice reached their ears. Are you back to steal experience? Lin Lan and Zhang Lu looked over to see the young necromancer watching them warily. No, no, Zhang Lu quickly explained. We were just, just here to save you? He realized how absurd that sounded halfway through. You think I need saving? Xiaoyu raised an eyebrow. Zhang Lu awkwardly picked up the phone he had deliberately dropped earlier. Forcing a smile, I just dropped my phone here, came back to get it. Good, Xiaoyu nodded. At that moment, the Dragon Blood Demon Lizard finally couldn't hold on and crashed to the ground. After defeating the Dragon Blood Lizard Hero Boss, Xiaoyu's experience points skyrocketed by 999,000, instantly boosting his level to 36. The system notification chimed informing him that he had obtained a master-level special item, the Dragon Blood Elixir. Faced with the upgrade reward options, Xiaoyu carefully weighed the three choices. Undead Lord Skill Level 2, Master Level Undead Resurrection, and Master Level Poison Mist. Each option had its unique advantages. The Undead Lord would come with ordinary undead minions equal to the level times 200. Undead Resurrection could revive corpses up to five levels below his own, while Poison Mist would enhance his skill level by two. After thorough consideration, Xia Yu chose the Undead Lord. This decision would significantly bolster the strength of his undead army, laying a solid foundation for future battles. Next, Xia Yu meticulously examined the attributes of the Dragon Blood Elixir. The effects of this level 39 special item were astounding. A 10 chance of acquiring Dragon Blood lineage for ordinary users, 15 for magical pets, and a 70 chance for those with existing Dragon lineage, with a 20 chance of obtaining a mutated Dragon Blood lineage. This discovery thrilled Xia Yu. Lineage items were extremely rare worldwide, 
even more precious than top-tier skill books. The Dragonblood lineage belonged to the T1 category, capable of greatly enhancing the user's combat power and potential. He couldn't help but marvel at his rare stroke of luck. However, the joy was soon tinged with a bit of regret. Since he didn't have Dragon lineage, his success rate for using the elixir was only 10. Xiaoyu sighed, contemplating the best use for this valuable item. Lin Lan and Jiang Lun noticed Xiaoyu's fluctuating mood and guessed he had obtained something valuable but currently unusable. Sensibly, they suggested leaving, but Xiaoyu stopped them to inquire about the number of elite or boss monsters they had defeated. Jiang Le honestly replied that they had only killed the demon warlord and the underground ghost, two elite monsters. They had intended to challenge a boss, but had to retreat due to its mutation. This information made Xiaoyu realize that other teams might be active in the underground demon city, prompting him to speed up his actions. Lin Lan removed her helmet, revealing stunning beauty, and expressed her gratitude to Xiaoyu. Learning that Xiaoyu was also a student at Qianlong School, she seemed puzzled as she had never seen his name on the school leaderboard. After briefly introducing himself, Xiaoyu hurriedly left to continue his boss hunting journey. Along the way, he kept pondering the cause of the Dragon Lud Lizard's mutation, suspecting it might be related to a mysterious monster protection organization. As he delved deeper into the underground demon city, the monster's levels kept rising. After killing a level 36 demon lizard, his level increased to 37. For this upgrade reward, he chose Space Blink, extending his skill distance to 180 meters. However, when Xiaoyu reached the next elite monster spot, he found he was a step too late. The ground was littered with demon lizard corpses and traces of a boss being instantly killed, indicating that a legendary class professional might have beaten him to it. From his observations, Xiaoyu deduced that the other party seemed to have a clear goal and was moving swiftly deeper into the area. Xiaoyu followed closely, feeling both anticipation and nervousness, unsure of what challenges awaited him ahead. All right, you guys go this way. I'll take another route, Xiaoyu thought to himself. Now that he had figured out the other party's direction, he wasn't about to foolishly follow behind and eat their dust. Besides, the other group had legendary professionals and a clear objective, which meant they were bound to be highly aggressive. Suddenly, the system popped up with a choice prompt. 1. Follow the footprints into the underground depths. Reward. Soul Fireball upgraded to Heroic Level. 2. Avoid trailing behind the other party. Reward. Heroic Level Necromancy Resurrection Level 1. 3. Enter the Eastern Cave, take a shortcut to the underground depths, and either kill or tame the juvenile mutated dragon. Reward. Corpse Explosion upgraded to Mythic Level. Xiaoyu's pupils contracted and his heart pounded. A juvenile mutated dragon? That was at least a Mythic Level creature, possibly even reaching the True God Level. It was just a notch below his Holy Ghost Saintus. Recalling the Saintus's invincible power at her level and her ability to defeat higher level foes, Xiaoyu couldn't help but get excited. Even if it was slightly weaker than the Saintus, this mutated dragon would be a significant asset. Suddenly enlightened, Xiaoyu realized the true purpose of the legendary professionals returning to the underground demon city. It wasn't about competition, it was fate. He immediately decided to have the Holy Ghost Saintus carry him into the Eastern Cave and quickly advance deeper. Meanwhile, another team was rushing through the underground demon city. Mr. Zheng, this dragon is incredibly elusive. We can't find it at all, a team member said, panting heavily. Leading the group was a middle-aged man in black, holding a dagger. His aura was overwhelmingly strong, and if not for him revealing himself intentionally, the others wouldn't have noticed his presence. Find it, we must find that dragon. Zheng Yuhui's eyes were resolute. This mythic level dragon will make my son invincible at the mythic level. It's the perfect dragon for a dragon knight. The other three couldn't help but show envy. Having a powerful and loving father who personally hunts a dragon for you is a blessing beyond measure. They wondered if such a father needed another son. There's a disturbance in the demonic energy over there. It might be the dragon absorbing demonic energy to heal, Zheng Yuhui said, turning into a black shadow and speeding toward the indicated direction. At the same time, Xiaoyu, aided by the Holy Ghost Sanus' speed, reached the underground depths. The area was filled with demonic energy posing a constant threat. However, Xiaoyu was unconcerned. With his trade of taking only one damage and the Sainus's holy light healing, the damage was negligible. Saintus, Ghost Legion, starts searching for the juvenile, mutated dragon. Xiaoyu ordered, dispatching over a hundred ghosts to scour the area. While the vast underground depths made it difficult to find a target quickly, the monster slain along the way provided Xiaoyu with nearly half of his experience points. Suddenly, one of the ghosts reported an anomaly. Xiaoyu rushed to the scene to find a four to five maternal subterranean demon wandering aimlessly. However, Xiaoyu keenly observed that the demon never strayed far from an unremarkable cave entrance. 
always returning after a short distance. Hmm. It seems this juvenile dragon is quite intelligent, setting up a decoy, Xiaoyu surmised. The dragon was likely hiding in the cave, with the demon acting as its guard. If ordinary people fought the demon, the dragon would seize the chance to escape, making it difficult to catch up. But Xiaoyu was no ordinary person. As a necromancer, he was determined to capture this level 39 mutated subterranean demon boss and the juvenile dragon. Xiaoyu immediately summoned over a hundred undead soldiers and archers. You handle the demon, since the saintess had to stay with him. The undead couldn't benefit from the inspirer talent, so he summoned a large number. Go! Xiaoyu had the saintess carry him toward the cave entrance while commanding the undead archers to rain arrows on the demon boss, drawing it away. Just then, a surge of demonic energy erupted from the cave entrance. The juvenile dragon is trying to escape. Xiaoyu's heart skipped a beat, and he used spatial teleportation to rush into the cave. Inside, a large beast was fleeing into the distance. Xiaoyu finally saw the juvenile dragon's true form, a body longer and stronger than that of ordinary dragons, with a fierce dragon head adorned with for spear-like horns. Having lived in the underground demon city for a long time, its wings were somewhat atrophied, but its two pairs of powerful forelimbs and strong hind legs allowed it to run as fast as it could fly. The system immediately provided detailed information about the dragon. True God Boss, Mutated Juvenile. Species Dragon. Mutation Level, 35. Strength, 58,975. Agility, 59,325. Intelligence, 54,425. Talent. The Mutated Dragon, tainted by the Abyss but retaining its sanity, absorbs the Abyss's power. Gains 200 Strength and 200 Agility per level. Dragon Scales. Emit demonic energy, 50 magic resistance, 75 physical resistance, and sprays demonic energy at attackers, dealing 200 all attribute damage and reducing their physical and magic resistance by 30. Devour. Consuming corpses rapidly restores health, with a 5 chance to gain attribute potential based on the corpse's attributes and a 1 chance to acquire the corpse's skills. Skills, Abyssal Blast, Dragon Breath, Stealth, Bite, Rend, and dozens more. See how you felt overwhelmed by the number of skills the juvenile dragon possessed likely obtained through devouring corpses. Suddenly, Xiaoyu noticed multiple shattered black scales on the dragon, with black blood oozing from the wounds. Saintess, keep it alive, but be careful not to kill it, Xiaoyu instructed as he landed, directing several Saintess ghosts to attack the juvenile dragon. He made sure to warn them not to deal a fatal blow, as he wanted to tame the dragon. While an ice dragon mount was impressive, Xiaoyu thought this dragon was even more awe-inspiring. Plus, its growth potential was extraordinary. Five ethereal maidens surrounded the young dragon, their divine radiance causing the dragon to shrink back in fear. The dragon could sense the overwhelming power of these maidens, especially the holy energy that countered its dark essence, making it instinctively curl up, its golden eyes full of anxiety. Surrender or die, a calm voice echoed in the dragon's ears. Despite its youth, the dragon understood the simple, yet chilling, ultimatum. The dragon seethed with anger. How could a noble dragon like me submit to anyone? It turned to glare at the speaker, only to find an ordinary human. This only fueled its arrogance further. You think you can make me surrender? A dragon will never be a slave, it roared at Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu sighed, a hint of regret flashing in his eyes. So you choose death then? He hadn't expected such pride from the young dragon. If it couldn't be tamed, it would have to be killed to complete his mission. Maidens, kill it, he ordered calmly already contemplating how to use his mythical corpse explosion or create an icebone dragon. The ethereal maidens raised their glowing warhammers, ready to carry out their master's command and send the dragon to the abyss. The dragon's golden eyes contracted in panic, realizing that there was no room for negotiation. It suddenly understood that it might not be as noble as it thought. Shouldn't it try to negotiate and sign a contract first? As the maidens prepared to strike, the dragon hastily shouted, Wait! Xiaoyu raised his hand to signal the maidens to stop, turning his gaze to the dragon. Change your mind? This is your last chance. Surrender or die. Make your choice. The young dragon looked at Xiaoyu's calm face, wanting to bargain further, but its instincts told it that one more word would result in immediate execution. It quickly thought, even angels submit to this human. What reason do I have to refuse? Am I nobler than an angel? The dragon glanced at the ethereal maidens exuding divine judgment and finally concluded. I am indeed not as noble as these angels. I choose to surrender. It relinquished its pride, opting for survival. As a mutated dragon with immense potential, it couldn't afford to die here. It had many unfinished ambitions. Dragon surrenders to you. Do you accept? The system prompt sounded. Xiaoyu nodded slightly, offering the dragon a friendly smile. I accept. 
Instantly, Xiaoyu felt a surge of new power within him. Just as he controlled the ethereal maidens, he now had control over the dragon. Choice completed. Reward issued. The system continued. Reward. Corpse explosion upgraded to mythical level. Mythical corpse explosion level 12. Detonate a corpse you're summoned undead, causing 1100 intelligence as fire damage, plus an additional 200 of the detonated unit's strength as fire damage. Extra effect. Units killed by corpse explosion will also explode. Corpse explosion deals an additional 100 of the detonated unit's strength as fire damage. Xiaoyu shook his head slightly, feeling a bit disappointed with the reward. However, looking at the imposing figure of the dragon, he was satisfied. He was already imagining the attention he would get riding it in the future. The young dragon, unaware of its fate, was merely a flashy mount in its master's eyes. At that moment, a shout came from the distance. A dragon? There's a dragon here? Xia Yu's eyes narrowed. It seemed the tracking team had caught up before he could leave. Sure enough, a sharp aura immediately locked onto his position. A legendary assassin? Huh, Xia Yu thought to himself, ordering the ethereal maidens to locate the assassin's exact position. Meanwhile, Zheng Yuwei observed the young man in front of him and then looked up at the angelic figures. The divine power radiating from the maidens was on par with his own. Legendary summons or magical pets? He pondered. Zheng Yuwei's gaze then fell on the dragon, his pupils contracting. He was shocked to find he couldn't see the dragon's attributes, indicating it had already been tamed. As a professional, no matter how high the level, one could always see the attributes of wild monsters. But once tamed, the attributes of another's magical pet were hidden. Zheng Yuwei's voice echoed from all directions. Young man, our family has been chasing this dragon for half a month. Taming it like this is a bit improper, don't you think? Xiaoyu responded with a calm smile. Although the dragon was injured before, who caused the injuries is unclear. In the wild, there's no rule saying, you chased it for half a month so I can't tame it. Wild monsters belong to no one. As long as it's not taken right before your eyes, no one has the right to complain. Zheng Yuwei felt a pang of frustration seeing the dragon snatched away, but facing the threat of a potential legendary pet or summon, he didn't dare act rashly. Give up the dragon, and our family will compensate you with 50 billion, he reluctantly offered. Decline, Xiaoyu rejected without hesitation. I won't give up this dragon. You can either fight or leave. Your choice. He directed his gaze toward a shadow, the hiding spot of the assassin. Zheng Yuhui, hearing this, was about to attack, but suddenly realized Xia Yu's eyes were locked precisely on his hiding spot. His heart skipped a beat had he been discovered. As an assassin, once his position was compromised, many of his tactics would be rendered ineffective. Just then, Zheng Yuhui's three teammates arrived at the scene. They quickly noticed the dragon had been tamed, their expressions turning grim. They knew Zheng Yuhui's goal was to tame the dragon for his son not for himself. Once a contract was signed, canceling it would be troublesome. The three looked at Xiaoyu with hostility, knowing their reward would be significantly reduced if they couldn't help Zheng Yuhui secure the dragon. Don't move! Zheng Yuhui gritted his teeth, emerging from the shadows. Since he was discovered, there was no point in hiding. He was shocked to find that the ethereal maidens had disappeared, leaving him unable to sense their angelic presence, heightening his anxiety. Taking a deep breath, Zheng Yuhui clasped his hands and addressed Xiaoyu, my friend, my son is an evil dragon knight, and he desperately needs this dragon. Is there any way to persuade you to part with it? Evil dragon knight? Huh, I've heard of that. Xiaoyu recalled that this person was a top student from his province. Of course, compared to himself, who was both the provincial and national top scorer, it was insignificant. I won't give up the dragon. Xiaoyu shook his head, then pulled out a small vial from his pocket and shook it. But I do have something else you might be interested in, if you're willing to pay the price. Dragon blood elixir. Zheng Yuhui and his teammates eyed the elixir in Xia Yu's hand with greedy glints in their eyes. Xia Yu chuckled inwardly. They had no idea that the dragon whose blood he held had mutated into a true god-level being, far surpassing the typical mythic level. Unable to contain himself, Zheng Yuhui asked, Brother Xia, how much are you planning to sell this dragon blood elixir for? His gaze shifted between the dragon and the elixir, finally deciding to abandon any risky thoughts. After all, it was wiser to retreat than to risk his life for his son's pet. After a brief contemplation, Xiaoyu quoted, 3 billion. This price was considered reasonable in the market, given the rarity of bloodline items, especially those with dragon blood. Zheng Yuhui's expression changed slightly, but he still nodded in agreement. The two quickly completed the transaction. Despite being in a monster's lair with no signal, the offline payment system designed for professionals in Longwa enabled the deal to go smoothly. Pleasure doing business, Xiaoyu said, handing the elixir to Zheng Yuhui. Although Zheng Yuhui felt a bit regretful to only get one bottle, he still politely asked, By the way, where are you currently studying? Qianlong School, Xiaoyu replied directly, 
revealing his identity since he would eventually appear in public riding a dragon. Zheng Yuhui's eyes lit up. So, you're a top student at Qianlong School. My son will be attending there soon. I hope you can look after him. Just then, Xiaoyu received a system notification. Killed mutant demon hero boss. Gained 707,000 experience points. Leveled up to 38. He was secretly delighted and decided it was time to leave. Choose Undead Lord, Xiaoyu muttered, gaining an increased summoning limit and a 5 out of phone reward for next time. After a brief farewell with Zheng Yuhui, Xiaoyu continued searching the underground demon city alone but found no more valuable targets. By the end of the day, he had only gained around 200,000 experience points. However, his dragon had leveled up by consuming a large number of corpses. Time to head back, Xiaoyu thought, calculating his gains. A true god-level pet, 3 billion in cash equipment worth millions, and most importantly, he had leveled up three times, with his corpse explosion skill upgraded to mythic level. Upon teleporting back to Qianlong School, Xiaoyu immediately became the center of attention. Students whispered among themselves, discussing his upcoming duel with Wu Xiang. A petite, cute girl boldly asked, how do you have the courage to let Wu Xiang challenge you? Xiaoyu smiled calmly, because I know I won't lose. His words caused a stir in the teleportation center. No one had expected him to be so confident. Amid the growing buzz, a woman in uniform pushed through the crowd and conveyed, Xiaoyu, Principal Qing wants to see you. Following the woman to the principal's office, Xiaoyu heard a steady male voice from inside before he could knock. Come in. Entering, he saw a robust man scrutinizing him. Principal Qing, M.O. got straight to the point. Not bad. No wonder you ranked first in the history of the college entrance exam. By the way, thank you for saving my two daughters. Xiaoyu humbly declined the gratitude. My interactions with the Qing family were merely transactional and I received compensation afterward. Qing Mo didn't dwell on the matter and instead asked, Are you confident about your duel with Wu Xiang? Xiaoyu replied with unwavering confidence. Yes, I don't think I can lose. Qing Mo looked at the confident Xiaoyu and gently shook his head. It's good that you're confident. Here is the core skill book for necromancers that the school promised you. With that, he took out four thick skill books from his coat and handed them to Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu accepted the books without hesitation and quickly flipped through them. The four skill books were, Master Level Necromantic Revival Revives a corpse to become an undead. The undead retains no memory of its previous life, possesses 70 of its previous attributes, and retains all skills and talents. Cannot revive corpses of a higher level than the user. Duration, 60 minutes. Master Level Death Aura Deals soul damage equal to 50 of intelligence per second to surrounding enemies and reduces their attributes by 1, up to a maximum of 10. Hero Level Escape from Death summons an undead similar to the user. Upon death, the user will be revived in this undead. Summon limit. 1. Cannot be altered. Cooldown. 1 year. Usage limit. 3 times. Hero level gate of size. Summons a gate to the realm of death, continuously releasing an army of the dead. Up to 10 legions can exist simultaneously, each consisting of 10,000 ordinary undead, 1,000 elite undead, and 10 undead generals. Additional cost. 3,000 souls. Duration, 24 hours. Cooldown, 30 days. Xiaoyu was pleasantly surprised by the high quality of these skill books, far exceeding his expectations. He sincerely thanked Qing Mo. Thank you, Principal. Qing Mo explained, It's not just my efforts. The entire Long Nation contributed to finding these for you. Necromantic Revival and Death Aura are relatively common, but Escape from Death is the only copy in Long Nation. Even legendary necromancers from abroad have been refused access despite offering to join our nation in exchange. As for Gate of Size, it was personally provided by a demigod. Xiaoyu solemnly promised, I won't let the nation down. He understood that the principal's words were a reminder of the preciousness of these skill books and the effort behind obtaining them. Qing Mo nodded in satisfaction. Then take a good rest and prepare for the challenges ahead. But Xiaoyu was eager to enhance his strength. No need for rest. I want to level up to 40. By the way, principal, how many Qianlong points do I need to get a legendary ascension orb within the school? Qing Mo chuckled and shook his head. A legendary ascension orb is a rare item that can't be bought with Qianlong points. However, it's simple to obtain. In a month, new students will enroll, followed by a competition a month later. The first prize is a legendary ascension orb. He continued, Before ascending, you should challenge heightier bosses of the same level to maximize your attribute potential. Otherwise, even as a legendary class, your attributes might be inferior to some hero classes and your future growth could be hindered. Xiaoyu nodded in agreement, though he had his own plans. He knew his attribute potential wasn't high, but as a primary summoner necromancer, this wasn't crucial. More importantly, each ascension greatly boosted the power of his holy ghost, far more than his own attribute potential could achieve. Seeing this, Qing Mo could only sigh. 
He understood that Xia Yu's rapid rise to hero class meant his attribute potential would inevitably lag. But as a necromancer, especially one focusing on summoning, this disadvantage wasn't fatal. Before parting, Qing Mo reminded him, be cautious. Wu Xiang has an old legendary class backing him, so he likely has some hidden cards. Xia Yu respectfully bid farewell, I understand principle. Thank you for the reminder. Back at his dorm, Xia Yu immediately began studying his new skills. He checked his stockpile of 20 skill points and decided to first raise Necromancer Lord by 6 levels to 25, increasing the summon limit by 2 to a total of 7. While not frequently used, the Necromancer Lords were his main combat power in same level battles, and more was always better. Next, he upgraded Corpse Explosion to level 20, achieving Mythic Level. Detonates a Corpse or Undead Summon, dealing 1500 intelligence as fire damage, with an additional 200 strength of the detonated unit as fire damage. The remaining 6 points were all invested in Undead Summoning, raising the summon limit to an astounding 2590. Looking at his cramped dorm room, Xiaoyu calculated that summoning giant undead like the Frostbone Dragon would have to wait until he was home or outside to avoid wrecking the place. Suddenly, Xiaoyu remembered he still had over 3 billion unspent. He decided to visit the only place on campus where money could be used the World Consortium. As he stepped out of his dorm, he could see a golden dragon coiled atop a skyscraper in the distance, gleaming brightly. This was the symbol of the World Consortium, representing endless wealth and opportunities. Halfway through his walk, Xiaoyu suddenly heard a familiar voice behind him. Turning around, he saw Yang Qianqian approaching. Her healthy, yellow-toned skin shimmered in the sunlight, and her curvaceous figure was accentuated by a cropped top and denim shorts. Hey Xiaoyu, what a coincidence. Are you also heading to the World Consortium auction today? Yang Qianqian asked with a smile. Xiaoyu frowned slightly. Just call me Xiaoyu. I haven't been a big shot for years. An auction? What a coincidence. It's my first time encountering a World Consortium auction. Can I join? Yang Qianqian knew Xiaoyu hadn't made a reservation, but she smiled reassuringly. Of course, no problem. You're the national top scorer. The World Consortium would be thrilled to have you. They might even give you a private suite. The two of them arrived at the World Consortium building, and Yang Qianqian showed her reservation to the staff. When she introduced Xiaoyu and mentioned he didn't have a reservation, the staff member looked troubled. At that moment, a graceful woman in a Chong Sam approached. Xiaoyu recognized her Qing Yueshua. She elegantly placed a hand on Xiaoyu's shoulder, a pleasant fragrance wafting over. Just show them the card I gave you. Can they really stop the national top scorer? Qing Yueshua said with a smile. Xiaoyu took the card from his backpack and handed it to her, casually asking, What brings you here? Qing Yueshua took the card, handed it to the staff, and instructed, Prepare a member suite and set suite 05 as Xiaoyu's exclusive suite. The staff hesitated. Ms. Qing... Sweet 05 is reserved for Purple Dragon members only. Qing Yueshua interrupted coldly. Just set it up. I'll arrange a Purple Dragon card for Xiaoyu. The staff had no choice but to comply. Qing Yueshua turned to Xiaoyu, giving him a playful glance. Why am I here? I missed you, of course. I came over as soon as I knew you were in Xianlong. Xiaoyu wasn't particularly moved but still expressed his gratitude. Thank you for your help, Miss Qing. Qing Yueshua laughed. No need for formalities between us. I have to get back to work. Take your little girlfriend to the suite. There's some great items today. With that, she hurried off. Before Xiaoyu could explain, Yang Qianqian said, That's just how she is, don't mind her. Actually, I don't mind either. Her face flushed slightly. Xiaoyu sighed. But I do mind. If Bai Xiao Xiao finds out, I'll never hear the end of it. You have a girlfriend? Yang Qianqian asked. No, well. Not really, Xiaoyu replied vaguely, following the staff into the luxurious suite. Inside the suite, two scantily clad maids awaited but Xiaoyu asked them to wait outside. He picked up the list on the table and started browsing the items up for auction today. Heroic Ascension Orb, level 57 mythic equipment, golden apple that enhances potential, and fire dragon heart blood. Xiaoyu was particularly interested in a few unique items. He also noticed a mysterious auction item labeled with three question marks. At that moment, the system suddenly prompted him with choices. 1. Bid on the Heroic Ascension Orb. Reward. Strength, potential 20. 2. Bid on the level 57 Mythic Equipment. Reward, Legendary Exclusive Staff. 3. Bid on the Golden Apple. Reward, Wisdom Potential 30. 4. Bid on the Unknown Territory Exploration Permit. Reward, True God Level Dragon Heart Blood Usage Restriction. Heroic Level and Above. Effect, For those without Dragon Bloodline, Strength Potential 200, Wisdom Potential 100, 30 Chance to Gain Dragon Bloodline. For those with Dragon Bloodline, 90 Chance to Upgrade to True Dragon Bloodline, all attributes potential 300. Xiaoyu's eyes widened in shock. True god level item? Dragon heart blood? This choice was extremely difficult. He couldn't help but ponder. 
What is the unknown territory exploration permit? Since merging with the game, Earth has expanded countless times, and research suggests it continues to grow slowly. As the world map expands, previously unknown regions have emerged like mushrooms after a rain. These newly discovered areas hold limitless possibilities from the lowest level 1 monster nest to the legendary mythic nests. They have it all. However, only those nests that have been explored by professionals and established as outposts are known to the public. While monster nests below the hero level are numerous and stable, they hold limited value. In contrast, nests above the hero level are coveted by every ambitious professional. Just in terms of experience points, these high-level nests are crucial for the growth of hero-level professionals. Take Lingnan City, for example. The entire city has only one fixed level 30 challenge space, and it only allows a dozen people to enter every fortnight. For professionals without a license to explore unknown regions, even if they discover a hero-level monster nest during their explorations, they have no right to claim or sell it for profit. They can only report their discovery to the state in exchange for a substantial reward. On the other hand, those fortunate enough to hold an exploration license can legally claim the monster nests they discover, protected rigorously by the laws of Longwa. Any professional who trespasses into these nests for leveling up will face severe punishment. Of course, rights come with responsibilities. As nest owners, they are obliged to ensure that the monsters do not escape from their jurisdiction. If a nest goes out of control, they will lose ownership of it. This is the fundamental rule of Longwa for managing hero level and above monster nests. The value of an exploration license for unknown regions is self-evident, with prices usually fluctuating between 1.5 billion and 2.5 billion. At this moment, the protagonist's 3.3 billion funds are more than enough to secure this precious license. If they can obtain the Divine Dragon's heart blood, this investment will yield substantial returns. System, select the exploration license for unknown regions. The protagonist made the decision resolutely in their mind. At that moment, a graceful woman dressed in a Chong Sam ascended the auction stage. Her name was Qin Yue Xue, and her appearance signaled the official commencement of today's world auction. The atmosphere at the auction was heating up. Qin Yue Xue stood gracefully on the stage, holding a jade box, showcasing the first item up for Biden Ascended Heroes Orb. Her clear voice announced, starting bid is 800 million, with a minimum increment of 10 million. She scanned the crowd, though many eyes were fixed on her long, slender legs. Soon, someone called out, 900 million. Qin Yue Xue's eyes sparkled as she looked seductively at the bidder, saying, 900 million, going once. The price climbed steadily and finally closed at 1.5 billion. The room erupted in applause, celebrating the prospect of a new hero emerging among humanity. The auction continued, but Xia Yu remained silent, never raising his paddle. Yang Qianqian asked curiously, aren't you planning to bid? Xia Yu calmly ate grapes and replied, not yet. I'm waiting for something that interests me. He had already made up his mind. To complete the task from the Divine Selection System, he needed to acquire the Wilderness Development Permit. At last, Qin Yue Xue announced the next item, commissioned by the Dragon Kingdom's official government. We are auctioning a Wilderness Development Permit. With this permit, you can develop uncharted territories and establish your own monster lair. Each hero's lair that lasts over a year can bring in revenues exceeding 1 billion. Starting bid is 1 billion, with a minimum increment of 10 million. Yang Qianqian exclaimed, a wilderness development permit. I've heard there's a new, uncharted region at the border, which is probably why the Dragon Kingdom is issuing permits again. Xiaoyu suddenly spoke up, 1.2 billion. Yang Qianqian looked at him in shock. You want to buy the permit? Qing Yue Xue also glanced up at Xiaoyu's booth, a hint of surprise in her eyes. Xiaoyu nodded. I'll need it sooner or later. Better to buy it now and start enjoying the benefits early. Yang Qianqian expressed her concern. This isn't something to rush into. If you impulsively enter and encounter legendary or mythic monsters, it could be fatal. Xiaoyu responded confidently, No worries, I have good self-control. At that moment, a middle-aged man in martial robes raised his paddle. 1.5 billion. The crowd recognized him as the legendary berserker Zhu Feng. A melodious voice from another booth chimed in. Since Mr. Zhu is bid, I won't compete with my teacher. The speaker was Ling Xianzi, ranked 74th on the Qianlong list, standing by the window in a flowing white dress her long sword gleaming at her waist. Xiaoyu raised his bid again, 1.8 billion. Zhu Feng was taken aback but soon recognized Xiaoyu. Oh, it's Xiaoyu, the national top scorer this year and the highest scorer in history. In an auction, the highest bid wins, 2 billion. Xiaoyu didn't back down, 3 billion, Mr. Zhu. That's my entire fortune. If you bid higher, I'll have to withdraw. Zhu Feng smiled wryly and sat down, unwilling to raise the bid further. Qin Yue Xue quickly declared, 3 billion, Going once, 3 billion. Going twice, 3 billion sold. 
Congratulations to the guest in booth number five for winning the wilderness development permit. Shortly after, a scantily clad maid delivered the permit to CIU. He opened it to find an item resembling an ID card, crafted with special system technology, logging the owner's professional identity and non-transferable. A system notification sounded, selection completed, issuing reward. Reward. True god-level dragon heart blood. CIU breathed a sigh of relief, looking at the dark red liquid that appeared in his inventory, thinking that he had successfully completed the task. Yang Chan Chan teased, rich guy, how about sponsoring me? Seeing CIU spend three billion without batting an eye, she couldn't help but marvel at the disparity between people. CIU sighed, I'm broke now. I wanted to buy some attribute-enhancing items, but now I can't afford them. After the auction ended, Xiaoyu declined Qing Yu Shue and Yang Qianqian's dinner invitations and returned to his dormitory alone. Back at the dorm, Xiaoyu eagerly took out the true god-level dragon blood. Inside the crystal vial, a drop of liquid, as beautiful as the finest ruby, floated serenely. Xiaoyu couldn't help but marvel at its beauty, while also sensing the massive and sinister energy it contained purer and more domineering than any demonic aura he had ever encountered. A system notification appeared. Dragon blood of the true god. Level. True God. Usage restriction. Hero level and above. Effects. For those without Dragon Bloodline. 200 strength potential. 100 wisdom potential. 30 chance to obtain Dragon Bloodline. For those with Dragon Bloodline. 90 chance to upgrade to True God Dragon Bloodline. 300 all attributes potential. Xiaoyu pondered. This seems like the system wants me to use it on that young dragon. Comparing the effects, he realized that the potential gains for himself were mediocre. While the dragon could gain a total of 900 attribute points and had a 90 chance to evolve into the true god dragon bloodline. Deathwing come out. Xiaoyu summoned the young dragon. As soon as Deathwing appeared, its eyes were immediately drawn to the crystal vial. Drooling, its saliva sizzled as it hit the floor. Keep your drool to yourself. Don't ruin my floor, Xiaoyu said, rolling his eyes. Deathwing quickly wiped its mouth with its front paws. Despite being only the size of a puppy, it looked pitifully at the vial in Xiaoyu's hand. Master, is that for me? Xiaoyu sat down on a stool, shaking the vial slightly. Honestly, you just joined my team and haven't contributed much. Giving you something this valuable seems unfair to the others. Master, Deathwing pleaded eagerly. Even though I just joined, I swear I'll follow your every command without hesitation. I'll charge ahead without a second thought. Let's hope so. Xiaoyu tossed the dragon blood of the true god to Deathwing. He had planned to give it to the dragon all along, but wanted to ensure its loyalty. Deathwing swallowed the entire crystal vial in one gulp and immediately fell into a deep sleep. Dark red strands of light emanated from its body, enveloping it into a crimson dragon egg. Looks like you won't be able to serve me anytime soon, Xiaoyu remarked, shaking his head. He received a message from Deathwing, saying it would be asleep for seven days. He stored the dragon egg in his pet space, sighing, Saintus is better. She upgrades directly with me. Xiaoyu took out a permit and activated it with his mental power. The system prompt sounded. Hero level necromancer Xiaoyu, do you wish to bind this unknown region exploration permit? Please note that once bound, it cannot be unbound. Yes, binding complete. The permit now displayed Xiaoyu's portrait and information. Level 38 hero necromancer, Xiaoyu. With a few days left before the challenge, Xiaoyu contemplated his next moves. The semester hadn't officially started, and there were no classes. He had arrived a month early for registration. While most students wouldn't leave the school, the teachers had no classes to teach. The system prompted again. Please make a choice. 1. Relax and idle at school. Reward. 10 all attributes potential. 2. Venture into the unknown region and experience thrilling adventures. At least discover a new hero-level monster nest in the unknown region. Reward. Upgrade necromancy skill to hero level. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu chose the latter. He was just two levels away from reaching level 40 and hoped to find a legendary boss in the unknown region. Defeating it might yield a legendary ascension orb, which he could then use for the freshman competition to enhance Xiaobai. After a night's rest, Xiaoyu dreamt of Qin Yue Xue, Qin Yue Ming, Qin Yue Moon, and Yang Qianqian. Upon waking at 8, he quickly packed and headed to the teleportation center. Along the way, Xiaoyu noticed that his presence drew a lot of attention. He thought smugly, it's not my fault for being good looking. He overheard people talking. That's Xiaoyu, the new student who dueled Wu Xiang. He doesn't look that special apart from being tall and handsome. He's a national top scorer who got in through special recruitment. Tall, handsome, and he defeated Du Yu Yu, ranked 47th on the dragon list, on his first day. Then he boldly invited Wu Xiang, ranked 7th, for a challenge. Does he have a girlfriend? Looks like he's heading to the teleportation center. Is he planning to level up again? I heard he's not even level 40 yet. 
Not even level 40, and he beat Do Yu Yu? That's insane. Ignoring the chatter, Xiaoyu headed straight for the teleportation center. Suddenly, someone stepped in front of him. It was Ling Xianzi. Ling Xianzi smiled sweetly. Junior, are you heading to the teleportation center? Do you have a team? My team is sure one person. The surrounding crowd buzzed with excitement. Ling Xianzi from the Hidden Dragon List, one of our school's top 10 beauties, is inviting Xiaoyu to join her team. This is big news. He's just tall and handsome. So jealous. She must recognize his strength. Wu Xiang invited him to join his team, but he refused. An invitation from Ling Xianzi? No straight man could refuse that. Xiaoyu almost immediately declined. Sorry, I'm not looking to team up. Besides, I'm heading to the unknown region today. You were trying to buy a permit yesterday, so you probably don't have one yet. We can't go together. Ling Xianzi's eyes widened in shock, and the onlookers were stunned. He rejected her. He must be gay. Xiaoyu added, I can't stand having my orientation questioned. If I leave and rumors spread, Xiaobai might get laughed at when he joins. Ling Xianzi suddenly understood. I thought my dream guy was gay. Thank goodness. But the unknown region? Are you sure? It's really dangerous there. Yes. I'm in a hurry. See you. Xiaoyu walked straight into the teleportation center. Teleport to the border. The once remote outpost had long since evolved into a bustling city of professionals, with 95 of its residents being highly skilled individuals. As the teleportation array shimmered slightly, Xiaoyu felt a momentary sensation of weightlessness. When he opened his eyes, he found himself in a bustling hall filled with people. The professionals here exuded an imposing aura, far beyond what he had experienced at school or in Lingnan City. Each person radiated a menacing presence. Xiaoyu's sudden appearance drew a few curious glances but they quickly looked away. He swiftly exited the teleportation center, finding himself in a wild-styled, otherworldly city. Everyone on the streets carried weapons, and many rode magical beasts, making it feel like a scene straight out of a fantasy world. The air was filled with the aroma of roasted meat. A vendor loudly advertised, whole roasted red pig leg. Nearby, a blacksmith showcased his work, master grade dragon scale armor, special sale price. At the street corner, a group of adventurers was recruiting companions, looking for a healer to explore the hero-level monster lair in the Death Forest. Must have a permit. 7,030 split. Although not every professional had a permit, many were still willing to venture into unknown areas to find hero-level monster lairs. Selling these to permit holders or handing them over to the state could yield substantial rewards. As Xiaoyu observed his surroundings, an old man suddenly grabbed his sleeve. Young man, first time in Pioneer Town? Want a map of the edge of the unknown area? Guaranteed authentic. Xiaoyu asked expressionlessly, How much? A sly glint appeared in the old man's eyes. A hundred thousand for a straightforward young man like you. Xiaoyu replied calmly, First, you need to confirm the map is up to date. Second, if it's fake, I'll find you at any cost. As he spoke, he pulled out his phone, his tone so steady it sent chills down one's spine. The old man's smile froze instantly. He let out a shriek, I'm not selling, and disappeared into the crowd. This scene caught the attention of the onlookers, sparking a discussion. Didn't expect old Lee to get scared. He's always conning newcomers. You know, that kid sounded serious about finding him. Nonsense. Old Lee's done this many times. He'll just hide in the unknown area. Who can find him? True enough. Ignoring the chatter around him, Xiaoyu headed straight to the World Consortium. Although the prices were steep, the quality was guaranteed. I need the latest map of the unknown area, Xiaoyu said to a receptionist dressed in a bunny costume. Certainly, the latest map costs one million, she replied with a smile. Xiaoyu handed over his Zilong card given by Qing Yueshua. Here's my card. The receptionist's eyes widened in surprise. A Zilong card? Esteemed member. Would you like a private room to rest? No need, just give me the map. Very well, that'll be 900,000. With a Zilong card, you get a 10% discount at the World Consortium. With the map in hand, Xiaoyu walked while examining it. The outer areas had mostly been explored. To gain anything worthwhile, he had two choices. The Death Forest or the Silent Marsh. Otherwise he'd have to venture thousands of kilometers, which was quite far. The death forest it is. I prefer forests to swampy places, Xiaoyu muttered to himself as he decided to leave Pioneer Town. Upon arriving at the city gate, he found it crowded with people. The Phoenix Squad had returned, having discovered another hero-level monster lair and planning to establish an outpost there. The crowd buzzed with envy at their fortune and admiration for the all-single, beautiful team members. Curious, Xiaoyu approached, and saw four women in bright red uniforms entering the city. Despite bearing battle scars, their faces were lit with joy. From the murmurs around him, he learned that these four were hero-level professionals, known for both their strength and beauty, and were quite famous in Pioneer Town. Desire can be dangerous, 
Xiaoyu shook his head and left the town. Two. Xiaoyu summoned his Frostbone Dragon. With its level increased, the dragon had grown to over 20 meters, exuding an even more majestic presence. Its powerful aura drew the attention of everyone at the gate. Wow, a hidden class necromancer, and he summoned such an impressive Frostbone Dragon. That's so cool, someone exclaimed. Even the Phoenix Squad members paused to watch. The Frostbone Dragon soared into the sky, soon becoming a mere dot. Big sister, that dragon is so awesome. Let's get one too. One team member said excitedly. Don't waste money. We need to save up. Once we become legendary professionals, we can get anything we want, the team leader replied calmly. But who knows how much the legendary ascension orb will cost now. Let's go. Recruit someone to guard the poison frog area. We'll use it to find more hero level monster lairs. We'll afford it eventually. Got a big sis. High in the sky, Xiaoyu occasionally saw other flyers below, marveling at his frostbone dragon. He also looked down, clearly seeing the developing outposts thanks to his excellent dynamic vision. These outposts could be accessed via the teleportation center in Pioneer Town, but the cost was steep, ranging from millions to tens of millions per trip, and often limited in time. I should establish a few monster lairs, Xiaoyu mused. I could level up, and so could Xiaobai. When not in use, I could charge for access like renting out a house. Just then, a vast expanse of black forest appeared before him. Death Forest, Xiaoyu whispered, a glint of excitement in his eyes. Descending into the forest of death, Xiaoyu carefully landed on the ground. He had thoroughly studied the strategy guides and knew the dangers of searching for monster nests from the air. Stowing away his frostbone dragon, he quickly summoned a team of dozens of undead soldiers, undead archers, and a sane spirit, while also calling forth a legion of ghosts to scout the surrounding area. Move out, Xiaoyu commanded, and the undead army marched into the depths of the dark forest. Within the forest, the twisted trees took on demonic faces, some even disguising themselves as tree monsters. However, Xiaoyu's undead army could sense life forces, easily seeing through these disguises. Whenever they approached, the demon trees were swiftly killed by the undead archers or soldiers. These low-level monsters, barely in their teens, didn't even provide Xiaoyu with any experience points. Suddenly, signs of small monsters appeared in the distance. Xiaoyu checked his map and confirmed it wasn't someone else's monster nest. Hoping to find a hero-level nest, he led his team forward. However, what greeted him were a few small, green figures goblins. Xiaoyu sighed, knowing it was almost impossible for this to be a hero-level nest. He casually dispatched these low-level monsters and continued deeper into the forest. As he ventured further, the level of monsters gradually increased, but still not to the hero level. Xiaoyu realized that finding a high-level monster nest was no easy task. Half a day had passed, and he had killed hundreds of monsters without gaining any experience points. No wonder entering a monster nest in school requires so many points, and professionals are willing to spend a fortune, Xiaoyu thought to himself. But he didn't give up, as his divine selection was not yet complete. Ghost Legion, double the patrol range. Saintus, please also sense any anomalies around us, Xiaoyu ordered, fully committed to his search. Time ticked by, and Xiaoyu continually replenished his Ghost Legion, which was frequently killed in this monster-infested forest. Just then, the Saintus spirit brought good news. Master, I sense something unusual. Xiaoyu immediately led the team to the Saintus's location. In front of him was a massive pit filled with bones, exuding a strong aura of death. Comrades, Xiaoyu recognized at once that the monsters here were related to the undead. Following the Sanus's guidance, Xiaoyu arrived at an underground entrance made of giant stones. Let's go down, he decided to investigate, hoping to find a hero-level monster nest. As they descended, the light dimmed. Fortunately, Xiaoyu's physical attributes were strong enough to see in the dark. He thought to himself that only hero-level professionals could handle this environment. Suddenly, a crisp sound rang out ahead. Two skeletons slowly stood up, wielding swords and shields. Xiaoyu quickly analyzed. These were level 35 ordinary undead soldiers, far inferior to his mythic undead soldiers. With the Saintus spirit support, these ordinary undead soldiers were instantly obliterated. Defeated ordinary undead soldiers, level 35 experienced 12,200. The system notification sounded, and Xiaoyu also obtained a common gray bone sword. It's a hero level dungeon, and it's undead thumbed. Xiaoyu was thrilled. Although the experience from level 35 monsters wasn't much for him at level 38, it was highly attractive to hero-level professionals below level 35. More importantly, undead monsters were often simple in their movements and easy to counter, making them perfect for leveling up. Xiaoyu began clearing the monster nest, preparing to apply for establishing an outpost and teleportation array later. He activated the recording function on his permit and led his undead army to explore the hero-level dungeon. To Xiaoyu's surprise, 
The dungeon only contained undead soldiers and undead archers, with no undead mages in sight. This dungeon is tailor-made for leveling up, he thought, already planning to bring Xiaobai here for training. As he continued to slay monsters, Xiaoyu's experience points slowly increased. However, a question arose in his mind. Why hadn't he encountered any elite or hero bosses yet? After some thought, Xiaoyu realized, unless this is just the first floor, if it were a multi-layered monster nest, it would mean he had found multiple monster nests at once. Find the entrance to the next floor, Xiaoyu excitedly commanded, eagerly anticipating more surprises awaiting him. As Xiaoyu gave the command, the undead army surged forward like a tidal wave, searching for an entrance to the lower levels. Soon, in front of Xiaoyu, hundreds of skeletal remains were moved aside, revealing a staircase descending downward. Second floor, Xiaoyu's lips curled into a slight smile, pleased with his luck. It was his first encounter with a multi-layered hero-level monster lair. Leading the undead army down to the second floor, a dense aura of death assaulted them. Even Xiaoyu, a living being, felt a bit uncomfortable. However, as a necromancer, he quickly adapted to the environment. The surrounding undead, on the other hand, seemed more invigorated, their combat effectiveness rising another notch. The second floor was a vast, flat expanse stretching as far as the eye could see. The murals on the walls were better preserved than those on the upper floor, depicting a story of a prince who became a king and was eventually buried in a five-layer tomb. Staring at the murals, Xia Yu's mind raced. There are actually five layers here, and the fifth layer holds a king? Could the king be the boss? Just as Xia Yu was lost in thought, the crisp sound of hooves echoed through the empty space, growing louder. A dozen undead knights appeared in his line of sight, their attributes displayed as follows. Undead knight common race, undead level. Strength, 37. Agility, 9,990. Wisdom, 10,989. Talent, elite knight strength 1 for each nearby undead knight, up to 20. Skills sweep charge, level 37. Xiaoyu exclaimed in delight, realizing the monster lair's difficulty had increased. While this squad of undead knights might spell doom for ordinary adventurers, they were no threat to Xiaoyu. He commanded his 40 strong undead soldiers to raise their shields and brace for the knight's charge. The knights crashed heavily into the shields, but were repelled and swiftly slain by the undead soldiers. System notifications popped up continuously. Undead knight common killed, 37th level experience, 32,400. Undead knight common killed, 37th level experience, 32,400. Your level has increased to 39. Leveled up nice. It's the first time I've leveled up without killing higher level monsters, Xiaoyu thought with satisfaction. The system then displayed a choice. Please select your level up reward, death aura skill level two. Please make your selection. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu chose the death aura, gaining a new effect, reducing enemies' movement speed by one per second, up to a maximum of 30. After dealing with this wave of undead knights, the remaining monsters reverted to undead soldiers and archers above level 30. Xiaoyu felt a bit disappointed thinking that a few more waves of undead knights might have boosted him directly to level 40. Soon, the entrance to the third floor was found. However, before descending, Xiaoyu frowned. Both he and the ghostly saint sensed a powerful presence below. Boss! Xiaoyu was startled to realize the boss appeared so early and might even be accompanied by elite monsters. This was undoubtedly the most challenging monster lair configuration, one that ordinary adventure teams would hardly dare to challenge. To be cautious, Xiaoyu sent undead soldiers to scout ahead. As expected, they were met with fierce resistance. System notifications continued to pop up. Undead mage common killed. 39th level experience, 50,500. Undead grand mage elite killed. 40th level experience, 133,200. You have obtained an excellent grand mage bone staff. Xiaoyu raised an eyebrow, realizing this undead monster lair was unparalleled. At the same time, he noticed his undead soldiers were still dying, indicating the boss was indeed below and had stabilized the situation. Bringing in a new batch of undead soldiers, Xiaoyu cautiously descended the stairs. Before him stood a massive palace, built of giant stones and exuding an aura of majesty and solemnity. Outside the palace, undead mages draped in yellow cloth wielded their staves, casting spells at the charging undead soldiers. The most striking figure was a central undead mage whose bones emitted a faint golden glow. Each of its spells could kill dozens of undead soldiers. Xiaoyu quickly analyzed the boss's attributes. Race, undead. Level, 40. Strength, 21,600. Agility, 21,600. Wisdom, 29,160. Talent, 
Genius Mage Kaladi Casting Speed 50, Magic Damage 30. Skills, Flame Impact, Rain of Fire, Frost Bomb. With those stats, how can it kill my undead? Xiaoyu was puzzled. His undead soldiers boasted 40,000 strength. How could the bosses sub 30 000, 000, 000 wisdom one-shot multiple soldiers? Soon, Xiaoyu noticed something unusual. None of the undead mages dared to leave the palace. And each time they cast spells, the palace would emit a faint glow, especially when the boss cast spells, causing the brightest flashes. The palace is enhancing the boss. Xiaoyu realized and attempted to identify the palace but found no response. Could it be a magic array? He speculated. Despite this, Xiaoyu did not retreat. Even with the palace's enhancement, you will die. Ghostly guard attack. At his command, the ghostly guard drew its great sword and charged. Boosted by the ghostly saint's aura, the ghostly guard's strength surpassed 100,000 and agility exceeded 70,000. All incoming spells were deflected by the great sword, catching Kaladi's attention. The boss raised its hand, hurling several massive fireballs at the ghostly guard. Power up! The ghostly guard, undeterred, endured the fireballs thanks to the ghostly saint's holy aura. This move did not slow it down. Instead, it allowed the ghostly guard to reach the high platform where the undead mages stood. Power strike! A cold sword light swept across like a crescent moon, enveloping the undead mages, with the hero boss at the center. In an instant, everything was cleaved in two. The hero boss was slain in a single strike. You have reached level 40. The system notification echoed in Xiaoyu's ears, followed by three talent rewards appearing before him. Revenge of the Undead. Summoned undead explode upon reaching less than 10 health or upon death, dealing 100 of all attributes as fire damage. Reward. Explosion Radius 100. Master of the Undead. All Undead Skills 5 Levels. Reward. All Undead Skill Ranks 1. Venom Spreader. Poison Effect Spread to Nearby Enemies. Poison Damage 50. Reward. Additional 1 Poison Stack per Application. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu chose Master of the Undead. This decision meant that his mythical level Undead Summons would directly elevate to True God level, making him the first in the world to possess such powerful skills. Then, the system prompted him to select an upgrade reward. Xiaoyu chose to enhance his undead summoning skill, increasing its level by two and gaining an additional reward, the ability to summon 100 undead at once. True God Level Undead Summoning Level 44 Summon 100 Level 40 Undead Soldiers Undead Archers Undead Assassins Undead Knights Undead Mages Summoning Limit 3080 Xiaoyu nodded in satisfaction, feeling a significant boost in his power. His Corpse Explosion skill also upgraded accordingly. True God Level Corpse Explosion Level 25. Detonate a Corpse Summoned Undead, dealing 2,450 intelligence as fire damage, with an additional 300 strength fire damage from the exploded unit. Additional effect. Units killed by Corpse Explosion will also explode. As Xiaoyu led his undead army in search of the passage to the fifth level, he heard voices nearby. A gruff voice was reprimanding a companion insisting on continuing the exploration to find a potential level 40 hero boss. Xiaoyu decided to investigate and move towards the source of the voices. In the darkness, he saw four figures. A burly man among them frowned and barked at Xiaoyu. Hey, this place is ours. You can't just waltz in here, uninvited. Xiaoyu sneered and retorted. I have my permit recording on. I've already patrolled the upper levels and didn't see any sign of you here. Hearing about the permit recording, the four men's faces changed. The burly man now infuriated, threatened. Hand over the permit and let us delete the recording, or else you'll regret it. They subtly observed their surroundings and noted that Xiaoyu appeared to be alone, clad in a mage robe, and didn't seem to possess the aura of a legendary powerhouse. Confident in their combined strength as four level 40 hero class professionals, they believed dealing with a lone mage would be a piece of cake. A glint of killing intent flashed in Xiaoyu's eyes as he coldly said, So, you're planning to kill me? In that case, I won't hold back either. Before his words even faded, the four men attacked simultaneously. The archer's flaming arrows whizzed towards him. The mage cast a freezing spell to slow him down, and the two warriors charged directly at Xiaoyu. However, Xiaoyu was well prepared, for bone shields materialized around him, blocking all the arrows. Just as the warriors were about to reach him, Xiaoyu shouted, Corpse explosion! An undead soldier appeared before Xiaoyu and immediately exploded. Intense flames engulfed the two warriors reducing them to ashes before they could even scream. The archer and mage, stunned and disbelieving, watched as their well-equipped comrades were instantly obliterated. Xiaoyu gave them no time to react, swiftly commanding, kill them. The phantom saint appeared soundlessly behind the two, her light sword piercing through their bodies in an instant. After disposing of the four men, 
Xiaoyu ordered his undead to collect their equipment. Just then, the ghostly legion reported that they had found the entrance to the fifth level. With a satisfied smile, Xiaoyu led his undead army towards the fifth level. As he walked, Xiaoyu carefully examined the equipment of the four-person team. Most of it was master level, with a few pieces being hero level, but none were legendary. Although the gear was valuable, it was of no use to him. Xiaoyu sighed, thinking that his own equipment was already quite good and didn't need upgrading. However, selling these items to buy other goods seemed like a good option. When he reached the entrance to the fourth level, Xiaoyu felt a dangerous aura emanating from below even before stepping in. His expression changed suddenly, realizing that a legendary level boss might be lurking there. At that moment, he heard screams coming from below, followed by the sound of hurried footsteps approaching. This made him even more alert. Could someone have discovered this potential legendary monster lair before me? Xiaoyu thought with frustration. If that were the case, he would miss out on a huge opportunity. A single entry ticket to a legendary monster lair could sell for over a billion, and the entire lair could bring the owner hundreds of billions in revenue. If rare items dropped, the profits would be immeasurable. Xiaoyu squinted slightly, contemplating whether to take action. But he quickly dismissed the idea. If he did that, how would he be any different from the people he had just defeated? However, a new thought soon crossed his mind. If the others couldn't defeat the boss, they had no right to guard the monsters here. That meant if he could defeat the boss, the lair would rightfully be his. Just as Xiaoyu was feeling pleased with himself, two powerful auras surged from below. A petite figure dashed up at incredible speed and shouted, Run? There are two level 42 legendary bosses down there. Xiaoyu's eyes narrowed, and he immediately ordered the saint ghost to prepare for battle. Soon, two golden glowing undead creatures rushed up from below a skeletal archer and a skeletal warrior. Xiaoyu quickly assessed the attributes and skills of these two bosses. The undead archer had the golden arrow talent, capable of causing explosive damage, while the undead warrior possessed the golden warhammer talent, which could slow down enemies and inflict explosive damage. Both had extremely powerful skills that Xiaoyu couldn't underestimate. Undead soldiers attack. Xiaoyu commanded, and hundreds of undead soldiers surged forward. The next scene took Xiaoyu by surprise. These undead soldiers were actually holding their own against the two legendary bosses. Although some soldiers fell to the boss's skills, the golden undead were accumulating more and more wounds. Xiaoyu quickly checked the attributes of his undead soldiers and realized that, with multiple buffs, their stats had reached astonishing levels. Despite their simple skills, their sheer attribute advantage made up for it. In the intense battle, the two legendary bosses eventually disintegrated into beams of light under the effect of the solar halo. However, much to Xiaoyu's disappointment, they didn't drop any legendary ascension orbs. At that moment, a mysterious voice echoed in Xiaoyu's ear. Challenger, welcome to the king's tomb. You have defeated my guardians. Now, come and claim my treasures. Xiaoyu frowned and looked around, but saw no one. The voice continued. Come to the lowest level of the tomb, where all the treasures of my kingdom await you. Xiaoyu stood at the landing of the fourth floor, his brow furrowed. The system prompted him to make a choice. Should he enter the fifth floor? He weighed the pros and cons. On the fourth floor, he had already encountered a level 42 legendary boss and the monsters on the fifth floor would only be stronger. However, the enticing rewards made him hesitate. Ultimately, Xiaoyu decided to venture into the fifth floor alone. He quickly equipped the two legendary items that had just dropped, the wood elf gloves and the golden radiance armor. Though they didn't boost any skills, the attribute increases were significant. As he stepped onto the fifth floor, a magnificent palace complex unfolded before him. Silver wraiths and golden wraiths roamed within, and Xiaoyu secretly envied their special abilities. He commanded his ghost army to search for a passage to the deeper levels, and they soon found their target. Standing before the staircase leading further down, Xiaoyu cautiously sensed the aura below. After confirming that there were no powerful beings present, he sent undead soldiers to scout ahead. Once he confirmed it was safe, Xiaoyu began his descent. At first, it was pitch dark, but as he advanced, a distant light became visible. Passing through the glow, Xiaoyu entered a resplendent hall. A skeletal figure wearing a crown sat high above, a deep voice welcoming the challenger. The skeleton announced that Xiaoyu could choose one of five treasures. After careful comparison, Xiaoyu selected the level 55 Mythic Kasu Demon Sword. This weapon, with its high three attribute bonuses and powerful skills, was invaluable, even though he couldn't use it yet. As soon as he made his choice, Xiaoyu suddenly found himself back in the Forest of Death. Beside him was a woman, the same one who had fled from the fourth floor earlier. At that moment, four members of the Undying Phoenix squad hurried over protectively placing the woman, known as Xiao Yuner, behind them all warily eyeing Xiaoyu. Blue sister, it was him who just saved me, Xiao Yuner hastily explained, worried that the four sisters might harbor hostility towards the legendary warrior. 
After all, he had effortlessly killed two legendary bosses just now. Angering him could have dire consequences. The four Phoenix squad members were momentarily stunned, but soon relaxed. The beautiful female warrior at the front, holding a sword and shield, apologized to Xiaoyu. Sorry, we were just too anxious. Xiaoyu waved it off nonchalantly. No worries, I understand. Xiao Yuner softly added to Blue Sister. A level 42 legendary boss appeared underground just now, and this professional took care of it. What? The four Phoenix squad members looked at Xiaoyu in shock. This professional, who appeared to have just switched classes, could handle a level 42 legendary boss? Could he be a legendary professional? The thought filled them with a hint of fear. Seeing they had nothing more to say, Xiaoyu prepared to leave. If there's nothing else, I'll head back to report to the Professional Management Bureau. He planned to secure the legendary monster lair quickly. Although he wasn't sure about the respawn time of the legendary boss, it was best to occupy it first. After taking a couple of steps, Xiaoyu suddenly stopped and turned around. How many hero-level monster lairs do you have right now? The question made the Phoenix Squad even more nervous, thinking the legendary professional might want to seize their monster lairs. But with their lives on the line, they had to answer truthfully. Blue Fong, the captain, stepped forward. Four hero-level monster lairs. Two level 32, one level 33, and one level 34. Blue Sister, we risked our lives for those. The archer behind her gritted her teeth, unwilling to give up their hard-earned monster lairs. Blue Fong said somberly, What's the use of monster lairs if we're dead? Seeing this, Xiaoyu quickly clarified, Wait, I think there's been a misunderstanding. I'm not here to take your monster lairs. He rolled his eyes, puzzled by their paranoia. Blue Fong asked, Then why are you asking? Xiaoyu explained, I'm still a student and can't manage the monster lairs long term. I need someone to help with the management, and I don't have anyone capable for the job. Since I've run into you, why not let you manage this legendary monster lair? This was a common practice among pioneering professionals. Besides, the Phoenix Squad had a good reputation in the pioneering town. If they were willing to help, it would be ideal. Managing a forward base could take a month or two, and Xiaoyu didn't have that kind of time to spend here. As his level increased, he would seek higher level monster lairs to upgrade. I see. Blue Fong breathed a sigh of relief. We need to discuss the details. No problem. Back in the pioneering town, Xiaoyu and the Phoenix Squad discussed the details and reached an agreement. A 7,030 split of the profits. The Phoenix Squad would fund and manage the forward base, but could only use the first three levels. The fourth and fifth levels would be off-limits, because Xiaoyu needed them for himself. A legendary boss might drop the legendary ascension or be needed. Thus, this legendary monster lair would effectively be used as a hero-level lair. The final condition was that if the Phoenix Squad encountered any hero-level or legendary-level monster lairs they couldn't handle, Xiaoyu would assist, with a post-battle split of 7,030 in their favor. After signing the contract and registering the information with the Professional Management Bureau, Xiaoyu prepared to return to school. He had been in the monster lair for a few days, and the duel with Wu Xiang was approaching. No problem. Leave it to us. The five delighted Phoenix squad members saw Xiaoyu off at the teleportation array. They were thrilled to have the support of a legendary professional. This scene drew envious and jealous glances from those around, who speculated on how this man had won over the Phoenix squad. Back at school, Xiaoyu checked his phone and realized that tomorrow was the day of the duel with Wu Xiang. The sky was already dark, so he figured he would sleep and then head to the duel. Xiaoyu sighed, reflecting on how busy he had been recently. But the gains were significant. He had reached level 40, obtained the mythical weapon Kasumi sword, and collected a bunch of miscellaneous equipment. More importantly, his necromancy summoning and corpse explosion skills had reached unprecedented true god levels. Walking back to the dormitory, Xiaoyu noticed an increase in foot traffic, with many discussing his duel tomorrow. Tomorrow is the battle between the national top scorer and Wu Xiang. Can't wait. What's there to wait for? Even though he's the national top scorer, he's only been awakened for a little over a month. Even if his level is up, his attributes and potential won't be maxed out, unlike Wu Xiang, who has maxed out his attributes at every stage. Don't be so sure. I watched this necromancer's college entrance exam footage. It's insane. He instantly killed a mutated flame demon. His necromancy summoning and mastery must be top-notch, and his staff's bonus to necromancy is no joke. I still bet on Wu Xiang. I can't believe anyone thinks a necromancer who just awakened a month ago can beat Wu Xiang who's ranked 7th on the Jialong board at Qianlong School. I agree. It's not just about level and attributes, but also combat experience and equipment. I heard the Wu family has provided a lot of good stuff to ensure Wu Xiang wins. Equipment too? That's so unfair. The Wu family is despicable. That's the power of money for you. Like it or not. Xiaoyu yawned. As long as his opponent was still at the hero level, winning against him was nearly impossible. So, he didn't mind the gossip. Despite the dim light, the students 
being professionals, quickly noticed Xiaoyu. Look, it's the freshman who's going to duel Wu Xiang. Wow, he's so handsome. I think the freshman might win. Wait, weren't you just betting on Wu Xiang? Suddenly, someone stopped Xiaoyu and asked, Hey, do you feel confident about tomorrow? Xiaoyu calmly replied, Confidence? If you want to place a bet, put it all on me. Guaranteed win. The next morning, the challenge arena was packed with people. Thousands of students, teachers, and staff gathered to witness this rare showdown. Qin Yiye was stunned by the dense crowd and couldn't help but exclaim, Sister, there are so many people. Qin Yueming sighed and explained, It's a battle between one of the top ten on the Jialong list and the national champion. Plus, it concerns the champion's academic status. Naturally, it attracts a lot of attention. Qin Yiye clenched her small fists in frustration and said, Oomph. I bet they're all here to see Yuga embarrassed. Just wait. Yuga will definitely make them eat their words. Qin Yueming sighed again. She knew that Xiaoyu's victory would be no easy feat, she analyzed. Xiaoyu is only at level 35. Even if he reaches level 40, he would struggle against a magic swordsman who has been awakened for over a year. Wu Xiang not only has a perfect class change, but also a full set of core skills. In comparison, Xiaoyu, despite having heightier necromancy skills, likely has an uneven skill set. Moreover, Wu Xiang's equipment is top tier, possibly the best level 40 gear prepared specifically for this battle. These are advantages Xia you can't easily overcome. At that moment, the crowd erupted in excitement. Look, it's Wu Xiang. He's wearing new armor, the level 40 legendary Immortal Iron Armor from the auction, and new gloves, the level 40 legendary Magician's Illusion. The crowd was astonished to see that Wu Xiang was almost entirely equipped with level 40 legendary gear, which would undoubtedly boost his attributes to a terrifying degree. From a distant rooftop, Qing Mo and a pale-faced man were watching the challenge arena. The pale-faced man nodded and said, Wu Xiang cannot lose. It would disgrace our Wu family. Qing Mo smiled faintly. You're straightforward. He understood that as one of the mythical powerhouses of Longhua, this pale-faced man didn't want to see his family's genius lose to a commoner even if the opponent was the national champion. The pale-faced man suddenly asked, Has Wei Feng approached you recently? Qing Yimou laughed. He wants me to help with a problem. Today's protagonist, Xiaoyu. His foolish son offended Xiaoyu, and he sees Xiaoyu's potential, hoping to resolve the conflict early. The pale-faced man snorted. If it were my son, I'd have started a new account long ago. Qing Yimou explained. He has the same idea, but he can't find his son lately. What do you plan to do? Of course, I'll help him. It's not Wei Feng's fault and he's a mythical class holder of Longhua. Xiaoyu is our future. Internal strife is not an option. Wu Xiang ascended the challenge arena with a spring in his step, secretly delighted. He had begged his father for days and finally received a full set of legendary gear, along with attribute-enhancing items. His overall strength had more than doubled, and he was confident enough to challenge the top of the Jialong list. As Wu Xiang took his place, his health points were displayed. 1-064-8801-064-880. This meant he had a staggering 100,000 strength points. The audience gasped and murmured in amazement. Oh my gosh, that gear must be worth billions, maybe even tens of billions. No wonder the Wu family, backed by mythical powerhouses, is so terrifying. Hearing these exclamations, Wu Xiang's face lit up with pride. Qing Yiya saw Wu Xiang's attributes and turned pale. She anxiously tugged at her sister's skirt, asking, Sister, should we ask Dad to get Xiaoyu a set of equipment like that? Qing Yueming shook her head helplessly. Even if we could, it's impossible to gather such a set right now, not even for dad. As time ticked by and the appointed time approached, Xiaoyu still hadn't appeared. The audience grew impatient and began to chatter. Could the newcomer have run away? He's been missing for so long. I think it's possible. If I saw Wu Xiang's gear, I'd also avoid the fight. It'd be a sure defeat, as if Wu Xiang couldn't crush you before. Do you have to say everything you think? Undoubtedly, most people believe Xia you had fled. Facing a public defeat and subsequent expulsion would be humiliating, almost a social death. But running away wouldn't be much better. After all, he had challenged Wu Xiang so boldly only to flee, which was equally disgraceful. The pale-faced man chuckled. Looks like the Wu family is one. Qing Yimou shook his head. I wouldn't pop the champagne just yet. Oh, you still think that kid will show up? It's a pity. A deserter will never reach our level. You and Wei Feng have both misjudged him, the pale-faced man said smugly. Qing Yimou gave him a knowing smile, as if you didn't think he was troublesome too. Otherwise, why would you gear up your son like that? Oomph. Just a precaution. As they conversed, the crowd below suddenly erupted in loud cheers. He's here. He's here. Xiaoyu's arrival drew everyone's attention. He looked lazy, with a hint of sleepiness in his eyes, as if he had just rolled out of bed. This appearance made everyone frown, wondering if he had forgotten the significance of today. You're so early? 
Xiaoyu smiled faintly at the murmurs, walking straight to the stage and addressing Wu Xiang. Wu Xiang snorted coldly. I thought you were too scared to show up. Xiaoyu shook his head, as if trying to shake off the remnants of sleep. No, no. I just got back from an unknown region yesterday, so I slept a bit longer. Isn't the timing just right? Wu Xiang, seeing Xiaoyu's nonchalant attitude, was furious. You should sleep more, because after today, you won't have the chance to sleep at Qianlong Academy. Not necessarily. Xiaoyu waved his hand dismissively. Since I'm here, let's start. The audience is getting impatient. As Xiaoyu stepped onto the stage, his basic information appeared. Xiaoyu, level 40 hero necromancer. Health 236460-236460. In the distance, Qing Yemo saw Xiaoyu's level and chuckled. Oh, he's level 40 now. Looks like he hasn't been idle these past few days. The pale-faced man said coldly. The gap between level 40s can be bigger than from level 30 to 39. Chin Yemo nodded in agreement. That's true. At level 40, you can wear legendary gear, which often triples the stats of gear from the same tier. But Xiaoyu only has 230,000 health, so it seems he doesn't have good equipment. The pale-faced man said proudly, Of course. There are fewer than 10 people in the entire human world who can reach a million health at level 40. Chin Yemo smiled, still watching Xiaoyu. Wu Xiang is very strong, but I still have faith in Xiaoyu. Want to bet on it? The pale-faced man suggested. No, it wouldn't look good. After all, I'm the principal. Qin Yemo declined politely. Oomph. Afraid of tarnishing your image, the pale-faced man mocked. On stage, Wu Xiang looked at Xiaoyu's health and sneered. 230,000. I wonder if your intelligence has reached 30,000. Xiaoyu glanced at his attributes and nodded. Over 42,000. Not bad, right? Though he knew that his own stats and gear were vastly inferior to Wu Xiang's fully equipped level 40 legendary gear. Wu Xiang's expression changed slightly. Oh, that's impressive. He remembered his own state before, with intelligence similar to Xiaoyu's, but his equipment was far superior. This meant Xiaoyu's potential in intelligence was not to be underestimated. Xiaoyu suddenly checked his phone and saw a message from the Undying Phoenix Squad, saying they had found a high-level hero-grade monster nest and needed his help. He looked up and said, Let's start. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Wu Xiang smirked. Since you're in a hurry to drop out, I won't stop you. Of course, if you choose to surrender and apologize to me in front of everyone, I might consider canceling our bet. Let's start, Xiaoyu responded briefly. As the challenge began, the crowd erupted in cheers. Qin Yi watched Xiaoyu on stage nervously, and Qin Yu Ming clenched his fists. Yang Qianqian shouted, Go Xiaoyu! If you win, I'll go on a date with you. Xiaoyu waved his hand, summoning dozens of undead soldiers, archers, and mages. This time, he did not choose to summon an undead lord. Five seconds later, Wu Xiang charged at Xiaoyu like a cannonball, accompanied by a dozen blazing fireballs. Block him. Xiaoyu's eyes narrowed, acknowledging Wu Xiang's impressive strength. The fireball struck the shields of the undead soldiers but failed to break through. Wu Xiang was surprised to see that the undead soldiers only suffered minor injuries from the fireballs. Impressive, a mythic-level undead summoner, Wu Xiang thought, taking 6,000 intelligence worth of explosive fireballs and still standing. This many couldn't easily break through Xiaoyu's undead defenses. At that moment, Dozens of arrows and clouds of poison gas flew towards Wu Xiang. Thunderous gale! Wu Xiang shouted. Purple blue lightning and wind formed in front of him, shredding the arrows and poison gas. Xiaoyu smiled faintly. Not bad. If I had more time, I'd play with you, but I'm in a hurry. Undead soldiers, leap attack. A dozen undead soldiers leaped simultaneously towards Wu Xiang. Xiaoyu raised a staff, casting a divine level corpse explosion spell enveloping most of the challenge arena in a series of explosions. Qin Yemo smiled. Looks like I win. The pale-faced man remained calm. Who knows? Just then, Wu Xiang's roar echoed in Xiaoyu's ears. Die. Flaming annihilation slash. A towering flame engulfed Xiaoyu. Everyone thought Xiaoyu had lost. A necromancer caught in close combat with a magic swordsman had no chance of winning. Spatial blink. Xiaoyu suddenly vanished from his spot. Qin Yemo looked at the pale-faced man in shock. Did you give him your blink ring? The pale-faced man forced a stiff smile. Of course. Our Wu family doesn't intend to lose this fight. A number appeared before everyone's eyes, and they all widened in shock. Even Wu Xiang was stunned. The pale-faced man shouted, Impossible! How did it only deal 5,325 damage? This skill should deal at least 500,000 damage. Qing Yimou looked at Xiaoyu and sighed. Seems Xiaoyu has some tricks up his sleeve. He must have the necromancer's divine talent, sacrifice, and other damage reduction skills or equipment. Xiaoyu turned to the stunned Wu Xiang beside him and said, You really scared me. You're the first person to hurt me since my class change. Impressive. But it's over. Corpse explosion. 
With a low shout from Xiaoyu, the body of the recently deceased undead archer exploded instantly. Flames surged, engulfing Wu Xiang who was caught off guard. This time, Wu Xiang couldn't use his spatial blink to escape. The cooldown period became his fatal weakness. A deafening boom echoed as the explosion's flames even enveloped Xiaoyu. However, as the caster, he remained unscathed. Everyone on the field stood in shock, watching the damage number skyrocket. Ah! A piercing scream shattered the sky. Wu Xiang, now charred and gravely injured, was blasted hundreds of meters away and crashed heavily onto the ground. He looked in disbelief at his remaining sliver of health. His once million strong life points were now reduced to less than a hundred thousand. And that's with my fire damage reduction. Without it, I'd be dead on the spot. Wu Xiang thought, still shaken. Just one corpse explosion? Qing Mo gasped. Xiaoyu's not only got height here undead summons, but his corpse explosion is also off the charts. The pale-faced man sighed helplessly. Looks like my boy doesn't stand a chance against such a monster. Xiaoyu gave his opponent no time to breathe and shouted again. Undead summon. In an instant, a row of undead archers appeared before him, raining arrows down on Wu Xiang. Still reeling from the previous attack, Wu Xiang was quickly eliminated. Challenge over. Xiaoyu wins, the system announced. Xiaoyu advances to rank 7 on the dragon list, while Wu Xiang drops to rank 8. The system then awarded a new talent, Plague Apostle. Your undead summons have a 100 chance to apply a poison effect on hit, lasting 3 seconds and dealing 10 of your intelligence as poison damage per second, stacking indefinitely. Is it really over? Wu Xiang was in disbelief. Could this freshman already have the strength of a hidden dragon contender? Everyone stared in shock at the calm and collected Xiaoyu on stage, his chiseled face adorned with a faint smile. It's over. Goodbye, Xiaoyu said nonchalantly before leaping off the stage and sprinting toward the teleport center before anyone could react. Watching Xiaoyu's disappearing figure, the crowd finally snapped out of their daze. Their expressions varied, but sharing a common thought. The hidden dragon list is about to change. What a terrifyingly hardworking kid, Qing Mo sighed. I was hoping to have a chat with him. The pale-faced man simply sighed lightly before flying down to retrieve the stunned Wu Xiang. Xiaoyu quickly reached the teleport center and said to the receptionist, teleport to Pioneer Town. In the blink of an eye, he arrived at Pioneer Town and immediately requested, teleport to Phoenix 3 teleportation array. In an instant, Xiaoyu appeared at a newly established, rudimentary outpost. Only a few workers and hired professionals were around. One professional, surprised by Xiaoyu's sudden appearance, politely said, Hello, this place isn't officially open yet. Please leave. Xiaoyu glanced at him indifferently, said nothing, and summoned his frostbone dragon. After checking the map, he took off. Who the heck is that big shot? So arrogant, one worker exclaimed. No idea. But since he ignored us, let's not stir up trouble, another agreed. As Xiaoyu flew on his frostbone dragon, he checked the urgent distress messages on his phone. Could they have encountered a legendary monster's lair and are being chased by a legendary boss? He worried. If the Phoenix Squad is wiped out, I'll need to find new agents. Saintus! Xiaoyu summoned the Saintus Ghost and commanded, boost the Frostbone Dragon's agility significantly. Make it fly faster. Meanwhile, the Phoenix Squad was in dire straits. Sister Lon, we're surrounded, the squad's archer said in terror, eyeing the menacing lizard men around them. These lizard men stood at least two meters tall, and the ones in front, adorned with eerie red tattoos, were three meters tall wielding staff-like war hammers and glaring at their prey with crimson eyes and long tongues flicking out of their gaping mouths. Lan Feng's face was grim. How are there so many lizard shamans here? She had thought it was just a level 39 hero-grade monster lair, but it turned out to house thousands of lizard men, including a level 40 hero boss, a lizard shaman. Worse yet, she spotted a level 48 legendary boss, the lizard high priest at the center. Observing the modern artificial decorations on the lizard men, Lan Feng's pupils contracted. They're the lizard tribe controlling the White Elephant Kingdom. With the game merging into reality, some weaker nations were annihilated by in-game races, while others chose to become their slaves. The White Elephant Kingdom, a neighbor to the Dragon Kingdom, was among the latter, leading millions of survivors to serve the lizard tribe. This race worshipped the god of destruction, Arlo, and their strongest were demigods. They had long harbored ambitions to invade the Dragon Kingdom. And though their previous attempts were thwarted by the Dragon Kingdom's mythic and demigod warriors, their presence at the border now signaled another impending invasion. Kukuku didn't expect to be discovered by you. A dark skinned, small statured human emerged from behind the lizard men. After bowing oddly to the lizard shamans, he said, Messengers of the God, I believe these four humans can help us understand their frontline fortresses. If we can extract information from them, I will be more confident in hiding the God's messengers better, 
allowing us to get closer to the enemy forts. The dozen lizard shamans exchanged glances and then nodded at the White Elephant Kingdom man. Receiving their approval, he turned to the Phoenix squad, his eyes filled with desire. Seeing his gaze, Lan Fong immediately understood his intentions. She turned to her teammates and said firmly, Ladies, we must not let ourselves be captured alive. If we do, we'll wish we were dead. Yes, Sister Lan, the other three responded in unison, determination shining in their eyes. A roar pierced the silence as several lizard deities charged towards the Phoenix squad like arrows released from a bow. Lan Fong growled, fortify, as her body was enveloped in a golden glow, bravely confronting the oncoming deities. Behind her, the archers swiftly drew their bows, letting loose a volley of arrows to cover her. However, the mages and priests, exhausted from the previous battle, were left panting and unable to cast any spells. Thud, thud, thud the battle hammer-like scepters of the lizard deities rained down on Lan Fong. She struggled to hold her shield up, each impact sending tremors through her body and causing blood to trickle from her mouth, her internal organs clearly injured. The archer's arrows merely scratched the surface of the lizard deity's tough scales, unable to inflict any significant damage as their strength waned. Suddenly, a misstep allowed a heavy blow to strike Lan Feng's side, sending her flying like a broken kite and coughing up blood in midair. The people of Baixiangguo watched with regret etched on their faces. The remaining three members of the squad were filled with despair, realizing there was no escape. At that moment, a deafening dragon roar echoed from the sky. An ice bone dragon descended, its tail sweeping across and flinging two lizard deities away. It then unleashed a frigid breath, forcing the remaining lizard deities back before landing firmly in front of the Phoenix squad. In the next second, Lan Fong found herself in a warm embrace. Xia Yu, utilizing his holy ghost talent, had blinked through space to catch her. Saintus, holy aura, Xia Yu commanded. A holy light enveloped the four of them, and within 2.5 seconds, their wounds healed rapidly and all negative effects were dispelled. Lan Fong coughed as she awoke, feeling a mix of embarrassment and relief as she saw Xiaoyu holding her. She whispered, You made it! Xiaoyu gently set her down and turned to face the encircling thousands of lizard men and several lizard deities. The people of Bai Xiangua, witnessing Xiaoyu's heroic entrance, felt a mix of envy and anger. One of them shrieked, Foolish! How dare you charge into an army alone! He secretly rejoiced, imagining the man being torn apart by the lizard men a cruel smile forming on his face. Xiaoyu, however, smirked dismissively. You think you can surround me? To corner a necromancer, you need an army of millions. My undead, rise! With his call, his level 44 summoning skill activated, capable of summoning up to 2,590 undead. The forest echoed with the clattering of bones. Countless undead soldiers, archers, and mages materialized from the void, each exuding a formidable aura. The ice bone dragon hovered above Xiaoyu, letting out a roar that sent chills down their spines. It felt as though death itself had descended upon the land. The members of the Phoenix squad were stunned. The long-legged mage, Pang Ro, swallowed hard and exclaimed, Sister Lan, is this his true powers? She sensed that each undead mage's spiritual strength far surpassed her own. The archer, Zhao Xiaoyu, trembled and nearly fainted. The priest, Dong Shui, excitedly said, We're saved. Lan Feng looked at Xiaoyu with a complex expression murmuring, looks like we've truly found a powerful ally. The lizard deities roared and commanded their warriors to charge at Xiaoyu, intent on killing the necromancer. Xiaoyu sneered, not a chance. Aura, solar flare? Instantly, all the summoned undead were bathed in the radiant glow of the sun, emitting blinding light. The ensuing scene was astonishing. Every thrust of a blade killed a lizard man, and the slain lizard man exploded, taking out nearby comrades. In mere seconds, the thousands of lizard men were annihilated, each undead summoned barely needing to engage more than one warrior. The undead mages barely had time to raise their staffs before all targets had fallen. The sight was so overwhelming that even the hero plus level lizard deities involuntarily stepped back. The Baixiangwa man turned to flee in terror. Xiaoyu coldly ordered, shoot him. Instantly, thousands of undead archers aimed at the fleeing man and released a rain of arrows. Despite his magical shield glowing, he couldn't withstand the barrage and was turned into a bloody mess. Xiaoyu then shifted his gaze to the remaining lizard deities, saying with a hint of regret, Go. Though they were hero-level bosses at level 40, they weren't of legendary status and couldn't drop legendary ascension orbs. Despite their powerful abilities and divine destruction skills, the lizard deities were no match for the true god-level undead summits. 
Hundreds of dark energy orbs shot from the undead mage's staffs, sealing all escape routes. The lizard deities, driven to desperation, lunged at Xiaoyu in a final attempt at mutual destruction, but disintegrated in a foul-smelling yellow liquid upon contact with the orbs. A system notification sounded. Killed lizard deity hero boss, level 40 experience 0. You have obtained the Master Skull Scepter. Killed lizard deity hero boss, level 40 experience 0. Xiaoyu sighed. No experience, still need to find legendary ascension orbs. Meanwhile, elsewhere, a lizard man in a gold-trimmed priest's robe and holding a scepter adorned with various skulls stood up furiously, roaring. Who dares kill our god's messenger? I can sense his location. We need his blood to wash away our shame. Tribesmen, follow me. A Bai Xiangwa man hurriedly tried to dissuade him. High priest, if we go out now, we'll be exposed. Our main goal this time is to slaughter the hunting humans. The warriors are already in position. The high priest responded with fervor. Now, we offer an early sacrifice to the god of destruction. General, sightings of lizard men have been reported in multiple regions including the Silent Marsh, Death Forest, and the Everfrost Mountains. In the military district of Pioneer Town, a soldier in uniform was reporting the situation to a middle-aged man in a robe. General Lei Hua, known for his thunderous voice, was furious upon hearing the report. Those damned lizard men are on the move again. This time, it seems they don't plan to directly attack Pioneer Town, but are lurking on the outskirts. Order the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd regiments to commence a hunt immediately. Ensure every lizard man invading our country is annihilated. Yes, General. The soldiers saluted sharply before quickly turning to carry out the orders. Meanwhile, Xiaoyu was preparing to lead the Phoenix team out. Suddenly, his eyes narrowed as he sensed a powerful presence locking onto him from afar. At that moment, their phones vibrated intensely, displaying urgent rescue messages. What's going on? Why are so many people suddenly in danger? Xiaoyu asked, frowning. Lan Feng analyzed in a low voice. I suspect the Lizard Man army is on the move. Those damned Lizard Men must have been lurking in Death Forest, disguised as monster nests. No wonder several low-level Lizard Man nests have been reported recently. Xiaoyu's frown deepened as he realized the situation was more dire than he had imagined. The approaching presence made it clear that escaping normally was no longer an option unless he used spatial teleportation, which he deemed unnecessary. If you want to come, I don't mind taking down another legendary boss. Maybe I'll even get a legendary ascension orb, Xiaoyu muttered to himself, a glint of battle intent in his eyes. At that moment, a system prompt echoed in Xiaoyu's mind. Please make a choice. 1. Defend against the Lizard Man army. Ensure 50 or more humans in Death Force survive. Reward. Side gate upgraded to mythic level. 2. Defend against the Lizard Man army. Ensure 80 or more humans in Death Force survive. Reward. All attributes potential 30. Holy Maiden Ghost all attributes potential 100. Death Wing all attributes potential 50. 3. Abandon the humans in Death Forest and escape. Reward. Agility attribute potential 100. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu made his choice. I choose to stay and ensure 80 survive. As soon as he finished speaking, Xiaoyu began summoning his undead lords. Excluding the forbidden spellcaster, he summoned all the undead lords he had. Summon your subordinate undead and spread out to protect the humans in Death Forest, Xiaoyu ordered. Yes, master, the undead lords responded in unison. Each undead lord could summon 8,000 subordinate undead. In no time, tens of thousands of undead appeared in the forest, quickly spreading out. But for Xiaoyu, this was far from enough. Undead lord summoning. Xiaoyu cast the spell again. His undead lord skill was at level 30, with an upper limit of 8, but he only had 4. This time, he intended to summon all at once. Xiaoyu returned to the dark space, where the shadows of five undead lords appeared before him. He immediately chose one that resembled a human in size. It's you! Xiaoyu decided decisively. In the next second, Xiaoyu was back in reality, and the figure of Duke emerged from the magic circle. The gentlemanly undead bowed to Xiaoyu, elemental archmage Duke at your service, master. Duke's attributes were displayed immediately. Race, undead. Level, 40. Strength, 90,720 strength potential. 2,268. Agility. 86,400 agility potential. 2,160. Wisdom. 93,960 wisdom potential. 2,349. Talent. Elemental mastery innate control over elements. Elemental skill damage 30. Elemental skill casting speed 50. Skills. Thunder fire blast, fire tornado, adamant and magic shield. Subordinate undead. Undead mage. What incredible magic and mental power. Even a legendary mage would be like this, right? Long-legged mage Pang Ro was shocked at the sight of the undead Lord Xia you had summoned. 
Lan Feng couldn't help but sigh. Indeed, an undead mage becomes more terrifying the higher their level and the higher their summoning skill tier. But Xiaoyu didn't stop there. He continued summoning the remaining three undead lords. You can still summon more? Xiaoyu's undead lord level is too high. The Phoenix team stared in disbelief at the magic circle before Xiaoyu. With a dragon's roar, the Golden Earth Dragon King appeared. With a piercing screech, the wind bird emerged. With a roar, the earth giant bear arrived. The three giant undead beasts knelt before Xiaoyu. At your service, master. Xiaoyu immediately issued orders. Summon your subordinate undead to assist the other undead lords in rescuing humans. No sooner had he spoken than tens of thousands of undead, consisting of birds, bears, and kobolds, mobilized instantly. The phoenix team was left speechless. Archer Zhao Xiaoyu swallowed hard and said, Sister Lan, what kind of powerhouse have we latched onto? We must hold on tight. Lan Feng nodded instinctively, but quickly snapped out of it. No matter how strong others are, we mustn't give up on becoming stronger ourselves. Indeed, Xiaoyu turned to them with a smile, but for now, stay back. I'll have the undead protect you. With that, Xiaoyu gazed solemnly at the horizon, where a dark shadow was rapidly approaching. Boom! A lizard man, as large as a dinosaur, landed heavily on the ground, creating a deep crater. Its crimson eyes fixed on Xiaoyu as it roared. Was it you who killed the messenger of my god? This was a lizard man high priest, a legendary boss. Race, lizard man. Level 50. Strength. 149,850. Agility. 141,750. Wisdom. 162,000. Talent. Destruction power attacks inflict an additional 30 damage and leave a destruction mark, reducing the enemy's healing received by 80. If the enemy is killed, they cannot be revived. Skills. Destruction beam. Earth-shattering strike. Pain curse. God descent channel faith to summon a deity into one's body. Increases all attributes based on faith level and grants new skills. The Phoenix team's faces turn pale. This level 50 legendary boss had attributes that completely dwarf theirs. More terrifyingly, its talent countered teams relying on priests and enemies killed could not be revived. They couldn't help but worry for Xiaoyu. Against such a formidable foe, even Xiaoyu would have a tough time. Xiaoyu calmly nodded at the lizard man high priest's question. Yes, I killed him. Then I will make you die in agony. Pain curse. The lizard man high priest roared, launching its attack. Faced with a critical decision, Xiaoyu had two options. Defeat the legendary lizard high priest for victory or flee to ensure his safety. Regardless of his choice, the reward would be a pair of exclusive legendary boots. Xiaoyu chose to attack without hesitation. In his view, defeating the legendary boss not only had a chance to drop valuable legendary exaltation orbs, but the opponent's strength was not overly formidable, making escape unnecessary. At that moment, the lizard high priest launched an attack. Oh, then I will make you die in agony. Curse of pain. A blinding red light enveloped Xiaoyu. Although he felt a strange sensation in his body, he didn't pay it much attention. The lizard high priest cackled as it continued casting spells. Offer your blood to destruction. Perish. With those words, it lunged at Xiaoyu with incredible speed, shredding the undead soldiers in its path like paper. Xiaoyu's eyes narrowed in alarm. Despite the Lizard High Priest only being slightly stronger than the undead soldiers, its mastery of power was exceptional. While an undead soldier could only unleash 120 of its strength, the Lizard High Priest could exert 500 of its power with each strike, making its attacks exponentially more damaging. In mere seconds, hundreds of undead soldiers were reduced to dust by the Lizard High Priest's rampage. In the blink of an eye, the terrifying foe was upon Xiaoyu. Perish, the Lizard High Priest roared bringing its staff down on Xiaoyu like a crushing mountain. Boom! The ground shook, and dust filled the air. Mm. The lizard high priest turned suddenly, seeing Xiaoyu reappear from a spatial flicker. Xiaoyu smirked mockingly. Sorry, miss me. At the same time, the curse of pain was dispelled by his holy aura. Spatial flicker? A human mastering such a skill? The lizard high priest's eyes flashed with malice. Let's see how many times you can use it. Before the words finished, it became a blur charging at Xiaoyu with a deafening sonic boom. This time, Xiaoyu didn't dodge. He called out softly, Sanus, divine punishment. In an instant, all the light in the world seemed to gather in the saint spirit's hand in front of Xiaoyu. The power of divine punishment struck the lizard high priest, smashing it into the ground and raising a cloud of dust. What is this? The lizard high priest struggled to lift its head, but couldn't. Is this the descent of a god? Impossible. Gods can't descend in this world. Xiaoyu activated another skill. Soul Burn. This innate ability boosted the Saintus Spirit's attributes by 50. And this was just one of the Saintus Spirit's twin angel clones. 
The Sena Spirit, as a primary god level growth race, had already impressive base attributes. At level 40, strength 174,024, potential 2417. Agility 174024, potential 2417. And wisdom 227,520, potential 3160. With the innate ability Ward Goddess boosting all attributes by 30, and Soul Burn adding another 50, the total increase of 80 made the Saint of Spirit stats terrifyingly high. And there wasn't just one, three Saint of Spirits appeared above the Lizard High Priest, each wielding a hammer of divine punishment. Siayu sneered and cast his own Curse of Pain. Curse of Pain, let me show you what true agony is. The Lizard High Priest was engulfed in 11 times the pain instantly. Ah! The Lizard High Priest screamed in agony desperately trying to stand, but the divine presence from the four Saina spirits kept it immobilized. Attack! Siayu commanded, and the four soul burned Saina spirits swung their hammers of divine punishment simultaneously. A pillar of holy light pierced the sky, dispersing the clouds, and the lizard high priest at its center turned to ashes before it could even cry out. A system notification sounded. Legendary boss lizard high priest defeated, level 50 experience 0. Your wisdom potential 10. You have obtained the Legendary Dagger Destruction Fong. Choice completed. Reward granted. Legendary Boots Necromancer's Path. Necromancer's Path Legendary. Level 40. Wisdom 9072. Agility 3510. Movement Speed 100. Your Summoned Undead Creature's Movement Speed 100. See how you quickly compare the attributes. Much better than what I have. Without hesitation, he swapped his current Legendary Inferno Boots for the newly acquired Necromancer's Path. Meanwhile, far away in Pioneer Town, General Lei Hua, a mythical mage, sensed the holy power wave and shot to his feet. A mythical level attack? Lei Hua pondered. A mythical priest? No, it's a bit weaker, probably a legendary priest. It seems the lizard men sent quite a few strong fighters, forcing our priest to use a big move. His eyes narrowed, and he commanded the guard outside, notify General Qing to return immediately. I'm heading out. Before the words were finished, he transformed into lightning and sped towards the Death Forest. At the same time, the Phoenix Squad, escorted by undead soldiers, felt a violent tremor. A pillar of holy light pierced the sky, illuminating everything. The group looked up in shock. Is it our mythical human warrior? Lan Fong exclaimed in delight. Such pure holy power. It must be a human, not a lizard man. Great, it's coming from CIS location. She finally felt relieved. After all, with a mythical warrior's intervention, a mere level 50 legendary boss stood no chance. Just then, a massive lizard man covered in golden scales, towering over 10 meters, lifted its head. Its form resembled a Tyrannosaurus, exuding an overwhelming aura. How could this be? Monroe is dead? The golden scaled lizard man growled. That power, a top tier human legendary priest? In that case, it'll kill that priest, and this mission won't be a total failure. As it prepared to depart, a subordinate rushed over to report. Sir, a large number of undead have surrounded our warriors in the Death Forest, preventing us from dealing a fatal blow to the humans. As a result, all humans have escaped the forest. Damn necromancer, the golden-scaled lizard man cursed. If I find him, it'll make him die in agony. It was frustrated to encounter such a formidable necromancer, summoning countless undead to cover the forest and protect the humans. This left it as the least successful in killing humans, surely a disgrace among its peers. Forget it. Killing a legendary priest is still an achievement. The golden-scaled lizard man consoled itself. In an instant, it vanished. Hmm? A mythical lizard man? Lei Hua, speeding towards the battlefield, felt a familiar presence. It's that guy Maul's gold. He's heading to kill that legendary priest. I can't let him succeed. With that thought, Lei Hua increased his speed, racing towards the source of the holy power. Xiaoyu lifted his head, his gaze fixed on the distance. A powerful aura surged from that direction locking onto him. His heart skipped a beat as he thought to himself. Could it be one of the elite lizardmen? This aura. Is it from a mythical being? Realizing the gravity of the situation, Xia Yu's eyes widened. He knew that with his current strength, he stood no chance against a mythical being. Such entities boasted attributes averaging between five to six hundred thousand, a terrifying presence. Unless he reached the legendary level, he wouldn't be able to contend with a mythical being. The thought of fleeing crossed his mind, but Xia Yu quickly remembered his mission. He had just sent the undead lord to assist the retreat of the professionals. Although most humans had successfully evacuated, some had yet to escape. If he used spatial teleportation to flee now, this operation would be deemed a failure. At that moment, the system's prompt sounded in Xiaoyu's mind. Please make a choice. A mythical boss is approaching. Choose one of the following options. 1. 
Defeat the mythical boss. Reward. Undead Lord skill upgraded to true god level. 2. Face the enemy and flee without fighting. Reward. Spatial blink skill upgraded to mythical level. 3. Hold out until human professionals arrive. Reward. Bone shield skill upgraded to true god level. Xiaoyu chuckled inwardly. System, are you trying to get me killed? But, I was thinking the same thing. His eyes hardened as he decisively chose to defeat the mythical boss. Though the chances of success were slim, there was no penalty for failure. And if he succeeded, the undead lord's upgrade to true god level would be a game changer. Moreover, it would complete another objective, enhancing the attributes of himself, the Holy Ghost, and the Deathwing. With Xia Yu's choice, a small figure radiating a craze will appear beside him the forbidden spellcaster Edward. The system immediately displayed Edward's attributes. Race, undead. Level, 40. Strength, 90,720 potential, 2,268. Agility, 90,720 potential, 2,268. Wisdom, 97,200 potential, 2,430. Talent. Craze will Edward can only use forbidden spells. Forbidden spell mana cost is reduced by 50, but each cast consumes 30 of Edward's health. Skills. 1. Death's Finger Forbidden Spell. Shoots a beam containing the law of death at the enemy, dealing 9,999 of wisdom as death damage, and has a 50 chance to instantly kill the enemy, decreasing by 2 for each level below the enemy. 2. Plague Catastrophe Forbidden Spell. Releases a plague containing the law of death, dealing 500 of wisdom as death damage per second, and spreading among enemy units. Duration. Infinite. Xiaoyu quickly analyzed the situation. Death's Finger had a 50 chance to instantly kill the enemy. Even against a level 60 mythical boss, there was still a 10 chance. Plus, the 9,999 wisdom death damage was nothing to scoff at. Although the Holy Ghost couldn't boost wisdom attributes, the Thunder Halo and Sun Halo could still affect forbidden spells. Combined with his soul burn talent, there was still a glimmer of hope for victory. As Xiaoyu pondered, the overwhelming aura drew near. A golden light shot towards him like lightning, crossing several kilometers in an instant and hovering above him. A pair of golden vertical pupils gazed down at Xiaoyu, and a voice filled with authority rang out. Where is the legendary priest? Hmm, an undead mage. Are you the one obstructing my kin in the forest of death? The system immediately displayed the attributes of the mythical boss. Golden scale dragon, lizard mythical boss. Race, dragon lizard. Level, 55. Strength. 534,600. Agility, 551,241. Wisdom, 512,010. Talent, Destruction Golden Scales contain immense destructive divine power. Defense 100, damage 50. Destruction divine power attacks deal an additional 50 damage and leave a destruction mark, reducing the enemy's healing received by 90. Killed enemies cannot be resurrected. Skills, Divine Descent, Destruction Ray, Earth Shattering Strike, Pain Curse. One. Golden Flash, fires golden scales imbued with destructive divine power at the enemy, dealing 500 strength as physical explosion damage. 2. Thunderous Roar, roars with full force, dealing 400 strength as sonic damage to all enemies in a wide area. Facing a level 55 mythical boss, Xiaoyu's eyes widened. The power of a mythical being far exceeded his expectations, especially with its unique power domain, which could reduce an enemy's attributes by up to 90 almost completely stripping them of their resistance. Noticing Xiaoyu's reaction, the golden-scale dragon lizard's golden eyes narrowed slightly, its tone filled with pride. Are you shocked by my attributes, little ant? It thought to itself that these foolish humans, though lacking strong physiques and noble lineage, were granted some peculiar abilities by this world, such as the ability to see through all monsters' attributes. While the golden-scale dragon lizard didn't consider itself a monster instead, it saw itself as a divine envoy bringing endless destruction to this world humans always reacted with astonishment, seeing the vast disparity between them. Xiaoyu, however, felt a sense of relief. The opponent was only level 55, which meant Death's Finger had a 20 chance of instant kill. He held his breath, and the forbidden spellcaster Edward beside him gripped his staff tightly, his chaotic and crazed soul becoming exceptionally clear-headed in that moment. The golden-scale dragon lizard glared at Xiaoyu, its voice filled with anger. Human. Tell me, are you the summoner of those damn undead? The thought of the undead obstructing its killings enraged it. If this undead mage was indeed their summoner, it might even spare the legendary priest to focus on torturing this mage. Yes, it's me, Xiaoyu replied calmly. So it is you, the golden-scaled dragon lizard roared. I command you to recall all your cursed undead immediately, or you will regret it. No, 
I refuse. Xiao Yu answered without hesitation. I will kill you. The golden scaled dragon lizard's eyes glinted with killing intent. Unfazed, Xiao Yu retorted. If I recall them, will you spare me? A sly look flashed in the golden scaled dragon lizard's eyes. If you recall them, I won't kill you. I don't believe you, Xiao Yu said, his expression turning cold. I'm not foolish enough to make a deal with a monster. Then die, the golden scaled dragon lizard roared. Once you're dead, your undead will disappear too. Though I won't get to torture you, it will still bring me satisfaction. Roar! With a thunderous roar, the golden scaled dragon lizard vanished from its spot. In the next instant, its massive claw crashed down where Xia Yu had been standing, shattering the ground and raising a cloud of dust. Interesting, the golden scaled dragon lizard turned its head towards Xia Yu, who had dodged the attack. I didn't expect an undead mage like you to know Spatial Blake. But you still can't escape me. No, I never intended to escape. Xiao Yu said calmly, then turned to the forbidden spellcaster beside him. Edward, death's finger. An invisible pressure suddenly descended upon everyone present, drowning them in a tidal wave of fear. Even Xiao Yu wasn't spared. Edward's skeletal hand gathered a grayish white energy, pointing directly at the golden scaled dragon lizard. The golden scaled dragon lizard's body stiffened abruptly. It stared in terror at the energy on Edward's fingertip, exclaiming in disbelief Impossible! This is the power of the gods. How can a weak undead like you wield the power of death? Divine descent. The golden scale dragon lizard roared as dark golden energy burst forth from its body, cloaking it like armor. Its attributes skyrocketed instantly, the resulting shockwave making Xiaoyu struggle to stay on his feet, while Edward remained unmoved. Edward's deep, raspy voice echoed in everyone's ears. It's useless. In the face of death, even the gods themselves cannot resist. The golden scale dragon lizard was caught in a dilemma torn between charging forward to kill the detestable undead and hesitating in fear. It didn't even dare to turn and flee, afraid that the terrifying energy would strike it down in an instant. Necromancer, make your undead stop casting, the golden-scale dragon lizard shouted at Xiaoyu. I promise not to kill you. I'll even become your magical pet. It was so terrified that it was willing to make such a humiliating plea. Xiaoyu shook his head helplessly. Ah, it's a bit late for that. Edward can't control it now either. Since it's a forced use of a forbidden spell, there's nothing I can do. Die. The golden scale dragon lizard roared, its golden scales raining down on Xiaoyu like a storm. It hoped that by killing the necromancer, it could stop the forbidden spell, sacrificing all its golden scales in the process. Prepared for this deadly attack, Xiaoyu instantly used spatial flicker to retreat over 200 meters. However, the golden scales bizarrely turned midair, continuing to pursue him. Realizing that spatial flicker wouldn't help him evade, and uncertain if he could survive even one of the damage from this mythical boss's full attack, Xiaoyu knew he was in grave danger. At the critical moment, Edward's beam of death shot out, while the golden scales were about to hit Xiaoyu. In the nick of time, Xiaoyu used spatial teleportation again, barely avoiding the fatal blow. The golden scale dragon lizard let out an earth-shattering roar as it was struck by the finger of death. It felt its entire body, from muscles to skin, from blood to soul, being torn apart, the excruciating pain driving it to madly scream. A system notification sounded. Defeated the mythical boss Golden Scale Dragon Lizard. Level 55 Experience 0. You have obtained the Mythical Wand of Destruction and a Legendary Ascension Orb. Your overall attribute potential 30. Selection complete. Distributing rewards. Necromancer Lord Skill upgraded to True God level. Selection complete. Distributing rewards. Overall attribute potential 30. Saintus Ghost overall attribute potential 100. Deathwing overall attribute potential 50. Xiaoyu crashed heavily onto the floor of his home, listening to the system announcements with a smile of excitement on his face. He had acquired a legendary ascension orb, his overall attributes increased by 60, and the necromancer lord had reached true god level. Although he couldn't use the legendary orb yet, as it would mean graduating early and missing the freshman competition, the rewards were more than satisfying. Meanwhile, Lehua surveyed the obliterated death forest from the sky, a hint of fear on his face. Ching Mo, riding a Qing foam bird, arrived and was equally stunned by the scene. They exchanged information, finding the fact that a mythical boss had been defeated in Sakan's hard to believe. Lei Hua mentioned the possibility of Xia Yu's demise, causing Qing Mo a pang of sorrow for the fallen genius. They decided to report the incident but chose not to investigate further, fearing to provoke the powerful entity capable of such a feat. Back at home, Xia Yu was asked about his injuries by the butler. He briefly explained that he was fine. The butler informed him that his sister would be returning home soon and asked if he would be dining at home. Xiaoyu nodded in agreement, deciding to rest at home for the day. It was dusk by the time Bai Xiaoxiao dragged her weary body back home. 
Despite looking exhausted, her eyes lit up with a hint of joy upon seeing Xiaoyu. Sitting at the dining table, Xiaoyu asked with concern, Did Uncle Bai and the others go on a business trip again? Bai Xiaoxiao nodded, a look of discontent crossing her face. As soon as you left for Qianlong, they went out and haven't returned since. Xiaoyu smiled, trying to comfort her. It's been like this since we were kids. You get used to it. Oomph. Bai Xiaoxiao retorted stubbornly, but you were around back then. Now you're gone too. Xiaoyu was momentarily speechless. After a brief silence, he said, School will start soon. We'll be able to live together again then. Thinking about the upcoming university life, Bai Xiaoxiao's face brightened with a smile. Suddenly remembering something, she reminded him, By the way, you should work on the guild experience too. You can't level up right now, so improving the guild's attributes would help. Only then did Xiaoyu recall his role as the guild leader and realized he had never contributed to the guild's experience. He glanced at the guild information. Wangsheng Hall Guild. Tier 1 Guild. Experience. 17. Guild Bonus. Wisdom 1. Guild Members. Leader. Xiaoyu. Level 40. Heroic Necromancer. Vice Leader. Bai Xiao Xiao. Level 15. Official Priest. Members. Hua Chaoyu. Level 15. Official Mage. Ling Yin. Level 15. Official Archer. Hu Weiyong. Level 15. Official Warrior. Have you guys already attempted the Guild Challenge space? Xiaoyu asked curiously. Bai Xiao Xiao nodded and explained. We did a level 7 challenge when we were level 10. It took us a few hours to earn this bit of experience. Not even enough for a single attribute upgrade. She added that upgrading the guild bonus required 1,000 experience points, and their 17 points were far from sufficient. Realizing he needed to contribute to the guild, Xiaoyu decided, I'll go and earn some guild experience tomorrow. I have some free time. Be careful, Bai Xiao Xiao reminded him. Xiaoyu then handed over his equipment, except for two mythic items and his personal gear, to Bai Xiao Xiao. Despite her access to national talent resources, it was still not enough. He instructed her to sell the equipment and use the proceeds to upgrade the gear of the other guild members, as they were by Xiao Xiao's teammates. Their improved strength would ensure her safety. The next morning, Xiaoyu set out on his bicycle. The slow ride allowed him a rare moment of leisure, but it was soon interrupted as he arrived at the guild building. I'm here to participate in today's village defense challenge space, Xiaoyu informed the receptionist. The receptionist looked up and was surprised. It's you, the national top scorer from our city. Are you here for the village defense challenge space? That's a level 33 heroic challenge. Xiaoyu nodded in confirmation. All right, where are your teammates? The receptionist looked around, noticing he was alone. I'm going solo. What? The receptionist was again surprised. Is it even possible to enter the guild's special challenge space alone? Xiaoyu frowned slightly, growing impatient. Can I go in alone? For him, a level 33 heroic challenge was a breeze. He chose this one because it was the highest level guild special challenge available today. If possible, he would have preferred a level 40 legendary challenge. You can, of course. The receptionist quickly processed his request. It's all set. Please proceed to the ninth floor and wait. The challenge will start in an hour. After thanking her, Xiaoyu took the elevator to the ninth floor. In the spacious central area was a large teleportation array, surrounded by many people. Look at Xiaoyu. Someone recognized him. Who's Xiaoyu? The national top scorer from Lingnan City. They kept replaying his story on TV for days. From Lingnan City? Doesn't matter. Not everyone here was from Lingnan City. As a remote town, many high-level resources had to be sold externally. Xiaoyu scanned the room, noting about 30 people gathered, forming around 8 or 9 teams. Including himself, there were 10 teams, making it a full house for the challenge space. A young man, looking slightly older than Xiaoyu, approached and greeted him. I, are you alone? Xiaoyu nodded. The young man was momentarily surprised, but quickly understood. But you necromancers do tend to work solo. However, we'll be facing a lot of monsters. Want to team up? We're all above level 35. He proudly pointed to his three teammates. Thanks, but I don't usually team up, Xiaoyu declined. He was just there to earn points, and teaming up would be more trouble than it was worth. Seeing this, the young man didn't press further and walked away. Not far away, another team was discussing whether to invite Xiaoyu. The team leader, a burly man, glanced coldly at Xiaoyu and decisively refused. No need. So what if he's the national top scorer? He's only good at exams and came alone for a guild challenge space. If we invite him and he panics, he'll drag us down. Xiaoyu noticed their glances and lazily glanced back, yawning. At that moment, a tall woman in tight leather approached him, her scent wafting into his nose. Hey there, handsome. Alone? She asked with a smile. Xiaoyu looked at her blankly, thinking her approach was too cliche. Noticing his reaction, the woman's smile twitched, but quickly returned. Can I get your contact info? No, Xiaoyu replied bluntly. I have someone at home who wouldn't allow it. It was clear that Xiaoyu was impervious to any charm. 
and the beauty turned and left immediately. Xiaoyu shook his head, thinking that being handsome had its own troubles. Just then, a staff member hurried in, announcing that the teleportation array was activated and they could head to the final city wall. Everyone entered the teleportation array in single file, and with a flash of bright light, they were instantly transported to a desolate ruin. Not far away, a diamond-shaped crystal floated in the air. Following the order of arrival, each team touched the crystal to enter the challenge space, with Xiaoyu being the last. As soon as Xiaoyu stepped into the crystal, he felt a moment of weightlessness. The next second, he found himself standing atop a city wall dozens of meters high. Looking around, he saw a team beside him. It was the same team from the Jueshan Guild that had refused to invite him earlier. The burly man leading the team looked displeased at Xiaoyu's appearance, muttering, We have to defend the wall with this guy? He doesn't even have teammates and will just drag us down? This challenge space had four city walls, and positions were usually assigned randomly. According to the unwritten rule, each team defended the wall they were transported to. Behind them was an ancient-style city, with wooden houses arranged neatly but completely empty. In the city center floated a crystal, and if it were shattered, the challenge would be considered a failure. The challenge task displayed, protect the city center crystal. If the crystal is shattered, everyone fails the task and gains no guild experience. Killing normal monsters gives 0.5 guild experience. Elite monsters 5, bosses 15, hero level bosses 30, and legendary bosses 100. The leaderboard is also activated, and the team with the most guild experience from this challenge gains an additional 500 guild experience. Xiaoyu turned to the burly man's team and said calmly, Since you don't want to defend with me, you might as well leave. If you stay with me, you might not earn any guild experience. The burly man was instantly furious. Don't think you can be arrogant just because you're the national champion. In real battles, no one will surrender to you, and no one will come to protect you. Xiaoyu responded calmly, I think you've misunderstood. How about this? All of you attack together. If you can defeat one of my undead soldiers, I'll leave. If you can't, then you'll have to leave. How about it? This statement completely enraged the four people. Defeat us with just one undead soldier? How arrogant, they shouted angrily. The burly man, muscles tensed, roared, Kid, you've made me angry. Xiaoyu waved his hand to summon an undead soldier while secretly summoning a hidden holy maiden spirit by his side. He ordered the undead soldier, Go ahead, but don't kill them. The burly man charged at Xiaoyu, but the undead soldier instantly blocked his way. The burly man used a master level charge skill, but it was like hitting an indestructible wall, completely immovable. The next second, a tremendous force sent him flying crashing heavily in front of his teammates. Xiaoyu asked indifferently, Do you still want to fight? The four of them realized they were no match and quickly apologized before leaving. Xiaoyu then summoned thousands of undead archers and hundreds of undead mages to position on the city wall, while hundreds of undead soldiers guarded the base of the wall. He thought to himself that this should be enough to defend one wall, but the guild experience from just one wall wouldn't be sufficient. He calculated that a first-tier guild required 1,000 guild experience points to increase attribute bonuses each time, up to a maximum of two times, totaling 2,000 experience points. To advance to a second-tier guild, they needed a four-person hero team and 10,000 guild experience points. He sighed inwardly, realizing this was far from enough. Although forming a hero-level team wasn't difficult, Xiaoyu didn't want to team up. Having a hero-level team join a first-tier guild wasn't realistic unless they were hired with money, but that would defeat the purpose. He would have to wait until Xiao Bai and her group reach hero level to upgrade to a second tier guild. For now, the priority was to gain 2,000 guild experience points and max out the first tier guild's attribute bonuses. Thinking of this, Xiaoyu summoned the Frostbone Dragon. Su, let's head to another wall. With a long roar, the Bone Dragon carried Xiaoyu swiftly to another city wall. The city wasn't large, just a few kilometers across, and they soon reached their destination. Captain, look, it's a Bone Dragon. Are we being attacked by monsters? Someone shouted in panic. The long-legged beauty Yao Ning slapped her teammate on the head. What are you thinking? The monsters in this challenge space are magical beasts, not undead. This must be the undead lord of that handsome undead mage. Then why is he here? Someone asked in confusion. If he was born on his own wall, he should be preparing there, not running around. Yao Ning's eyes sparkled. Could he be here to find me? Captain, can you stop being so infatuated? Her teammate complained helplessly. At that moment, Xiaoyu's voice came from the sky. Do you need any help here? Ah! The eight people on the city wall were stunned, their eyes filled with disbelief. Xiaoyu's sudden appearance had caught them off guard, and what was even more surprising was that he had voluntarily asked if they needed help. Yao Ning furrowed her brows, a hint of caution in her voice. Wait a minute, what about your side of the wall? Who's guarding it? She calculated silently. 
If the other side of the wall was breached, their entire challenge would fail, and they wouldn't earn any guild experience. Xiaoyu replied casually, I've already set up the undead over there. No monsters can get through. Someone questioned, confused, but don't you need to watch over them? What if the undead suffer losses? Who's going to replenish them? Another chimed in, exactly. You should guard your own wall. Otherwise, none of us will get any guild experience. Yao Ning shook her head. We have enough people here. We don't need your help. Xiaoyu looked around calmly. All right, but if you need help, feel free to come find me. With that, he turned and flew away, leaving the group staring at each other in confusion. Xiaoyu then flew to the other two walls, receiving the same response. No help needed. When the members of the Jueshin guild he had driven away saw him, they trembled and avoided eye contact. Returning to his own wall, Xiaoyu sighed. He thought to himself, it seems I'll have to take matters into my own hands later. Asking nicely isn't going to work, but with their strength, they might not be able to hold out. When that happens, I'll just take over, and they won't have any reason to refuse. Time ticked by, and half an hour later, a giant number appeared in the city center, starting a countdown. 9, 8, 7, 1. The system notification followed. Monster invasion begins. Please make your choice. 1. Kill at least 3,000 ordinary monsters, 3 bosses, 2 hero bosses, and 1 legendary boss. Reward. A set of level 20 hero gear for warrior, mage, archer, and priest. 2. Do nothing. Let the monsters destroy the city center crystal. Reward. Charisma 2. Xiaoyu was astonished. The rewards were incredibly generous. Although the level wasn't high, gear sets were extremely rare in this world, with fewer than 100 sets in existence. The system was offering four sets at once, one for each of the basic classes. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu chose to kill the monsters. Just then, the roars and cries of beasts echoed through the sky. From the nearby forest, a massive horde of magical beasts emerged. Giant boars, thunderous birds, and even colossal apes over 10 meters tall. Shoot! Xiaoyu commanded. Thousands of undead archers released a volley of arrows, raining down like a storm. Each arrow could easily pierce through the hides of two or three adult magical beasts, leaving gaping wounds. The beasts fell with agonized cries, their blood spraying and staining the leaves around them, adding an eerie atmosphere to the already gloomy forest. The first wave of beasts fell entirely under the barrage of arrows. Xiaoyu glanced at his guild experience, now comfortably in the lead. The leaderboard showed. First, Wangsheng Hall Guild, Guild Experience, 50. Second, Mingyao Guild, Guild Experience, 7. Third, Hertz Temple Guild, Guild Experience, 5. Xiaoyu chuckled inwardly. The first wave was only a hundred ordinary beasts, and they were killing them so slowly. He mounted his Frostbone Dragon and flew towards the other walls. From a distance, he could see others struggling to fend off the beast horde. Yao Ning shouted commands. Mages and archers, focus on the flying beasts. Don't let them get close to the city center crystal. Her staff continuously shot out ice spears, but they were often shattered midair by lightning strikes, failing to deal effective damage. Fortunately, the ice spears drew the Thunderwing bird's attention, allowing two archers to seize the opportunity and bring one down with precise shots. However, more Thunderwing birds swarmed in, launching bolts of lightning at the archers, forcing them to dodge and leaving them no time to attack. Yao Ning and another mage quickly summoned a mix of ice explosions and wind blades, taking down several Thunderwing birds. The situation on the ground was even worse. Two warriors were facing dozens of similarly leveled beasts. Even with the support and buffs from priests, they were struggling. Worse still, some beasts had bypassed the warriors and were attacking the wall directly. Yao Ning cursed under her breath. Damn it, we're so unlucky to face a wave of a hundred beasts. Normally, it's just a dozen per wave. Eight hero class players were overwhelmed by over a hundred level thirty-something ordinary beasts. One archer, pale-faced, looked at the Thunderwing birds and stammered, Captain, maybe we should retreat. If we keep this up, we might have casualties. Yao Ning's face darkened. She hadn't expected their first special space challenge after reaching guild level two to end in failure. At that moment, Xiaoyu flew closer on his frostbone dragon and asked, Are you giving up? Yao Ning's first thought was that Xiaoyu's side had also fallen. You, you abandoned your wall too? She thought it made sense. Even though undead mages could use swarm tactics, their summoned soldiers were often crushed by magical beasts. Undead soldiers were strong against weak enemies but weak against strong ones. Facing numerous and powerful beasts, they would naturally be overrun. Besides, Xiaoyu was alone without warriors and priests to hold the line. Suddenly, the archer beside Yao Ning exclaimed, Captain, look at his guild experience. What? What? Yao Ning opened the ranking panel and saw Xia Yu's guild experience at a solid 50, instantly astonished. 
One ordinary beast was worth 0.5 guild experience. So 100 beasts equaled 50 guild experience. Xiaoyu appearing here with 50 guild experience meant he had already cleared the beasts on his wall and had time to spare. Yao Ning, in disbelief, asked, How did you do it? Is your undead summoning of legendary or even mythical grade? Xiaoyu didn't answer, only asking, May I help you now? Of course, Yao Ning agreed without hesitation. Xiaoyu summoned 300 undead archers, had a spirit sanus buff them, then ordered, Shoot. Arrows rained down swiftly, each one leaving fatal wounds on the beasts. The remaining dozens of beasts were killed within seconds. Everyone present was stunned, their eyes filled with shock and disbelief. Is this the national top scorer, the highest scorer in history? Someone murmured. These undead archers may not be many, but their accuracy and power are like hacks. No wonder he cleared his wall so quickly. Xiaoyu mounted his frostbone dragon again, leaving the undead archers behind. All right, it's done. I'm heading to the next wall. With that, he flew towards the next wall, leaving the group in stunned silence. Watching the frostbone dragon fly away, Yao Ning and her companions slowly regained their composure. They exchanged glances, eyes filled with disbelief. Their initial disdain had transformed into deep awe, realizing they were probably not even a match for one of the dragon's minions. This thought sent a shiver down their spines, and they were grateful that the dragon had overlooked their rudeness. If they had been killed in the challenge arena, no one would have known. Yao Ning's gaze lingered on Xia Yu's departing figure, and she sighed inwardly. She wondered if Xia Yu already had a girlfriend, but then thought that someone as exceptional as him wouldn't have just one woman. This idea rekindled her determination, and she resolved to seize any opportunity that came her way. Meanwhile, the professional teams on the other two walls turned pale as they faced a horde of monsters. They quickly realized this was a rare event where a hundred monsters attacked the city simultaneously. Without hesitation, they abandoned the guild challenge, leaving the battlefield and allowing the monsters to rush toward the city's central crystal. On his way, Xiaoyu noticed this situation. He took note of the team's decisive retreat and immediately summoned his undead minions to fend off the monsters. Nearly 10,000 level 40 draconic undead, bolstered by the saintest ghost talent, had attributes far surpassing the 30-something level monsters. Their spears continuously struck, killing monster after monster. Next, Xiaoyu summoned the wind bird and its undead minions, the wind wing birds. The densely packed wind wing bird undead swarmed the thunder wing birds in the sky, tearing them to shreds with almost no resistance. The burly man from the Absolute God Guild, though initially furious about losing guild experience, laughed when he learned Xiaoyu couldn't gain any experience either. However, his face turned pale upon seeing the powerful undead Xiaoyu had summoned. Realizing he had severely underestimated this necromancer's strength, he decided to show respect to this national champion and avoid provoking him in the future. After the first wave of attacks, Xiaoyu was satisfied to see his undead occupying all four walls. He cleverly utilized the Saintist Ghost's Inspirer talent, deploying true god-level undead on the walls not covered by the talent, while the Frostbone Dragon and Wind Bird's minions guarded the other two walls. The second wave of attacks came quickly, but with Xiaoyu's meticulous arrangements, all four walls were easily defended. Even in Yao Ning's direction, they could barely kill a few monsters, while the rest were annihilated by Xiaoyu's undead. Yao Ning's teammates smiled wryly, marveling at the necromancer's prowess. The few monsters they managed to kill were only secured through concentrated firepower. Time flew by, and the third wave of monsters arrived, each wall facing a massive monster boss. Xiaoyu flew over to inspect and found a level 37 Thunderbird boss, whose attributes were unimpressive. Shaking his head, he flew back to the city center to guard the crystal against any unexpected events. Seeing this, Yao Ning instructed her teammates to seize the chance to kill more ordinary monsters while the undead archers focused on the boss. However, as the Thunderbird boss charged toward the wall, a thousand undead archers simultaneously drew their bows, and a barrage of arrows instantly killed it. This entire scene unfolded in mere seconds, demonstrating once again the terrifying power of Xia Yu's undead army to everyone present. Yao Ning and her group had just rushed down the city wall when a thunderous crash echoed through the air. They looked up to see the massive corpse of the Thunderbird plummeting to the ground before them, kicking up a cloud of dust. Everyone stood frozen, staring in disbelief at the once mighty boss. It's, it's dead just like that, someone muttered their voice filled with shock. But there was no time to dwell on it. The roars of the approaching beast horde grew louder. On the city wall, hundreds of undead archers stood in formation, their bowstrings humming in unison. Arrows rained down like a storm, piercing through every charging beast with deadly precision. Within minutes, nearly a hundred beasts lay dead at the city wall's base, none surviving the onslaught. 
Yao Ning and her companions watched in stunned silence before glancing up at the alert undead archers. The eight of them collectively sighed, filled with awe. This is terrifying, someone whispered in amazement. The same scene played out on the other three sides of the city. Xiaoyu's undead army held the beast horde at bay like an iron fortress, preventing them from reaching the city walls. Wave after wave of attacks were brutally repelled, and soon the ground outside was littered with beast corpses, the air thick with the stench of blood. Yao Ning abandoned any thoughts of joining the battle and opted to sit on the city wall, observing the massacre. Suddenly, her gaze was drawn to a massive figure in the distance. It was a colossal beast, covered in thick scales and sporting a sharp horn on its head. The Beast King, Behemoth. Yao Ning exclaimed in shock. The behemoth's roar was thunderous, shaking the entire valley. Everyone felt an invisible pressure bearing down on them, making it hard to breathe. Each step the giant beast took made the city tremble filling them with dread. Wow, what a powerful presence, someone couldn't help but exclaim. If it charges up the wall, no one dared to think further, quietly retreating from the wall to avoid provoking the beast. The behemoth roared again, accelerating towards the city gate. Yao Ning quickly analyzed. This must be the final legendary boss. Although it's called a legendary boss, it's not quite a true legendary level yet. She swiftly listed the behemoth's attributes. Legendary boss, level 39, Strength 40755, Agility 41014, Wisdom 39821. Its skills included Berserk, Rend, Roar, and Earthquake. So the highest difficulty's final boss is the Behemoth, Yao Ning remarked. It's several levels harder than normal difficulty. On normal difficulty, you'd face mid-high level beasts like the Earth Bear, but now it's the Beast King. Its attributes alone are about a quarter higher than normal difficulty. Not to mention the Behemoth's prowess far surpasses that of the Earth Bear. Someone raised a question. But the necromancer should still handle it easily, right? After observing for so long, the group had deduced that Xia Yu's undead summoning was at least of mythic level. While a single mythic undead soldier might be weaker than the behemoth without necromancy mastery, with a mastery boost, it could surpass the behemoth. Moreover, with thousands of undead soldiers and continuous summoning, not to mention stronger undead lords, they all believed Xia Yu could easily handle it. Yao Ning retorted, Of course it's easy. Do you even know what mythic undead summoning means? There's only one known in the world, and it's an American necromancer, said to be on par with a demigod from Longwa. Someone was puzzled. If necromancers are so powerful, why aren't they considered height or hidden classes? Yao Ning explained, are necromancers strong? Only the strong necromancers are. Because undead summoning is a basic skill, it's extremely difficult to upgrade through leveling up. Some necromancers remain ordinary or at best excellent in summoning even at legendary levels, having no advantage over archers, warriors, or mages of the same tier, often being at a disadvantage. They can bully the weak, but against equals they get crushed. But if the summoning tier is high, it's a different story. Everyone looked at the undead archers on the wall as Xiaoyu arrived, riding an icy skeletal dragon. The final boss still needed a cautious approach. Xiaoyu glanced at the behemoth's attributes and confidently said, as expected, it's weak. If it were a level 40 legendary boss, I might have to take it seriously. Go shoot it down. With Xiaoyu's command, all the undead archers drew their bows in unison. Arrows whizzed through the air, aiming straight for the behemoth. The behemoth paused abruptly, swinging its arms to deflect the arrows. But the power disparity was too great. It could only knock down a few arrows while the remaining hundreds pierced it, turning it into a pincushion. With a thunderous crash, the behemoth's massive body fell, raising a cloud of dust. Blood flowed like a stream. A system prompt sounded. Legendary boss behemoth slain, Level 39, Guild Experience 100. Challenge completed. Wangxing Guild Rank 1st. Reward. 500 Guild Experience. Selection complete. Rewards issued. Rewards. One set of Level 20 Hero Gear for Warrior, Mage, Archer, and Priest. All participants will be teleported out of the challenge space in 3, 2. A flash of light enveloped them, and they were teleported out of the challenge space. The members of the Jueshin Guild immediately used a teleportation array to leave. Others, filled with awe and respect, greeted Xiaoyu before departing. Yao Ning walked over to Xiaoyu and asked, Are you free tonight? No, I'm not, Xiaoyu replied without hesitation. The others gasped inwardly, thinking that rejecting the team leader so bluntly was harsh. After all, the team leader was at least a 90 out of 100. Yao Ning gritted her teeth, her face flushed with a mix of anger and embarrassment. With a huff, she led her team away. Xiaoyu opened the guild panel. Wangxing Guild, Tier 1. Guild experience, 3857. Guild bonus, wisdom 1. That's so little, Xiaoyu sighed. 
This guild can't level up quickly. Nevertheless, he allocated the attribute points. Guild bonus. Wisdom 3. Not much, but it's still something, giving me over 600 wisdom. Xiaoyu glanced at his attribute panel, noting the increase from the guild bonus. Time to go home, Xiaoyu said. Meanwhile, in the principal's office at Qianlong School. Principal Qing, I just received news that Xiaoyu has been spotted in Lingnan City. Qing Yemo suddenly stood up and flew towards the teleportation array. He had just learned that the Monster Protection Organization had sent a legendary team to assassinate Xiaoyu, and this news made him furious. Damn human traitors sending a legendary team to deal with a hero-level necromancer. He cursed as he quickly sent an alert to the Lord of Lingnan City, urging them to be on high alert and fully protect Xiaoyu. At that moment, Xiaoyu had just teleported back to Lingnan City. As he stepped out of the guild hall, he was stopped by several men in suits. The voice of Lord Lunong came through a communicator. Good protect him well and escort him to the teleportation center to send him back to Qianlong School. Xiaoyu frowned, sensing that something might be targeting him. One of the men in suits briefly explained the situation, emphasizing that the Monster Protection Organization intended to harm him and that they needed to escort him back to Qianlong School, which was guarded by several mythical beings. After a moment's hesitation, Xiaoyu followed them into the car. In the car, Xiaoyu calmly analyzed, they want to eliminate humanity's talented professionals. As an anti-human organization, they naturally don't want strong human beings to emerge. The man in the suit gave Xiaoyu an appreciative look, impressed by his composure in such a situation. Xiaoyu continued to inquire about the city's defensive forces and the possible actions of the enemy. The man in the suit explained that the city only had one hero team, and the enemy might send legendary strongmen. Xiaoyu quickly deduced the enemy's possible strategies, including controlling monsters and restricting the use of the teleportation array. Suddenly, the communicator of the man in the suit crackled with the voice of Lord Luno, accompanied by explosions and roars. The Lord ordered them to stop heading to the teleportation center because the array had been destroyed. Simultaneously, Xiaoyu noticed a spatial rift appearing in midair outside the window, with massive chaotic energy pouring out. A monster nest? At least hero level. The man in the suit's face turned pale. Xiaoyu immediately jumped out of the car and summoned his frostbone dragon. You guys evacuate the citizens, I'll handle the monsters. He commanded decisively, summoning the wind spirit bird and numerous undead archers, positioning them strategically on tall buildings. With a thunderous roar, a 10-meter tall, rot giant emerged from the chaotic energy. Xiaoyu quickly commanded the wind spirit bird to throw it out of the city, while the undead archers unleashed a barrage of arrows. The rot giant was instantly killed in the hail of arrows. After defeating the boss, Xiaoyu obtained a hero-level helmet, Rotten Skull. He quickly assessed its attributes and decided to wear it. However, in the shadows, for figures were closely watching the battle. They were surprised by Xiaoyu's strength, but remained confident in completing their assassination mission. One member, who had the hidden profession of Shadow Assassin, volunteered to launch a fatal attack while Xiaoyu was distracted by the monsters. Watch me take him down in one blow, the Shadow Assassin said confidently ready to make his move. Please make your choice. The assassins are already upon you, ready to strike. Xiaoyu's gaze swept over the three options, and without hesitation, he chose, face them hidden. The allure of the divine staff, Requiem of Death, was too great. Even against formidable assassins, he had confidence in his abilities. Everyone come out? Xiaoyu commanded, and instantly, eight undead lords appeared. Following them, 64,000 undead minions surged forth, covering the entire city district. The sky was filled with swarms of winged undead birds, while undead soldiers and dragon men lined up on the ground. The sheer spectacle left everyone present in awe. Is this the true power of this necromancer? A voice exclaimed from the shadows. No wonder the master sees him as a threat. If he grows to a legendary level, even the mythic lord might struggle against him. Xiaoyu quickly ordered the evacuation of civilians and directed his undead army to search for the assassins. Just then, the chaos twisted again, and a grotesque, Decaying dragon thrust its head out. Shoot it down and throw it out. Xiaoyu ordered calmly. The undead archers fired in unison, effortlessly slaying the 45000 attribute boss. As Xiaoyu focused below, a shadow assassin silently emerged from the shadow of a winged undead bird, holding a legendary dagger and aimed for Xiaoyu's back. Kill him, Saintus, Xiaoyu suddenly commanded. Space flickered. Xiaoyu vanished from his spot and the shadow assassin found himself facing a ghostly maiden in a white robe, wielding a massive hammer. Divine punishment, blinding white light enveloped the shadow assassin, reducing him to dust. First one, Xiaoyu said calmly. The remaining assassins in the shadows were stunned by the sudden turn of events. Seizing the moment, Xiaoyu pinpointed their locations and dispatched undead lords and ghostly guards to surround them. Boom! 
A building was pierced by an earth giant bear, and three Fusong assassins burst out. Damn, we've been discovered. Attack him together, a female assassin shouted, firing poisoned arrows. Xiaoyu dodged with another spatial flicker and immediately commanded, kill them. Seven undead lords and ghostly guards encircled the trio. Facing overwhelming power, a short, stout assassin tried to escape into the ground, but was crushed in a pulp by a golden earth dragon king. The remaining two, in their panic, fought desperately, but could not escape the onslaught of the undead army. For the god, use that thing, one of them shouted in despair. A bewitching voice echoed in their ears, causing a dark red gleam to flash in their eyes. Instantly, they dodged the attack from the undead lord with fluid, seamless movements. However, in the next moment, they both plunged daggers into their own chests. Surprisingly, no blood spurted out. Instead, a vast energy burst forth from their bodies, dissipating like smoke into the void. Xiaoyu witnessed this bizarre scene, alarms ringing in his mind. He realized that for the system to release sealed god-level equipment, the difficulty was far beyond what a legendary team could handle. Could it be a mythical-level foe? Suddenly, a series of low, explosive sounds erupted around Xiaoyu. Simultaneously, countless dark spatial cracks appeared in the sky and on the ground, spewing chaotic energy that quickly distorted the surrounding space. Xiaoyu immediately sensed that these were low-level monster nests, mostly containing creatures from level 1 to 10, with no hero-level nests among them. However, their sheer number was overwhelming, and dozens of such nests had suddenly appeared throughout the city. Xiaoyu's heart trembled, realizing this chaos was orchestrated to kill him, plunging an entire city of millions into turmoil. These monster protection fanatics were truly inhumane, willing to destroy a city to kill one person. Though these were low-level monster nests, they had an advantage, a massive number of monsters that could be produced rapidly. Moreover, the nests in Lingnan City were unusually active. Monsters began emerging at a visible rate, with thousands appearing within mere seconds, flooding into the city. Xiaoyu quickly issued orders to the seven undead lords, commanding them to lead their minions in clearing out the monsters. The undead lords immediately spread out with their subordinates, starting to eliminate the creatures pouring from the nests. However, the city's vast area and the numerous, strategically placed nests made it clear this was a premeditated attack. Seven undead lords simply weren't enough to cover all the nests. Even if their minions could easily kill the monsters, they couldn't reach the nests in other parts of the city in time. At that moment, Xiaoyu's phone rang. The message was from Lingnan City's mayor, Lu Nong. Xiaoyu, stay safe. We've mobilized local professionals to deal with these low-level nests. Your priority is your own safety. Shortly after, Bai Xiao Xiao also sent a message. Brother, don't get distracted by these low-level nests. Leave these monsters to us. She attached a photo, showing numerous professionals gathering to fend off the creatures. Suddenly, a roar erupted above Xiaoyu, and a hero boss emerged from one of the monster nests. Without hesitation, Xiaoyu ordered, shoot it down. Arrows rained down instantly killing the hero boss. A system prompt immediately followed. You have slain the hero boss, corrupted beast. Level 40 XP 0. You have obtained hero level gloves, thunder beast gloves. The body fell heavily to the ground. Since this area was already deserted, Xiaoyu didn't need to worry about disposing of the corpse. However, the threat wasn't over, indicating that an assassin might be lurking nearby. Standing atop a building, Xiaoyu scanned the ruined city. Apart from his undead, nothing seemed to be moving. The ghost army and the saintly ghost hadn't reported any abnormalities either. Xiaoyu decided to guard this hero-level monster nest, waiting for their mythical warrior to arrive. By then, the enemy would lose all opportunities, and he would have completed his mission. Meanwhile, the low-level monster nests within the city were being brought under control, which gave Xiaoyu more patience to wait. Suddenly, a formidable presence pressed in from afar. Xiaoyu looked up to see a familiar figure approaching it was Principal Qing Mo. Xiaoyu, are you alright? Qing Mo asked anxiously, surveying the surroundings. I'm fine, but I suspect there are still assassins from the Monster Protection Organization lurking around. Can you find them, Principal? Xiaoyu replied. Qing Mo closed his eyes briefly before shaking his head. I don't sense any legendary professionals nearby. Maybe you're overreacting. Let me take you back to the school. They wouldn't dare attack there. Qing Mo approached, intending to fly Xiaoyu back to Qianlong School. Thank you, Xiaoyu began, but a scepter suddenly swung down toward his head. The figure of Qing Mo transformed into a middle-aged man with a scarred face, shouting, Die! Boom! The building they were on collapsed instantly from the impact, and a figure shot out, with Xiaoyu emerging from the void. Bone Shield! Xiaoyu summoned bone shields around him, but the scepter shattered them like brittle cookies and struck his chest. Bang! Xiaoyu spat out blood, his body flung into a building. 
the summoned undead soldiers and archers disintegrated, and even the eight undead lords suffered significant damage. The blow nearly knocked Xiaoyu unconscious. Maluin surveyed the scattered undead and then looked at Xiaoyu, sneering, impressive defenses. You survived a strike from a mythical warrior, but you won't have any undead left to share the damage for the next hit. Maluin was somewhat shocked, expecting to kill Xiaoyu in one strike. The first attack had been dodged using the rare spatial blink skill, and though he had quickly followed up with another strike, it hadn't been fatal. Next hit will be your end, Dragon Country's prodigy. Maluin prepared to deliver the finishing blow, but suddenly, a primal fear of death surged through him. What is it? What's locking onto me from behind? Is it their mythical warrior? Soul burn? Xiaoyu struggled to stand, enhancing the distant forbidden spellcaster Edward with his talent, boosting his attributes by 50. Maluin immediately sensed the spellcaster's power increase, and the fear of death enveloped him. I need to escape, but can I? If I move, will they strike? As Maluin hesitated, a deathly finger shot out from Edward's withered hand, striking Maluin in an instant. Death resistance, unbreakable body, ice shield. Maluin, a true mythical warrior, activated all his defenses in that critical moment. The overwhelming force of death surged like a tidal wave, instantly shattering Marin's defenses and invading his body. With a furious roar, Marin shouted, Get out of me! He forcibly channeled his inner strength to resist the death energy. This action caused his skin to peel away rapidly, revealing the raw, red flesh beneath and waves of excruciating pain flooded his mind. Seeing this, Xiaoyu couldn't bear to watch Marin suffer. He decided to intervene, casting a spell, Curse of Agony. Eleven times the pain struck Marin, causing him to convulse violently, his eyes bleeding as he glared at Xiaoyu with a twisted expression. He tried to speak, but was interrupted by a mouthful of blood, which he spat out forcefully. Marin trembled all over, the intense pain nearly driving him to the brink of unconsciousness. He knew well that passing out now would mean certain death. Roaring, he forced himself to stand, blood streaming from his seven orifices, staring at Xiaoyu like a demon. Get out. Get out. Get out. I want you dead. Xiaoyu's face changed when he saw Marin still alive, silently cursing the man's luck. With a sudden swing of his staff, Marin bellowed. Infernal strike. The ground a kilometer away cracked open, the fissure rapidly extending to Xiaoyu's feet. Sensing the imminent surge of power from the earth, Xiaoyu didn't hesitate to use spatial blink to evade. With a deafening boom, lava-like flames shot skyward, turning the clouds above a fiery red. Marin vanished in an instant, rushing towards Xiaoyu's new location, roaring, die. At that critical moment, a figure suddenly appeared in front of Xiaoyu. Qing Yimou, wielding a giant sword, struck Marin, sending him flying. Qing Yimou coldly watched Marin soar through the air and mocked. Marin, as a mythic warrior, attacking a hero-level junior? You're truly worthless. Ching Yimou disappeared and reappeared beside Marin in an instant, his sword surrounded by a whirlwind as he slashed down. Gale roars. Marin barely managed to roll and block with his staff. Another earth-shaking explosion ensued, sending Marin's body hurtling like a cannonball into a distant mountain, creating a deep crater. Ching Yimou coldly declared, This time, you're dead. As he spoke, the entire mountain exploded. A series of explosions followed, as the two mythic warriors engaged in a life-and-death struggle their destructive power making all nearby creatures tremble in fear. Unwilling to just watch, Xiaoyu summoned his frostbone dragon and, with forbidden spellcaster Edward, charged into the fray. Qing Yimou shouted in alarm, Xiaoyu, this battle is beyond you. Ignoring Qing Mo's warning, Xiaoyu commanded his companions, Saintus, cast lightning aura, sunlight aura, and holy aura on Qing Yimou. Edward, prepare the next death's finger. I want him dead. As the three auras enveloped Qing Yimou, his sword erupted with holy fire and lightning. Each strike now dealt massive additional fire and lightning damage, forcing Marin into a rapid retreat. Qing Yimou was astonished, realizing this was the source of Xia Yu's strength such powerful aura skills. He felt his wounds healing rapidly, and negative states were being dispelled. Qing Yimou was shocked to recognize the high-evil holy aura, a divine gift rarely granted even to mythic priests. Marin, infuriated, shouted, Ching Yimo, you despicable scum. Ching Yimo laughed in retort, compared to what you've done, this is nothing. As long as I can kill you traitors, nothing is despicable. Just as Marin was being overwhelmed, a familiar death magic surged once more. Marin was startled, he can cast it again so soon? With no time to ponder, he took Ching Mo's sword strike Heedon and turned to flee. Xiaoyu urgently shouted, Principal, don't let him escape. Ching Yimo responded immediately, pulling out a scroll, holy barrier, 
The barrier, usually for defense, was cleverly used by Ching Mo to trap the fleeing Marin. Caught within the barrier, Marin desperately struck it with his staff. At that moment, Death's finger shot out again, and Ching Mo canceled the barrier just in time for the Death Beam to hit Marin. The overwhelming force of Death invaded Marin's already weakened body. With a roar of defiance, Marin cried out, No, I refuse to die at the hands of a hero necromancer. His body swelled rapidly and then exploded. A massive wave of death energy swept across several kilometers. Ching Mo immediately sensed the familiar power within and thought, Isn't this the same death energy from the mythic boss in the Forest of Death? Could it be that Xiaoyu killed that boss? Ching Mo was stunned. This kid never ceases to amaze me. He managed to wipe out an entire legendary squad from the Monster Protection Organization and even killed a mythic warrior. Even with my help, Xiaoyu's contribution is immense. In the Monster Protection Organization, legendary warriors are upper middle class and mythic warriors are top tier. Yet they all perished in Lingnan City. The system notification sounded. Selection complete. Rewards granted. Reward. Main God level staff. Death's Requiem sealed. Death's Requiem main God. Seal level. 40. Intelligence 51840. Agility 35400. Strength 35400. All skill levels 5. Soul Devourer unsealed. Unseal condition. Absorb zero souls. Death's gift unsealed. Unseal condition. Prison of the Dead unsealed. Unseal condition. Lord of Death unsealed. Unseal condition. Description. This is the authority of death, containing the essence of all death. It will truly bring death back to the gods as its seals are lifted. Xiaoyu took a quick glance at the attributes of the death anthem and couldn't help but gasp. This artifact not only had impressive attribute bonuses, but also increased the level of all equipped skills by five. Even more astonishing, this was not the final form of the death anthem. As its seals were gradually lifted, its power would become even more formidable. Ching Mo walked over to Xiaoyu, gave him a once-over, and then asked, Did you also kill the mythical boss in the death forest? Xiaoyu nodded slightly, a simple gesture that made Ching Mo's pupils contract. That mythical boss was not like Marin, who had Ching Mo's assistance. This meant Xiaoyu had taken it down solo. Ching Mo couldn't help but wonder, how did he do it? Xiaoyu summoned the Forbidden Spell Mage, Edward, and briefly explained his one-hit kill Forbidden Spell and how he had luckily summoned such a powerful undead lord. That's unbelievable. Ching Mo looked at the Forbidden Spell Mage with a hint of fear in his eyes. To enable a hero-level undead mage to kill a mythical entity and with manageable side effects was indeed terrifying. Xiaoyu sighed. Before you arrived, I had already hit Marin once. Unfortunately, I wasn't lucky enough to trigger the one-hit kill effect. All right, Ching Mo said, full of admiration, you've done a great job this time. You've taken down a team of legends and a mythical entity all by yourself. My goodness, you are the real hero. Remembering the sight of a seemingly organized undead army, Ching Mo couldn't help but exclaim. You've been targeted by the Monster Protection Organization, Ching Mo suggested. How about I take you straight back to school? Okay, Xiaoyu agreed, knowing that staying in Lingnan City would not only endanger his own life, but also put the ordinary residents at risk. I'll say goodbye to my family first. No problem, I'll go with you. Ching Mo seemed a bit uneasy. However, he didn't know that Xiaoyu had a god-level selection system. And since the system had already issued the rewards, it meant that the Monster Protection Organization's attack was over for now. Xiaoyu quickly found by Xiao Xiao, who had been fighting alongside his undead. Lingnan City's lord, Lu Nong, immediately noticed the two and greeted Qing Mo with a bow. Qing Mo smiled and nodded. You've done well, minimizing the city's damage. I'll report this to the management bureau and get you some extra points. It's my duty. Lingnan City is my hometown, Lu Nong said excitedly. Having the endorsement of a mythical entity would undoubtedly make his future dealings with the management bureau much easier. Xiaoyu turned to Bai Xiao Xiao. Xiao Bai, I'm going back to school. Be careful here in Lingnan City. He handed her the equipment that had just dropped and the gear he had replaced. Sell these and get yourself some good equipment. Also, make sure everyone in the guild equips the sets from the guild warehouse. Got it. Bai Xiao Xiao took the equipment, her tone stern. You're such a nag for a guy. But her eyes were full of reluctance. I'll be off then, stay safe. Xiaoyu said his goodbyes briefly, not wanting to keep Qing Mo, a mythical figure, waiting too long. The two flew to the now repaired teleportation center. Watching their departing figures, Lu Nong sighed. Xiaoyu is destined to be a true dragon. At the hero level, he was targeted by the Monster Protection Organization, which sent a mythical entity to kill him. On our side, we also dispatched the strongest mythical entity, Principal Qing Mo. He killed a team of legends as a hero level undead mage. 
Who would believe that? I won't lose to him. Bai Xiao Xiao said, then sighed. Xia Yu is truly terrifying. Back at Xianlong School, Qing Emo took Xia Yu directly to the principal's office. You've done a great job this time. You're level 40 now. What do you want? Even if you want a legendary sublimation orb, I can apply for it. Xia Yu thought for a moment. I want equipment, level 40 mythical gear, preferably a staff with undead skill bonuses. Although he already had the death anthem, staffs were divided into main hand and offhand. His current offhand staff was still a level 30 legendary, which was lacking in attributes. Qing Mo frowned slightly. A level 40 mythical staff? Although this was cheaper than a legendary sublimation orb, it made him even more conflicted. Giving Xiaoyu an ordinary level 40 mythical staff seemed unworthy of his achievements and could lose people's trust. But soon, Qing Mo's eyes lit up. I happen to have one suitable for you. You go rest, and I'll have someone deliver it tomorrow. Thank you, Principal. Xiaoyu felt exhausted, having killed for legendary professionals and nearly dying at the hands of a mythical one though he ultimately turned the tables. You plan to compete in the freshman competition and win the legendary sublimation orb, right? Ching Mo's voice came from behind. Xiaoyu turned and nodded, yes. There are a few exchange students from America in this competition. Be careful of them. They're quite strong, Ching Mo warned. Xiaoyu frowned. Ching Mo knew his strength, but still felt the need to warn him. Were these American exchange students really that powerful? Of course, I'm just saying. Ching Mo quickly added, compared to you, they probably fall short. Just be cautious and don't make any mistakes. Got it, Principal. I won't let the Americans take first place in our school's competition. Xiaoyu said confidently. That's good. Qing Mo smiled as he watched Xiaoyu leave. Xiaoyu's timely appearance was a relief. Otherwise, he wouldn't know how to handle those American exchange students. He wondered what America had discovered in that relic to produce such strong new generation professionals. Qing Mo's eyes darkened at the thought. Back in his dorm, Xiaoyu fell asleep immediately. Meanwhile, in an unknown location, a young man in a gold and red robe with sinister red tattoos on his face was deep in thought. Marin and four legendary professionals failed, he murmured, a hint of surprise in his eyes. A hero-level undead, mage managed to hold out against four legendary professionals and a mythical entity until Ching M.O. arrived. It's unbelievable, yet it happened. His gaze swept over the dozens kneeling below him. This undead mage must be our new adversary. May you on. He called, he's yours to handle. If you can't recruit him, eliminate him at Qianlong School. Yes, Archbishop. A graceful figure stood up and responded respectfully. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you wish to have another part of this recap, please give us at least 1,000 likes. Please don't forget to comment and subscribe to our channel for more content like this until next time.